Welcome back to our live broadcast of the 2016 Comrades Marathon. Just an update on what's happening because the race has, of course, gotten underway. Our runners have been going for the last 24 minutes after the race got underway at 5.30. But the press track where all of the journalists, uh, the printed journalists and even those uh, that are taking photos, that press track is only allowed to start from the 15 kilometer mark. So we are going to be getting an update from one of the journalists, Wesley Barton, who writes for The Citizen. We're going to be getting an update from them in a short while. But of course, the runners at this point, they are watching their footing as they run out on those very narrow roads in Peter Marisburg. It's rather dark. And of course, they've got quite a steep decline from a poly shorts as well as little polys. So as we speak about Peter Marisburg, let's take a look a little closer at the city of choice. Peter Maritzburg is in the Umsunduzi municipality and is set amongst the rolling countryside of the KZN Midlands. It is the administrative capital of KwaZulu-Natal. It is also one of the best locations for many sporting codes, including being the home of the Comrades, the Doozy Canoe Marathon and the Midmar Mile, along with BMX and mountain bike world events. These events attract participants and spectators from all around the world. It is also the home of the best schools in the country and the internationally acclaimed University of Natal. On the night of 7 June 1893, a young Mahatma Gandhi was thrown out of the train at the Peter Maritzburg station for refusing to get out of the whites-only compartments. Another milestone was when the Peter Maritzburg City Council awarded Nelson Mandela the freedom of the city in 1997. Art in the Park is a premier outdoor art selling exhibition where artists exhibit and sell their works direct to the public and it's a part of mixed events that Peter Maritzburg City is known for. The city is reflective of a country united in diversity. All the race groups living harmoniously together are appreciating each other's cultures, making Peter Maritzburg indeed the city of choice for the many that live in it. And it has been a rather warm start in Peter Marisburg. As promised, let's cross over now to Wesley Botton. He's a sports journalist for The Citizen. He is going to be on that press truck, which is only allowed to really start rolling from 15 kilometers. So let's check in with him. A very good morning to you, Wesley, and welcome to our live broadcast here on SABC Sport. What can you tell us from the road? Um, it's, a, it's a little bit chilly, Raylan, but I guess it always is, especially in Maritzburg. Um, warmer than normal, no doubt. And it's cold enough that my my hands are struggling to type on my phone, but <laughs> not cold enough, I think, that the, the runners are going to be too worried. And I think it is going to be a, a very warm day out there for the guys. Is there anything that you saw from a couple of the elite men that uh, made you kind of stop and, and take note? Or are they all looking in the same kind of shape that we saw at the elite athletes press conference on Friday, where there was a lot of fighting talk? Yeah, I, I think it's still a wide open race. You know, nobody's really put up their hand and in advance and said that they they really going to go for it. The only person who had a lot to say was Ludwig Mambolo, and I, I think if anything, he probably is the favourite. He's obviously very confident. Looking at the guys this morning, had a, had a chance to chat to one or two of them. Uh, maybe a little nervous, obviously. Some of the guys quite excited, but um, everybody's there. Um, everybody's ready, and I think it's going to be a great race. And what about the women's race? Women's race is all about one person, I think, and it, it's Caroline Wassman's race to lose. It's it's unpredictable. You can't, you can never say who's going to win the Comrades Marathon. It's such a long way to go. Even Caroline admits that she's been relatively conservative um, in her own predictions, but there has been this talk about the sub six, and that she knows, and I think a lot of people, everybody knows that it's within her capabilities. That's not necessarily going to happen. She's got to have a conservative start. Um, you know, Bruce Fordyce is in your studio. He. He repeatedly says that it worked for him. You've got to start slowly. You've got to concentrate on the win first. I guess firstly you've got to concentrate on finishing the race. And once you've done that, try and win. And if you're in a good position in the second half, then go for the record. Caroline knows that. <laughs> That's the approach that she's taking. And hopefully it works out. It'll be really, really nice if she does that. Wizzy, can you just explain to us what's kind of happening around you? The 
We left the start just beforehand for, for safety reasons. They wouldn't let us follow the guys for the first 15 kilometers. So we have followed the route to this point. Um, lots of people already out on the road, which is nice to see. There's always more people at the start in Durban, but there are already people coming out of their houses. All the refreshment tables are ready for the, the runners. The officials are out on the road, the marshals. So everything's ready. Um, we're just waiting for the runners. When are you expecting to see your first runner come past that point? Well, we're at Lion Park, which is around 15 k. So we'll probably see the guys coming through just under the first hour. So I reckon probably 20 past six somewhere there, I think we'll see them. And I'm sure that you've got a, a couple of the team managers also around you because that's quite a good indicator of where their runners are and if they've had any trouble through the dark coming from Peter Maritzburg. Yeah, we have. We've had a few of the the team managers in in their own vehicles driving past us um, all looking very excited uh, a few jokes and and that sort of thing between the journalists and the, and the team managers nobody seems too worried so um, it doesn't seem like there's any issues out on the road at this stage but they also would only have seen the start and uh, also just waiting for the guys to come through uh, at this stage of the race it's likely to be a very large lead group. If anybody has taken the lead at this stage, they probably aren't going to be anybody to watch later. Um, so it's probably not the end of the world that we're missing the first hour, but it, it would have been nice to know what was going on. All right, thank you very much, Rizzi. And just finally, how many people are on that press truck? Lots. Uh, I, I hope nobody missed out because there isn't a space to spare. There's probably about 25 people on each. And for the first time, Valen, I think it's worth mentioning that the organizers have made sure that there's a press truck following the ladies' race, which is fantastic. It's the first time um, I think any South African race has done that. And a lot of that's got to do with Caroline Wasman and Shawnee Bosman and the battle that they're going to have today. But um, certainly a progressive move by them. And that means that uh, a lot of people will be able to follow the women's race throughout the day on social media even if they can't follow all the time on, on the television. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that update. That's Wesley Boston. He is a sports journalist of four this and, and he is at Lions Park. It's around 15 kilometers and he says that they're expecting their first runner there at around 20 past six. Bruce, I know as we were having that conversation, you were nodding all the time, but I just want to pick up on one specific point and that is the fact that we've got a press truck following the women's race. Yeah, that's, uh, I think, might be the first year we've done that so th that's fantastic and it's well worth following i mean the women's races last year was uh, equally as, as exciting so fantastic bruce and zb i'd love to hear your comments on this because you know many people said that or there seems to be a perception amongst um, maybe a more mature audience that the comrades marathon enjoyed the kind of fame that it did when it found live television because of the fact that south africa was in isolation at the time but if we look at the numbers of the comrades marathon this year and the amount of novices 30 percent of the entrants were novices it's as if the comrades marathon remains as relevant as ever yeah, I agree. Um, you know, everybody's just taken, uh, you know, some interest in running for starters. You know, everyone wants to live a healthy life, and um, I think I think that's uh, that's about the, the the whole thing. That's why it's called the ultimate human race. And uh, you know, from from youngsters to to elderly people, even the the the, the, the women, for instance, who are are taking part now. I mean, Colin Duruk, South African born, she's now uh, a U.S. citizen. She's 52, but she still feels like, <laughs> you know, she can, she can do and, and make something out of it. It's very interesting. It certainly is. Bruce, I'd love your, your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, look, one out of every three people this, today is a novice, which is amazing. So the race is continuing to grow, continuing to draw people in. But at the other end of the scale, uh, I've got a few good mates. Alan Robb's doing his... 43rd, Barry Holland's doing his 44th, Lou Massain's doing his 44th, Dave Lowe's doing his 43rd, Tilda Turl, who won in 93, is doing her 30th. So there are a lot of hardened veterans out there as well. As you speak about those, I just want to mention one of them, <laughs> Zuelicha Gono. Yes, he awesome. will become the first black man to run 40 Comrades Marathons. At 64 mm -hmm. years of age. And yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's such an amazing feat, eh? 
64 it, years of age yeah. and still going. And he, t he was only given his two silver medals retrospectively for the 73 and 74 race because, of course, the Comrades Marathon was only opened to people of all genders and all races after 1975. That's, if, uh, that's correct, yes, and uh, it's fantastic. Uh, my mate Vic Boston also going for his 40th. I, li I loved your use of the word retrospective. Could we maybe attach that to prize money? That would be quite interesting. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, so there, there are lots of people, and, and one of the things that I love doing today is that it's, it's great uh, helping with the commentary, but from time to time when I'm not part of the team, because we rotate, obviously, because 13 hours of coverage, I break away and go and help hand out uh, the green numbers, permanent numbers Ooh. down at the green number tent. And that's wonderful to see the people who've come in and they're coming in for their 10th run or their 20th, you know, handing over a quadruple green number to somebody who's, uh, I've done 30 and you hand over uh, to somebody who's done 40, you feel like a novice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And, and that's one of the traditions of the Comrades Marathon, the green number. And it is a very, very special honor for many runners to be able to achieve. And that's just one of the things that make up this thing called the spirit of Comrades. The spirit of Comrades is the intangible ability of the race to humble, inspire and unite. It is in the runners, the volunteers, the organizers, and all the traditions that demonstrate the spirit. Among the notable traditions is Max Trimborn's cock crow, the unofficial starting gun. Max ran for the first time in 1933 when he let out a great big cock a doodle doo before the start. He ran a total of eight times, winning one gold in 1940. His cock crow is played to this day as a recording before the start gun is fired by the mayor of the city. Close to halfway is Arthur's seat, the place where five-time winner Arthur Newton is said to have sat. Runners place a flower here and greet one of the race's greats to ensure a good second half. Another comrade's custom after Newton is that of the green number honor. Given to runners who have ten medals, three wins or five gold medals, they are awarded their race number in perpetuity. And what would a race be without a medal? A comrade's medal is particularly special. Much like the humbling experience of the race, the medal is humble in size, only 29 millimeters, with a figure of the Greek god Hermes on it. But the medal, regardless of color, represents bravery, perseverance, and endurance. The same spirit that the race has found of Vic Clapham wanted to remember for his fallen comrades of the First World War. Just some of the reasons why the race sees a global television audience of over 5 million, 400,000 spectators on the road and up to 6,000 volunteers helping to put this race together each and every single year. And of course, this year we're celebrating the 91st running of the event. As we enter to that insert, Bruce was sharing with us some of the stories that he has on the press truck. And you say that actually, forget about the runners, the media are the most important. The press oh, truck. Come on. You see, the, the leading runners see the press a lot especially in the second half and they become both your friends but also enemies because you're very jealous of these so they all the press guys are sitting there they build a scaffolding sort of thing mm. with cushions on them they don't want the they don't want the it to be too hard you know and they sit there and they watch the race um, and then they've got a little breakfast box and uh, later on a lunch box that they tuck into and you'll be running just behind them <laughs> and right in front of you one of the guys later on might crack open a beer that, um, that you would have brought along gulp 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 in front of you and then take a note and say Ford I started to show signs of weakness at this stage of the race or whatever <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you there they are they're sitting watching this whole thing uh, um, where they are really useful is that they can tell you who's catching you if you're leading they can Ooh. say there's nobody um, that for me was one of the wonderful moments was to have a couple of my press buddies saying Bruce we're looking back down the road there's nobody you're on your own you, you know the, so that was fantastic but from time to time they forget that they're low hanging there are like banners across the road from various sponsors and things saying we welcome the comrades runners it's fabulous to see one of the press guys stand up to take a photograph and get hit by a banner because he hasn't looked behind him <laughs> 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 so and then what people worry about is that they say that the fumes from the from the press vehicle go straight into the face of the leading man and woman but they don't actually they're, they've got special exhausts that take it above your head and away well i hope that they certainly did in our day so that you don't have the fumes um and so the the press vehicle is actually 
Well, we have a lot of fun. They're our mates. But it, it's tough when you're running out there to see somebody sitting back tucking into their lunchbox <laughs> <laughs> while, you, while you're having a, <laughs> a hard run. <laughs> the role of the media. Yeah. <laughs> but for the first 15 kilometers of this year's race, the runners haven't been having that. Tell us what's actually happening there at the front because it's quite a hairy thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, people don't really appreciate the fact that it is so dark and you're going down Polly's. Well, yeah, they, so the leaders have got to the bottom of Polly's shorts by now and the other side, so coldest place, is the bottom of Polly's, even in a warmish year like this. It's chilly down the bottom of Polly's, so people will keep their warm-up tops until they're down there and then start to discard them on their way up. And from the bottom of Polly's, you climb up to Ashburton. Uh, there's an intersection there at, right at Ashburton after 10 kilometers of running, so the leaders will be there now, in fact, going past it. That intersection is actually no, known as Wally Haywood Drive named after the great man who won five times and the greatest comrade of all and uh, won, uh, ran twice in his 80s. Um, and then they go down the other side of what's called Little Polly's from Ashburton uh, and at the bottom of it, and because it's a down run, what they do then is that they go up and they go up very steeply all the way up to Umnas Road and at that point the sun starts to come out and it goes straight into your eyes. Uh, so if you've got a bit of sweat, that's a tough part. The sweat's dripping in your eyes. The sun's coming straight in your eyes. Umlaus Road, the leaders will be approaching that. And the back markers, by the way, will not even be near Polly Shorts yet. They will still be, and because it's a down run, they will be running up towards Polly Shorts. I'm trying to get the theme of the first half of the down run is Ooh. that you just go up. Uh, <laughs> and all the novices say, you sure we're doing a down run? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, they, will s they will now start to, you know, they'll be looking for each other. Looking, I, I used to, one of my great rivals, Alan Robb, look for his red socks, his Liverpool football <laughs> socks. And I find Alan's red socks great. I know where Alan is. That's one person, who, and at least I know where he is. Um, Alan will be there today, but much further back from those. <laughs> 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 I think he's going for a finish. <laughs> You're taking us down memory lane a little bit. Yes. And today is going to be the 50th anniversary for one... Tommy Malone yeah. of his victory here at the Yes, conference. 1966 uprun. Tommy won by 20 minutes and he's the great uh, one of the great characters of, of, of comrades. We all love him. Um, but he's the, probably the only winner and I, stop, I stay, uh, stand open to correction here. The only winner who's more famous for the one he lost. Yep. Because Ooh. Tommy lost that fantastic race in 1967 by one second to Mani Kun which is so dramatic when you see it happen. And that's the race that he's most famous for. And he, from time to time, has to say, guys, just please, will you remember, I did win in 1966. <laughs> and I won, by the way, by 20 minutes. And I beat the very self-same Marnie Kuhn, who beat me by a second. But nobody ever remembers that. He said, sure. the score between us is 19 minutes and 59 seconds, <laughs> <laughs> to my credit. Uh, so I think they've started doing that, because last year we had Bernard Gomesol, who won 50 yeah. years ago. So it would be a wonderful tradition if that suddenly became a tradition where you know, but uh, 50 years later, if you're still around, you get invited to, to come and be the special guest of honor. Yeah, and it, and it certainly is wonderful because you speak about uh, that uh, 1967 race and it is iconic, isn't it? You see him l diving for the line and he's even got the mayor's scroll in his mm -hmm. hand. I mean, I think it's the only time that they've actually given the scroll to the wrong well, it, it, winner. Well, it, it's, a, it's a, a little quiz question. It's a the trivial pursuit question is to ask who, who of, the, of the men's winners did not carry the baton across the line. And of course, Tommy loved to ask that question because Marnie used to get so irritated because he didn't carry the baton across the line. <laughs> the other one, unfortunately, is Jetman Sutu, who won in 1992, uh, but because of a disqualification, a drug failure, he won and he only he was only told he was the winner a month later. So Jetman also didn't carry the baton. And he, I know that that hurt him a lot because I can't tell you what a fantastic feeling it is. Mm -hmm. I'll describe mm -hmm. it later on, but to carry that baton across the finish line is just the most magical thing to do. Well, Tommy Malone, the man that's actually going to be celebrating the 50th anniversary of his victory, did get to hold uh, that message uh, from the mayor between the two different cities. So let's take a look back at the great Tommy Malone. <laughs> Jackie Meckler, a multiple winner, had skipped the race in 1966, leaving those waiting in the wings a chance. But among the starters outside Durban that year was a 27-year-old novice, Tommy Malone.
the Scottish production control clerk from Boxburg, had won the 56k Corky Marathon a month earlier and was known for his speed and stamina. Mani Kun led through halfway, but through in Changa, Malone earned the nickname of the Flying Scotsman. And it was at Camperdown that Malone caught a tire in Kun and soon was left running on his own after Kun blacked out. This year, Malone celebrates 50 years since that win by over 19 minutes from Kun. The two would be involved in what remains the closest finish the very next year. In 1967, Malone entered the stadium first and was given the mayor's message only to cramp before the line and be beaten by Kun in a photo finish. The Flying Scott returned four years after that dramatic finish and ran a total of ten times with a record of one win, one runners-up place and eight silvers. His daughter Amanda ran with his permanent number 62 in the Millennium Race. This year, we salute 1966 winner Tommy Malone. What a great memory as we walk down memory lane. And Zedvi, you watching that and you nodding and you smiling. What's been one of your greatest comrades' memories? Um, wow. Gee. Bruce Fordyce <laughs> taking his <laughs> ninth, I must be honest. When he won his ninth Thank and um, when he made the announcement that he's not going to do the comrades anymore, I felt like crying because I think I wanted to see more of him. <laughs> Bruce, you ran two oceans this year. Yeah. Will you ever run another Comrades? Uh, without a doubt. It, it's a very special race. Um, I've just enjoyed having a, a, a break, and it, it's, it's fabulous uh, being part of the commentary team and helping. And to be quite honest with you, if you're not running and you're a past winner, I'm going to be honest with you, it's a massive ego trip. Lots of people want photographs and, and, and to <laughs> chat to you and your time. And you can enjoy all that if you're not running. But if you are running, you've got to wrap yourself up in cotton wool. You can't go to the expo. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, work for your sponsors. Maybe you've, you know you you have to really look after yourself and and make sure you get to the start line, you know, strong and not ill. That and uh, it's a massive commitment. But I certainly have not run my last comrades. I don't want my family to hear me saying this because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much of a knee. But. Uh, one that's sitting in the back of my mind if I'm still around and if I'm, in, uh, if I'm healthy enough. I think nine years' time is the 100th. I think the 100th Comrades will be a very special one. I would love to be part of that out on the road. Wow. Just as we speak about the former winners and with uh, Tommy Malone's uh, 50th anniversary and having looked back at uh, his journey at the Comrades Marathon, I just want to take you through some of the dignitaries that will actually be firing the guns because Tommy Malone in in remembrance of the 50th anniversary of his comrades victory he will be firing the gun for the wally haywood medal at 11:30. that's the cutoff here in durban helen luca who is a three times winner of the race she's also going to be firing one of the guns here at the comrades marathon at the finish line and they're hoping that mcdonald chicho who is the chairperson of the comrades marathon association will have finished his 18th run and he'll be able to fire that final gun at it uh, after 12 hours of running and that's half past five this evening and that's really the moment that actually it doesn't matter who you are everybody wants to tune in to actually get to watch any of those cutoffs and you still want us to be here at <laughs> half past five <laughs> <laughs> yeah obviously i mean it's it, it, it's an exciting moment that one because everybody just wants to get there and we're gonna see what you know what we saw when uh, uh, tommy um, just failed to beat the count there because everybody just goes for the kill and uh, you know it's very interesting and never the, the, the people will be falling all over the show I think they are the most dramatic part of the race and, and, and a part of the race by the way that um, overseas runners cannot cope with uh, I've, I've run many of the big international races you run New York Marathon you run London Marathon they better be there and they better give you a medal even if you take two days to do it you know I'm exaggerating yeah. slightly but but <laughs> the back markers there is no such thing as a cutoff and this cutoff this brutal cutoff uh, is something that really uh, upsets a lot of people um, but I think it's you know we have to call curtains on comrades at some stage or other you have to end it, otherwise we'd be here for weeks <laughs> um, and uh, I think it's it's one of the truly great moments in sport is that final gun and, and it's the 
the runner, the two runners, the, the one who just makes it and gets mm. the mm. last mm. person trophy and the one who just doesn't make it that is so dramatic yeah. and all they get is a handshake and a, you know, and a, and a, and an arm over their shoulder and thank you very much for coming, come back next year. Um, those people that, you know, it's, it's, it's so dramatic and of course that's why we watch and we've got a bird's eye view of it because we're going to be able to turn around and look. The finish is behind us here so we'll see it in all its drama but I would hate to be the person who has to fire that gun. I have had to do it once mm. and I can tell you that it is extremely upsetting. You face an official who counts down when there's 10 seconds to go, you've got the gun, you hold it here, not close to your ear, otherwise your ear will, you hold it up here, and the official counts down, and because mm. the crowd is screaming so loudly, he has to do it with his fingers, so that you can see. So as it gets down to three, two, one, he does that, so you go, you get, try and give the runners one more second. Oh, oh, okay, bang, <laughs> you get them one more second, because you can, out the corner of your eye, you can see them diving across the line, trying to make it. And you feel for the one who just You feel for the it. one. And of course, there's quite a few. They're, they're yeah. out there going down the road, past the expo where they collected their numbers. They're all out there. And they're cutoffs along the way as well, of course, along the, uh, along the whole route. And you know what? Some people think that if you've been taken off the route or if you maybe haven't completed your first one, you'd never come back. I actually met a gentleman all the way from Washington, D.C. in the United States. His name is Jeff. And he said, I haven't finished Comrades once, twice, this is going to be my third time and I'm hoping to finally actually have made uh, this trip and go home with a medal. And it just shows you the, uh, what it is about this Comrades Marathon that even if you don't get to finish and you don't get to have that finishers medal, you are able to say, you know what, I'm going to try again. And that's the beauty of this race and that's why they call it the ultimate human race. Let's take a look back at some of the moments of 2015. <laughs> And it's time to do it all again for the 2016 Comrades uh, Marathon. And this year we're going down, we're going from Peter Maritzburg down to Durban, which is where our on-site studio is at the Sahara Kingsmead Stadium. There is an opportunity for you to get involved, not only making use of social media on Instagram and Twitter, where you can interact with our star commentary team throughout the day, but also we've got an opportunity for you to get involved and actually win some prizes. So you can do that with the old Mutual. Uh, remember that you can still win a thousand rands worth of airtime with Old Mutual. Call loved ones, chat with friends, update your social media or visit www.worldofendurance.co.za to plan for greatness. Simply answer the questions on the screen and you could be a winner. It's that easy. So enter now for your chance to get one thousand rands worth of airtime. And on our broadcast, uh, which uh, will be with you right up until 6 o'clock, we'll of course be keeping you up to speed with lots of different opportunities for you to win. Because something that's happened with uh, the Comrades uh, Marathon is also that it's got so many commercial partners that have helped to make it such a great, great success. And I think, ZB, this is something that we've asked for time and time again for the smaller sporting codes, for those sporting codes that don't necessarily have the big sponsorships behind them, like your footballs, like your rugby's, like your crickets to also give those athletes their due. And we're seeing the corporates are coming on board now. And what a wonderful thing, especially for the sport of athletics, where South Africa are so strong. Absolutely, absolutely, Valen. I mean, these days, you, there's nothing you can do without sponsorship. And they're playing a big role in broadcasting, in, in, in uplifting, you know, in empowering 
people, athletes especially, and not only as an individual athlete, but I mean teams and uh, national teams, and uh, you know, just seeing those corporates coming in, and we know it's a lot of money, but really we, we deserve to have that, and uh, it, it's such a wonderful gesture from uh, all all the corporates. Bruce, it seems as if athletics, and not only road running, but athletics in South Africa is in a rather good space. And when we look specifically at road running at the Comrades Marathon, we also see a number of elite teams. There was a time where we would only have two or three elite teams. Now we've got a number of them. Yes, I mean, a lot of, lot of uh, elite sponsored teams, which is great. And of course, we have two of the, talking road running, two of the most famous races in the world. And that's, a, you know, the Old Mutual Two Oceans and Comrades Marathon as well. Those are two world-class races which are always considered to be in the top sort of 10 or 20 marathons around the world and what's interesting is they're both ultras and they're the only two that I can think of ultras that are in a, a list of top 10 around the world. What is it about South Africans that we are addicted to ultra running? We're tough. <laughs> we like the tough. I mean we saw a little snippet of the doozy earlier on. Mm. There's a canoe race which I've done, I'm proud to say I've done it, uh, where, you, where you do the comrades basically on water. But at times, because the river does a big lazy bend, it's quicker to run. So you'll see two people running, carrying a canoe with life jackets and paddles, and the nearest water is five kilometers away. But there they are, they're in the canoe race. <laughs> 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 and so, yeah, it's just tough. And then there's this, uh, you know, the Cape Cycle Tour, which is, it gets thousands of cyclists. Um, we just seem to have these mega events that, that attract tough people. ZB, how much does the Comrades Marathon as an event reflect South Africa as a society? Wow, this has been going on for a long time, for instance. I mean, uh, and uh, it's actually growing. Look at the numbers, they're actually growing. And um, as I said before, a healthy lifestyle and um, young stars coming in now and they now realize that it's not only about running, it's about enjoying yourself, it's about looking after yourself, it's about making a name for yourself. We're a winning nation. South Africans don't like losing. I mean, in all sporting codes, but Comrades Marathon, the world respects South Africa for the Comrades Marathon, the ultimate human race. It certainly is, and we'll be bringing you more coverage of right here on SABC2 in a short while. It's time for us to take a quick ad break. Of course, we have got our runners. They're out on the road. They've nearly been running for close to an hour in the dark, but we'll be bringing you an update as it starts to get a little bit lighter here in KwaZulu-Natal. So shortly, our choppers will be able to go up into the air and we'll be able to bring you those first visuals of the front-running men and women. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Kif Kileh, the defending champion of... 2015 Comrades Marathon. I believe that the champion for 2016 Comrades Marathon will come from Team Tom Tom. Visit Wonga.com. Choose any amount from 100 Rand to 3,000 Rand. Decide when to pay it back and we'll show you how much it costs before you apply. It's that simple. Wonga.com for fast little loans. Smart kids say smart things. Fana, what do vitamins make you? Strong and fit and tough. Baby, where does milk come from? From the supermarket, Mom. <laughs> Just joking. From a cow. No, no, what are life cultures? It's the magic that turns the milk into yogurt. Why does mommy give you a smart snack? Because I'm smart. Yogurt is made with milk and live cultures. Nutri-Day is a thick, creamy, yummy smart snack. What are you doing, mom? I want to be as smart as you. Nutri-Day yogurt. Say yes to the smart snack.
Welcome back to SABC Sports live coverage of the 91st running of the Comrades Marathon. ZB has made way for Udo Carlsa, who is also on our team this year. We saw you yesterday running your debut, Comrades, at the Expo. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to be a part of the broadcast well, team? Absolutely year, fantastic. I've been watching you guys year after year and just seeing all the fun being had at the Expo. Uh, and some of the stories that, uh, and, and we probably racked up about 40, 50 different inserts uh, building <laughs> up to today, uh, really touches the heartstrings. I told you about uh, what was happening at the YMCA yesterday, which really brings home, uh, I suppose, the, 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 the economic reality of South Africa, that for many South Africans, it's an honor, a privilege to get down to Durban, spend the money on the hotels, the B&Bs, uh, the entry fee and so forth. But there are so many South Africans who love running, who are capable of running fantastic times at Comrades, for whom financially it's just not possible. When we hit the YMCA yesterday, 800 mattresses, uh, men and women from all over the country coming in and, and just being given the opportunity and the support financially to be on the big day, that really, uh, I mean, the, the, the payoff line is what? It will, the race will humble you? Uh, standing there yesterday, it, it was an absolutely humbling experience, but I cannot wait for people to start coming through behind us here because it's going to be fantastic. So happy to be part of the big day. And you speak about uh, going to the YMCA. That's a part of the Comrades Marathon Association's uh, underprivileged runners program, providing 800 with the opportunity to actually be a part of this great race. And we're going to be seeing that insert from you a little bit later on. But you speak about the economic realities for so many South Africans. And that's something that so many people have been having to deal with for so many years one of your greatest rivals, Hosea Charlie, mm. he's a man that he would run just so that he could get by, and he was a great champion. A uh, fantastic runner. The only race, the only major ultra he didn't win was Comrades, but he had yeah. seconds and thirds and uh, won two oceans and all of them. Yeah, Hosea in those days, I think it was a struggle for him, uh, but uh, uh, his club helped him a lot with, uh, with helping him to get down here. And uh, yeah, there, there, there are quite a few people who do get together to try and help runners who can't make it. We had a, a music day the other day. We all went to, to a, a concert and we all paid for ticket and lunch so that we could, uh, and the not, it was a group of us, we managed to sponsor seven guys to come down here. Uh, and I think that's one of the grateful uh, things we tried to do is to try and help others to get down. All right, and what we're seeing now is we're seeing the first live pictures from on the road. They're going through Chicken Farm. There's been an hour and two minutes, 47 seconds of running. And, of course, these guys are chasing that very first hotspot, which is worth 10,000 rands. But these runners that are chasing the hotspots, they are guys that also have to finish within seven and a half hours. What is going through the race at this present point, Bruce? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit ambivalent about the hotspots. I'm not sure that I'm a big fan because, yeah, it adds some excitement, but it also confuses the, the, the leading runners. They're not sure, is this a real contender or is this a, a runner going for the hotspot? And the speed that that runner's going, I'm saying that's a hotspot runner, and he's then going to back off once he's won the hotspot and, and go for seven and a half hours. Um, I saw, you know, the, it's been a feature of Comrades since it started that they're always what we call the TV runners, the people who start far too fast and, and blast off in the beginning, and you do ignore them. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's confusing. The hotspot for me, um, I haven't made up my mind whether I'm, whether I'm a fan or not. All right, now you can see that fresh truck that we uh, chatted about, and they also have only gotten uh, going just uh, a couple of minutes ago, maybe less than 20 minutes ago, Udo. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we chatted with the guys from uh, Max Delete a little bit earlier in the week, and uh, it's the one team I've got to say, Bruce, talking yeah. about the fact that there are TV runners in the race here as well, where, where some of the top runners, they, they certainly did not stand back from uh, proclaiming that they will win comrades today. Yeah. Big pronouncements coming through, and I think from the experience that I've had just uh, interviewing a number of the runners, uh, the better the runners are, the better times they have, the better track record they have in comrades, the more circumspect they are, yes. making any sort of prediction whatsoever. But uh, I, I suppose the, the team managers will have to manage this process of whether this is an actual assault on the course or not, yeah. and, and feed that back to their runners in some way. Bruce. Yes, and, and then this runner, we got it. We had a glimpse of his number, and I saw their number of medals. None. You see, there was a big zero under num number of medals. So that that means this is a hot spot runner. That means very inexperienced novice. Uh, and I, I saw a batch. So he, he, there was an A. So his A batch has been at the, right in the front. But the significant thing is number of medals. You look for that, none. Uh, tells you a lot.
and also comrades is a race that you you have to learn and you have to feel and you have to kind of uh, earn your stripes a little bit isn't it Bruce I did absolutely you've got to you, you know you, you have to run a few to know how to run it and sure. uh, because it changes direction every year this you know the up run is very different from the down run so you also have to know that there's the big zero I think <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking about this Max team, they have got a class team managed by uh, a man that's very knowledgeable about uh, road running, not only here in South Africa, but also uh, across the continent, uh, Kieran Walker. He's been a part of our commentary team a number of years. He manages this Max team. Their Max team is made up of some brilliant athletes. Amongst them, Mslisi Mkize, who is a KwaZulu Natal athlete, Prodigal Kumalo, who's been coached by a former winner, Shaul Mateus. He's looking to break a 5.35. They've got Marco Mamba, the 45-year-old Zimbabwean. They've also got two Lesotho men, and you'll know this name, Mabutile Lebopo, a man that has made two oceans his own. He is now coming to do the Comrades Marathon. He has started it before, but he is hoping this year to actually be able to finish it. And he says that they've been training to be able to do that, and they would really like to put Lesotho back on the map here at the Comrades Marathon. Well, the, the Lesotho has some great long-distance runners, so there's no, no doubt that uh, uh, they will achieve that and this runner that we're looking at now the blue number means that that's a foreign runner oh. so all the, the all the foreign runners have blue numbers uh, and this runner is a Lesotho athlete I saw yep, uh, leading the race at the moment Lesotho uh, Relatabele is one of the Lesotho athletes that actually trains with uh, Mabutile as well as Ra Waranyane who is uh, Mabutile's younger brother Waranyane is making his debut here Mabutile himself he I suppose is the class runner from that Lesotho group of guys that have been actually training together there you saw Waranyane Lebopo um, so <coughs> these guys all know how to work together they all know how to run together they do it in training very often and they don't they say that they they aren't trained like a lot of the South Africans and like the Zimbabwean guys but they they're pretty confident in what they've done in fact I'm looking at uh, the the lead runners yeah. at the moment the man in sixth position Charles Chiani is one of the max the lead runners as well and uh, he had this warlike look on his face on Thursday evening when I had a chat with him uh, because uh, he feels he's got the point to prove one of the slightly older runners in that max the lead side and uh, he was saying pretty much like Ludwig was saying, I'm the favorite, look out for me. So I don't know if he's uh, trying yep. to uh, uh, lay that assault early on in the race. We'll see how he goes a little bit later, but he certainly feels that he is a contender, whether he is or not. Uh, I suppose the next couple of hours will tell. All right, it's uh, been an hour, seven minutes and 51 seconds of uh, running what we're seeing now, live visuals from the 2016 Comrades Marathon route. Let's go through to our commentary team now. Thank you very much, Valen Kirtley. As we bring you live pictures from out on the route, Bruce, we continue our coverage of the 2016 Comrades Marathon, the down run, the 91st Comrades Marathon. We've got uh, a host of athletes that already showed some promise in the early stages, including um, first to go through the uh, area Dardanelles, Chicken Farm, Sutera Litabella, who is out in front. This is going down, I think this is uh, well, Colin Perura. Who's uh, just following up, or well, Michael Mzorme, who's uh, coming through in second place overall. Colin Perura down in third. Well, uh, Sutu Ralitebele, the Max team, uh, first to go through at Chicken Farm 55-57. Uh, the athlete who runs for uh, the Max team, based in Durban, but the Lesotho athlete. But this is going back to the 13k mark, and these uh, these runners are still pushing through fairly hard. This is uh, early stages still. It's all about placing yourself in the early stages of the Comrades Marathon. Big T and uh, Helen Luca, former winner. Helen Luca, three-time winner uh, alongside, and uh, Helen Big T. Early uh, early charges from uh, the likes of uh, Sutura Tebele, Muzum Zobi, and uh, Colin Perura. But a couple of the favourites, the likes of Mike Focoroni, the two oceans winner back in eighth. Uh, Charles Ch Gianni as well in sixth place overall. Just a, a few minutes off the early pace here, so they look well set for uh, for a big finish. Well, yes, and it's interesting, you know, we did see uh, Mark Mumble um, and uh, the Mike Focaroni, both previous winners of Two Oceans, and I think, you know, they're testing the distance. They'd like to get a, a comrade's win under their belt, but it's quite early days, and they were pushing that pace. 
Um, probably about four minutes per, per behind the leader, but we always know that there are a couple of guys that do go out very, very quickly. Um, we were surprised to see a Ned Bank runner lying in third position going out there. Almost you wonder if it's a team uh, tactic to try and pull some of those leaders out because it is a very competitive field in the men's race this year. No clear-cut winner, and uh, you might just find that somebody say, well, I'll sacrifice my run and just let's, let, let's take it out of the legs of many of those contenders. Kesondi Musir Kobanekeza Comrades Marathon 2016. So, do I think um, this still early in the in, in the pace? Or we still going to see a lot more of the uh, elite runners coming through right here? Indeed, we are. Of course, in in recent years, we've watched Khartais go out very, very heavy, very hard. Uh, this year, though, he seems to be a little more relaxed. He seems to be lying uh, four or five minutes off the uh, the early lead. So Khartais is uh, a little more relaxed about his uh, approach to the Comrades Marathon this year because he has tended to bomb a little in the uh, closing stages. So, uh, 60 odd kilometres into the race, Khartais starts to uh, seize up. He's been going for some very fast times, but he's uh, just reeled it back in. Of course, Khartais, one of the finest runners that South Africa has ever produced and uh, there have been some comments about his uh, ability to take this race out hard and uh, and not finish it but Hartes is as experienced uh, a runner as, as any that South Africa has produced that said Comrades Marathon is a different entity entirely we'd love you to get uh, involved and interactive on social media today Twitter Instagram Facebook you can uh, use the hashtag Comrades 2016 that's Comrades 2016 and of course uh, pictures will be coming in from the the route later on in the day as well so using the uh, hashtag 20 uh, Comrades 2016 but uh, the, uh, the masses have been uh, going through Chicken Farm, but I can tell you as far as a uh, leading ladies is concerned uh, that Caroline Bosman is leading in the early stages. She was first through Lion Park. Shane Bosman was second. Sarah Bard and uh, Cassandra Scallon third and fifth overall. The uh, two American entrants, Kirian Marshall and uh, Kaiser Berg, also among the leading contenders in the uh, women's race early on. But this is just going back uh, to Dardanelles Chicken Farm. Just seeing a few more athletes starting to stream through now, and these will still be uh, athletes still will be aiming to go easily sub seven hours and uh, that's always an enormous uh, achievement if, you, if you're not one of the elite athletes. And I think uh, you're quite right because I think uh, this time around, this year around, I think we're still seeing the uh, women leading pack so early uh, in the day because uh, I've, I mean, uh, several years we see them, you know, coming back around uh, two hours or so but this time around we can see them um, they are still leading the pack but I think with Caroline Worsman, she's one of those women who obviously she has been doing all in the South African, you know, athletic division this year uh, winning the uh, two oceans and now coming up right here she's still really showing so you know um, hyped up well caroline was the first south african woman in the last down run and uh, she's made uh, no bones about the fact that she will be going out there today to win this race and she's we, we know that and i think we're going to see lots of caroline uh, later but if we just reflect back on the men's race we uh, attended a media conference where the, the clubs line up all their top contenders and there were about 60 men. All of those guys confident that they will get a gold medal, of which we know that there are only 10 on offer. And there's probably, of those 60, about 10 who really, really think that they can win this race. So the men's race, wide open. I'm not going to predict anybody at this stage. So just looking at uh, a couple of the uh, elite athletes that are starting to take the charge in the early stages i can tell you as well that we've got uh, nick bester a man who himself has nine gold medals and now a uh, manager of the nedbank uh, running team on the line uh, nick thanks for joining us uh, where, where exactly are you out on the route
Well, we seem to have a problem with uh, Nick Bester out on the route. We'll get back to him in just a moment. But uh, there are some Ned Bank athletes that have already started to come through, including Colin Perura, the 31-year-old uh, Zimbabwean, who's uh, taking charge in his third conference marathon. Has struggled to, uh, to find that gold medal in his previous attempts. But uh, one wonders, though, just how some of the other favourites are going to be uh, taking on. A moment ago, you saw uh, Dandazi from Zimbabwe, who's currently in third position overall among the first uh, runners to go across the uh, the check-in at uh, Lion Park at Dardanelles. But there are some favourites in the race that haven't really been spoken about. Somebody like Jonas Bud, uh, this is a guy who won the, uh, the World 100 Kilometre Championship last year, and he's been almost completely ignored in terms of uh, contenders for this men's race. But I think uh, maybe given time and uh, maybe given coverage by you know media, they can be able to be in the forefront. Well, Helen was one of the few people I think who actually picked Jonas Boot as, as, as a contender in this race, but not many, Helen. Have, uh, have picked him out. Well, Jonas has got a wonderful reputation. They rate him as one of the world's best uh, trail runners. Uh, he's he's been a very had a lot of success. But um, I read an article that he a couple of months ago he was um, had a bit of a virus. He'd done some a lot of training actually on the trail runs in New Zealand and was. Uh, planning to come here but he's had the setback so I think he's actually protecting himself by not putting his name on the line and saying I can I can be a co top contender if he's recovered I think we will see him in the top 10 now. Well uh, speaking of top 10 this is a look at uh, Bernard Dandazi of Zimbabwe who's uh, in his uh, third Comrades Marathon 33 year old but uh, we've got uh, Nedbank manager running manager Nick Bester back on the line Nick thanks for joining us uh, where exactly on the route are you at the moment? Rebecca <laughs> Dandaza, eh, Dandazi, the Muson Anne, Ubabaka, Zimbabwe, Muson Anne, Uvana Ashkadana, Manda Kuma, Ushikashi, Fazi Basuan was already hanging Panda, Rakabam Suana Sutu, Ranitebe, Anne Ramoya Fumbi, Maron, Muson Anne, eh, Ubabaka, Sud, Fazi, Recover Comrades Marathon, 26 and Down Run, Nubanga Katarbu, Peter Marasbek, Uya Parakatarbu, Inia by Deben, eh, Liko Uchana to Basamu, the Namuchoko Sumazubu, the Unga Hutu Fisa, Pakadana Mose. I think eh, when you look at the weather right now, it seems as if changing and coming up right now it seems to be warm uh, from the very early stages well, it does seem to be a little warmer than uh, than previous editions of this conference marathon still, it's still fairly uh, fairly chilly out there but of course you're not seeing as many arm warmers the the days of the plastic bags are uh, are, are gone but you're not seeing quite as many uh, arm warmers out uh, for the uh, for the athletes although Dundas is certainly running with the arm warmers here he looks to be fairly uh, comfortable in his stride but these are still early days yet and many of these athletes are uh, 213 214 marathon runners so the over over the first 40 kilometers or so it's going to be fairly easy going for these athletes it's by the time you get to the second mar uh, marathon that you actually start to struggle slightly that said we've got uh, eyes in the sky for this uh, Comrades Marathon. We've got the uh, insights of Digilele Mukungwana and Alec Riddle, who are both up in helicopters for the 2016 Comrades Marathon. We'll uh, get, we'll get uh, views from both Alec and Digilele as the day continues. Just a recap of what's happening in the women's race, the early stages. Carolyn Busman is already over two minutes ahead of her nearest rival, Shane Bosman of the uh, Nedbank Running Club. I can tell you as well that Sarah Bard is not doing too badly, looking good. Carla Molinaro has started to pull through the women's field, while uh, Aldemse Kakisa 
another one of the uh, Nedbank Running Club international athletes of uh, Ethiopia is starting to pull up the field as well. And that's going up uh, just past Lion Park now in the women's race. But in the men's race, still uh, the likes of Sutu Ralitibela, the likes of uh, Muzum Zorbi, this man, Bernard Dandazi, uh, who are ahead of some of the uh, more fancied elite athletes in Mike Fukuroni, Tals Chiani. But uh, while Dandazi is running a lone race at the moment there are some packs and some uh, groups that are developing behind him that include some of the elite athletes we'll get uh, a shot of that in just a moment here is some of the uh, chasing bunch so uh, an opportunity for one or two of these athletes to push for at least a gold medal or indeed the victory in this uh, chasing group Ndeja vuko manga manda kasi chifinga bako mwana msuwana laki mo sikili ndi mwana msuwana maleba kayo kata kati kwa ana chineja kusume za udanga mwahali vukubo ana mwana mwana chifinga chinji wote yanze lomana chikwada chinga wache na chino chaba suwana manga wabu laki wo calvin shokwe mateko la ndi wana wane rikumana mwana msuwana uri bangapa kata mwana kata msiko kuma wana 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 msuwana za upapanda fezi ya ndi mbambe ine bunji ya batu baijia sa mbambe ine aingo tuliru wango ralo kwa ji msuwana tona ndi matipa na ine ndi mwana msuwana maneba baka chikwada hechi na rakochi amba Chikwara chine kanji chidivova chikwara chine chato mizo fin chato chine chako danga mrao chato danga mbukhali vukuma. I think Helen, when you look at this you know group of men, these are men who obviously and most of the time they give a lot of competition to the guys up front there. These guys are probably about four or five minutes behind those very front leaders that we saw on those earlier shots, and you'll probably find that the very competitive guys are in this particular bunch. And those favourites, you'll see that they've actually got their name on the on the numbers, which is a, a great help to the people on the side of the road, just to identify who's who, and also to help us in the commentary box to try and pick up exactly who they are in you know and where they're placed. I think in this bunch we will find um, there's Gift Kalela. I'm just looking at sort of the feed through the some of the results, um, previous winner. But what is interesting that in this uh, down run. There are six previous winners, so a uh, very, very competitive field. It certainly is a competitive field, but uh, you look at the differences in the men's and women's races, there's uh, not too many standout female athletes, some would argue, and, uh, on the face of things, when you consider that, of course, uh, there are no Russian athletes that are in this Comrades Marathon. Of course, the Russian Athletics Federation have been banned uh, from international competition by the International uh, Association of Athletics Federations for doping irregularities. But there is Gartes among... Uh, I saw him for just a moment. Uh, Claude Mushiwa is uh, somebody who's fancied now. Here is uh, somebody who might be considered one of the one of the favourites. He said he was looking for around a 5.26 today. Claude Mushiwa has just gone out of shot. But uh, somebody was looking for uh, a 5.26. Now, that's a fairly quick time and certainly put himself in contention for a victory. When you talk about favourites, Claude Mushiwa's name hasn't always come up. But the 2013 winner is, is an outstanding runner in his own right. Well, from this uh, bunch of runners, these guys will all be uh, trying to aim for a, for a silver medal running this pace. That's a sub seven and a half hour um, run. Very, very respectable, and a, not a large percentage of the field will achieve this. Probably two to three percent. So, a lot of these people, unfortunately, probably may not make that goal, but they've uh, set out at the right pace. So, certainly setting out at the right pace. Speaking of uh, somebody who can keep an eye on uh, the pace itself, is uh, Alec Riddle. He's in the uh, Bonitas uh, helicopter uh, watching all the action here in Dikelede Mukhumwane. will be bringing us uh, updates from the sky. But, uh, Alec Riddle, uh, tell us where you are and uh, what's happening. 
Well, I can tell you it's a beautiful morning here in KwaZulu Natal as we head from Peter Maritzburg to Durban. The sun is rising and there are big gaps in the field. The main contenders are lurking perhaps one kilometer or so back from Sutu Ralatabeli of Max Delete. As I mentioned, the gaps are big. There's a big bunch here of about 20 athletes. They are probably some four and a half to five minutes, uh, almost uh, just, a, just almost a mile behind the leader from Max Delete, Muzi, Michael Mzorbo of uh, South Coast Striders, uh, laboring in second place. And uh, the main uh, guy coming through, Colin Perura of uh, Nedbank in fourth. But uh, watch out for these athletes um, lurking further back. They'll only come to the fore in the next hour or so. One thing we did observe flying up towards Peter Maritzburg, as my pilot, experienced guy Warren said, biggest crowds he's seen in years. There are really masses and masses of vehicles and people lining the roads here for the Comrades Marathon. And what an exciting race we've got in store, both in the men's and the ladies' race. We'll be back with more from the Eye in the Sky a little bit later. Thank you very much, Alan. As uh, we get our first shot of Caroline Vosman, who's uh, leading the way in the women's race. And uh, Helen, when you look at Caroline, she's looking very comfortable in the early stages, as you would expect. But she is somebody who's uh, showed her ability not once, not twice, but she's she's going for that uh, incredible feat. Uh, as, as she's on the brink of history here yeah, of doing a double-double, something that only Derek Price has done in 74 and 75, winning both two Oceans and Comrades uh, in the same year in consecutive years a remarkable achievement she stands on the brink of and she's very capable of this she's, she's an intelligent woman she's an intelligent runner and um, while she's made it known that she wants to win this race the record secondary um, the breaking six hours of secondary her main focus is to win this and only if um, something goes wrong and as somebody said it's actually caroline's race to lose she we we believe that she is a favorite but running closely behind her is shane bosman who was second in the last year's race um yolandi mclean another south african that uh, was lying in seventh position we've got kirianne marshall she was in ninth position and the first kwazulu natal runner for killian buta she's in um, eighth position so yeah, the goals are coming through and they're all about four minutes behind Caroline at this stage. The Mzabku Magabanda Sasino, Musa Korabanesa, the Makazi, the Karen Wasman, Araba Kumakuma, Kam Tasarunu, about two oceans, a marathon, Oma and George Puga, a Fesia Oshinga Marabana Sashpika change, Uambori, Hadi Fim Siko, Hadi Fim Siko, Munjingauri, Enena Mugusuava, and Eva Lindsay Perry, Basumas Ushuma, now the Mesco Sako, Negasam Siko, Negasas Kumbana Hab of Kajeba, Nahaba, and Babahone, and the Makazi, Karen Wasman, and Nochingamba, and Gachur Chinga, Umtakum Tabel of Kumandi. Alam Sesai Kakisa get hold of the couple of Raro Abashane Bosman. Well, Caroline Bosman continues to lead the way then in the women's race, and we managed to catch up with her just before her attempt at the 2016 Comrades. Caroline, you listen to the experts, the pundits, the analysts, and to all of them, there's one winner in the women's race this year, which is you. How do you balance that expectation with your confidence? Uh, I'm very flattered that everybody seems to think I'm the clear winner. I also think that Comrades is a very grueling race. It's 90 kilometers long and anything can happen on the day. You cannot predict beforehand who the winner is going to be. Uh, if I have a bad day, it might not be me. So I'm just going to go out and do the best I can and we'll see what happens. All right. Talk to us about the kind of preparation that's gone into that 89 kilometers on Sunday. There's been a lot of Ks, a lot of training. Um, and it hasn't been easy a lot of the time running on very sore tired legs but when you know that you've got such an important goal and you have such a big dream it's worth all the hours that you put into it so i've definitely done the hard work uh, the training has gone according to plan so i'm just hopeful that everything will pull together on race day so what is that race plan so I think that to go out over a target that's overly aggressive, to try and go sub six hours ago for a record this year, would be a little bit too ambitious and would just put extra pressure on me. So I'm going to try and go for something more conservative, which I think will hopefully allow me to still win the race. And if all goes according to plan and I'm feeling good, I'm not sure exactly what will happen, but hopefully it will be a win. That's what I'm hoping for. Well, are you somebody who places any value in sort of major historic milestones being achieved, like the one that you potentially could reach on, on Sunday? 
Um, you know, I don't really look at those big milestones and the stats and stuff like that. I just want to go out and run the best race that I can run. And if that means that I happen to win it, then that will be fantastic. And if I don't win it, I'll still be proud of myself for running the best race I can run, regardless of all the milestones that I might have missed. <laughs> So that's the views of uh, Carolyn Vossman, who is widely expected to claim victory in the women's race, but there is nearly 90 kilometres to tackle before she uh, could claim that victory, and certainly nothing is guaranteed when it comes to the uh, when it comes to either the men's or the women's race. That said, we've got the uh, Nedbank running manager uh, Nick Bester, nine-time gold medalist himself, on the line now. Nick, uh, can you tell us where exactly you are out on the course? Well, we're just uh, seconding the guys at the 70 to go mark, and we're uh, making our way back to the front. But there's a huge, a big pack, uh, pack coming through. But the two guys in the lead was way ahead of the race, and obviously, obviously they're going for the hot spot. But you have to finish the race, I mean, to claim the hot spot money. Uh, yes, yeah, and uh, we didn't saw any, any one of the women. I just was listening out to you, and, and, and I, I believe that Caroline Wasman is, is leading. But uh, all the main contenders were here. Everybody is, is, is watching each other. Uh, Claude Mishiwa, interesting, was watched, was, was uh, first of, of, of the main contenders. It looks like he's very, very dedicated and uh, ready to put all his, 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 his money in this race and try for the win. Yeah, just on the point of your athletes, though, uh, Nick, just uh, trailing in from behind uh, Vosman, about two minutes behind, I believe that uh, Shane Vosman is uh, is not doing too badly. She's uh, just off the shoulder then of Vosman. And uh, Sarah Bard is going along. Tell us about uh, some of the international uh, contingent you you have. Yeah, I think Sarah Bard uh, and Tasha Burke from Sweden is, 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 is going to be top five, according to me. They both got the marathon times of 43 and 244, respectively. And also 100 meter times of 720, uh, especially Sara Burke, who is the Swedish champion. She was also second in the world championship. Uh, Camilla Heron was the winner there, but uh, of course, Camilla Heron has to withdraw her sports injury. And uh, I think uh, Kasia Burke is the lady that can possibly top three today. You, you gave us a detail of uh, Claude Mashua, but uh, from, from, from your, your lads that you might have been chatting to this morning, who's feeling good? Who's feeling like the race could be theirs today from the Nedbank Running uh, Club? From the Nedbank Running Club, I also favour, you know, except that from Claude Mashua and, and uh, Ludwig Mamabal, I don't think Mike Fokorani will wander to Oceans this year. He was really focused uh, on this race the last three months. He was, and I think we can expect a good uh, performance from him, him today. And then there's outsiders, you know, there's a host of runners uh, that can do well today. And hopefully there will be a couple of new South African faces you know, making in the top 10. Uh, the international guys that came past me, Max King, for the best marathon of 213. He looks, uh, uh, he looks to relax. Jonas Beat was up there. Jonas is uh, the world 100 kilometer champion uh, of a best time of 6 hours and 22 minutes in the 100 kilometer. That faster than Bruce Ford I start. So the guys are here. We've got the contenders. Nick, just one thing. I know Ludwig Mamabolo lost his father a few months ago. I mean, as a motivating factor, has he been talking about that uh, in terms of approaching this, this 91st Comrades? Well, um, Ludwig, I think, uh, is running for himself today because he put a lot of pressure on himself. If we all heard him at the press conference, he was very, very, very uh, positive that he's going to win this race. But he's that kind of person. We must respect him. You know, that's how he operates. That's how he talks. And that's how he motivates himself. I think he will be there. He has a, 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 a point to prove. But it will be very interesting to see if we're going to have a double stuff African winner today, meaning that uh, repeat a win. And that uh, could be Gisele, Bongmusa Matembu, Claude Mishiwa, or Luki Mama Bola. If any one of those four athletes win, then it will be a long time since a South African managed to win two comments. Yeah, it would be a long time since uh, anybody who's managed to go back to back uh, in terms of South Africans as well. But uh, Bru uh, Nick Bester, thank you very much for your time and uh, enjoy catching up with your athletes out on the route. That's Nick Bester of uh, Nedbank Running Club who's been uh, been giving us updates on what's been happening. But his views early stages is saying that uh, Claude Mashua is looking good out on the route as well. So uh, Mike, uh, it's Muzim Zorbe in uh, shot who looks to be streaking out in front at the moment. Sutural Tebele, Muzim Zorbe, who were among the uh, early pace setters in this conference marathon.
but uh, it's it's over an hour and a half into the race now big t and things are uh, still going along swimmingly for the front runners but you can just sense now channing to nick as well that there are uh, a bunch of contenders particularly in the men's race that are starting together and might make you approach on this race as the kilometers tick on over <laughs> and um, I know uh, when you look at the uh, pace setter right here, I think uh, he's really comfortable. I think nobody is really uh, giving him that threat right now, I know. Yeah, Big T, it's, uh, it's interesting how a lot of these early leaders are from Durban or from Kuzilin Natal and novices at that. So interesting to see them up front. Obviously, the local runners want to get their time in front of their home crowd in the TV, but I'm really excited to welcome another NetBank runner to our commentary team, Ellie Greenwood. You're not running this year, unfortunately, so uh, maybe take us through the reasons why you're not running and your early views on the race. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm here in South Africa because I had the intention uh, to be out running there and uh, hopefully up at the front of the pack, but uh, came over with a little injury, having done a lot of uh, good training and was rather hopeful that some rest and rehab would help last week. But start of this week, I decided, no, if, uh, if I can't jog 30 minutes uh, pain-free at a five-minute kilometer, that's probably not going to get me uh, very far towards Durban. So uh, good to be on the other side of things and uh, watching the race unfold well the comrades races loss is definitely our commentary team's gain so uh, we saw pictures of caroline visman a little bit earlier going through line park there in about one hour eight minutes she's about two minutes ahead of shawnee bosman and uh, we know it's early days in the race and uh, you know what do you think of of her race so far and how she's going yeah i think uh the difficult thing for Caroline is uh, it's hard to run much slower and so you've got to run at a comfortable pace. I mean ideally you don't really want to get that much of a lead early on. It puts a lot of pressure on you, a lot of um, attention um, and I would have thought you'd prefer to be running a little closer to Shawnee but on the other hand how much do you hold back and run at a pace that doesn't feel right for you. Um, so if she can also get through fairly comfortably um, at halfway, be a good few minutes ahead. She knows she's got a little buffer and and then you can relax a little even if it goes a little wrong in the second half you can go hey i've got i've got a cushion there to even slow down so i think she's honestly just running her own race and she clearly knows what she's doing with the experience she's had uh, in the lead up to the comrades yeah we see pictures there of dardanelles which is of course the chicken farm and uh and I think Ellie's good point there. You have to run your own race. We spoke about that a little bit earlier, Big T. You can't really run off the athletes around you. Everybody's going, got a race plan going into this, especially, of course, the elite runners. And they need to stick to that and not respond maybe too much to the rest. Well, lucky enough, uh, I got time just to, uh, you know, get the information from the uh, Comrades Marathon uh, coach uh, who has just given tips to all the runners and all the athletes about uh, taking this race uh, in your own pace and making sure that you really hold on and hold back on yourself so that you don't have to be competing with other people because the way how you've been training it's supposed to be um, you know the way how you have to approach this race yeah, I mean, you've got to do uh, your own thing. I say, you know, running, yes, it becomes a race in the later miles. And I'm sure uh, Caroline and the women behind her, Charnay and the others, they will be uh, listening to the sidelines for the seconds, saying, OK, how far ahead is Caroline um, or, or where are they? Um, so they'll be very aware of that information, but you're not really making that affect your pace. It'd only be once you're uh, much, much further down the road that you start to say, OK, if someone's got a gap, can I start pushing a little harder? Can I start start working and really racing in a bit more head-to-head -head competition but even this early on in the race you've got to run a pace that feels right for yourself 
Well, there we see Mike Fukaroni, the two Oceans winner of this year. He's also going for the double, as Caroline Wissman is. Mike Oceans winning that uh, two Oceans. He's also the winner of the Soweto Marathon. And here he is in the chasing group. He's uh, a little bit behind the leader, leaders at the moment. But of course, Big T, as we've mentioned, those leaders, not necessarily the elite athletes. And, uh, you know, so these guys probably know more what they're doing but uh, before we get to you we're going to cross up to Alec Riddle our eye in the sky Alec what does it look like from up there Yes, um, we got some great gaps uh, opening up here. Umzi, Michael Mzorbo of South Coast Striders has really put the hammer down. I know South Coast uh, would be rejoicing at the moment, but whether he'll still be there come the halfway mark of the second half is the big test. Because if I look from the sky here, his stride is already laboring. He was striding out so nicely, but I think that those legs are starting to seize up at the pace he's running because he was three minutes ahead of Colin Perua of uh, Nedbank just a few moments ago and some five minutes 20 ahead of the main contenders. And what you'll find for the viewers at home, those main contenders will be happy to sit in a pack and to run at a pace that they feel comfortable. It's all about trying to pace yourself, not waste too much energy in the early stages. Guys like Gif Kelly, the defending champion, everybody will be watching his move if he wants to move a little bit they will follow if he wants to slow a little bit he will follow and here we've got um, Bernard Dandazi I think it is who uh, is the guy one of the guys chasing the front runner he's um, looking very good looking over his shoulder a little bit but we've got some uh, some hot action coming in the second half as we head towards Inchanga where the race will start developing and we'll see some of those main contenders coming to the fore Thanks, Alec. Obviously, Colin Perura, one of the favorites or one of the elites in this race. And he also mentioned Bernard Dandazi. Interestingly enough, Dandazi in picture now, he's entered this race three times. He hasn't finished one yet. So uh, for Bernard Dandazi, you know, difficult to say. He is one of the elite runners, but he's yet to finish the 90 kilometers. Of her days. These are the guys who can be able to set your pace. But um, the big question will be in, in terms of the, uh, making that uh, you know finish in the very same pace. I think it's quite difficult on them. Well, it's the same thing with Colin Perura. He's one of our top mar marathon runners or, that we know of, and uh, he has finished the comrades twice, he's entered twice, but he's only got a silver and a bull rowan. He hasn't managed to get into that under six hour mark. You know, not having a Wally Hayward or or obviously a gold medal. And speaking about Gertais, you know, there were lots of talks about him going for a four hour 45. And uh, obviously that's not going to happen, but we haven't seen him run out front like he usually as he looks like he's doing a bit more of a, of a conservative run. And uh, Caroline Wissman there in picture, still looking brilliantly as we'd expect this early into the race. But Ellie, it kind of shows that a good marathon doesn't necessarily translate into a good comrades. No, and it's interesting to sometimes look down at the marathon times, you know, after the fact, look at those gold medalists, silver medalists, and, and see what their marathon times are. And they're certainly not in consecutive order. Um, I think it can, uh, if you're a very fast marathoner, you can look at the paces of the comrades and think, well, that seems relatively easy. I should be able to do that. Um, but you need to learn um, how to really pace yourself. You can't run even splits at Comrades. There are hills there. And if you come from a road marathon background where you know you can just knock out a certain pace kilometer after kilometer, that's a little different here. Um, and of course, those hills and the distance uh, catch up on the legs. Yeah, well, one of those hills this year is a downhill, Polly Shorts, and that's behind these athletes. You know, Inchanga is probably the big one going up before you take the rise up to Buerta's Hill, and uh, the athletes will be getting close to that very soon. But uh, Caroline, this early in the race, she's looking comfortable. She's got a group of men surrounding her, as we're used to seeing with the women. And uh, Ellie, you mentioned the whole negative splits things. Maybe just explain to, to the viewers out there what are negative splits, and are they 
preferable at Comrades, especially on the down run? I think on the down run for sure. I mean, negative split where you're uh, aiming to run the second half of the race uh, faster than you do the first half, I think is definitely the goal. It's the way to get, and this is regardless, those at the front of the pack or the middle or the back, that is the way to get the best time out of the fitness that you have. Um, and obviously, if you look at the, the down run profile, I always say split it into two and literally look at the first half and it doesn't look very downhill. So even if you're on a flat course, you want to be picking it up and uh, um, on the down run, you've got a lot, lot more downhill in the second half. Um, but you need to be careful to hold back a little, but of course not too much, because then you will simply uh, run out of road. So pushing a little towards the end. Ikezo musi mesh kula balesa makazi ania ba Caroline West mane rukodi ya banga amanda ngaza zongori zosiro kadi vona la amfu makazi na kadi kiri masabu de bukuma fensi zosiro kadi ya banga endzori de mufu makazi ania half limbiru wa GHP ngachawe ana bala basa zino bubono kidi ba kamsi bana kadi mufu makazi kilemele skoza uhuka de basa la fensi kilemele skoza fura tisumbi uyangi makumo ni fensi ya uhuka de ba ania ania ba pana ngachana chipinga but I know I think you know she's does done you know justice to herself even though the coach would be saying she's putting much pressure on yourself well i'm sure she is i mean caroline here is in a very unique situation as we keep saying the race is hers to lose but the record might be hers to gain so does she go for the record and perhaps sacrifice the win or just go for the win and perhaps sacrifice the record it's such a difficult decision for her to make I think from what I've seen of uh, Caroline's personality in her racing as much as anything, I think the win, uh, the win would be really the prime focus. Um, she doesn't seem to be someone who takes too many risks. She's got confidence in that she knows what she can do, um, but she likes to sort of hold back a little and push towards the end. Um, I know she said uh, something about, you know, she'll only feel like a real comrades winner when she's got the back to back, a win on both the up and the downhill course. Um, and apparently she doesn't feel quite so confident on the downhill, so you wouldn't tell it from the images that we're seeing right now. Um, but I honestly think she will really be thinking, hey, this is my first uh, downhill run where I've got the real focus on me. Um, so I think she'll be thinking, let's go for that win and really not push too much. And she doesn't need to probably, certainly at this stage, um, simply because she is by looking like the far faster athlete of anyone out there. Well, feel free to tweet using those hashtags, Comrades2016, proudly essay, and just send us your tweets around the race. And it is so great to see that famous Caroline Wissman smile. She seems very relaxed at the moment, waving to the crowd, obviously sharing a few jokes with the runners around her. Uh, there was one story from uh, Two Oceans, in fact, where she was running, and then she realized halfway in that she had put her vest on the wrong way around. <laughs> So she actually stopped, <laughs> ran into the bushes, changed the vest, and she was the butt of everybody's jokes for the rest of the race around her just from wearing her vest the wrong way around. So that was quite funny. But she's like that. She's she's very calm, relaxed personality, likes having a chat with the people around her, especially early in the race. And obviously it's all going to get very, very serious later on, Big T. Well, what I like, even the comments that has been done by uh, Bruce of Fordyce in the city earlier in, in the morning, that, uh, you know, this is a time where you don't need to really look up and say, which area am I? Just to concentrate on the on, on the course uh, like they always do right now because uh, that can really put that concentration on you together up until maybe 50 i mean 50 kilometer kilometer mark yeah, I think the only trouble Caroline might have is she's got such a big pack around her. Um, and certainly I know in the past the Nergaleva twins have said, hey, give us a little space. Can we have a little bit of the road? Um, but as, again, a woman that I've been up towards the front, I do tell those men, like, can you move? Can you get out of the way? <laughs> um, and they're usually sorry, sorry, and pretty happy too. So if I was Caroline, I, of course, it will thin out and she will get more space further down the road. Um, but I'd definitely be looking at, uh, she seems relaxed, but I'd want... A bit more room around me there just so you're not thinking hey i'm going to trip over make sure you get your drinks all that kind of stuff well she does seem to be a little bit jostled there by some of the men but of course it's uh, about the athletes on the road winning but they're not the only people who can win today and remember that you can still win a thousand rand airtime with old mutual you can call loved ones chat with friends update your social media especially that twitter and visit www.worldofendurance.co.za to plan for greatness Simply answer the questions that you'll see on screen and you could be a winner. It's uh, that easy. So we'll get those questions on screen for you soon and you can win a thousand rand airtime from Old Mutual. Just watch out for that throughout the day for those airtime wins.
And uh, again, Caroline looking very, very easy this early in the race. Difficult to tell, of course. You'll find out at, at around both those hill, Fields Hill, if it is going to be your day. And then with Cowie's 17 kilometers to go at the end, then you really know whether it's going to be your day or not. And uh, I think Ellie has a lot to say about that. Two years ago, she came from so far behind to, to catch the Russian twins, especially there from that last, that Cowie's that last 17 kilometers. That's really where the race starts for, for started for you, really, two years ago. Yeah, I mean, I say of that experience, like the race doesn't finish until you get into the stadium at Durban. And so you really can't discount what might happen. And, you know, we're focusing on Caroline here, but who knows what's going on behind. There'll be some very other determined women there that say, you never know, and I'm going to keep going. So, uh, yeah, certainly uh, that final stretch is where the real racing goes. You know you don't have to hold anything back in the tank by then. You know what your legs are feeling. And if you've got a little bit left to go, then it's yeah, okay, now I'm going for a time, now I'm really pushing um, and wanting to get more than just a win or a position, um, but really making a mark. Keso Mosi Erika de Barapanda na wanakeza di mbamba iniaba ya Comrades Marathon 2016 hote hude manangawa wana ngachule chupinga Mosi wana na ovua utayla mbamba heino ni mbamba ine yotakuwa panakata dorobo iniaba ya Peter Marisbeck dorobo ine diwana msanda wa heli fundoni na bala kukwazulu natal idabe kwa utange no kata dorobo iniaba ya Deben and Hapo na Rabahone wana vele sabu kwa maraka dewa na keza mfumakazi na mbapanda ni Caroline Wozman fezi ya hafa studio kata dorobo na Mosi na mfumakazi ya neaba Elena Greenwood abonge Great Britain ane diani anera kwa Kwa usawa kanya na ye katwala na mwose ndi ngongwa ha o ambore hanga kono jene Kwa mwana mafubaro fezi ya ni mgidi mwa mbambe kurani wakuma Ane unafuru pelo kaye Ala bala mwana mwana mwafela ho oma mwoto ya konova Kachi mwajini chavu 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 dipu kuma Kwa mwana mwana keza Comrades Marathon 2016 Well that is Colin Perura there The third place man at the moment Running all by himself Very relaxed loping stride there Obviously just heading up a slight uphill And uh, Eli I'm not sure that Colin Perua looks very good at this stage. He looks a little bit tired already. It looks like an interesting running form, I would <laughs> say. It's, uh, I mean, he's making it almost look too easy to be in third place with that kind of running form. Uh, but there are all sorts of running forms out there. For example, uh, Jonas Bud from Sweden. He's come second before, and you look at him run, and it seems to work. But again, it looks very re relaxed and loping and uh, not what you typically expect. Um, but yeah, being up there in third position out on your own, maybe he's uh, beginning to think I went a little too hard, a little too soon. And maybe that pack behind him will uh, suck him up and hopefully he can just uh, hang on to that and feel a little bit more comfortable once you've got other runners right around you. He's already looking over his shoulder. Well, I think that is telling for Colin Perura is that closing pack. They are definitely getting closer to him. And uh, that might mean that he's not as comfortable as he would like to be at this stage of the race. Of course, early days here, the sun rising, as you can see there by the shadows of the athletes. They're riding right into that sun. And uh, that's where the sunglasses normally come in very, very handy. And uh, Colin Perura is still looking very, very comfortable here in the lead. So we're going up to Alec Riddle again. And Alec, you got some information from us there for, from up in the sky, Alec Riddle. Well, the sun is certainly rising. It's getting warmer, and you can sense that the pace amongst the, uh, the main contenders is starting to hot up a little bit. We're in the Cato Ridge area. There's still Muzi Michael Mzorbo, who's leading, and... Um but the gaps are coming down now. Last I spoke to you, it was over five minutes the leading contenders. And I'm not sure which bus is which and who's driving which bus. And that's very important for an athlete in this race. It's to choose your bus correctly. But listen to these gaps. At two minutes eight, we've got Colin Perura, who's looking a little bit tired. Just behind him, the first little bunch, probably a small little taxi, five athletes, two hours 20 behind the leader. Then we've got a minibus of about 11 athletes, two minutes 40 behind the leader. And then we've got a major bus, 20 to 30 athletes, three minutes 10 back of the leader. And it's a sea of green. And that means Nedbank are coming. They're about three minutes, three minutes 10 behind the leader. And Max Delete, Nedbank, you name it, all the contenders are starting to play their cards. And uh, shortly, I reckon in about the Inchanga area, we'll start to see some of these main contenders. And that's when the race is well and truly going to get exciting. Alec, does it seem to you that the Netbank team are running as a team? 
Okay, now we seem to have lost the communications there with Alec Riddle, but it does seem that NetBank team might be doing some team tactics here. Of course, the Ganga Din Trophy, something we haven't spoken about yet. That is a team trophy. And to qualify for that, you need to get four athletes across the finish line. And they all have to be South African. So the KPMG team have a problem there on the women's side because of Pauline de Riek, who's not a South African and, and yet one of their four strongest women. And, uh, but the Ganga Din throughout the years has been quite a big thing a big part of the comrades victory. Kaba and the Shadows and Gamanta Mato Kravas Zi Fukas Nusa Viva Hafa Ka Compress Marathon. This focus in Arava Sanawa, Cosmos or Ara Nana Feza, Nishka Square Tabatuba, Nakao, Nishka Ofeza, Udubana Sanakova, so Fezia, Basuma was already a Namiso Summit of Fukila Balula, Bofeza Vascori, but then gets a hundred thousand. Come with the Mugamu, while Africa, the Kabafuma Kazina Kavana, come by Hino Fezi. I think I'm quite a bit worried about the way how Parura is really taking his place is because, uh, you know, time to time, he's really looking at the back as to whether there's somebody who is really following him. Yeah, for sure, if you're looking behind and you don't even want to be doing that in the final straight, but at this stage, that's surely so. I mean, e either he's thinking, I'm worried they're catching them or come on, catch me. I don't want to be on my own and I've kind of regretted this decision that I've gone out on my own. Um, but I think he's more thinking like, uh oh, I'm going to get swallowed up. And then if he can't hang on to that pack, then you do drift back and back. And that's, you know, it's mentally demoralizing. And part of the comrades of a race this long is keeping the mental focus and keeping positive. That helps. Uh, the legs keep turning so uh, yeah I think he's feeling a little concerned that he's going to be dropping back and then you know with the men such a tight little group you're out of the top 10 very easily um, even if you have been in third well yeah that is the contrast of the men to the women's race this year in fact there's quite a lot of men that could win this race we've got six previous winners in it and uh, I think there, from a mental aspect that's where Caroline Vussman she can at the moment just relax do her own thing while well, these men are busy sizing each other up all the time and you've got your leaders out there Bernard Dundanti still out in front with Mzobe and uh, but that chasing group is getting interesting Charles Chiani is in there Fanny Machipa Colin Perura we've mentioned and then another few seconds behind we've got perhaps some of the bigger favorites Mike Fukaroni Marco Mambo Gertes has finally shown his face he's running with the with the leaders Tebo Joselo uh, Donald Matipa We've mentioned Ludwig Mamabolo. They're all starting to come together now, and these groups are, are fairly large of leading men. And uh, again, any one of them could start a breakaway at some stage. Did you say, Amanda? Ano, fancy ya mosi uchiambu anga zukwara. Jine zakodwa mbo Amanda zukwara. Shikostano ne zukwara cha poly shots. Rono fuka o kacho. Ne zukwara chine cha bacha inchanga. Ona kwa kacho zone zono skale. Havana zukwara cha botha hill. Havana zukwara chibizo of the fields hill. Kuniya man tavku mana zukwara chine cha bacha kau hill. Hez zukwara zote butari hanso. Zia pini zukwara zime ba ukuma. Na biyana pende zukwara kaka mbrez marathon. Na hone zukwa kana ne zukwa dubuya fano ka dropu niya ba. But I think I need to really put uh, uh, something ready uh, in terms of the uh, big five heels right here. And uh, I've heard, uh, uh, you know, uh, people talking about this. But I think Bruce Fordyce in the morning, he's really mentioned a couple of these, uh, you know, heels that uh, if if you can be able to pass these heels uh, with no injury, with nothing that is really uh, troubling you, you are there uh, for a take. Well, definitely on down run. Down run is really hard on your legs down those big five hills, uh, especially fields and both us at the end. But uh, just getting back to some of the favorites, one of the men that just popped up on our timing is Steven Muzingi. We weren't even sure that he was going to run three times winner of this race, but he is in there along with Bong Musa Mtembu and uh, Gift Kale a little bit further back last year's winner. Bong Musa Mtembu, of course, the last down run winner. And uh, he said he wants to... And yeah, remember he wants that to defend his title on this down run, yeah. And you remember that in the press conference, the uh, manager to Mjing said that he is not really sure as to whether he would be part of the uh, race, but then we said he might be playing some mind games right here. Well, for sure. I mean, the last thing you want as an athlete to be on a start line and everyone looking at you going, oh, you're the injured one that maybe hasn't done 100% training. Or are you going to struggle your way through and ultimately uh, maybe have to drop out part way? So uh, I'm surprised that his manager said that. Um, and so we yeah, was it a little stories and maybe was he just late in his flight in from Zimbabwe? Who knows? But uh, obviously he's up there and doing OK right now. Well, yeah, you see Ludwig Mamabolo, previous winner, just to his left as we look at them. Bogmusam Tembu, the defending downrun champion. And we will be back with him shortly just after this ad break. Hi, my name is Colleen de Rook, and I do believe or I do know that the winner for the 2016 Comrades Marathon will be from KPMG.
It's about that time where we award the best in local football. Catch the 2016 PSL Awards live on SABC1. The awards will kick off with the glitzy red carpet, followed by the honouring of the top performers in this PSL season. We reveal footballer of the season, players player of the season, goalkeeper, midfielder, top goal scorer, and all the cup competition winners. The awards will also feature some of the country's top music entertainers. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at sport at SABC. And for the latest updates, sabcsport.co.za. We'll bring you the 2016 PSL Awards live Monday the 30th of May at 8.30pm. Brought to you by SABC Sport for the love of the game. Well, you're back with the 2016 Comrades, the 91st edition of this iconic race. And uh, we're joined by an iconic figure in this race as well. Mr. Bruce Fordyce has taken his seat next to me. Bruce, welcome to the commentary box. Are you all yes, thoughts on the race so far? Uh, I, I phoned uh, John Hamlet, who's one of the, the, the coaches and managers of, of the team out there. And he said it's very fast. It's, in fact, coming from him, he said it's too fast. And he said these guys are all going to be slowing down a lot in the second half the way they're running at the moment. Well, that's interesting because his athlete, Gif Kalehe, is a little bit behind this, this top page. In fact, I think he's in the third or fourth group. He went through Cato Ridge in about 1 hour 54, um, 33, where some of the others are 30 or seconds or a minute ahead of him. One of those men, Bongmusam Tembu, who has really said he wants to defend his title this year. And uh, Eli, defending a downrun title is something you wanted to do this year. Unfortunately, you don't get that opportunity. Is the down run that different from the up run so that, you know, you get some people who are just better running down? Yeah, I think for sure. I mean, they really are two entirely different races, which uh, I was reminded of last year when I did the up run after uh, about a four year gap. And I thought, my goodness, I mean, it's not just the hills are in a different place. Uh, the temperature warms up in a different place. Um, and yeah, it's uh, you can be a good down and uphill runner. But I mean, on the down run, you're getting those downhills later on. Um, so if if you're already not too confident, not as skillful on the downhills, you're now having to do them on uh, tired legs as well. So they are very much different races. I know uh, Bung Musa was disappointed with his race last year, and that's often good uh, fuel to the fire um, added to wanting to defend that title. So I'm sure he's very, very motivated today. Well, there's another skilled downhill runner there in Ludwig Mamabolo, also a previous winner of this down run. And uh, we've caught up with him a little bit earlier. I'm going to vacate my seat. Solani Bongo is going to move in here. But let's hear from Ludwig Mamabolo first. I would prefer both, but most of the people they, they say that I'm a down run specialist. And I don't believe in that. Just that uh, on, the, on the day of the down run, I, 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 I've always done, not out of top two, I always run top two or win. So I guess the people have spoken. I'm a down run specialist. I have to accept as it is. I'm very, very strong in mind. Whatever happens into my life, I took it as a challenge, not as a problem. So I don't have anything that will hinder or that will take me set back, whether it's on the media or whatever. Uh, the most important thing now is the, is the 29th of, of May 2016. I'm, I'm really looking forward for that special day and I hope for the special results as well. My training has gone very, very well and I'm very happy with the progress that I've made so far. That's why I'm saying I'm, I'm singing out to the 29th because uh, I've done what is required as an athlete. I've done my training. It's only for me to go there and do the task in hand. Well, Team uh, this morning, Bruce, you're following me, eh? Yes, yes. yes uh, you uh, keep this... following me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spoke about him as uh, Mohammed Ali of uh, the Comrades, yeah, he's and uh, all, he's that's exactly what he said. Happy to uh, to uh, yeah, say how fast he's going to run, and he's got a, obviously got a, he's got a win going down. He's got a second place going down. At the moment, they're running along what's known as Harrison Flats. 
um, which is a rather dreary, I find it quite a dreary, tough part of the race. It's a little bit boring, not a lot of crowd support. And of course, because it's a down run, Harrison Flats is slightly uphill. Um, and uh, it's, it is a faster stretch. Um, and we've spoken to a couple of the coaches out there. They say the runners are going fast. It's also warming up. Uh, and they're starting to see the sweat glistening on the shoulders of some of these runners that are glistening on their faces. Um, it's going to be a warm race, not, not a blisteringly hot run like we had in 2013, but it is going to be a warm one and uh, they need to start drinking. And uh, I think the pace will start to uh, settle back a bit uh, after a few more kilometers. <laughs> Wamba Pambi, Yamatodana, Pena Tandazi, Totana and Gapa Guelia, Nasa Zimbabwe, Ukatike Fani Matsipa, Omsans Africa, Ukatike Balande, Lelane, Ugusa, Upeke Zanzi, Ogamadono, Jalon Jano. Well, Eri, you, you should be here, but uh, as we said before, it's a, it's a gain for our commentary team, but uh, a great loss indeed for the uh, uh, corporates. Yeah, well, I'm hoping this will be a good tactical learning for uh, next year and future years for back racing. It's always uh, interesting, and certainly um, I know there's a lot of spectators who watch comrades over the years and then eventually say, OK, and they bite the bullet and decide to do it. And it's a great thing to uh, watch a race, um, learn from the people, whether they're doing good or bad things, you see them struggling. So maybe I'll pick up some uh, tips from these lead guys here, uh, and it'll be interesting on this slightly flatter section where you can really hit into a bit more of a consistent pace uh, feel whether that is a pace that you can maintain for a while or is it like no okay I'm now pushed a little hard and maybe they uh, start splitting up just a little bit whereas on the hills it can be tempting to uh, almost be deceived and think you're not working quite as hard as you are Bruce, maybe just to take it a bit uh, on the track at the moment, uh, is this where your change in strategy or perhaps, uh, you know, trying to get your tricks together? Uh, no, no, I think this, uh, this stage of the race is where you just sit back and wait and I never enjoyed the first half of the Comrades Marathon in all the years that I was a contender because I just found it very, very uh, frustrating a lot. You have to wait a long time to start working out who is going to be a, who's going to be a, a contender that day. You've got to get beyond halfway. Um, they've still got quite a way to go to get to Drummond at halfway. And what I would be doing at this point is just sitting in, not doing any of the leading. It's not a great time in here to be doing the leading. Just sitting in at the back and uh, following and letting the other people do the thinking, make sure I get the odd drink, uh, that I'm getting fuel and uh, yeah, bide my time. That, that, that's what you need to be doing at this stage, just biding your time. Abona ke paya imva ke kilometer zis ngama shuma matata na nye thirty one kilometer club focus chonge kona si abona ke ngovu record uba uksuke la apo kuba pina space si bambile i four i five five eighteen fifty five kandi ke gogo china si ko five twenty forty nine. Wow, I mean five eighteen fifty five pace. So you can see already uh, they're going they're going very quickly, um, and I expect if it gets much warmer that their pace their pace will slow down. Babukele kama tota na nango, sisi zaka kuse. Kandi ke, saka spinde sisi titu ba kesi chonge ba msa basi na kesi chonge la idria zana le tu apagle timi tu yale commentary utigele tiga ma kongwane upa pezulu ambage ge chopa yena us chonge le zanzi noti ge kugus dele la kodwa ge us chonge le zanzi ngoba uli listo le tu pezulu. Dizi? Zb. Thank you very much, ZB and the team. At the moment, we are actually trying to catch uh, the first leading ladies that are looking at passing the police. And whenever we get to get to recognize a group of ladies that are here, we'll definitely be letting you know 
but what we can say the weather is very clear and very warm that's kwazulu natala for you and ho tlhomo le nteng mui ke hore fela etsa bo nnete ba hore ha u fetse ho ba ne ho bona hala e ka re a brane e be e nwe ya mabelo a leng gore a ratwa bila thaselwa e tla re ha mfela ha o se o bona ho ba le hona o arohana ba hore ke bo mang ba tlhleng ba tswelle pele ba rwetsa neng bo tla hlo bona hale mo hlomong wa jwa le tsena e sale ho seng a hulu o ruka sa hlalose a hore ke ba rwetsa na mafe be leng gore ba tla se ba isebeletse ha ntleng ba he ha mfela ha o wetsa hala tsena tso hlo ba ne ha mfela e ditjo di arohana ke di kilometer rentsa ne tseka ba ntse le shumele metso e supileng tse leng hore di tla hle di bontshe hore ba rwetsana ba arohana ho le ba ho kae ba fela ha jwale maemo a le ho di moke ya matle a tshabileng a fang matle tsa rona monyetla ba hore ba tle ba ipontsa hatse ba tle ba gabe jwale ka ha re tseba hore ha ho na mohlang comrade marathon e le ntle e le motate ho ba ne di kilometer tsa mashuma ro be di le metso me raro ne di fela ha ho na motho ya ka buang ka tsona hore e di e di tsi di theohele ho ba le hona monyetla ka ba hona ha o nyolosetsa ho ba le monyetla ta ba kholo gore di kilometer ke tsona tsa mashuma ro be di le metso e robong tsa e leng gore history le di memory ke bo holo ba bo hlokwa ba le bilo le na le holo la continent tse ka pala na ha ka nete mo teng ka bona matleta manga tha re bone ho re ka rena ka mara di kilometer tsa ka bantse mashume a mabedi mo teng o tla be mbarwe tsana ba semba a puhile o so bona hala ho wa kae ke hona mo kitla o fa mmo yo rena tse o ka di level la ke dife back to you team dit before Sugulege, Sugulege, Wambe, Sisi, you spoke about the you spoke about the weather um, up in the sky, and uh, we we were just watching with uh, Bruce Fordyce here. Um, after the 31 kilometer mark, we saw that uh, in the previous uh, Comrade Marathon it was about uh, 5:20, but now this guy seems to be the pace seems to be uh, quite high. Do you think they can maintain that pace? Samuka gela ke utigeledi. We are safe atiki. Yes, ZP. We were say, we I was asking about the the pace at the moment. After 31 k, um, the 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 the, the, the record is 5:20 at uh, 32. But at the moment, they went past it at 5:18, which is quite a very fast pace. Do you think they can maintain that pace? I think as usual that be when when we do in the down run it's more easier when they start because it goes down more easier but uh, like like I said we'll probably check uh, maybe after 40 k's where we'll be getting the hills and trying to see if the legs could still carry them remember that uh, with with the with the race going to Devon from Peter Murray's back most of the time it looks like it's easier if, most of the time when when it starts but at the end of the day we look at after 40 k to see if the ladies can still carry the legs or the legs can still carry the ladies to go to Devon Thank you so much Tigele di Makongwane se za finda skuele kuye ekwambeni kwexesha se za be sphinde simbambe ka kuhle ngoba ke ukuyo ichopha ejonge pha ezansi yena nguye lo uyasibona se sentshanga ngoku Bruce Yeah they're running they they're running uh, still at a very steady pace they're about to uh, take the left turn uh, towards the approaches of Inchanga one of the great uh, major hills of the uh, down run and um, they will in a few kilometers go past the very emotional very moving Entebbeni school for the disabled um, still a long way to go with uh, I think everybody now starting to prepare themselves for Inchunga which is a, a serious uh, long uphill pull the thing about Harrison Flats as well is um, people have a feeling because it is one of the, I think that and the Pine Town Flats are the, probably the two areas in the Comrades Marathon where it doesn't seem like it's going up or down and uh, people can get carried away and uh, just feel they can stride out, etc. But it is too early, and I think Bruce has said that. We've heard that the guys are running too quickly. The predicted time for maybe the first 100 guys already is under five and a half. And, uh, yeah, that doesn't sort of all go well if you're kind of trying to run a race with uh, hanging and do negative splits. So um, fast pace for the men. And then we've just had weird that the woman, we've had uh, two women pass the 31 and a half kilometers um, Mark and Caroline Wardsman has picked up her pace. She was averaging uh, 
four eleven for the first sixteen, and she's dropped that down to four six. So uh, that's quite a sign of confidence. But uh, smart runner. Let's hope she uh, knows what she's doing. But she's got a long way to go. Bruce. Uh, she's been smiling most of the way, so she, she looks as if she's enjoying herself still. Um, yeah, she's she's. I think she's just running a pace that she's comfortable with, and really probably not that concerned about what the other ladies are doing just getting into her own comfortable pace and saying to herself okay I can do this for the rest of the morning and uh, right, right behind uh, Charmaine uh, um, I mean Caroline just lying in third position is Shane Bosman and she's she's two and a half minutes behind Caroline at the 31 and a half kilometer mark and I, I think that is quite a good place to be. Um, it's a little bit, it's within her ability. And should something happen to the runner up front, Shane hopefully could be in the position to sort of just make up that gap. Yes, Helen, two and a half minutes is, that's a, that's a sensible gap. Uh, let Caroline go out there and lead. Um, you're still at two and a half minutes within range and you can close that very quickly if you have to. And of course the last down run we saw Ellie close an enormous gap at the end and then turn it into a, a four minute lead. So um, where Shanae is sitting is that, that, that's a sensible, uh, a sensible gap to have at this stage. Well, Jangobo Bona Paya in Changa Park Village, Gulapo Sukoyo. Bawa yang kalah selain adalah pihak tali ni kuen sela, abu kebatan dan uncon jela. Besen zaka kuasa si abu na power si si bengli be isvato zase Afrika. Kangelena lama tota na kumpul lekaro kubake askai kribi Afrika month na lapa gue si PC si amba na yang kono stopo yolondo babu na besen zaka kono stopo kuake ungaliba lu baga loko sikuyo indah u iban bilayo i culture i case ten abandu abazeng ayo kakulu ke culture iye Afrika neom zans Afrika si peti komrez marathon. Ka 2016 apa ku SAPC u kanti kesi tseli nawe sisa zindokba sisa ku amba kunye kute kuyo pela umikti mpinche ngoko beschilo satike noko inga tatandu toma la matota nawe male kakako shepa quite relaxed take two kia matota na sisa kangele la pa chonge pezu lunge li solo kozi Kumbule ubake sina madota na ukandi kesina wa nama nene kazi. Chengo kubu vile o Caroline Wosna nguye ke opete umtu imbu kandi ke Ushanei Bosma nguye ke obambe indawo ESB ni. Well, maybe you can tell us more about Inchanga Park Village, Bruce Fordyce. Well, yes, they're going to go past uh, Intimbeni School for the Disabled, where uh, it's very emotional, wonderful support. There are lots of disabled children in, in wheelchairs cheering you on, uh, dancing. The, they've had a lot of international visitors who've been there to see them the last few days, making donations there. And it's one of the highlights of, of the uh, Comrades Up and Down Run. But shortly afterwards, the runners will go into Inchanga Hill. And Inchanga is a sort of a four-sided hill, if I can describe it as that. You climb up for about three and a half kilometers, solid climb up to a, a very high point of the race. And then you drop down the other side. So down the back of Inchanga, on the up run, of course, it's, a, it's an uphill climb. You drop down to Drummond at halfway. And on your way down, you can hear the music. You can hear the loud hailers and the, and the, the excitement at halfway. But you're not at halfway yet. Uh, and then, of course, you go through halfway and you go up the other side of Inchanga, which is up towards Botha's Hill Village. So this is a very critical part of the race now. This is a part of the race where you are either going to be climbing steeply or dropping steeply. And it's the leg damage uh, that occurs now that is going to have an influence over how you run in the second half of the race. We'll be back after the break. Hi, my name is Carl Berger, and I believe you're the winner of the 2016 Comrades out of the TomTom Tom team. I think that um, KPMG has a really good chance of taking the win on Sunday. Ik is Janai Bosman. I think the winner van die jaarse Comrades gaan van die netbank team kom.
smart kids say smart things. Fana, what do vitamins make you? Strong and fit and tough. Baby, where does milk come from? I'm the supermarket, Mom. <laughs> Just joking. From a cow. No, no, what a life culture. It's the magic that turns the milk into yogurt. Why does mommy give you a smart snack? Because I'm smart. Yogurt is made with milk and live cultures. Nutri-Day is a thick, creamy, yummy smart snack. What are you doing, Mum? I want to be as smart as you. Nutri-Day yogurt. Say yes to the smart snack. Sikuwa mkele kwa kona ke mbukele hapo ekaya Sikuwa mbele kanoko hii Comrades Marathon Klonyaka ka 2016 Hii down run kele na sipeteyo Sikuwa ngape mkungu ndovu Isiza ete kwini Dinaye Bruce Forda isi kale nkwa mkandi Kele koni kalao Helen na ye Usikuwa mbele hii mikri ndi sipete kakutleka kula hapa Helen well it's um It's been uh, quite some time now Two hours and uh, around 19 minutes And uh, uh, I think this is where now we should start uh, seeing things happen. Well, I, I think uh, in the women's race, we've seen Caroline go out there with, uh, you know, a lot of confidence. I think she's running well. She's picking up the pace. And uh, squeezed in between Caroline and Charnay is uh, a, an athlete who's established herself in the marathon distance from Ethiopia, uh, Amoche Kakisa. Now, she's she runs a lot. She's raced many races. She's met with a lot of success. Um, She's just uh, also running on a 4.11 pace, but it will be interesting to see if she can maintain that pace over the comrades' uh, distance. I uh, think she is more suited to the shorter distance, but in this race, it's quite open other than what we've all put our money on, Caroline. So let, let, let's sort of just wait and see. Well, Bruce, we spoke about Caroline this morning when we were live on television um, about her, he, he, that... Uh, would she be going for the record or would she just go for a win? Um, I'm hoping that she's going to be going just for the win. And when I bumped into her at the free race expo a couple of days ago, she said, Bruce, I just, uh, first of all, I want to win. And any record is a bonus. And of course, the record sits with uh, Frith van der Merwe since 1989, and it is a truly spectacular time. Five hours, 54 minutes. We've only had three women, I believe, who've ever gone under six hours. Tatiana Zakova did it. Um, and Anne Trayson did it. So, uh, you know, Frith has done it. You can see our race leader now is climbing in Changa. So I, I cannot overemphasize to runners and to viewers that in Changa is one of the brutal hills. It's what we call a registered hill in the down run. And this hill is about three and a half kilometers long, lots of bends, some straight bits, and there's one thing that doesn't change, it goes up. There's no, there's no flat bit, you climb solidly. And the back markers and the slower runners later on when they get there, this is where they're gonna be taking their first seriously long walks. And again, they will be saying to themselves, novices will be saying to themselves, I thought we were doing the down run. We're the downhills. We're running uphill and they're gonna be, climb this is a solid climb to a very high point at the, at the top of Inchanga. Uh, and you can see already our race leader's pace is markedly slowed because he's climbing and that's still great running for going up in Changa. It's one of those hills that people don't really tell you about for some reason and on a down run I found it a very testing part of the race uh, and what you have to do here is climb it steadily but hold back. You should be running at a pace where you could chat to somebody next to you. You should be able to ru be running at conversational pace. If you cannot talk to somebody next to you who is running next to you then you're going too fast and you're too close to the red line. And so now we've got, what we're going to watch is our race leader and the pursuing packs making their way steadily to the top of this monster hill. And you can see the cutting. You can see on our television screen the cutting and the road going up to the top of Inchanga. And that's where you have to climb. And, uh, of course, getting hotter, getting warmer on your way up there to the top. And the uh, other aspect now, the runners have had pretty much uh, roadside support the whole way. Now, the access for vehicles into this area just becomes a little bit of challenging. You really need to know the, the back roads, etc. So suddenly you've had all these spectators cheering you on and it just, it's a bit quiet. You really, this guy out front's got to start feeling quite alone. Yes, Helen, there are very little spectator support going up there. At the top, there's a big ta a seconding table with everything that you that you need, drinks, food, etc., and a big enthusiastic crowd of people. And I have to tell you, um, 
that some of the volunteers and seconds and people who help on this Comrades Road, it's an amazing experience. Some of them will have got there last night and camped there and had a braai and maybe had a few glasses of wine and had a, had, a, had a little bit of celebration and then they wake up this morning and now they're waiting for the runners and it's very exciting because here come the first runners. But hours later, they'll still be working very hard looking after the tail enders. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a truly a, a, a great job, an exciting one, but uh, it's, a, it's a major commitment. And here come our leaders, they're going up in Changa, uh, one of the major registered hills of the race, uh, and one of the great hills of the Comrades Marathon. I mean, when you talk to people uh, who come from overseas, they say the names are so exciting. You know, Polly Shorts, 45th Cutting, uh, Cowies Hill, but in Changa is one of those names that just really for them is, it, it, it's very emotive and, and, and is a, a hill that they really want to run but to conquer. Uh, and you can see as you look at, as we look at our TV screen, uh, that the, 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 the leaders are slow, you know, they're going steadily but slowly up this hill. It's, it's, a, it's a tough hill. Yeah. Choge Kala from Fondeno Helen no Bruce, we have gone to Kaum to Imbi Bobabini, Stazela Genge in Changa village, Apo Bonagala Ba is in Zienze Kakona, Kobake Yokonda in Dobanoko, Balilo, Lopa, Kubabanda, Bako, Kakulu, Bainda, or Namasati, Apo Gonyo, Kausi, Apo. Bruce, maybe you could just. Uh, Tell us again, I know you did uh, speak about this in the morning, This uh, just just explain this. It's a down run, but then you keep saying you're running up. You know, maybe a, a little bit of confusion for some people who don't understand this. It's a down run, so ultimately you will have gone from the Highfield to Peter Maritzburg to the Indian Ocean, and you will have lost a lot of height. But on the way, you climb some very serious mountains, and I'm saying the word mountain, uh, you know, meaning it because you're going to climb some serious mountains and it's 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 a tough tough uphill battle So it seems until you get to both as hill uh, and that's after 55 k's of running and when you get there You are only a few meters lower than the highest point of the race, which was Umlas Road uh, Shortly after the start of the race Helen, I see you nodding <laughs> Well, I'm just I'm just intrigued by the companions, the small companions running on the side of the road. Like these runners will be the, the runners, the registered runners will be these youngsters heroes. And there's uh, we sort of just on the on the, down in the valley, we'll get a better view when we're at Drummond. There is a number of very successful athletes have grown up in that valley, um, challenging conditions, and they've come and made quite a success of their their life as an athlete. William Tolo spent a lot of time growing up in that area, and uh, we all know. Wally, Willie is one of South Africa's most accomplished athletes and it's just great this little run up the hill next to these athletes they will be our future comrades runners well this is the chasing pack Bruce, there you go. Yes, and many kilometers back. Here we are back at the chicken farms at a place called 10 Mile Subway. So these runners have done about 18 kilometers or so from the start. And that's how, how far back they are. Still in good spirits, still smiling. You're seeing the odd person walking already. Uh, the backbone of comrades here. Um, the real spirit of comrades back here. And you can see already the enormous distance that the leaders have opened up on these runners. Well, uh, there's lots of components that make up this race. We've got our we've got our leaders in the front, but really, it's these people you've got to take your hat off to because. Um, They've got themselves off the couch, they've out here, they've registered, they've run their qualifying time, they've lined up today, and they've reached the sort of 18 kilometers. And uh, they'll have met somebody, they'll be chatting, they'll be enjoying their day, they'll find out, you know, asking the people around them, what's your name, where you're from, and uh, there'll be overseas athletes, local athletes, and uh, it, they'll just be enjoying themselves, but they won't be so smiley when they kind of come when they've passed halfway. So they must just enjoy this time and make the most of it. And they are not lonely, Bruce, like uh, the leading pack. Well, they're not lonely now, but later on when they get to Pine Town, you can be surrounded by just as many runners as this, and you will be completely alone because you have to get yourself through to the finish. And so what I have been saying, I do a lot of uh, comrades' talks, I get a lot of advice. I say to these runners, I'm glad to see it. What you have to promise yourself. 
yourself is that everything you do on race morning will be a step towards the finish. The ones who don't make that final dreadful cutoff gun, in many cases, it's not that they got exhausted, it's not that they were cramping or injured, it's that they managed their time badly. And so the commitment to yourself is once you can get going, no problem with walking, but everything I will do today will be a step towards Durban so that I make sure that I will get my finishers medal. And the other thing that many of these runners will have to get through their heads is that they started a couple of hours ago in the dark. And when they get to Durban, it will be getting dark again when they finish. They are out there for the whole day. Nanzo ke kulapho ke sibabona khona apha kanye kulena indawo iliso lijonge okokhozi apho ke bangena abantu bokuba babentyontyela athechuwa amadodana kubaka lokho ngokwa kusekho la crowd besikubonisa yona i crowd yona isenga semva kodwa ke amadoda agaba dula bheka phambili Yorezimbini ngokwa mashumi mabini kambe ke Two and a half hours, so let's see. Be local, go with Alex and go so good. That was your corner, get gambe Caroline Guagunege Nenswakazi and Gasemva, Sizal Pindake, Singogole Ngabo, Sive, Wa Ingaba Umtum Wabo Uamba Ganjanina Matota and Atik Kukabu Shapaya. Well, I mean, Bruce, we've got some big names in that bunch, but, um, you know, 50 kilometers to go. We, uh, they've all, they're all experienced runners. We've got Marco Mamba, a, a, a two oceans winner who uh, I think uh, thinks he can go the distance here. Um, he, 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 if his legs uh, aren't uh, going to give him too much trouble <laughs> from Cowie's Hill, it'll be, an, it'll be a very, very interesting test because he is an extremely accomplished athlete. Yeah, they're drawing to, they're getting towards the top of Inchanga now, but what's amazing is they've got 50 kilometers to go. Earlier this year, these guys will have run 50 kilometer races, like the Omdi Dam race or 56 kilometer two oceans race, and they would be saying to themselves now, if I had felt like this at the start of a 50k race, I wouldn't have started running. And you suddenly realize you have an ultra ahead of you with some seriously big hills. There you go, 48 to go. They're getting to the top of Inchanga. They're going to go past a very enthusiastic and busy seconding table where they'll be able to get drinks and other things that possibly they're not getting from their coaches and team managers. And then they're going to plummet down into Drummond at halfway. And we're going to get a pretty shrewd idea of the finishing time by the time they go, when they go through halfway, we'll get a, a, a pretty good idea because the winner will run a slightly faster second half. That's the, the real art of running the down run, is to be able to run what we call negative splits and to run a second half that's faster than your first half. So here they are, at, more or less at the top now. Uh, and about to start down. And of course, you always, you always get over enthusiastic about halfway uh, when you're running the Comrades Marathon because you can hear halfway long before you get there. There's loud music, there's cr the crowd, there's enthusiastic cheering from down below you, and there's the voice and of, the, uh, of the person calling the race at halfway, uh, but you still have to get down there. And it's, it is a serious descent now. Um, which the danger on your way down is that you take it too fast and you pound your legs, you pound particularly your quadricep muscles and you need those muscles to be strong and uh, feeling as little pain as possible for the major, major downhills that come in many kilometers time in the second half of the race. And the other attractive for, for this bunch is that there's a, another hot spot at halfway and that is actually the worst thing you can have because if they start to race each other down in Changa, which has 13 little corners and twists and turns to get to that hot spot they'll pay the price later so it's um, it's going to be difficult for that bunch to just see how how they handle that down of Nchanga. Yeah, yes, well, and go back again. If you say so, I'm not allowed. Helen, can you know, Bruce, you can take it. We're going to be able to keep our tweets. Zako Instagram now. We are seven. So, we're going to make a key to let's see. Um, for the local company, we're going to get an event. We're going to go to strong level fire confirmation. Caroline was from we're going to also have a family. We're going to take a go. We're going to make a case. Well, um, a few words from you, Helen. Then uh, 20 local will be joining the commentary team. Well, I think with um, Caroline sort of really uh, stamping her authority on this race and picking up um, her, her pace, which uh, I think might indicate that uh, 
She feels confident that she'll get the win. Possibly she thinks, well, let me see if I can also get that uh, sub six hours, um, which is a which is a which is a tall order. But we all know what a capable athlete that uh, she is. We've got um, a mixed bag. We've got Yolanda McLean in and Kerry Ann Marshall, South Africans. Um, also in the top 10 and amongst them we've got uh, Kachisa Berg she's uh, a Swedish girl we've got Sarah Bard running and uh, there's an English girl here Carla Molinaro that um, we we don't know too much about but she's held on to that fourth position for quite some time well, I'll tell you, things are certainly eating up all uh, around the races. We just go back to the women's race very briefly. It looks like uh, the, the women are heading towards Nchunga right now. It's uh, Carolyn Busman who's still leading the way. But uh, she continues to impress, but she's starting to run a little quicker already. She was going 4.11 in the opening 15, 16 kilometers. She's starting to do 4.06s now. So her time is improving already, even before she's hit the uh, downhill section of the race. So maybe signs that she's uh, in really good shape for, for today's win and is going to blow any opposition that she has or uh, any other contenders out of the water before they even really get into the race, because she's taken this uh, race by by the uh, scruff of the neck, so to speak, is Caroline Busman leading from the front. Now we've got the uh, second place women. This is Kakisa, the uh, Ethiopian athlete who's, uh, who's coming to uh, Inchanga right now. So Caroline Busman continues to lead the way, but uh, it looked like she went through Inchanga about... Oh, just getting towards Inchanga. It looked like uh, Caroline Busman was Heading up by a good couple of minutes, although Alentese Kakisa is not looking, she's she's still looking pretty fresh as well as uh, Kakisa, very strong athlete as well. Shane Bosman, no, no signs of her just yet, but we do know that she's not too far off the pace. Oh, there is Shane Bosman as she comes into shot. Shane Bosman, who's uh, third place overall, the 40-year-old South African who's hoping for another solid finish in... Uh, the Comrades Marathon. Well, I think, and uh, there's a big following. Um, Colleen de Rook, she's she's out here running Comrades for the first time, and um, at the age of 52, we're not expecting her to win this race, but uh, she's a KwaZulu Natal girl, and I think that she's going to get unbelievable support because when she was based and lived in Durban, she was really one of the world's best athletes. She's she's competed at. Um, four Olympics and whilst there's uh, no money on her to win she we're hoping she can run around 620 630 uh, just such a talented uh, runner and it's just actually great that she's come back to try and test herself on this life it's been a lifelong desire for her to come and run comrades this is uh, Caroline Busman leading the way. We'll go, go back to the men in a moment because they'll be hitting halfway in uh, a short while. There's also going to be a cutoff at Lion Park uh, happening at two hours 40 into the race. But uh, well, you don't have to be taking part in the race to be a winner in this year's Comrades Marathon. That's right, Old Mutual giving you the chance to be one of the lucky winners who will win 1,000 Rand airtime each. Simply answer the question on your screen and you could be a winner just like that. Easy question for you. What can you do with uh, www.worldofendurance.co.za, A, B or C? You SMS Old Mutual in your answer to 34068. Your opportunity to be a winner. So uh, winners out on the road, but winners at home as well. Well, Bruce Fordyce, Dwayne DeLocker and Mike Finch joining us in commentary as uh, we continue coverage of the 2016 Comrades Marathon. And we uh, encourage you to get involved on social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram or indeed uh, any other social media platform. Hashtag Comrades 2016. Hashtag Comrades 2016. And uh, yeah, I've had a couple of questions about the Russians. Why no Russians? Why no Russians? Just a reminder, of course, no Russian athletes allowed to compete on the international stage currently, owing to the uh, doping uh, allegations that have seen them banned by the IAAF. So no Russian athletes are in uh, the field in the uh, elite competition here. 
in the uh, 2016 Comrades Marathon. So we'll go back to the men in a moment because they're approaching halfway and all sorts happening in the uh, men's race, but uh, women continuing to impress as well. So we're going to head back to the men in just uh, a moment now because they are heading through halfway. So Comrades Marathon action continues to see uh, Freddy Kumalo walking at Cato Ridge uh, a short while ago. That's uh, a little bit of a disappointment for those who might have been following. Uh, Kumalo might have been. Uh, a little more expected of uh, Kumalo, of course. So we'll continue to bring you uh, views from Digaledi Mokwana and Alec Riddle from the Eye in the Sky. They're both up in helicopters uh, for today's race. But the uh, men will be going through halfway any moment now, and there'll be a cutoff at Lion Park as well. OK, this is uh, Dandazi again, the uh, leading man who continues to uh, edge out in front. And uh, Mike Finch, Dandazi, he's, he's, uh, he hit the uh, lead fairly early on, and he's continuing to press along the way on this down run, but still not quite on the, uh, the down section, as it were, just yet. Yeah, it's a very interesting part of the course, this, because it is a very steep downhill down in Chang'e, and obviously the temptation is to kind of just let the, the legs go and uh, you accelerate down, but it really does hurt the legs, and I'm sure Bruce will confirm this. One of those hills they never talk about at the Comrades Marathon is the one up towards Elveston, and uh, as they hit Drummond and they go through halfway, then they start climbing up again, and then there's this really, really steep hill towards Elveston, and often the top athletes, when they're all together, are really battling to, to make it up that Elveston hill before they hit both his hills. So, you know, this is the, this is the glory days for the guys going for the, the hot spots and trying to get through halfway first. But you can almost guarantee that Dandaza is going to be probably walking within 100 meters of that uh, halfway mark and hanging on for that silver medal. Bruce, in terms of the uh, the, the hot spots, as we look at the uh, leader at the moment, Bernard Dandazi of Zimbabwe, uh, many many of the elite runners don't fancy the hot spots, as, as we've seen in, in, in fact in marathons but also in cycling races sometimes disrupts the uh, the race a little how did you feel about that you know i always like creative ideas so i'm not going i'm, I'm you know my judgment's still out but i'm at the moment i'm not a big fan because it's causing confusion to uh, I, I think we we need this is the comrades marathon i want to see people run the comrades not running hot spots so uh, it might be just slightly uh, you know confusing the tactics that's that's what i'm saying and uh, we're going through halfway in 240 you know that's that's it's quick very quick. Just wonder if uh, Bernard Dandazi is going to be keeping up this sort of pace. There are there are a group of more fancied runners that are uh, tucking in behind him that are that are looking for a victory. Bung Musum Tembo has been out on the road. Mike Fukuroni not too far behind. Ludwig Mababolo, uh, Nick Bester was saying that Claude Mashiwa looking good as well. But uh, Bernard Dandazi continues to lead the way in the early stages. But I think that gap just might be starting to close as well. This is the sort of section of the race where we separate uh, the men from the boys, proverbially speaking. Well, I can tell you that Danzazi, yeah, Bruce, I'm sure he agrees with me, and I was virtually on his last legs yeah. as he's getting towards the finish here. And I think we're going to see him literally cross that finishing line walk straight away and then just try and recover so he has to break a silver medal to get the hotspot prize and that's a key part of it because in the old days you could literally go through a hotspot and you just had to finish so the guys could walk the second half but they have to break a silver and on tired exhausted legs it's not so easy so he might have got the hotspot through halfway in a reasonably fast time but uh, whether he can break the silver we'll only find out later in the day so yeah. that's a that's a 242 for 45 k's of running uh, and uh, with some major hills in it and of course as soon as you go out of drummond because it's a down run you go straight uphill again <laughs> so you go straight uphill for the next six to eight k's with some breaks in it uh, again another serious climb out of drummond uh, it's, uh, drummond almost sits in a little bowl and you have to drop down into that bowl and then work your way out of it so he's almost immediately as he goes past the halfway mark he will start climbing and probably walking. And there's nothing wrong with walking, nothing wrong with walking. Caroline Wussman's always said that walking has been part of the, uh, the, the, the game plan, part of the tactics as, uh, as she's approached the race. And many athletes have uh, opted to, 
to uh, to walk in certain areas. And how many athletes uh, over the over the years have uh, showed on a couple of big climbs that walking might in fact be the smarter option? But, uh, Remember the good old days of uh, Bruce Fordyce as a, as a young VIT student who was tackling this race. Uh, walking, was it frowned upon or was it encouraged in, in certain areas? Uh, I didn't walk. You never I walked. Walked. I you walked shuffled from, the entire way. I walked way. from the finish line to my club tent <laughs> to go and meet my mates and my family. But uh, Caroline proved me wrong last year, so uh, perhaps I might have done better if I'd done a little, a little bit of walking. Of course, instead of walking up the hills, we could also have the Thompson Magawana approach, which was the, uh, the, the zigzag run. Well, I mean, it is a very controversial point because, as, as Caroline Vosman proved last year, that you can be very competitive and walk the hills. But it is about it's about strategy. It's about saving your muscles. So if you're running the whole way, you're really. And there we have our leader walking at the moment, as we <laughs> suspected was going to happen. He was absolutely exhausted, and he immediately loses the lead as he goes through halfway. Yeah, so Dan yeah. he just falling off the pace at the moment. This, uh, uh, and the lead pack going through halfway, I, th I would estimate uh, probably around about 243, 244. Um, that's that's not too bad. Two, 243, 244, that's not too bad. Double that and you get an idea. And our race leader could take a couple of minutes off that as well. So at the moment they are you know, on course for a sub 530 and that's... Uh, Great time for the down run. You know what's really incredible? You see that name of Cat Taste right in there with his front bench. Now, of course, we've seen him in the past years um, kind of uh, going out so hard at the start and then collapsing as he heads down both his hill and sort of 60 k's in. But this is the first year we've seen at the Comrades Marathon really kind of uh, taking it much more conservatively. And at the press conference uh, earlier this week, um, I asked his team manager, you know, if he was able to control himself and not do these wild, crazy um, surges at the start, could he be a factor in the race? and certainly he's being more conservative maybe we might see a, a resurgence of cat taste today he is certainly a class athlete and somebody that uh, I think is very capable of giving the right tactics he, he certainly does have the class and I think finally maybe after three attempts and sticking with the comrades uh, motto the comrades has finally humbled him and uh, he's, he's running it as you should conservatively well, it looks like uh, Dinka and Fokoroni were the two who have just uh, overtaken Dandazi at the start. But we've got Alec Riddle, eye in the sky, as we've got Gartes and shot for just a moment. Alec Riddle, uh, the Bonitas eye in the sky. Yeah, well, we've just passed through the halfway mark. We had a fantastic tussle up and down in Changa between the leader who was racing for the lead at the uh, halfway mark at Drummond and, of course, the big incentive uh, for the hotspot. It was like a yo-yo as he moved, uh, as they tried to close in on him, and he tried to hang on. You can see how the wheels came off shortly after the halfway mark, and he started walking. Now we're starting to see another Zimbabwean, the likes of Mike Fokoroni, winner of the Two Oceans, moving into contention. Of course, 167 Zimbabwean athletes here, and uh, Colin Colgrave gave me that information. He's running his 18th. He's from Harare Athletics Club. They've got 35 athletes. So massive Zimbabwean contingent here. Zimbabweans are a great threat in the Comrades and the Two Oceans. But for the last four years, it's been a South African winner. Ludwig, Claude, Tembu, and of course, Gift. And uh, the South African public will be looking for one of these athletes to come through. We've seen great excitement from the air here as the kids have run up from the villages towards the main road to support these, uh, these great athletes coming through. And there's lots of breaking up in the bunches happening now. So this is where the race really starts. I heard Bruce Fordyce say earlier, in Changa is the first softener, the first really big hill. There's another big climb coming as they come out of uh, halfway up to uh, Alveston. And this is where the race is going to start taking place right now. This is where the leaders will start playing their hand. We'll see who's got the aces over the next 40 or so kilometers. Well, thank you very much, Alec Riddle. Uh, eye in the sky, the Bonitas, eye in the sky. But uh, we saw a moment ago, though, as uh, Alec was talking about the runners going through uh, in Changa. Uh, of course, uh, Arthur's Seat, we saw uh, just in terms of famous landmarks along the route, Arthur's Seat, uh, Bruce Fordyce, you would have gone past there on numerous occasions. And, of course, your name is up on the wall as well. The, uh, yes, so there's, there are two great landmarks on the Comrades that the runners have just uh, gone past. One is Arthur's Seat, named after the legendary Arthur Newton, who won five times in the 1920s, the sort of the grandfather of modern uh, ultra marathon running. 
And the legend is that Arthur is supposed to have, on his training runs, and he trained often on the course he's supposed to have sat there and amazingly smoked his pipe and looked at the view on the Valley of a Thousand Hills. I don't know why he looked at the view of the Valley of a Thousand Hills, because in this particular race, you run most of them. But he, he's supposed to have sat there, and as you go past, every runner, and I noticed that our leaders didn't do that, Every runner is supposed to have picked a flower. You can gather a flower for the people who hand them out. And you drop a flower at Arthur's seat and you doff your cap if you're wearing a cap and you say, good morning, Arthur. And if you say that and you do everything right, apparently the legend is that you'll have a great second half. If you don't, you're in all sorts of trouble. Just beyond that is the Wall of Honor, which is an embankment where every runner who has run the race is allowed to put their name up on a shield. And this wall is stretching further and further and further along. And some of my fellow commentators like Ellie Greenwood um, and Helen Luca will have their names up there uh, as past winners. And uh, it's, a, it's a very emotional part of the race because some of those shields and those plaques that are up there say things like RIP and loving memory of my father who loved this race so much. Uh, and it's a very special part of the race. And every runner who has run, I cannot understand why you would not want to put your name there. You've, you've spent so much time, so much effort, so much energy running this great race. Commemorate yourself by putting your name there. Well, there's so much history involved with the uh, Comrades Marathon, some wonderful golden moments that we've had over the years as well, and so many memories of uh, races gone by, and I think the uh, year that Bruce missed in 1989 was among the most memorable of uh, all the races, but we'll talk about that as the day continues. This is the 2016 Comrades Marathon. We uh, invite you to get interactive as well, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, all forms of t social media, Instagram as well, if you've got photos from out on the route, uh, anybody sending you pics from out on the route, as uh, we are in the age of the modern era hashtag 2016 comrades is uh, the hashtag that we are using at the moment but it looks to be a group of runners here Tabojo Solo of Lesotho fifth last year former city to city uh, 50 kilometer winner I see is in that uh, group Mike Fukuroni as well the uh, two oceans winner earlier this year he looks to be leading out in front Dinka who was uh, ninth in the two oceans comrades novice however he's among those who's uh, setting a fairly good pace at the moment but they they look to be all very settled at the moment yeah, it's a very interesting part of the course because they go up towards this climb that I mentioned a bit earlier called Alveston. And it's one of those hills that nobody ever talks about. And if you look at the profile and they name the hills, you know, Alveston's kind of the small one in the middle of the course just after halfway. But it's a very, very steep part of the course. So as you come out of Drummond, you're kind of dragging all the way along. It's a flat route they're running along now. You see the men's race on the left-hand side, the ladies' race on the right side. Bosman running pretty strongly down in Chunga at the moment, or up from Chunga. And, um, you know, they're, now they're going to head up towards Alveston. And it's a very, very steep climb, probably about a kilometre and a half long, but very, very steep. And then you drop down into field. Hill. And we've seen a couple of years ago, well, not a couple of years ago, probably in the late 90s, I remember Nick Bester going Positilele Sinque up that Alveston Hill and declaring that he was much stronger than he was. And as they hit uh, both, as uh, Zitilele came up behind Nick Bester and said, I'm still here. And it is a very, a very crucial part of the course. And a lot of the, the main contenders will push it a bit up there. And uh, the guys who aren't so strong will drop off the back. Well, in the uh, bottom right of your screen, you can see Shane Bosman. I believe she's up to second now in the women's race, so she's uh, ahead of the e Ethiopian Yukasa. But uh, Shane Bosman looking very strong. It's amazing to think, though, that some of the uh, contenders uh, in this race, although the average race is over 40 for uh, Comrades runners, that uh, some of the contenders, Shane Bosman at 40, and of course, Colleen de Riek is uh, expected to still put in a decent time at the age of 52 running. Uh, in this Comrades Marathon, running her first Comrades Marathon. But Shane Bosman, she's uh, continued to impress as well. She's been strengthening her quads for this year's down run. She's, uh, she's deliberately been strengthening her quads, Bruce. In terms of uh, physical toll, what, is, what does a down run do uh, when you consider the approach of somebody like Shane Bosman saying, I needed to strengthen my quads for this year's down run? Uh, she was doing completely the right thing. You, you have to. Uh, I had a very, very painful down run in 1982. And after that run, I vowed I would, as many runners will do today, I vowed I would never ever run the Comrades again. Obviously came back after that for about another 20 shots at it. Uh, but I decided I had to do something about the down run and I went, I consulted Tim Noakes, who gave me a lot of advice, and I consulted the late and very great Reg Park, who uh, helped, you know, Mr. former Mr. Universe, who gave me a weight training program for the down run, not designed to look like him or Arnold Schwarzenegger, the complete opposite but designed to strengthen my quads for the hammering that you take from both his hill village onwards, and it worked. And the following down run in 1984 going downhill, I remember thinking, 
I'm hurting, but not nearly as much as two years ago. Uh, it's worked. So if you are one of the elite runners, you, I think you do need to spend some time in the gym. If you're merely going for a finish, the best training for running is running. And you need to spend your what time you do have training by running. Otherwise, you can, if you've got more time than that, you can start looking at things like gym work. Yeah, there's certainly so much uh, effort and uh, preparation that needs to go into this because uh, the Commerce Marathon is an ultra marathon. It is uh, almost 90 kilometers long, 89.2 uh, odd kilometers of this year's race. But in other words, you run a marathon, then you run another marathon, and then you have the equivalent of a fun run tagged on at the end of it. And uh, in, in many ways, Shane Bosman has said she's not going to be running this as a Commerce Marathon. She's going to be running it in 10 kilometer stretches. And, and different athletes have different approaches, Mike. But so when it comes to breaking the race down, uh, breaking it down to, to bite-sized chunks, as it were, is a sensible approach, some would argue. Yeah, I, I spoke to Lindsay Perry, who's the coach of Shane Bosman and Kalan Bosman uh, before the race, and he was saying that one of the things that uh, people have underestimated is how Song Shane is uh, today. And as you say, she's got a very strict strategy. She knows exactly what time she wants to run herself. If it puts her into a place where she could win the race or finish in the top three, that's great for her. But she's not really racing against the other ladies in the field. She's literally going by what she can achieve. And it's a very good tactic because Comrades is a race where the last 30 Ks is where it all counts. And uh, if you have to be there for sure but uh, if you're going to be racing with others and I'm sure Bruce will testify to this in the past years what what a lot of the elite runners make the mistake of doing is that they often run with the previous winners run a different strategy and often blow themselves out and don't look at their strengths so Shana running her own race if she's there and thereabouts with uh, sort of 20 or 30 k's to go we could see a ladies race on the go um, but at the moment looking very very comfortable as she uh, heads down towards the halfway well it is going to be interesting because the down run there is the possibility for the elite runners at least of running uh, negative speed splits and uh, Bruce if I'm not mistaken you still have the fastest of the uh, second halves to this down run race at 237 oh I don't know maybe Leonard Schwetzhoff when he ran that amazing 520 but uh, certainly I'll, uh, to win you will probably have to run a, a slightly faster second half the the key with the comrades at this stage is to break it up into landmarks and to get the various landmarks behind you so what Shane is busy doing now is getting in Changa, the climb up in Changa behind her. And then later on, you get the, uh, shortly after that, she'll get the drop down to Drummond behind her. Then the climb up to Bothers Hill Village, a long climb, you get that behind you. What you don't do, and I advise people here, is to look at the distance markers because it is completely mind boggling. For some of those people we saw going th through at the chicken farm area earlier on, for them to see a sign that says 67 kilometers to go, what does that mean? It just means it's incredibly far and incredibly stupid. So you must try and get get the, uh, the the famous landmarks behind you. And it's one of the sadistic things that happens in the Comrades Marathon is that unfortunately the distance markers are a countdown. Every other race that you do in the world, they reward you by giving you a positive tick. So you've run for a few minutes and you go past a board that says one to go. I mean that you've done one, which is fantastic. A little bit later you've done two. But in Comrades, you go past boards that say 89 to go, 88 to go. And as I said, 67 to go. What does that mean? You know, tell me. I don't know. Terrifying. It just means a long, long way. And so you can start to do the countdown. Maybe when you get around Fields Hill and you suddenly you see 21 to go. And you could say, OK, that's a half marathon. I did a half marathon in January. Now we're getting into my kind of distance. Now you can start counting down. But until then, you do landmarks. And Charnay's busy getting the climb up to Inchunga, one of the serious landmarks behind it. Well, uh, I suppose no clear favourites really until the uh, last 20 or 30 kilometres of the race, but Shane Borsman is uh, tackling this race in superb style. Of course, much talk about the uh, greenwood Busman battle, but as you've been hearing throughout the day, Elena Greenwood has joined us in commentary thanks to the fact that she's out through injury, so there is no duel in the women's race up front, and it does throw open uh, many other possibilities in this race. Karen Busman has uh, vowed to run her own race. She's taken the pressure off. She's uh, not uh, said she's going going out for any record she's not said she's doing anything even as much as she wanted to win she's not even said I'm going for the victory she said, I want to run my own race I want to run my own times and if I happen to cross the finish line first then so be it but she really is on the brink of history and uh, doing something quite remarkable running a double double 
I mean, considering where she came from a couple of years ago, nobody knew the name Kylan Vusman when she uh, ran the Two Oceans win last year and came out of nowhere. And uh, last year when she won Comrades, of course, everybody stood up and started listening. And again, she won Two Oceans this year. But I think this is the first year that Kylan Vusman, or the first race since she's kind of made a, her entrance into the scene, that she's actually felt some sort of pressure because the expectation of her is enormous. The, uh, she's expected to win. There's all sorts of stories about breaking six hours. She, if she does that, she becomes the first woman to get a Wally Hay would medal because uh, the previous three ladies to have broken six hours hadn't run it in the time when they were awarding medals for the sub six so there is quite a lot of pressure on her and uh, i think she has a handling it pretty well she's always got a smile on her face but uh shana Musman at the moment says uh, she's getting up in changa looking uh, reasonably strong looking relaxed and uh, that's exactly how you should be feeling uh, with more than half the distance still to go so approaching the three hour mark now and uh, continues in the women's race continue Certainly very strong. Well, you don't have to be taking part in the race to be a winner in this year's Comrades Marathon. That's right, Old Mutual giving you the chance to be uh, one of the lucky winners who will win a 1,000 Rand airtime each. Simply answer the question on your screen and you could be a winner just like that. family more and it shows that's why speco does more for you four times more did you enjoy the concert <laughs> speco one cup makes four cups of love no roar of the crowd will announce you've beaten your best nobody cares that olympic spirit courses through your veins the world doesn't care why you train. Until the victory lap. New Energade Light. It's what you put in. Welcome back to live coverage of the 2016 Comrades Marathon. Mike Fukuroni and uh, Ethiopian Dinka as we hit the three-hour mark. Uh, looking strong in the uh, lead group at the moment. Deborah Silo as well, I can tell you, is uh, is in that group. There he is just on the shoulders of the uh, white jersey and the red running shorts. The 37-year-old of the Sutu athlete, fifth last year. Looking for an improvement of that, but certainly be searching for another gold medal in the uh, Comrades Marathon. But these three are charging out in front and continually rehydrating as well. Eleanor Green Greenwood and uh, Helen Luca have stepped back into commentary. Just in terms of rehydrating out on the road as we look at the three leading men, Mike Vocaroni a moment ago just trying to re rehydrate, constantly taking in nutrition and, and hydrating. How important, particularly as it warms up? And today I think it's not going to be quite as hot as 2013, but certainly is going to be a fairly hot day. Yeah, it's definitely looking like a warm day out there and uh, hydration is absolutely key. Um, it's always best to be taking on the drinks, but probably we'll start seeing later on, maybe they start throwing some water over their heads as well. It's uh, another good strategy to help uh, keep cool, but uh, over this sort of distance, they're sweating a lot, they're losing those fluids. They'll also be taking on electrolytes. It's never a good idea just to be uh, taking on plain water throughout the course, so they'll be needing calories as well, but the main thing is uh, just drinking when they're thirsty They've probably got uh, their seconds, I don't know, every 10 kilometers or so. Um, and once it gets uh, warmer in the end, later stages of the race, they'll definitely be using the, uh, the general aid stations along the way to supplement their personal drinks. Well, Ellie, you're, Ellie, you're talking there about the, uh, the hydration and everything, but also in a race like this, you need to take on more than that. You need some food. 
So, uh, you know, what would an athlete normally eat on a 90-kilometer race? Yeah, I mean, that can range as probably as many runners as there are out on the course. It's a very personal thing that I hope uh, certainly the uh, elites up here will have practiced in training, but even anyone in the masses should have practiced uh, what sits well in their stomach, what they can take on. Um, again, of course, um, all these ones from the elite running clubs, they'll have their seconds along the way so they can get exactly what they want, whether that's energy gels, chews, some of them do prefer hey they want to take on liquids anyway so get some electrolytes and uh, calories actually in through their drinks and then of course uh, the comrades is known for the absolutely massive number of aid stations along the way and the runners further towards the back they'll be uh, you know you can't be running for 12 hours and just be taking on uh, gels and those kind of things so they'll be taking on a few more solids food well, Helen, we'll pick up on this on this very quickly, but we're going to the women's race. They're getting up to half halfway, and there is Caroline Wissmann, and suddenly the group of men around her have disappeared. But let's go up to the inner jade eye in the sky. Dickaledi, how does it look from up there? Thank you so much, Twain. It's getting tougher and tougher, like we expected, as we said earlier, that when we get to the halfway mark, it might be seen that the girls are getting it very hard now. Like we, we were trying to explain earlier on that it's either the uphill or the downhill, it doesn't matter because the kilos are still the same and the harder the marathon, as we know, the Comrade Marathon is always hard. Bantabaitle Thanks, Dick Lady. We're with the leading woman, Caroline Wistman, and still smiling, still happy. And we mentioned that group of men that were around her. She's coming up to halfway now. And uh, that group of men, Helen's fallen away. So either she's picked up the pace and they couldn't handle it, or some of them have picked up the pace and she decided to do her own thing. Well, Ellie and I are sitting here chatting about it and we're commenting that she, she's running at pace. She's running quickly. Um, she's going to go through that halfway mark, maybe about uh, three seven. Just we'll, we'll get the exact uh, time then. Um, but uh, it's also quite unusual because many, many guys will know what she's running and will often pace off the woman. And I'm sure, Ellie, you've had that experience in a race where as in, they know that women, for whatever reason, stick to their predicted times, they have a goal, and you want to run a good race, hang out with the top woman, but she's yeah, on no, her own. For sure. I mean, someone like Caroline, um, anyone in South African running will have followed her results in the past sort of six, uh, 18 months or so and just seen, wow, she, she seems to be nailing it every time. So if you thought, hey, I'm maybe on for about the same finishing time as Caroline, you'd say, okay, I'm just going to hang on her heels and do what she does and almost be coached through the race by just being with her. But you can see even now she's going past quite a few runners, which is to be expected. I mean, the the lead woman, I think uh, one time when I won, I came about 50th overall, but through halfway, I was in something like 350th. So it's not surprising that she is going past 
passed a few of these men um, and she's looking pretty happy and there's a few still hanging on with her. She's just got a bottle there, obviously uh, keeping hydrated, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how she manages later on. She does seem to be quite a social runner and if she actually pulls ahead of the men she's with, uh, will she then start to struggle that, you know, just mentally that now she's having to pace herself in the later stages. Well, Monique Regeert from Instagram and Twitter, Niels is here by Halfpad for Drummond and Caroline Wistman, what now op die Halfpad maar kom, sy het gekyk na so a 3 ure 10 minute, sy is bykie vinniger en dit is a goeie ding vir Caroline, beteken sy voel goed hier dier Halfpad, sy is voor haar pas wat sy wou gehaardlip het en soos Ellie gesê het, sy gaan hier voorbye a hele klomp mans op die oomlik and uh, Helen, Ellie mentioned, you know, people who want to run Caroline's kind of time or kind of speed will stick with her. Not many men can do that, though. Yeah. Six, uh, six hours around there. That's the reality of it, actually. I think um, there's not many men brave enough who enter this race that think that, the, you know, to go for a six hour because, you know, you, you kind of, you may as well say I'm going to go for gold. So, um, but if we recall when Frith ran that phenomenal uh, 554. She came 15th overall and, and gave a lot of guys uh, a, a big fright. So here we see her running through halfway in uh, 308. Now, if we just do a direct, um, if she did run the same for the second half, although I think it's not actually physically at 80, uh, 44 kilometers, I think it's 45 or so. Um, yeah, it's, it's six hours 16, and, and picking up on that, we, I think we are in for a good time, and let's just hope she can sustain this. Yeah, well, we do expect ne negative splits from her. According to her, her timing schedule, it was 3.15, but her coach, Lindsay Perry, expected her to do about a 3.10. She's even faster than that, and uh, it means she's feeling good. And if we think how fast she finished last year and that from Polly Schultz into Peter Maritzburg, here she's finishing on a downhill. And even though it's quite taxing, you know, Ellie, you, you've been there. You, like you said, you came through the field in that last half, and that's probably what she's going to do from now. Yeah, I would have thought so. And uh, the last time Caroline won, uh, ran the down run, I think she came uh, fifth or sixth overall, and that was a bit of a real breakthrough for her. She was the top South African at the time. I think a few people were surprised, maybe expecting more Charnay or someone else that year. And then it was like, who's this Caroline? And where has she come from? So she's got to, even though she might be a little nervous on the down run, she's got to have some confidence because she worked her way up um, through uh, into the top 10 and ultimately to fifth or sixth uh, that time as well. So she knows she can finish the down run uh, strongly as well and of course I always say you train for the course so if you know it's a down year you train for the down year and she'll have been doing long runs uh, with hard finishes on downhills towards the end to uh, get the legs ready for running hard. Yeah she definitely mentioned doing some training on downhills 10 kilometer down runs where last year she was training them uphills this year she went down and uh, she like you said she keeps saying how comfortable she looks at the moment her official time at halfway is three hours seven minutes and 54 seconds so that's quite good for her um lee you think it's a bit fast here with that look in your face but helen i mean we've seen this yeah. and and people need to remember caroline is not as much of a comrade's novice as we think she's been on the the gold medal scene the last two years but this is in fact the sixth comrades that she's run yeah i always uh I, I think Caroline is a very intelligent woman. We all know that. And she runs intelligently. And she, she will just know, she'll know exactly how her body feels. She spent uh, 12 months planning for today. And she's done the necessary training. And I think we have heard these stories of how she's gone and run, um, run two long races, run the race, and race the last, um, you know, 15 Ks of, of the event. We saw her at two oceans, she ran easily. She raced the last eight kilometers and she wanted to condition herself to be able to race hard when her legs are sore. And I think it's all going to culminate in today's, hopefully, a good win for her comrades today. Now, Caroline Wisman with Gartlip had fun. Now, the line park did in 4 minutes 11 per kilometer. Now, Kate Rich to 4 minutes 6 and now now Drummond to 4 minutes 9. But it, the 4 minutes 9 slides natuurlijk daar in Changa Klim in. And here gaan ze now weer up in the volgende build. Op deze tijd daar 6 uur 12 minutes. Dat is natuurlijk verleden jaar zijn wendtijd voor Caroline Wisman. En zien hoe gaan ze hier voorbij die man staan. Alle medailles zijn het reeds in van al die medailles. Behalve uh, Wally Hayward natuurlijk. En die Wick Klappen. Wick Klappen, zoals ik het later in haar loopbaan krijg. Dus voor tussen 11 en 12 uur. 
and Eli Shane Bosman now coming up to that drum and halfway mark. Yeah, I think Shane is looking pretty strong. I mean, obviously she's much more uh, still got a group of men around her there, but she's looking relaxed. She's looking calm. She looks like she just knows what she's doing. Looks like there's maybe a little smile there, which is nice. You can tell if a runner's absorbing the crowds and you know responding to that that they're they're so relaxed that they're not having to just focus in on themselves. So I would have thought Shane is pretty happy, and she'll just be maybe she's starting to listen how far ahead Caroline is, but she'll just be doing what she needs to do. Well, that uh, is Shane Bosman coming through in second place here through Drummond. Interestingly enough, Lindsay Perry, the coach of both Caroline Bosman and Shane Bosman, and uh, very different race strategies for the two of them, though. And th I think that's what makes a good coach as well, is, is assessing each athlete individually, getting a different race strategy for them. And we're not trying to run Shane on Caroline's strategy or vice versa. And... Uh, and it, it's clever coaching. So Shane is, is tackling this slightly different to the way Caroline would be. Would that work for them? I'm assuming it will. I mean, Shane is also trying to win this race, not just sit behind Caroline the whole race. Yeah, I think Shane has to focus on her own race. And I think um, she's come second to, to Caroline quite often. You've got to learn to manage that on your own you know, psychological makeup because um, she mustn't succumb to the pressure. She mustn't always sort of um, feel that she's always going to be the princess. Now, if she wants to beat Caroline, she must just stick to her own plan, just not feel the pressure of the spectators, her managers, etc. So, um, you know, she's four minutes off the pace. So it's cons Caroline's consistently sort of built that lead. But I'm still quite impressed that shane has gone through in this time. I think it's pretty good. I think Shane is looking great and if I even go back to uh, last year when I ended up coming uh, six but I was actually running with Shane for a bulk of the early miles and then Shane pulled ahead to second so we obviously know that Shane knows how to run smartly she's got the potential to not slow down towards the end um, and of course Shane has uh, finished two up runs but the last time she started a down run she was uh, unsuccessful in completing that so I'm sure that gives her extra motivation as well you know the comrades is like we say you know a race of two directions she'll want to be saying yeah I've been successful in both directions so that will give her you know a personal motivation and not just for racing against the other women well it's also very much a race of two halves and uh, especially on this down run the first half of it is is pretty much up and uh, then the down run really starts Alemta Kakisa the Ethiopian coming through the third place here at Drummond Kakisa did quite well at two oceans as well but I think a lot of athletes here find out that Comrades is not two oceans. That extra, you know, 33 kilometers can really take its toll. They're not at that kind of distance yet. But uh, Kakisa, I think she's starting to feel it in her legs there if I look at the way she's running. Yeah, her, she doesn't look as though she's got a very uh, comfortable run at the moment. And especially with what's um, facing her, she'll be fine until, well, most athletes are quite okay. Maybe Cowie Co. And then... Um, if you've taken a bit of strain, that's when the pain really kicks in with that last sort of 15, 16 kilometers to go because there's very little forgiveness. And um, I mean, Ellie, we watched you in the last down run just pick up and increase your pace. You look fantastic. But uh, be honest, were you sore? Uh, I was uh, saying uh, when I did that, uh, people said, wow, you're calculating and really pushing hard. To be honest, I said, this is so painful. I want it to be over and done with. So the, the faster I run, the faster I can uh, stop running and get to the finish line. But it is interesting, the comparison between two oceans and uh, the comrades. I mean, obviously, they are significantly longer here. So talking about our third place woman here, um, if she has less experience over the longer distance, I think at two oceans, you can get away with, you know, being a fast marathoner, being quite strong on the hills, and then you have to sort of hold on a bit. Whereas uh, if, if you're a fast marathoner at uh, the Comrades, of course, that's very helpful, um, but it's double the distance, and that can where you can really start to struggle. And indeed, fast marathoners can struggle in going slow enough to start with that they run a more even race. Well, the fourth lady coming through Drummond now, that's Carla Molinaro, and it's one of our unknowns from Great Britain. She's a Comrades novice, uh, but quite a good athlete in her own right she's run some 
some good marathons. She's coming through Drummond here, looking very good. In fact, if you look at the splits, Caroline Wissmann is busy moving. She's going faster and faster, opening up a gap over the other women. At uh, Cato Ridge, Caroline was about a minute ahead of Kakisa and about two minutes ahead of Shane Bosman. Now at Drummond, Caroline's got a four-minute lead over Shane Bosman and Kakisa another two minutes behind. So she's really picking up the pace. But we're going back to the men's race for a minute. And uh, we'll just have a look at that. There's been a big move. It looks like Tebojo Selo may have been taking that out. The men's race trying to break away. We're still staying here with Carla Molinaro at, at halfway. And uh, we'll stay with her for a little bit longer when we go to that men's race. Well, we've we, Carla has um, actually done extremely well in some very, very tough races, mountain races. Um, in Europe, so she will have the strength, and if she can sustain the speed, she may also surprise us um, in the race. So be be also very worthwhile watching and keeping an eye on her. Well, we've mentioned a move there in the men's race, and nobody better to bring us that move and tell us what's happened. Alec Riddle, the Bonitas Eye in the Sky, what's been happening? Yeah, that's Give Kelly. Yeah, I'm almost sure. I mean. You can never be 100% sure, but I'm 95%. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, we're well, having communication issues there with Alec Riddle, but we see that Tebojo Selo seems to have made a break. Gift Kalir in that chasing pack as well. And uh, now the race is starting with the first big move here, I think, by one of the more favored men. Yeah, I think we've just uh, picking up. Of the, I think they've just come down the uh, Bothers Hill and uh, pulling up into uh, Hillcrest. So this is also just one of these mean little uh, unknown hills, but we will get just clarity on exactly where that lead runner is. Um, we've got the first and the second runner on the screen at the moment. Well, Tebojo Selo fifth in last year's race. There's Mike Fukaroni chasing him. Of course, the two Oceans winner and uh, Comrades gold medalist in his own right. And uh, Eli, this men's race hotting up now. Yeah, certainly. And it's interesting at this stage of the race, um, it's easier to uh, look good on the downhills. But when you start seeing small uphills like this, I think this is where you see if someone's beginning to get a little bit tired, having paid for a, uh, for a little bit too fast a pace early on. But uh, both of these uh, three men are looking uh, very strong and just like they're cruising comfortably up uh, despite looking increasingly hotter. Well, um, running up this specific hill, and I actually saw William Tolo yesterday, and I said, have you told your two athletes about the danger spots? Um, because we can, I can recall watching Willie in first position on this very hill, and, uh, and then he had to grab that hamstring, and he ended up coming in, in uh, second place. So uh, he says, please don't mention that again. But uh, sorry, Willie, I have to share that story, but just because you are such an outstanding athlete and uh, guiding a few younger people in this particular race. But uh, it's a tricky hill. It's like where you're just not expecting it. You've come down both, as, and it just... It just gets you. I don't know if you can remember it, Ellie, when you were running. I do remember it, but what I'm also thinking is going to be interesting for these uh, top three men right now is some of them are within eyesight of each other, and that definitely helps because, firstly, you can see who, uh, what they're looking like up ahead. Are they struggling? And, again, just someone to sort of pull you along. Like, mentally, if you've got someone in eyesight, it's much better than uh, someone shouting from the sidelines, hey, they're a minute ahead. Well, if you can't see them, a minute seems a long way, but it's nice to have someone almost, you know, attach a draw string to them and help them pull you up a hill. Well, the men's race really hotting up here. About 50 minutes ago, Tobojo Silla was in eighth place. He's now taken the lead. And uh, very big lead changes. Kabere Abere, Kabere Abere Dinke. Let me say that slower. He's still in the race. He was ninth at the Two Oceans Marathon. And then uh, we saw Mike Fukaroni, of course, that Two Oceans winner, also up there in this men's race. And uh, see the shots here as they go up that hill. But a very difficult race for these men. And it looks like Gift Kalehe, we've heard from the road that he might be struggling a bit. Last year's winner. And of course, Bongmusa Mtembo, Ludwig Mamabolo, all these favorites are still in, that, in the race here. And we might see some or a lot more lead changes before we get to the finish. I think so. We've heard the coaches say that the pace was, they thought, too quick at the beginning. And... Uh, it, the race only starts, but the nice thing for these athletes is they come up to Hillcrest and the crowd support once they crest this hill is actually unbelievable. But what that can do is make them pick up that pace just a little bit more and it's really not what they possibly need at this point in time. 
Well, the gap there between those two men, not too big. Tebojo Selo, Mike Fukaroni right behind him. I think that is him trying to catch him. And in between all the bikes and press trucks and everything that... Uh, that you see in Ailey, how, I mean, for a lead runner, you're surrounded by cars and people and bikes. Does it put you off at all? Uh, I mean, I think when I'm in that position, I seem to be fairly like, hey, they're, they're there for me and I will tell them to get out of the way if needs be. Um, I've certainly, you know, there comes a point where you, you can't actually talk because you're running and you're racing hard, but I've used hand signals before to indicate, hey, can a bike get out of the way? And also the bikes are there to help the runners, not to hinder them. And certainly if I've uh, had, uh, you know, as a woman, have men around me and I'm finding they're, you know, boxing me in, then sometimes the cyclists that's with me have said something like get out the way um, that looked like possibly Nick Bester there uh, helping one of the Nedbank runners uh, with their bottles and I was thinking they're probably enjoying uh, coming through a slightly shaded section right now as it does get hotter uh, it's nice to get out of that direct sunlight well that is Mike Fukaroni there catching up to Tebojo Selo and uh, Mike Fukaroni we keep saying the two oceans winner the Soweto marathon winner we know he's good over 42 k's over 56 k's he's done the comrades before he's actually said that he wants to win this one but he's I wouldn't say he's untested over 89 kilometers he just hasn't managed to get into that top position well he's experienced it coming in and and uh pushing those last few kilometers and racing like we've seen him do in two oceans so that might have been a, a, a good training scenario for him today he sort of like practiced it so it'll be interesting he's still got i think about 33 34 kilometers to to go and uh and the pace has to pick up you know if you really want to 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 win this race convincingly It'll be interesting as well. I mean, often I think among the men, there's maybe a bit of a two oceans curse that is it a little bit too hard to do well at both two oceans and the comrades. So will uh, Mike have that in the back of his head or will he use it in the reverse and say it's a great confidence boost and that he felt strong at that? Obviously, it was long enough ago that he seems to have recovered well and be uh, still moving up. Well, they've said women couldn't do that either or it's very, very difficult to do at the very least at winning two oceans and comrades. And yet we have seen it not only last year we may see it this year again and of course Caroline Lisman with that double double as it's called winning the two oceans and comrades back to back she's attempting that and of course we haven't mentioned it she's also attempting a quite unique triple where uh, which is holding the Omni Dam record or Omni Dam win sorry the two oceans and the comrades marathon she holds all three of those titles but nobody has done all three in the same year and if she does win this comrades marathon she will achieve that as well so we're staying with the men's race for now and we'll see Tabor Josello was there and uh, he seems to have pulled away again from Mike Fukaroni. These two playing a bit of cat, cat and mouse and in the second group there you see them on the bottom right of your screen. We can see Khatebe as well as uh, yep, Khatebe there, man with three silvers to his name and the previous winner there, Claude Mushiwa, also looking good in that chasing group. Well, it's um, still anybody's race, and it's uh, exciting. But normally we'll have still have one or two guys out, and there should be another big bunch coming through because um, there's 10 gold medals up for takings, and, and maybe some guys would have worked out that this place is pretty hot, and just to hold back, there is still 30-odd kilometres to run your race, push your way up into, the, into um, gold medal contention. And, and just catch any of these guys who start to falter. Yeah, of course, Claude Mushiwa actually looking very good there behind Khatebe. And of course, he'd be the danger man between those two. Khatebe holding silver medals only. He's never finished in the top 10. And the leading men there, Mike Fukaroni again on the shoulder of Tebo Josello, looking like he wants to go past. And that can be quite tiring, kind of this whole cat and mouse, who's in front, who's not. They're not running together, clearly. They're not helping each other. They're definitely competing out there. Yeah, and this will be uh, when it's interesting when we were mentioning earlier, like were some of the teams working together, like the Ned Bank runners working together. I mean, ultimately, uh, when it comes to later miles, everyone's out on their own and it doesn't matter if you've got the same color shirt on, same support crew, you want to uh, look after yourself. But here we've got uh, yeah, the two lead men, different teams, maybe they never trained together. You don't know if, if, even if they've raced each other. Um, but I think uh, someone certainly say, for example, Claude, he's got his head on his shoulders. He knows what he's doing and uh, I don't think he's going to get drawn away by you know trying to be a little bit ahead 100 meters up the road he's thinking about can I be ahead once I get down to the uh, pavilion in uh, Durban well he's 
Mans wat hier voorraad op die bochel sê hulle, Mike Vokroni, links boe op die skerm onder, hulle is die mans wat hulle jaag, Gatebe en Claude Moshewa, en op die oomlik is het Gatebe wat bykie vinniger begin aard loop het, wat Claude Moshewa los, die gaping word al hoe groter daar, nog een netbank atleet, net so achter Moshewa, ek kan nie sien wie hy is op die oomlik nie, maar het is op die oomlik Mike Vokroni, wenner van die Toosiane, en Tebogo Silo wat saam aard loop, daar dier die skare, en the crowd's quite good this morning, Helen, I mean, they really seem to be supporting these athletes, and there's a sea of spectators that those leaders are running through at the moment. Uh, the, the crowd on the side of the road has been unbelievable, and, and I think we heard the helicopter guys saying that they've never heard such uh, support or seen so many people out on the road, and it, that just makes the day, you know, it just makes it so special. Okay, well, we seem to have communications back with Alec Riddle. Uh, Bonita's eye in the sky. Alec, lots been happening in this men's race. Well, what I can tell you is that uh, obviously Solo and Mike Vaccaroni are the guys who are really laying down the pace. They came through the halfway mark in about 2.43, 2.44. And Bob Delamotte out of Perth, Australia, told me that if you want to run a sub 5 hour 30, the ideal time is 2.47, 2.48. So these guys are really setting a blistering pace. And the likelihood of uh, a low 5.20 or a mid 5.20 is very strong as for Caroni and Sello are coming through Hillcrest here. If I look further back in the road, there's uh, sporadic gaps before quite a sizable bus. So we've still got a lot of contenders lurking behind within two or three minutes of this group. One of the guys we saw from Tom Tom Athletics Club, we were trying to identify from the air, but unfortunately we didn't get a view of his number. Um, we thought it might be Gif Kelly, but it could also have been David Khadebi, who um, uh, John Hamlet rates quite highly. So we've got, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, probably about maybe 250, 300 meters back. We've got a group of about five or six. Uh, I wouldn't say a tight-knit group because the pace is on and they're running a meter or two or uh, apart and a little bit further back than that we've got a, a couple of uh, single runners before another small little bus. So I would say within two, three minutes we've perhaps got an, uh, still 12 or 13 contenders. So a lot to race for in the second half of this race. There's still a lot of uh, action to happen. But Mike Vaccaroni and Solo at the head of the Comrades Field 2016. Thank you, Alec. Yes, certainly lots of action to come in this Comrades Marathon. And, of course, these men's leaders, we might see the lead change quite a bit still. The women seem to be pretty much sewn up with Caroline Vosman just opening up that gap. And uh, we'll be back with the Comrades Marathon right after this. mom and the Dettol mom. Only a Dettol mom knows that Dettol cleans away dirt while protecting a family from up to a hundred illness causing germs. Don't just be any mom, be a Dettol mom. Dettol, be 100% sure. Headache. 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 Let's go. <laughs> this bread starts to work up to three times faster than paracetamol. You get three kinds of mums. The paranoid mum, the cautious mum, and the Dettol Mom. She only trusts Dettol Antiseptic Liquid to kill 100 illness-causing germs, and it's recommended for cuts and scrapes. Don't just be any mom, be a Dettol Mom. Dettol, be 100% sure.
Well, we're back with the 91st edition of the Comrades Ultra Marathon. And unfortunately, our commentary team has suddenly gotten a lot less pretty with Ellie Greenwood <laughs> and Helen Luca vacating their seats in favor of uh, Bruce Fordyce and Mike Finch. Speak but no, for yourself. Speak for yourself. No less knowledgeable, the men next to me. And uh, the men's race really been hotting up, Mike. And uh, maybe after a few words from you, Zolani Bongo is going to take my seat as well. Well, the uh, leading two runners now heading into Gillets, and this is always a, a, a sort of the, the sharp end of the uh, race now, the last sort of 30 kilometers as they head down towards Kloofer and uh, Downfield Hill, which is a big pl place where a lot of the guys often go Downfield Hill way too fast, and then they suffer through Pine Town. But this is a downhill section, and our two leaders, Tabo Hosello and to Mike Focaroni, are running quite well together, and it was quite a good tactic at one stage to see um, Mike Focaroni just trying to get behind uh, Tabo Hosello and then run together, and uh, you feed off the energy of the other runner next to you and he, he made that gap and now they're, they're running quite fluidly at the moment we're just trying to get an idea of the gap between them and the second group on the road and hopefully the overhead pictures will will show that but uh, at the moment the two leaders looking uh, pretty strong so as, as yeah they're running through gillets uh still very strong uh, a very fast pace heading towards another critical part of the comrades marathon and that is fields hill and Fields Hill is the steepest and longest downhill drop of the race. Uh, we're truly now into the down run, by the way. We are now, you know, all the jokes about uh, up the down run being an uphill race. We are now running the downhills and we're plummeting down to Durban. Um, and most of the run is downhills. There are a couple of um, steep climbs that they will have to go up. But Fields Hill now that's waiting for them is... Uh, around about three to four kilometers, depending on how you measure it, where you say the off-ramp is, uh, of steep downhill running. And it's down there that the most leg damage is caused. And uh, later on, we're going to see some of the back markers walking down there because uh, it, it's just too painful for them to run. Um, they're not quite there yet, but they will, they're in the approaches to Fields Hill. Well, they're approaching a very lovely area of the route, and I always uh, love seeing the crowds in Kloof. And uh, if you go to Kloof the night before the race, you'll see a lot of the locals have uh, actually taped off areas of the main road in Kloof because that's where they have their bries and they get up early in the morning. They spend the whole day there supporting. And they're heading down to, to Kloof probably in the next sort of couple of kilometers, and you'll see the crowds as they go along the tree-lined main road of Kloof. And it's a big uh, area. Nedbank have got a massive activation there today, and there'll be lots of uh, crowds on the route of a spectator stand at one point so the energy that the runners will get from uh, going through this high spectator area will certainly boost them as they head towards this descent into field hill we are getting reports that last year's champion gif Kaleha is struggling not having a good race uh, and he's battling a little bit further back behind these runners uh, we're not sure if that's confirmed but we have heard that he is struggling at this stage well, the coach john uh, hamlet uh, just talking to bruce off air just a few moments ago and uh, saying the gift uh, not as bad as uh, we thought but uh, certainly not in the picture at the moment but the big mover is bong Mulson timber who's actually the defending downrun champion and uh, certainly one of the guys that i picked has been a top three contender today it's difficult to see where exactly he is on the course but you know we have talked so much about this race that the first 60 k's are really just a warm-up because it's the next 25 to 28 which is where they are now it really really starts to count Jangogosijongapayamatotana,ambapambili,tewohosilomfanangapagolaselsutukandike. And Zimbabwe. Well, we we're looking at another camera which South Africa can't view at this stage and and we're seeing gift running quite well. So maybe those reports are wrong. Uh, we've got uh, Ludwig Mamabola and Gift together, we just can't tell you the gap at this stage um, on our two leaders, but it's not that far. They, they, they're coming through Kloof together as well. 
Well, I've just gone past the fire station in Gillets, and uh, we saw our leaders go through there probably less than a minute ago. So if we can go to those pictures, we think it is Give Kale along with uh, one of our big favorites, Lubi Mamabola, who are running together. And these two are big favorites going into the race. So the race is on because uh, if they are in the second group, we're just hopefully to confirm those names. Um, if they are in the mix and less than a minute behind, it's going to be a charge for Fields Hill. And then, uh, then we've got the flatlands of Pine Town and then up towards Curry's Hill. And uh, this is why we get excited about this race because this is where it all starts to happen. Sabona gewa ungasfaga gezo tweets zako Mike Fogroni wa sasimu kwa kwenye no jamu wa silo kwa paya kwelia la selusu tungabo ke abasamba kambi luksa uchikango uko. Kandike nawe ke faka ke tweets zako ufake kanga gogo kandike sinayo ke ne Instagram ukwazu kukumu puma na nati ngenze la efane mekuleyo. Matota na keno kwa tripula na paya usilo kwa kwenye nalomfo wa kwa mufokoroni. Fiji, looks like you've uh, noticed something. Well, uh, just looking, we're just trying to confirm uh, the, the gap between that second place. And it sorry, isn't Gif Kale as we thought earlier. In fact, it's David Katebe, a former winner of the uh, Two Oceans Marathon, long running along with uh, Ludwig Mamabolo, also a, a second place finish, the uh, a winner in 2012. And uh, these two guys are certainly one of the big favorites. And David Katebe, well, he's a perennial yeah. silver medalist here at the Comrades Marathon, yet to get a gold, um, but has won the Two Oceans, so has some pedigree. And at the moment, so starting to pile on the pressure and put some pressure on the, uh, on the net bet running behind him. So these are the big movers of this race at the moment as uh, we head towards Kloof. Hello, Alec. Exciting news from the road here. We've seen the two leaders running uh, furio furiously up front. But right now, the two uh, big contenders moving through, Claude Mashiwe and uh, David Khatebi of TomTom, Tom. they were 68 seconds behind when I last uh, crossed you, and they've got that gap down to under 40 seconds. So they're probably 150 meters uh, behind the two leaders. They've got them in their view. They're hunting them down. They're using this flat stretch uh, as they approach uh, Kloof and, of course, the dreaded field till for most running down the, down the comrades. Remember, the first 60 to 70 kilometers, this is a mental game. It's all about patience. The next 20 to 30 kilometers, it's still a mental game, but it's all about fortitude and how much pain you, you can withstand. So the athletes are really all tremendously conditioned. It's about who feels good on the day and who's going to dig really deep because I can tell you Bruce Wardice will tell you that the last 20 kilometers it's all about hanging in as best as you can thank you so much Alec Riddle sim tata game for the next nika in the way in a paga logo cola liso locozi a man be pezu lunja gogo bone camera work here to your leo estrella lion dog bar with jongle pezu yonge lendo who's jongle is answered china got a nasty lelang um self months in doba gale and dodana it takes on them the papa mbili kwa kwenye lalom foka hadebe uludwik mama bolo eh siam kondi dog ba naye unayo imbasa kwa lake eh ikama lake iti gelondo umkimbi logo utando ba shushu gogo it's hotting up ludwik mama bolo making a move yeah, this is very exciting stuff. We can confirm that it is Ludwig Mamabolo, the 2012 winner of the Comrades Marathon, running together with the former winner of the Two Oceans. And as we look at the runners coming, looks like some of the uh, leading ladies now coming through uh, at one point up on our screens at the moment. There it is, Karen Vussman, who has a gap of run about four minutes on the, the second lady, Shane um, Bosman, and uh, looking very comfortable as usual, smiling as she goes through and uh, looking very comfortable. Now the men's race. This is the big shakers. These are the guys we need to watch out for. On the right, hand side in the white colors of Tom 
Oceans of David Kentebe, former winner of the two Oceans. Then on the other side for the former winner, 2012 winner of the Comrades Marathon, Ludwig Mamabolo, who said before the race, he is going to be the champion today. He didn't have any doubt about that. And these guys are chasing down our leaders at the moment. Omnyege wa bohate be ba nini zapa gule na reisha namsha jonga paza mingo ba ge si azindo ba usa azindo ba kono David kate ba tani pole kajua yoko tro low David kate be ya balega yena na angi au Mike Fokroni e inzwana ya gapa gule na sisi bapo ulapanga semva usemke ni na ya uti ya balega ule kala matota papa mbili uma ba bolo kunye na maje ba fana tewe kusilo na angi au fana wasel soto iti gelondo kia chisa ngoku pele so we got tewe kusilo from Lesotho. And uh, Mike Fokaroni from Zimbabwe running together in the lead. Uh, Fokaroni's legs to me uh, just shortly, just a while ago, looked a little bit stiff and sore, uh, of course, after such a long distance. And they're being hunted down by uh, our, our two pursuers, Katebe and, uh, and Mama Bola. And we have a very exciting race on hand here as we approach Fields Hill. And the long jo bone jarring descent is the best way to describe it down into Pine Town. This is the real down uh, uh, run down now. Uh, this is the this is the the steepest and the longest downhill. They're still approaching it, uh, and this is a tough part of the race because there isn't any crowd support here. You're on the dual carriageway. Uh, you're uh, alone. It's hot. The sun is baking off the tar. The sun is cooking down on top of you as well. Uh, your legs are very sore, and you realize suddenly I'm in the Comrades Marathon here, and here comes the, the really the tough part of the race, uh, the bit where it's all going to fall into place or fall apart for me. I think Bruce probably described it the best earlier when you were saying that uh, for the guys at the back of the field, and I was one of those a few years ago, and I can tell you I walked down field till because it is very, very tough uh, once you've been on your legs for a number of hours. And for these guys where they really are pounding their legs, they uh, they uh, really do hurt as they go down fields. But we've got a chance to speak to Alec Riddle up in uh, Bonita's helicopter to give us an update. Well, great excitement here as uh, the major move is being made here. Cello breaking away from Mike Focaroni, but I think it's the two guys behind who are looking exceptionally threatening. Uh, the guy from Tom Tom, we think from up in the air here is David Khatebi, and then of course uh, Claude Mashiwe. And you can also you can see them all in one shot now. Four of them within probably 15 seconds of each other. It's going to be a phenomenal downhill part of the race this and this is where somebody's race is going to come undone because the adrenaline is going to take them down too fast and this is where somebody's going to make their race perhaps a little bit of patience the way bruce fordice used to run it many many years ago but uh fields hill still to come but this is uh this is really exciting running and if i look back further down the road i I can see a runner probably 250, 300 meters back in fifth place. So these four are making the major move of the race. There's two runners, perhaps 250, 300 meters behind fourth, then another one or two stragglers, and perhaps in a kilometer we've maybe got nine athletes. But I think potentially the winner could come from one of these four. And uh, I must say, Claude Mashui, the experienced athlete, could be that man. He was so confident in the press conference the other day. He laid it on the line. It was much like a boxing conference conference like Floyd of Mayweather he said he's here to knock them out and let's see what he can do so back to the guys in the studio Shabunela kakula po ale gritle le snika ngeli solo kozi pezu lo spaza la wake la matota na washia ne kakulu 15 seconds between the uh, the the two uh, groups of the uh, gentlemen well it's making uh, the, the, the the race out of it now uh, Bruce yes well we've got four four contenders and uh, the way it's looking at the moment any one of these four could win it's very hard to read it not sure how far back it is to a, a fifth pursuer uh, but uh, they're approaching they're approaching Fields Hill as we said uh, the, the steepest and uh, and toughest uh, downhill in the whole race and uh, yeah it's a very foolish thing to race down Fields Hill it's a, it's it's a hill that uh, demands a lot of respect and it's better to let gravity work for you and to take it as easily as you can. There have been some spectacular races down that hill and some very foolish moves, notably an Alan Robb versus Bruce Fordyce race a few years ago where we, we were really foolish down there. And uh, Nick Bester, Zitulili Sinque and Charles Mateus sprinted down there at three minutes a kilometer. 
It's, it's an interesting point because as you get to the top of Hill Hill, about 24 kilometers to go, and you can see our leader at the moment uh, is really sort of battling. He's starting to tie up as he goes around the right-hand bend. Now, this is a wonderful part of the route. This is as you go down Kloof Main Road. There's beautiful trees. There's a bit of uh, shade that helps the runners, particularly the guys at the back of the field that have people seconding them and giving them some sort of spare socks and some encouragement along the way. But crowds along here are absolutely incredible, and that will certainly help the athletes. But David Katebe now passing Mike Fukuroni as we look at our ladies' race very shortly. Shana Rodemeyer looking like she's in second place and uh, looking pretty lost. She's lost all of the uh, men that were surrounding her, but uh, looking like she's limping at the moment, uh, Bruce. Uh, yes, she's discarded all the followers, so uh, not sure why she's on her own there because lots of the guys would like to key off her and use her as, uh, for pace judgment. Um, but she does look a little bit sore, but by this stage, everybody's sore. So into, into the beautiful tree-lined streets of uh, Kloof at the moment. And this is a big Nedbank activation here. And you'll see a big stands as you come round into the city. Well, not really a city. Kloof is a very small little town on the top of Fields Hill. Beautiful little area of South Africa. Wonderful climate. And uh, you can see the runners. There's our lead at the moment. And uh, Tabojo Solo. And uh, he's been chased, chased down. Now, David Katebe, this is the former winner of the Two Oceans Marathon. Let us remind you, he's made a big surge here. And I think uh, with 25 odd kilometers, maybe 25 and a half kilometers to go, it's a bit too early to be going this hard david katebe if he wins the medal, he wants to dedicate it to his late father, Ludwig Mamabolo. Well, this is extraordinary racing, you know, with 25 Ks or so to go. It's like a boxing fight. I mean, everybody's having a go in the front. Now David Katebi is having a go. Uh, it's a long way, to, it's still a long, long way to run, and I still think that the leader will finally uh, establish himself uh, going up the last major hill, or one of the last major hills at 45th cutting, but the way they're going at the moment, they just hammer and tongs. Everybody's having a go in the front, and there's surges, counter surges. It's very exciting racing. Well, you can see the crowds and the festivities along Kloof uh, Main Road. There's a, a pipe band playing and lots of support for the leading athletes and fantastic atmosphere as the, the athletes come through Kloof. David Kateba leading at the moment, but he is charging through this field. The last two or three kilometers, I'd love to see those splits. They must be some of the fastest of the race. And uh, he's cruising through. He's using the energy of the crowd as he goes through the Nedbeck water point and uh, takes the right-hand turn. There'll be a big crowd as a stand is on the left-hand side as he comes through Kloof. Um, but has he gone too early that's the big question i think he has he's racing this as if he's got 10 kilometers to go rather than 25 and he's still got to go down field hill he's still got to go through the flatlands of pine town and up cowie's hill and then of course there's those rolling hills through westville that can absolutely destroy you so david katebe he's either feeling really really good or he's uh, maybe perhaps uh, getting a little overexcited <laughs> Um, the time to put up some new strategies now because as uh, Mike says is it David Kadebe has it taken it too early or is it gonna be able to sustain that well I'd hate to have a commentator's curse and say he's taking it too early but uh, he, it, it's early let's put it that way it's very early if you think that there's more than a half marathon to go with three seriously big hills ahead of them it looks like uh, Mama Bola is chasing him um, and uh, and we still have we've, we still have four runners here any one of whom could take it by the look of things uh, and they're running through the Nedbank uh, Green Mile uh, fantastic spectator support 
um, and somebody who I'm keen to see if he'll still be jumping like that later on in about five hours' time when the back <laughs> mark has come through. Well, he is a superhero, so it's, uh, he could probably do that for the next five days. <laughs> yeah. But he hasn't run comrades in five and a half hours, that's for sure. I like the T-shirt that I saw uh, uh, that somebody was wearing. I'm, I'm, running the, I'm running the comrades marathon. What's your superpower? That's what Comrades Marathon is all about. Eh? Superman there. John Gile Fawmfana Gasselo. Fogakadebe sitting the Abba Nayongo. Go to get here. Just sit at Inoko and plan Inoko. We chat to Kuseli Kasha Elipa Inoko. Eh, Bunge Kafane Legi. Sambo na ke kote buza itini na uza wapa na egute kube kubeba kwenye finita. Lenga tige spinda kwa kona. Sit chat to into Kaulis Lai. Go to get Mas Jonge Jeng Kala Pamgu Bas Pege Pambi Liba. Inga ba uya mvenja nina. Le ponsi na kuyo nka mukza utika gogo. Mas ba lege so kangela uwale kreto tezo. Alep. Well, I can tell you this is almost like the calm before the storm. And uh, I mentioned that as we build up towards uh, Fields Hill, the athletes get a false sense of security. And I think David Khatebi is putting the hammer down. And I wonder if it's not a little bit too soon. Spoke to John Hamlet at the press conference the other day. He said, watch out for Khatebi. He's trained really well. He's as strong as uh, Gif Keller. But I wonder if he hasn't perhaps been a little bit too impatient because he has opened up a 100-meter gap in about a kilometer. And, I mean, he's running against some world-class athletes. He's really put the hammer down. He must have run close to 3.20 per kilometer. There's three guys still lurking within 100 meters of him. We're uh, in the Kloof area. Field Hill is looming. This is where the real meat of the race starts. This is where the legs can break up or the legs can survive. This is where the mind can falter or the mind can push through. And it's going to be a phenomenal final 20 or so kilometers in the Comrades Marathon 2016. David Khatebi looks absolutely brilliant running for Tom Tom Athletics Club. He's got a fantastic and experienced coach in John Hamlet who coached Andrew Kelly in 2001 to the last down run win. Give Kelly to the last down run win. Can he pull off a third one? But I still say, there's a lot of running still to come. I think some guys like Claude Mashui are still holding themselves back a little bit. And this race is far from over. Let's go back to the studio. Samuel Laguye, Alec Riddle Paya, a sneaker, Oko, Anako, sneaker corner, a suka pap, his look with Chopaye, Chukandike, Sasaupe, Tumbi, Asakubeka, Lamadodana. I'm just trying to imagine John Hamlet. Is he not pulling his hair at this point in time? Because uh, it looks like everyone is like sort of talking the same language that uh, Hadebe might just be too soon. Uh, it might be too soon, but uh, he's, you know, he's feeling good, so he's going for it. Um, there's a long way to go still. I spoke to John earlier on his phone out there on the road, and he said to me, watch David. He said, David's making a move, and I'm talking about 20 minutes ago. And he, and he did say, as we've heard, that uh, he's been training very, very well, that he's very strong, been training up at high altitude, um, and, and he looks pretty good at this stage. Well, this is the big point that we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes, Fields Hill. And uh, he's literally probably 20 meters away from the actual start of the descent. He's going past uh, Fields Hill Garage very shortly. And then he'll start this big descent down into Pine Town. And this is a, such a crucial part of the race. There's Colleen de Rieck, who's uh, first time we've seen this a legend of South African running who spent many years, 23 years living in the United States, has been one of the Americans' most uh, prolific marathon runners, one who age group at the Ironman World Championships a couple of years ago go but is Durban born and bred and amazingly at uh, the ripe old age of 53 is running a first ever comrades marathon and uh, certainly will be in with a chance of a gold medal and uh, is very very excited she said the other day she's very emotional about running here in front of friends and family and uh, she looks like she's pretty comfortable at the moment Colleen Dirick. So Galeen uh, just making her way along the course. Looks like she's going through um, probably Hillcrest area at this point. So not quite sure exactly where she is on the course. And uh, looking at the ladies of the ladies race at the moment, and she's coming through the Hillcrest area. Karen Busman in that typical style, the shoulders slightly hunched up, but such an incredibly economical style of running. She seems to smile the entire way around, and it looks like uh, she's just kind of breezing through. We don't know what the gap is at the moment, but uh, Karen Busman, the massive, massive Massive favourite going into this race. Lots of talk of sub six hours. We're not quite sure. I'm sure Helen uh, Luca will be keeping an eye on her splits at the moment. But uh, is she in track to break, break six hours? I think that's the question everybody's asking today. 
Tata, ma, eh, if you look at the distance now with the ladies, since we following the ladies, we're making sure that the world needs to know how the ladies are doing. It's probably between Caroline and Bosman, it's, a, it's about 500 meters uh, gap, that, that the distance gap between them. And I believe that as South Africans, uh, they are very happy at the moment, thinking we're going to take this one as well. Kisa Ulungrum Africa Bura asked about Akame Same Haulu, out to Sheba or Maimonga Pili, the Abu Beti, Kiba Retana, Baruna, or the South Manhanto, Rene Tipela, Munyaka Munga, Time Pahe, Jolica also, we are Jolo, Shazwa, Kilometer Latina, Mashume, Amasano, who defeated Alatona, Itabela, Mosebetu Munga, Oilumur, Tatlamel, I am Ueme, Haulu, have you a great or Tanga Jolo? Thank you together um, it's all heating up now. Um, yes, do we have another race leader? Because we're with our leading bike and we've got uh, Ludwig Mamabolo now in, in shot. So perhaps we have another race leader. We, we're not absolutely sure. Coming down Fields Hill. So from the top of Fields Hill, it's possible to see the sea in the distance. And lots of runners look across through the, through the haze and get a glimpse of the Indian Ocean in the distance. They have a huge distance still to run. Uh, very steep downhill. It hurts a lot. And... And we're just trying to establish if, in fact, we have another race leader, and that's Ludwig. Well, I just confirmed from our producers that is the second base. It's Ludwig Mamabolo, and this is bike number one, who's uh, kind of covering this race as they descend down the opposite way of Field Hill. And this is what we've been talking about all the time. Now, Ludwig Mamabolo has got lots of experience. Don't forget, he's won the race in 2012. Um, he's had a rough time since then with all sorts of uh, personal issues. But certainly coming back, uh, 39 years old, lots of experience. He knows to take it easy down here. The, diff the key is now how far ahead is David Katebe because he was absolutely flying last time we saw him. Yeah, Ludwig Mamabolo looking very relaxed indeed. And, uh, well, he knows that he has to catch up with uh, David before he stretches the lead, that lead too far. Ndota is Tartulena Simonayo Apa. Jongi no paenda tige. Gonfo Ubabe Indawo is Tartu. Brist, just to give us an idea, these guys, what sort of pace are they running down this? Very road? close to three minutes a kilometre at this, at, at, at this speed. So, uh, very fast running downhill here. Uh, it was interesting that Sello looked over his shoulder there. That's a bit of a giveaway that he's looking over his shoulder to check is, is his third place safe and who's behind him. If you're trying to win the race, you're looking forwards. Now, now we've got you look ahead of the route now. It's going to be very interesting because uh, they're going to hit the flats of Pylons now. But before we uh, let Bruce answer, let's go up to Alec Riddle in the sky in our Bonita's helicopter. Right, so we're, we're on our way down Fields Hill towards Pine Town, and the race is well and truly on. We've got Khatebi who's in front, and in second place now, it's the master of the downwind, downrun, Ludwig Mamabolo. Listen to this downrun record, second, first, second. And he's got all the experience in the world. I don't see too much threats from behind. And um, although there is one athlete probably lurking 150 meters behind him, but Ludwig Mamabolo is the experienced guy. If he's patient now, and he just holds this gap to Khatebi and waits for the latter stages of the race. I really do believe that Ludwig Mamabolo could be the guy because he, like Bushui, in the press conference the other day, was all about winning. He 
said he was going to win this race. Nobody else has got a chance, and he is living up to it right now. But there's still a lot of racing to come. There's a false sense of security through uh, Pine Town. Then we've got the dreaded Cowies Hill. Lots of more undulations, but Ludwig Mamabolo seems to be running a very clever race, and that's because he's experienced. David Khatebi only has the experience of training with Gif Kele and being coached by John Hamlet. He is nowhere near as experienced as the man who's chasing. And remember, it's always favorite to be the one hunting down rather than the one to be hunted. Back to the studio. Thank you so much, Alec. Well, Zinjalo Gazindo, she has born of Bangat Zakube, Cassia, Papao, David, Tum Fogaka Debe, Wamba Pampi, Ludwig Mamabolo, 39 year old, Unkabike Wambin, now he has been running a clever race indeed, Ludwig Mamabolo, with all his experience. Well, Sia Chinchag and Gogo, a commentary here too, says our Chinchag and Gwenzel Doba, says of Pega Pampi, Sukia and Gogapa, let allow 20 locals of Tatinda, we are Mugandike, Victi, you call Nekal and Guake, with the lovely lady, Esmas Yoga Kulu, Gwilinye Kala, we are Greenwood. <laughs> Well, of course, uh, remember that you can still win a thousand rand airtime with Old Mutual. Call your loved ones, chat with friends, update your social media, or visit www.worldofendurance.co.za to plan for greatness. Simply answer the questions on your screen. You could be a winner. It's that easy. So uh, now for you to. Uh, Enter, enter now. Get yourself a chance to win a thousand rand airtime. Quick question for you. What is the missing word? Do what things? A, B, or C? Let's miss your answer. Old mutual in your answer to 34068. So welcome back to live coverage of the 2016 Comrades Marathon and uh, that is a shot of David Khatebe, the uh, current race leader, the 2013 Two Oceans winner as well, who's continuing to plough along ahead of Ludwig Mamabolo, who is uh, chasing hard and somebody who has 
He's been plagued by injuries and uh, for other personal reasons has had an up and down time since winning this race back in uh, 2012. Two down runs ago that was. The man that of course broke the foreign domination of the uh, Comrades Marathon. And uh, the likes of Bongo Tembo, who's the defending downrun champion, intriguingly, seems to be moving through the field. Just wonder if he's left it a little too late, but he is moving slightly through the uh, through the field. And with that David Fatebe, who continues to uh, lead his uh, lead uh, by about 30 seconds from Ludwig Mamabola, who's currently in second place. So a little bit of a chase on for Ludwig Mamabola. He's a strong runner, is uh, Mamabola, when he hasn't been plagued by injury. Uh, Big T and uh, Ellie Greenwood alongside for the next half hour or so in this race. But uh, Ludwig Mamabola is somebody who has been, I suppose, owing to the severe injuries and the, uh, the torrid time he's had since winning in 2012 has been dismissed by many people big t but uh, ludwig mamavolo running a very clever and uh, mature race it seems this is about that when the muswana ani have not changed among amanda i don't want to start with you but church of chea we have fun gamma homes the over oi me swung them around what you see which one of my fun one ella ever to come be was a gino number four to go about corona with the kaya fancy also with a moon name now who comes or salam rahu comes on any of a wakate fancy also with over mona and a utonga 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 yeah, I mean, it's obviously uh, very close up there. They've still got, what is it going to be, about another hour and 15 of racing to go. So uh, 30 seconds can soon get swallowed up. It, you know, uh, even in these later stages, there are some small little uphill rises. And if someone's struggling on one of those, you know, 30 seconds can soon turn into 15. Then that person in second feels they're attached. And uh, they um, obviously even 30 seconds, you get these straightaways like we're seeing now, um, where they'll actually be able to see the runner up ahead. And that's really helpful. To, to have something visual to actually chase. So it'll be interesting what's going to happen in that next little, yeah, hour and 15 or so. I remember Bung Wilson Timber was around about Cowie's Hill that he finally made his move in the 2014 race. But uh, where did you make your move? I don't know if I made my move, but I just, uh, pl <laughs> just plowed, on. plowed on through. But I always say, you know, uh, it was uh, literally in the final 10 minutes. So uh, the pace I was moving, that was uh, probably the last sort of two and a half kilometers or so. Um, uh, the uh, two Russian twins, the Nogalevas, they did come into sight, uh, you know, and I, but I didn't chase them for very long. It was there they were on the road up ahead. And like I said, that really, really does help if you actually have a, a visual to chase. So uh, it does go to show, I say, the race isn't over to the finish line so at this sort of stage we can start seeing yeah who has really dropped off and is maybe out of contention um, but I'm sure there's men who are still outside of the top 10 they've still got plenty time um, if they're running strongly to uh, still be moving up into those gold medals well for somebody who hasn't quite covered uh, this distance at this sort of time David Hatebe seems to be uh, thundering along here fairly well his uh, strides long full fresh he doesn't look to be in any uh, sort of discomfort and he's uh, not being closed down by Ludwig van who himself is a very strong runner when he's fully fit and healthy, claims that he is. And as Zolani mentioned a little earlier as well, he's certainly running the race in the memory of his father who passed away tragically back in March. But uh, David Hadebe continues to just plow along again, just some more rehydration for the athletes. It's a little warmer out on the uh, route. But David Khadebe might have been unfancied by some, but uh, is, uh, is looking good for now. But I wonder if he can hold on. He might have just made the move uh, a little too early. That seems to be consensus from most. But we've got uh, Nick Bester of Nedbank Running Club on the line again. Nick, uh, thanks for joining us. Where exactly on the route are you now? Yeah, we just passed Khadebe. Like you said, he's really, uh, running really well at the moment. Yes, we're hunting with Richard Mambabola, uh, about uh, not more than 300 metres behind him. Also, Bong Musa Mutembo moved to, to top five position. He caught uh, Raymond Pasquari and Sintiri Nirela. And he was got, still got Mike Pokorone that was in third, fourth position, but he was looked like he was struggling. Uh, Max King from America was lying 10th, uh, going through the green mile. And he's, he's, he's running strongly now. I expect he can be in the top five at the end of the race. Nick, just uh, just memories of uh, of you running three minutes a k down uh, down Fields Hill, uh, coming back as we've seen the way David Khadebe has been uh, approaching uh, some of these areas. Uh, just take us back to to when you were running. How do you manage three three minutes a k down downhill like yeah. that? <laughs> no, I wish I knew, you know, but my mental attitude that I could just uh, tell you that uh, I, I I saw myself become a comedy pilot, and that is my mental attitude. 
So I was not keen, you know, on the scrape of the, of the pain. I definitely got out as fast as possible and managed a 248 game and a 252. But it counted against me going out so great, but I still managed the second place at my best commerce ever. I think that was my best race ever, although I won the, the down in 91. Uh, this was real racing between me and Charles and Zed Sinque. We uh, went through the 50 mile mark, the 80 plate mark, and world record race. But unfortunately, we couldn't hold on. But yes, yeah, now the guys uh, are hot. It's very hot in Pine Town now. Uh, it's still an hour and 20 minutes running left, so I think still a lot can happen in the race. Yeah, fair enough. You mentioned Bong Wilson Timber, who is uh, making the move through the uh, race. And uh, in 2014, he seemed to make his move around around Cowies. What's that, about 17 kilometers to go? Did uh, Bong Wilson Timber, he, has he got just a little too much left now, or do you think he's still in with a shot? We passed him going down steel chill and uh, I could see that he caught a couple of guys. So he missed just, I don't know what the exact step between him and and for at the moment. Uh, we're on top of Cowies now. I'm going to stop on top of Cowies with you and watch the guys. And if you call me in 10 minutes time, I can get you updated. Okay. Uh, we'll certainly get you an update. But just a moment before we, we, we let you go, any update uh, from the road of your uh, female athletes? Well, we, we're just concentrating heavily on the men at the moment. I've got people looking at the females. We've got uh, our second team looking after them. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll catch up with you in uh, a little while again, although we can tell you that Shane Bosman is still in second place. Thank you, Nick Bester. And there she Thank is. Thank you very much. Shane Bosman still uh, plodding along, currently in second place overall behind Carolyn Bosman. So uh, Nedbank Run that. Club continues to churn out a couple of uh, top, top athletes. Shane Bosman, she, she looked like she was running a little awkwardly going through Kloof. And, uh, I'm not quite sure if this is just the, the fact that the body is showing a little signs of fatigue, Ellie, or, uh, yeah, or she's genuinely hurt. It, it's sometimes hard to tell whether she's slightly grimacing or smiling at this stage. Um, I mean, she's still picking her legs up nicely. Um, she's still moving there. Um, and I mean, certainly now she's a little bit out on her own. But I think uh, Shawnee is one of these people. She's got her dark glasses on. She tends to look a little more focused, even if she is comfortable. So she, uh, I think that's her fairly typical running style and uh, looks fairly comfortable. So looking fairly comfortable then is uh, the view of Ellie Greenwood, winner in 2014, unfortunately out through injury for this year's race. But we uh, need to go back to the Bonitas eye in the sky. Alec Riddle, things uh, heating up at the front, are they? Well, we're watching David Khatebi. He's just had a drink. He's trying to re refresh himself. And I can tell you, this athlete is really laying down the gauntlet. Get out your stopwatches at home and take a look. This guy is taking three strides per second. He is motoring. From the time he got off uh, Fields Hill, he was 20 seconds ahead of Ludwig Mamabolo, the guy I thought was the biggest threat to him. The gap has ballooned to a minute, and he hasn't even reached Cowie's Hill. So, David Khatebi is really putting down the hammer here and he's saying to the guys, well, I'm going for glory here today. And if you want to come and catch me, you're going to have to run really hard. Ludwig Mamabolo is difficult to say at this stage, whether he's conserving himself for the latter stages or whether it's just that David Khatebi is in a league of his own. Sometimes inexperience can help because you don't know the pain that is coming. Sometimes it can be foolhardy because you just go a little bit too early. I can remember my very last Comrades Marathon feeling absolutely brilliant through Pine Town and up Cowie's Hill, but my race came crashing down on the other side. I'm sure many Comrades runners have got stories like that where you humbled and you go on into Durban like the matchstick man because of all the cramps. Let's hope it doesn't happen to David Khatebi of Tom Tom. He's got a great coach at John Hamlet. He's produced winners before. Can he do it again? Let's go back to the studio. Talking about the uh, outcome of cramps, certainly uh, nearly half the field of uh, marathon runners uh, struggle with uh, cramp in this Comrades Marathon. An ultra marathon, nearly 90 kilometers out on the road, and certainly the uh, feet pounding the asphalt throughout the uh, morning so far. But at the moment, it's been a fine run by. Well, there's Alec Riddle's helicopter, eye in the sky, the Bonitas eye in the sky. We've got Digaledi in the Energade eye in the sky, Digaledi Mukungwana, who we'll chat to in just a moment as well. But that's where uh, Alec is at the moment, enjoying an aerial view of this 2016 Comrades Marathon. It might not be Arthur's seat, but that's Alec's seat. It's a very comfortable one as well, a way to watch. But uh, 
Yeah, he's showing us one thing, uh, Big G, that he mentioned is that uh, Hatteb is taking three strides a second. And it has inc increased that lead now of uh, 30 odd seconds to a minute over Ludwig Mamabolo. Catalina Coquiti Bangayo, what I've been achieving, Marchau and Delena Coquiti Bangayo, Oka de Bata Samona Neva Namanda, Musonoa Catev and Delena Cotangayo, Rakubanga comes to Sora Wan Mamabolo, Udolingata Uva, Ascom from Musico, Fancy Asco Condor, Akon from Tico Moraro, Tazin Cotanda Sori, Musek Gidiman and Delena Cangayo, Ringa Fetter Cobana, Enes. Well, now from uh, Halleck Riddle a moment ago, giving us an update on what's been happening in the uh, men's race, we've got Digiledi Mukwana in the Energy Aid Eye in the Sky. Indeed, Dwayne, problems are starting to become realities, or realities are starting to become problems. Like we've said earlier on, that uh, probably after 50 mark, the reality. The ladies at the moment, uh, the gap is becoming wider and wider, and it's not becoming easier for the second lady, Bosman, from South Africa. We are Caroline, Thank you, Diggy Lady. Now, this is uh, Cowie's Hill. Oh, already at uh, Cowie's Hill, Hatebe. So the race leader, David Hatebe, 2013 Two Oceans winner, is showing no signs of easing. He's showing no signs of slowing down. Continues to uh, press forward. He's still nearly 20 kilometers to go. It's uh, just under 20 kilometers to go. 17 odd. Uh, so there's still plenty that could happen. Looping while we're chasing, although he's increased that lead now to a minute. It was 30 seconds a few kilometers ago. But uh, David Hatebe is exactly one minute and one second ahead of uh, Ludwig Mamabolo at the moment. Tabo Hasselo uh, running for the uh, Max Kozulu at the tail side. He was leading for a short while. I can tell you he's still holding on to third place. In terms of uh, timing, he's only about a minute and a half behind Mamabolo, so not too far off the pace. But it's still Tom Tom's David Hatebe who uh, leads with the 17-odd uh, kilometers to go. In the women's race, though, I can just tell you an update that uh, Shane Postman finds herself over six and a half minutes behind uh, Carolyn Wostman in the women's race. So uh, in terms of leading men's race and the women's race, uh, Hateb is increasing his lead slightly, but uh, Carolyn Wostman is increasing, uh, increasing her lead significantly. But uh, Hateb is looking very strong and continually hydrating, continually getting some food in the system as well. <laughs> Um, when you look at uh, Ludwig, maybe he underestimated, um, you know, the person of, uh, you know, in front of him. I think that's quite likely, and uh, it's just interesting to look at his running form, like he had his head tilted down there, almost looking at the ground, which, yes, you're will be more likely to do on an uphill but he's certainly not sort of eyes up ahead and where is he like chasing him down it's more looks like he's like okay just get me up here and keep on going um, although our lead male there I did see him also sneak a little look behind it was hard to tell whether he was just using a corner as a bit of an opportunity uh, to see who was there or if he was genuinely worried but certainly uh, I would say Ludwig is uh, he looks like he's having to uh, work in these uh, later stages Ludwig Mamabolo is uh, looking a little more sluggish than David Hatebe, who is flying uh, 
around the Serie A. Well, 18 and a half kilometers to go. Ludwig Mamavola was uh, a minute and one second behind, but I think just from the strides that uh, Hatebe was taking coming through here, that he's extended that advantage even further. But Ludwig Mamavola is a fine runner. Limpopo born, a man who uh, made South Africa so proud four years ago when he uh, broke that foreign domination of the Comrades Marathon. Just calling for more water as well is Luke Mamavolo as he goes through 4.20 odd mark. He's got just around 18 kilometers to go now in this 2016 Comrades Marathon. Luke Mamavolo still uh, don't discount him just yet. He's somebody who's got the uh, wiles to be able to finish off this race in fine style. It is a down run, so it is particularly taxing in the back end, despite the fact that runners can run negative splits, and certainly many of the elite athletes will do. Uh, Ellie, you know all too well about running uh, negative splits at this, uh, this down run. When you ran this for the first time, did, did anyone explain to you that it was uh, only a down run in the back end of this race? Yeah, I mean, I'd, uh, I'd already won, done one up run, so I was uh, kind of aware of that, but it's very different. And I think probably one of the worst things was to run the uh, up run and then having driven back to Durban following that and thought, oh my goodness, if I come back another year, I'm going to have to run down it because sometimes driving down that uh, highway into Durban is uh, actually more terrifying than when you've got your legs moving and you're actually running there on the course. So uh, as much as we're talking about the men's and women's winners and uh, talking of an opportunity to win, remember that you can still win a thousand rand airtime with Old Mutual. You can call your loved ones, chat with friends, you can update uh, your social media or visit www.worldofendurance.co.za to plan for greatness. Simply answer the questions that uh, are on your screen. You could be a winner. It's that easy, so uh, enter now for your chance to win a thousand rand airtime. This is uh, Tabojo Silo back in third place, who's following on, uh, trailing on behind David Khatebe, who's leading at the moment uh, over Ludwig Mamabolo. So, third place at the moment is uh, Tabojo Silo. He was uh, in front at one stage, but now finds himself uh, currently in third position overall. He's somebody who's also been running a strong race and uh, after his top five finish last year, much was expected of uh, Tibo Hotel, somebody who knows the route and he's uh, familiar with the surroundings, he's familiar with the environment, he's also familiar with South Africa having uh, found some success here going as far back as 2009 where he won the uh, city to city 50k. Now let's talk about the uh, women's race. Oh, this is, uh, this is uh, I think this is Kloof uh, with the athletes going through all the shaded area. Just a lovely slight uh, shade will be welcomed by the athletes. Uh, gentle breeze is always welcome, so to a little bit of shade. And uh, this will be the uh, car that's leading out Carolyn Busman. So expect to see her coming on behind. There she is, just behind the uh, car, leading, leading women. It's Caroline Busman who's increasing that advantage currently. Bashane Bosman, who was lying second overall in this uh, race. So, Caroline Bosman of KBMG ahead of uh, Nedbank Running Club's Bashane Bosman in the women's race. A gap of now over seven minutes between the two. But Caroline Bosman still looking very comfortable. She's done the, the, the smart thing, some say, by, uh, by saying, I'm going to run my race, Ellie, rather than saying, I'm going to go out for the win, I'm going to go out for the record. Do you think she's taken the pressure off herself? I think it's hard to take the pressure off yourself. I mean, you can say that and say, oh, I'll just do my thing and do the best on the day and no big targets, but I'm sure in the back of her head, um, I mean, there's pressure from outside, but also from within. She'll have put in a huge amount of training um, since her win last year and saying, yeah, I want to come back. I want to get those back-to-back -back wins. Um, but she is looking extremely relaxed right now. She, I'm sure she's getting uh, feedback from her seconds along the way, from the crowds, that she's extending her lead. Um, uh, the nice thing now, um, it's new that she's got that clock in front of her and so she'll literally be able to uh, follow along and think, well, I've got seven minutes and maybe an hour and 20 of running to go. So she might be doing a bit of quick maths in her head and figuring out uh, that she just needs to keep going. And uh, certainly she's looking really, really strong and looks like she's enjoying her day, which is a great thing to see. For you, obviously, disappointing that you aren't able to uh, defend your, your downrun title, Ellie, but uh, had you done your plans in your preparation in terms of what you wanted to run at various splits, what sort of time, and how you, you were going to pace yourself throughout this race? 
No, I mean, I think maybe opposed to someone like Caroline, who I would guess has actually done a bit more training on the course. I mean, I've run four comrades, but that's the only time I've ever been on the route. So it's a little harder for an international runner like myself to make exact splits along the way. Um, and uh, yeah, my injury popped up about sort of three and a half, four weeks ago. So I'd hope to get in, you know, a little bit more of touch up training, a couple of last long runs, and then I would have done the, okay, what pace could I realistically target? Big T, in terms of the uh, women's race, Caroline Bosman at the moment is well ahead of Shane Bosman. I can tell you that Kaiser Berg of uh, Nedbank Running Club is also making a big move. So too Colleen de Riek, who at 52 is just uh, stunning the entire world with their performances in uh, the longer distance races and shattering uh, age group world records, particularly after the Two Oceans Marathon, which has shattered the uh, 50 kilometer world age group record. But in terms of the, uh, the women's race here, it's turning out to be an intriguing battle but Wussman, uh, when you look at it from a South African perspective, well, the significance of South Africans winning the race to South Africans, what, what, what is that to you? Well, what I think, uh, you know, the uh, absence of the uh, Russians at this time around, I think, is giving the likes of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Wussman that particular chance of really making it big uh, in that stage. And, of course, I, I think uh, when you look at the likes of, uh, uh, you know, um, these other women who, I think, uh, according to me, um, she has been right there, Shari Bosman right, giving that really uh, a tough challenge to, um, you know, Karen Wussman. But I think um, what Karen has done earlier on is just to pace herself well and running her race. She's not even competing with anyone, but she's running her own race. Yeah, I mean, she is competing, but she's showing them uh, exactly who's in charge and that she's a South African and she knows this course. But I think the nice thing in the absence of the Russians is that there are other internationals here um, because you can only say, hey, a South African won if there's internationals in the race. Otherwise, it's a given. Um, so I think we're seeing uh, Cassia Berg of Sweden um, was in third place. Um, Cassia has come second at the World 100 Kilometer Championships last year. She ran a time of seven hours 20 for uh, um, 100 kilometers so certainly it's always nice to win but you also want to win against great competition so you can say yeah I really earned that and I really showed that um, I am the best runner out there so this is a shot of the uh, leading man and the uh, leading woman the leading man at the moment David Hadebe the 2013 two oceans winner hoping for his first uh, comrades title and Caroline Busman defending champion of the uh, comrades marathon is the leading woman at the moment extending their advantage both are the uh, two but just to to, to Eleanor touch one once again on the, the women's race before we go back to uh, Hadebe and talk specifically about the men is trail running. Trail running has become a, a, a training part of many athletes in uh, in recent years. I know you you are actually quite a uh, big trail runner yourself but, but how do you reconcile trail running and road running? It's all putting one foot in front of the other and trying to get from A to B in the fastest time possible. Completely different terrain though. Um, it is different terrain um, and I mean I think there's much variation within the world of trail running like you can get some super extreme mountain runs such as the UTB, UTMB in France that's 160 kilometers huge amount of elevation I'm sure the lead runners there might not fare so well at comrades um, but you can get to uh, some trail races that are relatively runnable and then you've got the leg strength that you need not just the fast speed and the leg strength certainly comes in handy on the down run, as Bruce Ford has uh, made note of earlier. But as we watch David Hatebe uh, charging forward, Alec Riddle up in the sky, is he continuing to extend his advantage over Ludwig Mamabolo, David Hatebe? Well, I can tell you that the gap is ballooning even more. I've never seen a run like this from the bottom of Fields Hill, or in fact, it's even started before he went down Fields Hill. That's where he opened the gap of 26 seconds on Ludwig Mamabolo. But since then, he's really been putting the hammer down as uh, he tries to go over Cowies Hill and into Westville. And the gap is almost two minutes now. And one wonders if that's not perhaps a little bit uh, too fast too soon. Or alternatively, it's a case of Ludwig holding back a little bit. One of the things about inexperienced runners, and perhaps the guys in the studio can commentate on this in a while, is that when you get over Cowie's Hill, you tend to breathe a sigh of relief and you think you can relax because it looks like it's flat all the way to Durban. 
but it, this M13 is very undulating all the way and of course one or two of those hills particularly up to 45th cutting and tollgate are really really strenuous and that's where the dreams of many have come unstuck I mean we saw uh, Charles Mateus and Nick Best in a phenomenal duel over tollgate in 2001 we saw a phenomenal duel between Alexei Volgan and um, Andrew Kelleher and that was only decided on the other side of tollgates we've seen many guys come from a minute or two behind in Cowie Zill to win this race so don't switch off those television sets just yet David Khatebi is having the race of his life but I do not think this race is over just yet unless we're seeing a superhuman effort let's go back to the commentators well, uh, talking about superhuman efforts, well, uh, it does seem to be putting in a superhuman effort if he's extended his advantage, Alec, as you say, to two odd minutes, Big T. That is an enormous advantage now, but there is still a couple of uh, hills to come that could still separate uh, Khatebe and Mama Bolo. 45th cutting is still to come, there's still Tollgate to come, there's still plenty of action in this race yet, but Khatebe is certainly on phenomenal pace. Dushab kuma kama nda musoro wa hatewe ukati sime zaka tewe na nungo kuma kaa chifika chino kama raham mi awara shika honna na mina shika za furara wa sa wangwa soro za shino ringambar sabera tima tima soro hosa la fezi awara nti urikono wana mwina jena hapo nana ba hone sahara stadium kata wana na mose fezi ya lodwik mama bulo usime zaka tewe aka dutewe na kama rao fezi ya araba la melesa minute ni mimili fezi ineba kutiri bae fezi kana inea kuma hone bukati ha lodwik mama bulo na msuwa na aneba wa haka tewe ane dushab kuma soro arali Ranga tuanga e pesa. Ringa bona mbambe ini angaiba kunesa. Richie angai makumoni kahe mbambe due. Going through Clue then, this is uh, Shane Bosman, the second placed woman at the moment. Seven on minute gap between Carolyn Bosman in the lead and uh, Shane Bosman. But when you look at the uh, women's race, yes, there's plenty of uh, running yet to be done. But uh, a seven on minute gap, it's going to take something phenomenal to stop uh, Caroline Bosman, who looked so comfortable when she passed through Clue. Yeah, and I think probably the disadvantage for Shane as well. She knows Caroline very well. She's seen her race results. I'm sure they've done a bit of training together. They share the same coach. So she knows knows from past experience Caroline isn't one to really falter towards the end so she'll be thinking wow I mean can I really I'd have to pull something extraordinary out of the bag um, I do wonder also if Shawnee is starting to uh, be a little concerned about some of the other ladies behind her she's got a lot of unknown quantities in uh, Cassia Berg Maris, maybe Sarah Bard of the USA um, Colleen Daruk they're all coming behind her she won't have the quite um, information on that um, but I would have thought now she might be starting to get a little bit worried about more what's behind her rather than thinking of Caroline up ahead yeah I think uh, Shane Bosman is not quite as comfortable as she would have liked to have been at this stage you mentioned uh, Sarah Bard it's disappointing that she started to trail off just a little considering that she is uh, somebody who's very very strong as a, as a trail runner as well we, we talked about that she won the JFK in uh, November last year 50 kilometer trail run along the Appalachian Trail absolutely beautiful uh, part of the United States but Shane Bosman plodding along uh, here Colleen de Riet, though is uh, making up some time on her currently fourth place overall uh, speaking of the United States uh, Colleen de Riet now running for the United States based in uh, Oregon and uh, running hard she's up to fourth overall and Kaiser Berg is making a uh, run through the the women's field as well but in the men's race it's still David Khatebe who is putting in as Alec put it a superhuman effort to extend his advantage over Ludwig Momobolo in what is a remarkable run so far but the 2016 Commons Marathon is throwing up a few uh, interesting twists and turns but David Khatebe is still pounding the asphalt in uh, fine fashion it was three strides a second uh, a short while ago as he continued to extend his advantage over Ludwig Mamabola. But I dare say there's still plenty to come. He's just gone over Huntley's, uh, Huntley's Hill, a lesser, lesser known hill. But uh, 45th cutting and Tollgate, let's wait and see how he tackles those. What's interesting is that, uh, you know, if you look at all the uh, challenging hills, they have overcame them. I think uh, starting from the Polish shores in Changa, Border Hill, Kawis Hill, uh, as well as the Fields Hill, those are the most, you know, difficult, you know, hills. But of course, right now, it's going to be like winding a bit, but then uh, they know that they are now following the course towards uh, town. That's where they're going to be able to be going there. The Nichipinga Chinua Gambas, or Aralim Suanahoy, Aitanga, the Nakuitanga, Shino. 
dila ine ya kuita ngayo kadre ine ya kukitiba ngayo msura wakatebe ukuwa sume za sore anga feza ashika ujia himba mbe gaori minute mibili ndo ama matomo nandari minute mibili fezi iya amba suriji mkuma kamba mbe heino but I can tell you early uh, if you are so determined because this, this is the start of the race where you can be able to ask yourself whether you have got that uh, you know strength to push you until the 89th minutes yeah, I mean, he's looking uh, super strong um, in the lead right there. And sometimes when you go out on a bit of a limb like that, it comes down to pride as well. If I don't want to look stupid and I've gone out and pushed a little hard and you can push yourself even harder of like, I do not want to get caught. And, you know, maybe your manager or, you know, your fellow athletes afterwards said, what were you doing? And, you know, getting more than a two minute lead. So that can actually uh, keep you pushing. He's looking very comfortable even on these uh, slight uphills. Uh, of course, like you're saying, they've tackled the major uphills. But once you get into these, uh, what we're looking at the final sort of 45 or even less minutes um, then that is when even the smallest of inclines but he looks like he's just nicely uh, moving along and holding that pace that he has been for the last little while yeah but uh, I think for all these runners there comes a time when the body starts aching out on the road but uh, at the moment it's uh, Katebe showing absolutely no signs of uh, ceasing we'll have a quick word from Big T and then coming up next Arna Malabra, Zolani Bongo and uh, Helen Luca are going to be uh, joining in the studio we'll get some uh, words of wisdom as well from Bruce Fordyce former winner who'll be in studio in just a moment Marathon of slowing up. Khadebi uh, uh, showing no signs of slowing up as he's pulled that gap to two minutes and 20. And Khadebi is really, really running well. This is a phenomenal display by the young runner from Tom Tom. Will he be able to hold on? Ludwig Mamabolo now two minutes 20 behind in second. To Boho Sello, who has uh, fallen off the pace earlier in third. Mike Focaroni in fourth and then Claude Mashiwe in fifth so unless Claude Mishiwi has got something to come back because both Cello and Focaroni look like their legs were uh, dead coming down Fields Hill unless mobobolo has got anything somebody's gonna have to come from outside the top five to try and gun down this young athlete from Tom Tom David Khatebi looking very well just heard over the over the airwaves that Colleen Duruk is moving into a potential podium position 52 year old athlete now living in boulder colorado america four-time olympian an absolutely stunning performance by colleen de Rook, and i'm sure the south african public and particularly the kwazulu natal public will get behind her over the final hour or two of this race thank you alec the race certainly getting interesting both on the men and women's side david khatebi a two oceans winner from 2013 he hasn't been in the top 10 in the comrades and he hasn't ever run under six hours in the comrades as well he's got three silver medals to his credit does david khatebe no wally haywards no gold medals and uh, certainly turning on the pace here bruce for us he uh, is absolutely flying and i predicted earlier that the race would come down to 45th catching i think he's going to be on his own going up 45th catching if he carries on like that. absolutely flying i've never seen anything like it took it off took off uh, before fields hill and he's just maintained the whole way uh, and Unless something incredibly wrong happens, you know, unless something bad happens to him, I just can't see him being caught. He's, he's looking amazing. And, and the way he ran uh, through, uh, through Pine Town was just astonishing. No, he's certainly moving, but so is Ludwig Mamabolo in second place. Another man we haven't mentioned too much is the downrun defending champion, Bong Musam Tembo. He's up to sixth place at the moment, so also moving up the field. But as you say, David Khatebe running incredibly fast. Behind him, Ludwig Mamabolo, who has five goals to his credit. And Mamabolo, of course, the 2012 winner, the 2014 runner-up, something of a downrun specialist. And even he's struggling to keep up with this man in picture, David Khatebe, really turning on the pace, Helen. Well, it is, and it's the, the first three runners, if they can keep up these uh, splits, are, are scheduled to run under sub 520. Now, Bruce, that's a that's a record, and it's just it's quite extraordinary that you've got three guys potentially on that pace. 
Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, I, I can't believe the standard of the racing and how fast they're going. Um, it's, uh, it's astonishing and, you know, we'll, we'll have to see now. There are still a couple of um, serious climbs that are approaching a 45th cutting, which is a, a tough a climb from about, uh, it's about a kilometre long from about 9 k's to 8 k's to go. And then after that, uh, Tollgate Hill, uh, which is also quite a tough pull. But from 5 k's to the end, it is downhill and flat all the way to the stadium. Well, talking about running fast, your leading man and your leading lady in picture there, Caroline Vossmann going at about 4 minutes 8 per kilometre, which is about 20 seconds a kilometre faster than any other woman out there. Shanae Bosman, was so about 7 minutes after Caroline Vossmann was, further terug in vierde plek is Colleen de Reek. So die vrouwen wat ook baie vinnig hardloop. Caroline Vossmann hardloop so vinnig soos die dertigste man op die stadium. So sy is bezig om die die veld op te skuif. And uh, we'll be back with him just after this break. transcend lines, cultures and sound embodied in a voice that speaks to you without forgetting. Do you listen to it? Lotus FM, share the experience. No roar of the crowd will announce you've beaten your best. Nobody cares that Olympic spirit courses through your veins. The world doesn't care why you train. Until the victory lap. New Energade Light. It's what you put in. Listen up, there's a fresh season of Teenagers on a Mission on your screens and it's time to learn something new. Did you know that many of the biggest blockbusters had footage that was shot with a UAV or a drone? Even the South African movie, Chappie. Keep learning on South Africa's ultimate entertainment show with Tom's every Monday and Tuesday at 4 p.m. Conalog SABC1, Zati, for sure. Well, we're back with the 2016 Comrades Marathon and, of course, the leading men, David Khatebe, Ludwig Mamabola. And we've got news that Bong Musam Tembu has now moved up to third place. So the race really hotting up here between somewhat of the downrun specialists. But David Khatebe, we were just looking, Bruce, at his split there between Winston Park and Pine Town, that 10 kilometers. He was running at 3 minutes 17 per kilometer, which you said is an extremely fast marathon Well, uh, as well. I mean, that's a, a very fast marathon. That's essentially a, a 217 marathon, which is incredibly fast. And we're just looking at his splits that the computer's giving us. The earliest part of the race, he was running 3 minutes 43 seconds per kilometer. Then he sped up to 333, then 335 and 336. But remember, we're going through the hilly part in the middle of the, of the, of the course, and now suddenly 317. Okay, it's as if he held himself back and has just uncoiled and just unleashed this surge for the finish and he looks like he's still maintaining it i'm completely in awe well that's the way to do it i mean negative splits go as fast as you can the man behind him ludwig mamabolo about a minute behind david khatebe also looking good at this stage but unless khatebe slows down we don't see mamabolo catching him well uh, um mamabolo was full of fighting talk at the at the me media um conference and he just said look he's going to take it out and he, he lays down that gauntlet for the for, for his uh, other competitors but if you just compare his splits to what we've just read out about David his um, 10 kilometer split will average 10 five seconds slower now will the question is will that pl play into his favor coming in his legs will a little bit be more rested than David or is um, David just going to be able to sustain this unbelievable pace 
Well, I can't just, just can't get past the fact that uh, David Khateb has never run under six hours in the Comrades. He's on for a five hour 16 finish. He's got three silver medals to his credit. And the man behind him, Ludwig Momobolo, past winner, a five times gold medalist. You know, something could still happen here. Khateb is in unknown territory while Momobolo is doing something he's done before, Bruce. Um, certainly he's in unknown territory, but he's not in unknown territory as far as hanging in in an ultra. And right now he will be going past a board, I suppose, somewhere, I'm having a look at the course, but it's approximately 10 k's to go, and he's into single figures, and then you can start saying to yourself, okay, 9 k's to go, and then it's 8 k's to go, it's your kind of your morning training run, and the distance has become real, and you can uh, start to convince yourself that it's possible. And two big hills still to go, so he's going to have to uh, get over those, but the way he's running at the moment, it's just uh, absolutely amazing. Well, casually checking his watch there as David Khatebe just keeps running surrounded by bikes and press trucks and people, but at least they're giving him a, a wide berth there. We heard a bit earlier, I think in the Hillcrest area, the press truck just went slightly off course and some athletes followed them. Um, but luckily for Khatebe, he's got a wide open road at the moment there as he just keeps cruising along here. And uh, David Khatebe, it's stick and outlap of the Umlaut Ludwig Mamabola in the third place, Bong Musan Tembu in the third place, two winners after the man. But it is uh, David Khatebe, natuurlijk ook niet vergeet nie, kan Twitter en Instagram gebruik, gebruik hashtag Comrades2016. En uh, ja, wie gaan in de daad die wetloop in? Gaan David Khatebe wees, kan hy voorblij of is uh, Ludwig Mamabola en Bong Musan Tembu achter ons uh, ondervinding net te veel? And a great shot there, aerial shot, Helen, as we look at that route, slight uphill, it seems, there for Khatebe going through the moment. Yeah, he's got a, a, a bit of an uphill pull now to 45th cutting. But if we watch David, he's really in control of this race because I just was watching him hugging this. He's almost trying to run the shortest route possible. Before he was hugging the right-hand side, he switched over, obviously, to get a little bit of seconding. But he's on these, there's some big corners. And if you run the straightest route, you're going to save a couple of meters. And to have the men mental wherewithal at this stage of the race to actually run smart means that he's still in control. Well, David Khatebe, of course, his coach is John Hamlet. So he, he knows everything about this course. John Hamlet, also the coach of last year's winner, Gift Kalehe. And uh, the 34-year-old Clark from Rustenburg here certainly has the best coaching he could hope for, and he seems to have his race strategy down pat. And somebody else with a good race strategy is that figure on your bottom right of screen there, Caroline Vistman, who is still also, like Khatebe, cruising along, just running away from the chasing woman. Colleen de Rieck moving up the pack, um, but Caroline is at the moment just running away from absolutely everybody. Well, she's, of course, done it the hardest way as far as pressure is concerned, and that's to lead from the start. I always say that the best time to lead in the Comrades Marathon is with one kilometer to go. <laughs> take, take the lead as late as you can and, and, and grab it then, but she has led the whole way, so it's been an amazing race of courage and determination and just to go out there and run her own race. Well, I'm not sure that's by choice. She actually said she didn't want to be in the front from the beginning, but, uh, you know, she's got her race strategy. She stuck to it. A little, I think she was a little bit faster, in fact, than what she planned at halfway. She was planning at 3.15 or around 3.10. She went through in about 3.08. So obviously feeling great on the day and just running fast. And uh, not by choice leading the whole way. I think she expected maybe a Shane Bosman to be slightly ahead of her. But Shane also running extremely well, but not in the same class as Caroline. Well, Caroline is in tremendous shape and I think the fact that you can take that rest you can be you can be just that little bit more relaxed if you know that you haven't really got someone breathing down your neck and here Caroline's just running through this underpass we're coming down it's sort of old main road in Pine Town it's a little bit of a dip you'll come up the hill and then she's really just got her last major hill Cowie's hill to uh, run across and then it's just the downhill to Durban 17 k's from the top of Cowie's hill well, Nori Williamson said, uh, Bruce, maybe you can confirm this. At Cowies, you really know if it's going to be your day. If you still feel great, then then it's the time to, to really get pushing. And, uh, you know, Caroline heading up there at the moment. David Khatebe passed yep. that point already. And he knows it's his day because he's just... Re David is just reaching the top of 45th cutting. Yeah, and shortly, he's going to go past eight kilometers to go. So we can start doing the maths on that and work out. He's heading for a record at the moment. And uh, going up 45th cutting... It, I, I can't tell you, it's, it's steep, it's hot, it's tough going, uh, and, and he looks as if he's in the middle of a, a sort of a training run. He's flying up this hill. 
He is indeed flying. I mean, Caroline Wissman there at the bottom right also still looks comfortable, but maybe not even as comfortable as David Khatib. And this man is running out of his skin at the moment. His projected finishing time. We'll see if that plays out. Five minutes, five hours, 16 minutes. And again, we've got our leading man, leading lady in picture there. We will join them again shortly after this ad break. that time where we award the best in local football. Catch the 2016 PSL Awards live on SABC1. The awards will kick off with the glitzy red carpet, followed by the honouring of the top performers in this PSL season. We reveal footballer of the season, players player of the season, goalkeeper, midfielder, top goal scorer, and all the cup competition winners. The awards will also feature some of the country's top music entertainers. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at sport at SABC. And for the latest updates, sabcsport.co.za. We'll bring you the 2016 PSL Awards live Monday the 30th of May at 8.30 p.m. Brought to you by SABC Sport for the love of the game. Smart kids say smart things. Fana, what do vitamins make you? Strong and fit and tough. Baby, where does milk come from? From the supermarket, Mom. <laughs> Just joking, from a cow. No, no. what are life cultures? It's the magic that turns the milk into yogurt. Why does mommy give you a smart snack? Because I'm smart. Yogurt is made with milk and live cultures. Nutri-Day is a thick, creamy, yummy smart snack. What are you doing, mom? I want to be as smart as you. Nutri-Day yogurt. Say yes to the smart snack. Well, we're back with the Comrades Marathon. And, of course, you can also stand a chance to win a 1,000 Rand airtime with Old Mutual. You could call your loved ones, chat with friends, update your social media, especially Twitter with that hashtag, Comrades2016, or visit the www.worldofendurance.co.za to plan for greatness. Simply answer the question you see on screen at the moment, and you could be a winner. It's that easy. So enter now for your chance to get 1,000 Rand airtime. You can SMS Old Mutual in your answer to 34068 is old mutual an official sponsor rather of the comrades marathon a for yes b for no c for maybe if you're not sure only one of those are correct sms old mutual and your answer to three four zero six eight well from winners at home to winners back on the road david khatebe is still motoring on and alec riddle has a unique view of this race alec how do you see this playing out Well, we've reached 45th cutting, and um, this young athlete is really doing a fantastic race. The gap is now out to three minutes, and with uh, less than eight kilometers to go, one wonders, can he be caught? David Khatebi from Tom Tom Athletics Club, can he follow in the footsteps of his training partner, Gif Keller, who won last year? We've got two uh, downrun champions running behind him, Ludwig Mamabolo, and uh, Mtembu as well, I believe, is moving into the, to the major positions. But nobody is making an impression on this guy. In fact, he is making all the impression on us up in the air because he is running like a gazelle. He is really running so fast. But it is still a dangerous part of the course. A big climb up 45th cutting. Then a, a hard little downhill uh, into the bottom by Sherwood. I think that's the final cutoff for the athletes later in the day. And then you have the tough climb up to Tollgate where Charles Mateus and Nick Besser were involved in a duel. And of course, when you get to Tollgate, you have the key to Durban because from then on, it's downhill all the way. And if you don't suffer from cramps, you should be able to hold a lead. So I do believe that David Khatebi has set himself up for a possible win here with a gap of three minutes. It's going to be very hard to close down unless he, it's basically his race to lose now. And uh, he's still looking supreme. Let's, let's see if he can hold on. Well, it certainly looks like he is going to hold on. He's opening that gap, as you've heard from Alec Riddle in the Bonitas Eye in the Sky. That gap over Ludwig Mamabolo at 70 kilometers was about one minute. It's now up to three minutes. David Khatebe just motoring along. And while we were up in the Eye in the Sky, we, uh, we saw 
some footage on our other camera of uh, Ludwig turning around and having a look over his shoulder. So he's trying to hang on to his second place at this stage. And here we go, going up a very steep climb now. David going up a very, very steep climb onto the dual carriageway, onto the N3, the main road from Johannesburg. Well, we've got the coach of none other than David Khatebe on the line. John Hamlet, how is your athlete looking at this stage? Looking great to us. Awesome. We're hoping to take that record from the Russians. It was uh, the Russians that uh, broke this record down. It'd be lovely to have a South African crunch it. And, and uh, David is quite an excellent athlete and a disciplined boy. I think he's really showing it that we're going to try. We're going to give it all we got. Well, John, I've been saying David's got three silvers to his name. He's never gone under six hours. Here he's looking at breaking a record. What is the change in, in David? Well, it's the first time he came to the mountains with us and trained with Gift as a partner. And I think it's just added that spice that he needs. Look, he's a great athlete. He's run a 214 marathon. So he's got the credentials. But the boy has been with us a while, and I think we finally polished him just right. <laughs> and I hope that uh, keeping all things together, God willing, this, um, this lovely, decent person can actually break this record, which will be quite something for him. Well, he's looking awesome. Between 60 and 70 kilometers, he was going at 3 minutes 17 a K, which is a 2.17 marathon. I mean, after there 60 kilometers, that kind of strength at this stage of the race is phenomenal. Well, if you see what these boys are doing in the mountains in excess of 250 Ks a week at high altitudes, and they were sometimes right on the edge of injuries, and we had to keep it together, but that's the name of the game. That's how we bring them to the FTP. And, and really, you know what? They are such disciplined, decent guys. It's well worth it. John, that's great to hear. Just as a last question, have you got an update on Gift Kale for us? Gift is uh, off back at to, uh, to, uh, 24th. I don't think he's in a fight. He's about nine minutes. Uh, nine? No, no, tell you now. How many minutes behind? About nine minutes. He was nine minutes behind last time we saw him. I've got his brother handling back. Um, we're going to just check again and drag him in. We want him to get him into the goals if possible. But uh, it's not his day today. And we understand that some days it's just not your day, you know. Well, John Hamlet, thank you very much. Some days, indeed, it's not your day. This race is so tough. And uh, we're going to the women's race at the moment. Caroline Wissman is walking at the moment. <coughs> Caroline Wissman walking. And uh, last year, we saw her walking quite a bit. But this looks different. She doesn't look as good as when she was walking last year. But we'll see. You know, she might start running again. And uh, while we're looking here at Caroline Dicoletti in the Energade Eye in the Sky, can be, perhaps you can give us your views on this. She's okay. Thank you, Anu. Uh, things are starting to change here when we're saying few kilos are left for the comrade to be finished, especially for the ladies, because uh, Caroline has been leading this race from the beginning, and now that we left, or she is left with less than 20 Ks, she has started walking, she's limping, we're wondering what is wrong with her, but uh, it's just a chance for her maybe to pick up. You can remember that uh, you also, they also get they also get through their hills and downs and so there might be probably not a serious injury with her but we will definitely monitor it until he, she gets to the finishing but so we're going to listen to her but you know you are going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to have to get to the point you're going to Carolina, my monga pili. Since this is the last time we are going to meet, I'm going to meet you. 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 I'm going Thanks, Dick Lady, and it looks like it was a planned or structured walk there for Caroline Visman up Cowies. And, uh, of course, she does tend to walk some of the uphills. It's better to walk before you need to walk, Helen, and uh, she's back running. 
Yeah, we were discussing earlier how last week, uh, last year, sorry, she she sort of captivated the nation by sort of taking these very structured walks, and we'd watch other runners pass her, and she'd pick up, and she stopped, and she'd eat potatoes. She would um, do all sorts of things. She has not done that this year. This is the first walk we've seen her take. So we're all kind of like, uh oh, is this like a a real problem, or is it just one of her sort of tactics that she sort of waited to keep in her back pocket and um, share with us? But she's going about to Crest Cowies and a lot of people, big support here and uh, just over 17 kilometres to go until she gets to the finish and she's still got, she's got quite a buffer so she can take a couple more walks. Yeah, I think maybe this was the walk just up Cowies as she takes another drink there again and walks again and uh, Bruce, we haven't seen her walk twice in succession this close to each other but she is smiling and looks quite happy so maybe this is a little bit of a last rest before that push all the way home from Cowies and uh, like Helen said she's got a buffer she's got more than seven minutes on Shane Bosman so she can afford the luxury of just enjoying this moment and maybe they're very, the walk. they're very very short walks and she's trying to get a proper drink uh, swallowed while she's taking that short walk and uh, yeah, if it had been a year ago, I'd have had a heart attack. But uh, no, I mean, we're used to her style. That's her style, and she's proved us. You know, she's proved herself right. That's the way she does it. A little short walk, get a proper drink swallowed, uh, and then uh, keep going. And, she, and she's back onto her normal pace. Well, now we need, just need to wait for the toilet break, as she is one to do towards the end of the race as well. But uh, just we know that the run walk strategy works for your average comrades runner. We just haven't seen any other winner actually employ it like she does. Well, if um, anybody is sitting out there and um, can get down to the um, finish at Sahara Stadium, we, we are watching history. We've got uh, maybe 16 minutes until uh, the first man can cross the finish line, and we're looking at an estimated five hours and 16 minutes. That's a good four minutes under the current best time for the down run. So um, I encourage anybody who can to come and watch this history being made. Well, this is the view from that Alec Riddle has our eye in the sky, our Bonita's eye in the sky. Alec, uh, you've got some information for us. Right, so we've, we're back at live here, eye in the sky, and um, khatebi has gone under toll gate now. He's got the downhill run to the finish, and I think it'll be interesting to know uh, what the people in the studio are thinking but I'm wondering if there's a possible record on here because we know it's a phenomenal record uh, held by Leonard Chetsov only two people have gone uh, faster than two hours 40 in the second half of the race and I think Khatebi is going to do that as well the two others who did it was Fordyce a few times and Chetsov once and these were on the down run of course Kotov did it on the up run now there's a lot of money at stake here today 400,000 Rand for the winner but if you're a South African, that's another 100, so that's 500, and then another 190 for the first South African. That's 690. But I'm wondering if there's not a possibility of a record on here. It, if this man doesn't slow down, at the pace he's running, he's going to knock on that door. David Khatebi is running the race of his life, and potentially the race of the Comrades Marathon. This is a phenomenal showing by an inexperienced athlete who hasn't won anything uh, really of note in longer than uh, the uh, shorter distance or 52 56 he's done well but the 90 kilometers he's not proven himself but today John Hamlet has got him in phenomenal shape running for the Tom Tom Club and David Khatebi is looking to see if he can knock on that 520 door or how low in the 520s he can get love to hear the views of the guys in the in the studio Yes, certainly, Alec, and a, a record might very well be on here. David Khatebe moving, but if you look at that graphic on your screen currently, you'll see those little flags. At the moment, we've got a South African one, two, and three, which is phenomenal, Bruce. Okay, and so now David is running down what we call the concrete canyon and that's between these long tall concrete walls on either side it was very hot in there every time you go under a bridge you hear the crowd screaming down at you and cheering uh, but it is downhill all the way there's a slight bump onto the flyover into town but he has got the last of the big hills behind him 
And I don't think we're speculating about whether or not there will be a record. There will be a record. Unless he walks at this stage, there's a new record. And I, for one, am completely astonished because I thought that Leonard Shvetsov, uh five hours, 20 minutes would stand for 20 years. And we, I think we're watching history here as we watch him break that record. Well, we certainly are. And to take you through to watch this history, Bruce Fordyce is going absolutely nowhere. I'm uh, going somewhere as Dwayne De Locker takes my seat again. But uh, Helen, maybe some final words here from you on David Khatebe at the moment? Well, I think um, he's running a phenomenal race, but I think it's an also, also an interesting little um, competition behind. We've got a set that the next second and third person have also passed Sherwood. So there are also 8Ks to go. And both are previous winners of this down run. They've, um, the last winner of the down run, Bongamusu Mtembo, has moved up into third place and also running a fantastic uh, time. He's predicted to run 5.23. Then in front of him is, uh, by about three minutes, is Ludwig Mamabola, on schedule to run a 5.20. So three phenomenal performances. Two previous winners, they're now, they've both sort of come first and second behind each other before and um, now coming second and third in Comrades. So an unbelievable day of racing. Well, Ludwig Mamabolo at the moment is uh, showing, uh, he's, he's, he's still looking strong enough, but it, I think this just gives you an indication of just how good Gatebe is looking at the uh, at the front, Bruce, because Ludwig Mamabolo is looking very comfortable, and on any other day, this would be uh, yeah, the type a, of run that wins the race. That's the Ludwig we know, he loves the crowd, he loves to smile and wave at them, he's very happy with his second place, he's going to shatter five and a half hours, and... Uh, it will be amazing to see how many people break the five and a half hour barrier. For, for many, many years, it was an extremely special barrier. And I have to tell you, when I started running back in the 1970s, if, if you broke six hours, you could talk about winning this race. And we're looking at runners now 25, 30 minutes faster than, than that time. It's just phenomenal. Well, we 30, that, 35 minutes faster. We mentioned that 1989 run as well. Uh, for Frith von Amarva, of course, became the first woman to break the six hour barrier. Just a remarkable run. But David Hadebe continuing to lead this uh, Comrades Marathon 2016. He's edging ever closer to Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, the finish line of the 2016 Comrades Marathon at just over the 89 kilometer mark. And uh, final few hundred meters will be on grass, Bruce, and uh, after you've been pounding the asphalt for so long, uh, how significant is the difference between the, uh, the surfaces? It's a huge difference, but I have to be honest with you, the grass tugs at your ankles, actually slows <laughs> you down. Uh, the only thing that's nice about it is he said grass, well, look at this, I mean, he's complete, he's loving it out in front, he's loving it, uh, and this is the part of leading comrades that is so fantastic, totally in control, con in control of his, of his running, no cramps, looks absolutely at ease and just flying along. I mean, this, is, this, this would be a far standard marathon if we were watching him running a 42K race. Well, that, that really is just phenomenal. Just an amazing cadence, the way he's, he's been able to uh, maintain the stride throughout. There was a time, uh, just around about 45th cutting, where he started to show a few signs of uh, fatigue, perhaps, in the legs, but there's absolutely no sign of it now. But you can look at the uh, second place, right, Ludwig Mamabolo. He is, he's a fan favorite, and he's somebody who enjoys acknowledging the uh, crowd. That lead, however, has uh, extended now to uh, three and a bit minutes, uh, but Hatebe continuing to uh, push Forward, but Ludwig Mamabolo is enjoying his uh, his time near the front of this Comrades Marathon race once again. Three minutes 50, I believe, the uh, the gap has got now to between uh, David Khatebe, who, uh, you know, when you when you saw his, his, his splits leading up to Pine Town, was going at around 3.17, he's still going sub 3.30, and in the closing stages, he's still on for a very fast uh, race, on 5.16 pace, but... Uh, in, in terms of, uh, can I just uh, welcome uh, Channel 404 viewers who've joined us here on uh, SABC Sport on 2 for this uh, phenomenal race, which is turning out to be a record-setting race and indeed is well set to be a record for uh, the man in front who is on the left of your screen, David Khatebe. He's on for a 5.16 race here, so not too far out of Sahara State in Kingsmead. Ludwig Mawavolo desperately trying to uh, catch up, but I think too, too much in too short a time to make up. Well, Dwayne, you know, Ludwig's run itself would be absolutely amazing if he was on his own in the lead. Uh, but he's, he's nearly four minutes behind the, behind the leader. So his run alone would have been an, a, an amazing race and probably a record-breaking race. It's going to be 
Uh, interesting to see how he goes, but it, I'd love it if uh, David Kotevi would just show he was human by slowing down a tiny bit, but it doesn't look like he's going to do that. There's a slight bump here up the flyover. He's gone past three kilometers to go, so he has less than three kilometers to go, and he's going to run into town. Uh, thousands of spectators cheering and screaming him on uh, straight down through the middle of Durban for about a kilometre and then a left turn and as you take that that left turn it is exactly a thousand metres to the finish line. Well he's uh, approaching the finish at the moment is uh, this man David Hatebe but we caught up with him shortly before the race. 2013 Two Oceans champion David Hatebe standing in front of me. What's the difference between running the perfect Two Oceans and running the perfect Comrades? Uh, two Ocean is, uh, is very simple for me because it's 56. The Comrade is a long, long way. But i running three times. This year is four times. But i learning something for Comrade. So long distance, you must be fit mentally and the legs we must be fit. If we fit um, uh, legs mentally, is not fit, we can't finish the Comrade. David, what are, the, what are the biggest things that you guys have worked on as a team that you've worked on individually uh, to be ready for Sunday? So Sunday, I will be ready because I know about my story for training sessions. This will be well, and I'm just two, uh, two months preparation. I'm feeling it's good for me for running for Comrade Marathon. I believe I can win it on Sunday. Well, David Khatebe continues to lead the way and uh, just words from the 2013 Two Oceans winner. But of course, uh, he caught the he caught the field napping in 2013 when he won the Two Oceans. But it was a particularly windy day in uh, in Cape Town. Conditions are far more pleasant in terms of uh, in terms of uh, weather. But he's, he's certainly caught the field napping again, hasn't he? Exactly that. But I think uh, what, what he did, I think he set himself a very wonderful target, which uh, he could be able to really, you know, uh, do. Um, Oh, Oh, he's looking superb. He's looking superb. And at the moment, I, I dare say he's on for a 5.15. Uh, with, with two kilometers to go, he was at five. Uh, it was un just under 5.10. And that record of Leonard Schwedstoff's is as good as gone. I mean, that it's going to be broken by four or five minutes here today if Hadebe could just... Uh, he could walk to the finish line and still uh, put the record from where he is. And we've just been told that we may have uh, five or six runners who could go under 5.30 today. Well, in, indeed, Fukuroni, um, Tembu, they're all, uh, they're all making up some, some serious time. Fukuroni's still in uh, the bunch, just off uh, around about the top five uh, mark. Bungmusum Tembu's up to third, second place. Um, Mama Bolo's looking very comfortable. And uh, that's something we've pointed out, is the fact that Mama Bolo's run on any other day would be uh, a winning run in the Comrades Marathon. But this is just phenomenal. To take a few seconds off a record over this distance, Distance is, is fairly phenomenal, but he's going to shatter it. He's going to take several minutes off this record. I'm just, I'm virtually speechless, which is a rather precarious <laughs> position to be in when you're a commentator. I, no, no, true that because I think uh, you know what. Even the press conference, I think it played a very wonderful role. Where in these guys have been trying to beat each other and um, you know throw words onto each other. Exactly that, which really worked to them. Uh, that's why you when you see at um, you know Mama Bulu, he's trying to really pace you know closer to him, but he can't because I think. Um, the way how he said his targets is really, uh, you know, wonderful. We're talking about, uh, you know, the man who's on the lead right now, uh, David Ketebe. So really approaching the stadium now is uh, the leading man, David Hadebe. He's into the uh, last little bit of this 2016 Comrades Marathon and Leonard Schwitzoff's uh, record is uh, is going to go, almost certainly. It is uh, just a, a... Well, his coach said it. I mean, there couldn't be a nicer guy who, who, who goes on to win this race, but a man who trains in Rustenburg, and I remember he joked just after winning the uh, Two Oceans Marathon that all he eats is pup and chicken, and that's his protein diet.
that that's the nutritional diet that he's on, but he did say that he, he goes towards scrambled eggs and uh, peanut butter in the days leading up to the race. But he might have been on something else, uh, whatever it is. He's eating some superfoods at the moment to, to get this sort of race. So that was approaching the finish line. This is where he is in comparison, not far away. And uh, 5.13, 16, 17, 18 on the clock. 5.20, 49 is the record. And he is within striking distance of not only the record, but his uh, very first Comrades Marathon title in what would be the most astonishing, remarkable, exceptional run that we've ever seen in a Comrades Marathon. Okay, he has about a 1,000 meters to run now, I think. And he's flying, as we said. Uh, down below us, we're at the, in the studios over the finish line. Down below us, they're preparing for the winner. Uh, the, uh, the, the finish line is up, the television camera's up. And a unique feature this year is he's going to be given a mace or a staff that Hermes would carry because, of course, the, uh, the emblem for the Comrades Marathon is the wing messenger Hermes. And he's going to be given that to hold up. I hope he has the strength to do that, but he, he looks like he does. Uh, there will be somebody at the entrance of Kingsmead Cricket Stadium waiting with the baton. And in that baton is a, ma is a message from the mayor of the one city, Peter Marisburg, to the other city, Durban. And he will be given that baton to carry around the last lap. And I can tell you from personal experience that that baton is one of the most magical things you can carry. It is like, here we go, he's turning, he's swinging left. And I think it's a thousand meters from there. Uh, but when, when you look at him, um, he has been the main man since he took the lead. He has never looked back. Well, he's just been remarkable in the way he's approached this race because he took the first 15 or 16 kilometers very slowly by his pace. He was 3.43. Since then, he's just dropped his, uh, his speed throughout this race right the way down to approaching Pine Town. He was going at 3.17, 3 minutes 17 seconds per kilometer in, uh, in this race, which is uh, not as fast as we've ever seen, but certainly his strides were looking phenomenal and looking so comfortable while doing so. I can tell you that Ludwig Wabobolo is... Uh, approaching the finish as well but uh, he's still a few minutes behind David Hatebe who's got a final few minutes to go his pace has slowed ever so slightly he must have just lost a little bit in the uh, in the last uh, couple of kilometers but still well on for uh, this record pace and it of course comes with rich reward for South African winners in particular who go on to break the uh, the comrades record and here he is in the last half a kilometer now approaching the stadium. He'll be looking for the for the baton, the person holding the baton that will hand it to him. In his hand, that will be like a magic wand. And all the fatigue, all the tightness, not that he's showing very much, will drain away as he hits that last lap. And it is one of the truly remarkable, remarkable feelings to have in life, to be, to honor. It's a great honor to lead the Comrades Marathon field home. And David Khatebi is doing that. I just like to say, David, uh, welcome to the Winners Club. He's a new <laughs> member of the Winners Club, and welcome to that club, David. Made us very proud, and you've run unbelievably well. Spectacular, spectacular running. I've got goosebumps. I'm jumping up and down in my seat because I wish I could be running alongside him, but I can never run that pace. And yeah. uh, it's, gonna, it's a fantastic moment. And here's the crowd waiting to welcome him into the stadium. The last 400 meters round Kingsmead. Okay, so we see that back of every floor now. Me, Hongo, and Porsche. So the Zori Hoy Muswala. Koi Okodone Kesiwa. Hey, lay Messi. I'm coming back. Zori Dira Muswala. I'm in Zasino. Ugo Sema Zoba Ogwina. Hoka na Muswala. I'm Ugo Sema Zoya Tabone. Fezia. Raka Dibaro Kamba Zori Udo Tia Ori Au. From the record, I'm Muswala. I'm here to lead. Gandele, I'm going to be at 5:20. Eno Kodi Giri, I'm 5:17. Ugo Sema Fezia. I'm never coming 18. Join. I think this is doable. Oh, yes, the uh, the record is going to go here. David Khatebe, just that magnificent stride. His cadence barely broken throughout the latter half of this race. His timing has just been superb. He caught the rest of the field napping, undoubtedly, and he's definitely going to run to uh, a new record here. Well, the grass of Kingsmead, a welcome sign for any runner in the Comrades Marathon. But when you have the opportunity to grab the baton and take it towards the finish line, it's uh, it's even more magnificent. Bruce Ford, 
Wallace has described the feeling of joining the winners club and he is acting as Hermes, the messenger of the gods who had winged feet and I, I swear by this performance that this man has winged feet. He's done something absolutely <laughs> remarkable today by pushing so hard in the closing stages oh. and this is it, the final few meters. He's running under our noses at Sahara Stadium, Kingsby. David Khatebe, South African, well done, smashes David. the comrades record of 5.18.12. We'll, we'll get that verified the time and still foot enough to do push-ups after. Just an exceptional performance from David Khatebe. Leonard Schwedstorff's 2007 record of 5.20.49 has been annihilated. Over two minutes quicker, David Khatebe, a South African winner in the men's race, a new record for the Comrades Marathon and the most remarkable run that we have ever seen. And of course, just imagine, I think, uh, what the minister has said uh, at top of the 400,000 rand. Uh, there, has got, there is uh, 100,000 rand top of that, meaning that um, he's going to be able to really walk away home with uh, 500,000 rand. And the Munda Moussa of the record of Kala Africa, the record in the Comrades Marathon, the record in the 520, the 518. Well, when you look at the prize money overall here, yeah, it's, it's 400,000 for the win. It's 400,000 for the record. It's 190,000 for the first South African, plus the uh, the minister's offer of an extra 100,000 on top of that. It's over a million rand that uh, David Khatebe actually will walk away with for winning the Comrades Marathon 2016 in such an exceptional time. But bear in mind, there are still runners out on the road. Ludwig Mamabolo is uh, finishing or reaching the closing stages. But David Khatebe, huge congratulations from uh, all in attendance because they realize the significance of this race it has been a remarkable run by a man who went on to win the 2013 two oceans uh, a, a very likable individual is uh, is uh, there go. Cheryl, Cheryl Wynn uh, vice chairperson of comrades handing him Hermes as mace Hermes staff which is a new new tradition that started in the comrades marathon and the winner holds it aloft the winged messenger who's come all the way from Peter Maritzburg to Durban. He heard chariots of fire this morning when it was played for 18,000 runners. He heard it now running his last lap. It was play, played just for him. Well, Vice Chairperson Cheryl Wynn, you're right, handing the, uh, what I think is called the Caduceus, the, uh, the uh, well, Hermes staff, effect, uh, winged staff to uh, David Khatebe, who's just inspired the country with that remarkable run. I can't say any, uh, too much about that uh, that run. The way he hammered the asphalt in the uh, latter half of this race, it was just sensational. But don't forget Ludwig Mamabolo, who is the second man home. He is striding with purpose and acknowledging those who've uh, come to cheer him along. Ludwig Mamabolo is uh, is going to get a warm welcome as well. He was a uh, winner in 2012. He knows what it's like to win this down run. He felt confident and he said he was going to be running this race for his uh, deceased father, dedicating his run to his late father who passed away back in March. But Ludwig Mamabolo had no answer today ultimately to that uh, break by David Khatebe, who went a long way from the finish line but managed to bring it home in spectacular fashion. But uh, we've still got uh, the possibility here with Bung Musum Tembo, the likes of Mike Fokaroni and that, to have four, five, maybe even six runners go below the 5.30 mark. And as, as Bruce mentioned, that, that used to be six hours was the magical barrier. 5.30 is that new magical barrier, and we could well, see a host of runners break it. 5.20 now is the new magical barrier. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what's remarkable about Ludwig's run, and what a popular runner, he's one of the most popular runners, a great, great guy, full of smiles always. Here, we, here he is again. He's running several minutes faster than when he won. You can't ask an athlete to do anything more than get a PB. So he got a personal best, smashed five and a half hours, and he still hasn't, hasn't won it. So I hope his run doesn't go unrecognized because this is an incredible run just on his own. Ludwig Mamabola should normally have been a deserving and well in front winner. Uh, and yet he's in second place. Yeah, I think it was 5.31 that he won with in, uh, in 2012. But here, uh, Ludwig Mamabolo is entering the stadium. Well, what I think, uh, uh, this year, uh, we was very honest with ourselves, guys. I think these guys had a pace, and they've been pacing from the very start. I think everyone, you know, meant business. And I think, according to what these guys mentioned in the press conference, I think uh, they wanted to live up to that. And uh, that which everybody would say, but you, you've been saying a lot of things, and where are you now? And he can 
be able to say, listen, you know, from the record that I had in 2012, from the time that I ran in 2012, now I have improved a lot. From, you know, you know 530 something, now going to a 520 something. It's going to be very impressive. Oh, it is absolutely impressive. But Ludwig Mamabolo, oh, he wants the crowd to cheer. South Africans love Ludwig Mamabolo after his uh, heroics back in 2012. Those will not be forgotten, certainly not. Bungusim Tembu was a winner in the last down run in 2014, is also approaching the stadium. He's uh, really close to uh, Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, where Ludwig Mamabolo is taking the acknowledgement and uh, enjoying interacting with the fans who've come out to watch this finish line. Ludwig Mamabolo really is a, a likeable individual and a man who's done so much for South African ultra marathon running. In terms of this comrade's race, oh, he's delighted still. Doesn't matter that he's been beaten on the day. As you said, Bruce. He's not beaten. You, you, he, he's not beaten. He's run unbelievably well. There just happens to be one person who was faster than him, but well done, Ludwig. Uh, thoroughly deserved. I believe this is his sixth gold medal, his second, second place, and a great run from him. Ludwig I think he's just excited and uh, that jubilation right here inside the stadium that you can tell that this guy is a main business from minute one up until this minute uh, when they are now crowned. Uh, the guys who from position one to second position and um, from the time that we spoke uh, yearly on that uh, you know 2012 this is the very improved time from five i mean from 531 or 32 to now five um, the 23. Well, it's a South African 1 2, as uh, indeed uh, David Hatebe, a 5.18 that he won uh, this race in Ludwig Mamabolo coming in at 5.24 on. But this is just remarkable. Uh, how, how many runners cross the finish line, Bruce, and look this fresh? Yeah, we've seen push ups, oh, we've seen dancing. Beautifully proving the point that you don't necessarily have to be number one to be a winner. But Ludwig's a huge winner today, and he was embraced, by the way, by his, his manager and his coach, Nick Bester, who's the 1991 winner of the Comrades. So, uh, he just, he's entertained us, he ran magnificently, he improved his personal best time by several minutes, he just didn't break the finish line, but he's a winner. Yeah, it was he didn't the, break the finish line first, but he's a winner. In, indeed, but here's Bong Musum Tembu, who is uh, currently in third place. Bong Musum Tembu, he'll be happy with his run, it's an improvement as well if he can make it in round uh, three odd minutes around the the grass here at uh, Sahara Stadium Kingsmead because he ran a 5.28.34 when he won the Comrades Marathon two years ago the last down run he, he bided his time and again a smart run by Bong Muslim Tempo he stayed back in the initial stages he was uh, in the top 30 didn't really push the pace didn't go with the early leaders but when it came time to 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 run he certainly tackled the hills in the back stages and uh, going down Cowies he, he he made his move and went up to third Unfortunately for him, though, Mamabolo and uh, Hadebe stayed out in front, but another fine run from uh, the defending downrun champion. And if you'd said to me this morning, Bong Musa will run 5.26 and some change, I would have said, well, then Bong Musa is going to win. Uh, so that just shows how it's improved. Well, this is just turning out to be a record-breaking year at the Comrades Marathon. Bong Musa Mtembu also acknowledging those that have come out to watch him finish here at Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, a 5.26 finish for Bong Musa Mtembu. This is just sensational to see. Never in the history of Comrades have more than three people broken five and a half hours. So we're watching history here uh, if we have another runner coming in before five and a half hours have ended. I think um, um, Dwayne, um, took it very late. 
Well, he did take it very late, but Van Wilson Tembo, unfortunately, unable to catch the two leaders. But speaking of the leaders, some fine runs in the top three. As South African one, two, three. David Khatebe is standing by with Udo Karl, sir. What's going on in your heart? What's going on in your head right now? Uh, I, I'm feeling so good, good, but anything I saw uh, after uh, halfway, anything can happen. I just, my, my mind said, we go to the rock, I'm going to the rock. Well, speak to us, because when you won two oceans in 2013, people were surprised. You said you weren't surprised. It was the plan today. The plan came together. Were you surprised that you shattered the, the record? Yeah, I, I'm just uh, told you, like, uh, I feel happy because I'm breaking the record of the Russia. Russia. Today is in South Africa record. I'm feeling good. Talk to us about that final 25 kilometers when you took the lead. You just seem to keep speeding up to the end. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that uh, breaking. I feel good. I told myself I just I don't uh, check anyone. I running alone. I training with my 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 uh, my teammate. It's only my teammate can just uh, catch me. If somebody else come, know that I don't know can say catch me. Well, your coach John did say that uh, working in the mountains with defending champion Gif Kelehe would have helped a big uh, way for you to winning here today. It, it was the master plan, wasn't it? Yeah, it's the plan. It's the plan. He told me uh, yesterday, David, you can run well. You can run well. I say, coach, I can run well. If I give, we give me support, I can run well. Well, David, Superman, Katebe, well done for making South Africa proud. Okay, thank you very much, my supporters, everyone. Okay, thank you. Okay. Nice. Oh, we're back with the uh, leading lady at the moment, Carolyn Wispman. Just suddenly looks like she's pulling up, and that's an awkward-looking walk. That is not the type of walk, the comfortable walk that she's been uh, displaying in recent Commerce Marathons, Bruce. This looks like looks there's like some there pain. might be a little bit of pain there, a little bit of a cramp um, in her right leg. It seems, or it seems to be coming through a little bit skewed. Hopefully, she can get running again, get herself up and running again. She's got a significant advantage over Shane Bosman, who is in second place, and of course the chasing pack, and uh, including Colleen Berriak, the 52-year-old. Uh, but uh, Carolyn Wussman just uh, rehydrating and, wow, showing no signs of any cramp here, but looked very awkward when she was just uh, taking a few paces there, Big T, but suddenly back into uh, her stride and, and looking like she's uh, set to go, set to continue. Maybe that's just the mental fortitude of Caroline Wussman. But it's looking good, for sure. I think when you look at her, the way how she's been walking, you could say that she's out, but, uh, well, maybe she was trying to really pick up the strength and the stamina again. Now she's back again on the uh, leading front right here. Uh, Fezia, now we have to cross down to Kolani. Um, who's going to say with the second man? Kolani, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I'm with Ludwig Mamabolo. Ludwig. Ludwig. Congratulations, Ludwig. You took the second position. Man, but you still had the energy to dance around. How did you do that? Uh, you know, my, my friend, I'm very happy. Thanks to all mighty God. Netbank Running Club, Nikki Best, our manager, our sponsors, Nike South Africa, Biogene, Future Life, and Netbank. As my employees, thank you very much, guys. I did my best. I'm very happy. Today, the record is broken. I said it before in the media on Friday that whoever wants to come and run, I'm ready for the record. I was there, but I just lost it. But I'm very happy that South Africa. We still dominate in the race. One, two, three. What more do you want, South Africans? You must support us. Give us the money. We can prepare. We can run 5.15. It's not. It's, it's possible. But without enough support, Nedbank is giving us support. Nicky Besta is giving us support. What about other stakeholders? I'm very, I'm very, I'm very disappointed about the, the, the new teams that come in this country. They look for no runners. They don't come to, the, to us elite athletes to support us. That shows that uh, in this country, Politics are still running around in, in, in our sport, and we need to clean that up. I was very depressed yesterday. Uh, on Friday, somebody said he's developing the black people at an African school. I don't understand that. They need to come clear. This okay. is still in the money of, the, of, of us, the people. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Because of time, because of time, Ludwig, congratulations then. That was Ludwig Mamabolo, who came in the second position. Back to you, commentators.
Thank you very much, uh, Zulani. Uh, well, we're just looking at Mike Fukaroni at the moment. Uh, I do believe Claude Mushiwa was uh, was in front of him, but uh, Mike Fukaroni perhaps has just passed Claude Mushiwa out out on the route. Uh, Mike Fukaroni, so currently in fourth position overall with the uh, top three finishes, David Khatebe in a new record time. Uh, Ludwig Mawabola finishing second, uh, expressing his opinions to Zolani Bongo a moment ago, and then Bongusa and Tembu uh, having finished third as well. All looking very fresh, all looking very, very uh, healthy as they approach the stadium, but this is uh, slightly more subdued now, is uh, Mike Fukuroni who's uh, entering the stadium. He'll be, he'll be happy with his gold medal, Mike Fukuroni, after winning the uh, Two Oceans Marathon earlier this year, Soweto Marathon winner as well. He'll be delighted with his gold medal overall. But uh, Mike Fukuroni looking very, very subdued. As, uh, <laughs> we saw a moment ago Carolyn Busman looking not just subdued, but in, in real pain out on the road. Mike Fukuroni looking rather laboured in his stride towards the finish line here, unlike the top three. He's it, it, just looking very relaxed, uh, the, the way how he's riding. And I think he's quite sure that, uh, you know, there are guys uh, who are or either who were in the front and who did well for him after him. But then I think, you know, the way he's really pacing up, he's just very sure that he's got position four. That's Mike Fokoroni for you. The Mike Fokoroni. But I don't know, um, Duane, whether with the very same pace as she's running, are we likely to see her just crossing the line still at position one? Well, at the moment, there's still room for uh, Carolyn Busman to be caught. She's in the uh, bottom right of your screen. The top left is uh, the fourth place finisher at the moment, Mike Fukuroni, who's just coming in to uh, cross the finish line. He's uh, struggling by comparison to the other runners that have come in, but he is picking up the pace for the final few meters. Carolyn Busman, though, is struggling. 45th cutting, look to have broken Carolyn Busman, and she keeps stopping, grabbing water and walking. She's taking a few strides, but clearly not comfortable. We, we understand she has an 11-minute lead. So that is that's a big cushion, and if she can say to herself, just keep going. Doesn't matter if some of that heat evaporates, but just keep going. Well, she's taking a stride forward. She doesn't actually stop, and uh, she stops running, and she breaks into a walking stride, and she she she, she just seems to uh, shuffle over towards somebody with some water to to grab a sachet and then move forward again. But at least she is putting one foot in front of another with an 11-point lead. Now, it looks like Ndlela is uh, next runner home. Ndlela looks to be uh, far next fastest finisher. And he's in the top left, but Vosman picks up the pace now again. She's back into her stride. So, Carolyn Vosman still uh, several kilometers to go. That's 45th cutting. So, Carolyn Vosman has still got a struggle ahead of her and two uh, tough patches of uh, route to negotiate, including 45th cutting to complete and indeed uh, Tollgate. But this is Ndlela coming home and he's looking fresh, a very strong finish from Ndlela. And of course, uh, you're quite right, because uh, earlier on we spoke that uh, it seems as um, um, this year, Bruce, uh, we're going to have a lot of people who, you know, they don't look tired, as we thought. And I'm really concurring, I really concur with you when you said earlier on that uh, when you pass where there are no people cheering you up, it becomes a very, uh, you know, a very hard, uh, you know, cause for you. Yeah, our, our leaders, of course, because they're such highly trained athletes, they, most of them look pretty good when they finish. But later on, we're going to see some tired runners. In a few hours' time, we're going to see some very tired runners. So Spiwa and Lela is uh, coming home now. This will be sixth place overall. Uh, David Hatebe ended up uh, winning the race in record time of 5.18.19. Ludwig Mamabolo, Bungu Tembu, Mike Fokoroni, Rufus Porto crossed in fifth. And uh, Spiwa and Lela in uh, seventh place overall, while Max King of the Netbank Running Club is coming home now in World seventh. 100 k champion earlier uh, last year from, from Oregon. Yeah, Max King, what a great run with a 2.14 marathon. What a great run by him. Oh, this is a warm greeting and embrace by 
by uh, his manager in Nick Bester. Mkise looks to be uh, next time the DC Mkise, one of the maxed athletes, being applauded by Kewan Walker, his manager. There's now a host of athletes do start to uh, come toward the finish line. So this will be... Uh, just trying to see how many runners have uh, made it across already. This will be the ninth uh, run now. This is Mkise. And they do some keys it. So to Wolfosillo just uh, falling away in the closing stages of this race, but uh, a fine run for David Fatebe ahead of Ludwig van Bommel and Bung Musum Tembo, but they do some keys it. Coming home now at a very respectable time, 5.38 and some odd change. Tired after the race as expected but just unbelievable energy for the top two that was something to behold and this looks like uh, Silo making his way toward the finish line now Silo. well this uh, 10th place finisher comes toward the line Alec Riddle has some news from the Bonitas Eye in the Sky Right, so we've seen one of the most exciting races in Comrades Marathon as uh, David Khatebi uh, followed up on his Two Oceans win of three years ago with a Comrades win and a new record. He was in absolutely scintillating form. He was inexperienced in the Comrades Marathon. He put the hammer down early and uh, he just kept on going and flying all the way to the finish for a big payday. So we've seen a great men's race, but I think we're also going to see a dramatic final eight kilometers in the ladies' race because word is out on the road that Caroline Bosman has had some difficulties. She's not sure if it's cramp or if there's been a problem with one of the bicycles or motorbikes, but Caroline Bosman has been having a few walks, so it's going to be very interesting to see if she can hang on. I think she's got a 10 or 11 minute lead, but if she can hang on to pull off the double having won last year. So back to the studio and uh, let's get out and see what's happening with the ladies race. So the top 10 are in in the men's race, but Caroline Vusman continues to lead in the women's race, a significant margin, 12 and a half minutes. She is uh, currently leading at the moment by with the, uh, but she, she continues to uh, pause and walk and break into a walk rather than a run. And with that, every stride that she walks rather than runs, she is going to be drawn back in by the uh, chasing pack. And uh, there, there are a couple of uh, runners that she should, I suppose, beware of Colleen de Rijk is closing, uh, Kaiser as well, so too uh, Shane Borsman. I know they're all uh, showing some signs of still being strong, but she realizes she's close to the uh, finish line now, Ellie, and uh, uh, a quick word from you, and then Anna Malhaba will join you and Helen Luca. But uh, Caroline Borsman, she's really aching now in the closing stages. She's obviously having to really dig deep here. I can see she's uh, clearly just wanting to uh, walk. Um, I'm sure she knew she had that big lead of over a minute per kilometre, but she'll know that that can get eaten in too easily. And uh, certainly she seems to have not been only taking on her personal bottles, but a lot of the uh, water sachets along the course. So I can see she just putting her head down, grinding it out and thinking every footstep that she runs um, that's going to you know hopefully keep her in that lead and she obviously will have no idea um, who is behind her whether it's Charnay, uh, Cassia Berg in third or Colleen de Rook so she doesn't know what condition they're in and is just really really trying to dig deep and push as hard as she can to maintain that lead. Well Eli, um quite a different uh, situation Caroline finds herself in compared to your finish when you just got faster and looked as though you were flying and but not unlike myself, I can feel for Caroline. I've been there and you just think that nobody, you know, you, you cannot pass you. She'll be waiting and her mind will be playing games on her. And every time that foot hits the ground, the, the, the quads are sore, the kidneys are starting to ache and that downhill really can catch up on you. So yeah. um, and you know, certainly, she's um, having a tough day in the office. 
on some of the pauses there, it looks almost like she's a little wobbly, she's a little unstable. It's not just like uh, she's uh, struggling to walk. It's I'm wondering if she's feeling a little dizzy and why that's maybe she's taking on a few more uh, drinks. Um, but if I was Caroline, I'd be thinking, do you know what? I've seen other women do this. We saw on a few years, despite their amazing successes, the Nergaleva twins often struggle towards the end. So uh, I know she really wants this. She knows what, she's maybe got another, let's think, 35, 40 minutes. And, and there she goes. You can see her head just clicking. Come on, I've got to run, I've got to run. And even if it's only a few metres, that's going to keep her lead a little bit. Well, Caroline is nothing if not mentally strong. And uh, she's shown that so many times in the past in New York Marathon of last year. She actually had a short, sore foot and she just powered through that race. Um, but she is struggling here and I'm almost emotional watching this as is the crowd out here at Sahara Kingsmead Stadium and they're watching the big screen as you're watching on TV and every single time Caroline Busman starts running again there's a cheer that comes up from the crowd here. Such a loved athlete. But uh, well Caroline we spoke to her before the race she's got seven kilometers to go. Let's hear what she had to say prior to the race about the second half of the Comrades Marathon. After halfway I'll start becoming very aware of where I should be in terms of my pace. Do I need to speed up a little bit um, or can I just carry on at the pace that I'm going at? And where am I in the field? Because up until then, there's no race really. Anything can happen. If you've gone out too fast, you can lose hours in the last 20 kilometers if you've gone out too fast. So the race is not on until probably actually about 60 k's. But from halfway, you start thinking about where you are in the field. And then from about 60 k's, I'll start wanting to know what the splits are. What is the time difference if there's somebody ahead of me? How far ahead? How um, quickly do I need to run to catch them before the end? What, are they slowing down? Are they looking strong? And then it's just about the race. So if everything goes incredibly well on the day, I think that I might slip under six hour mark, but I'm not gonna aim for that. I'm gonna try and just run according to how I'm feeling, assess how my body is on the day, and make sure that I've got something in the tank so that if it does turn into a race in the last 10 kilometers, I actually have something to give and I can push really hard, as opposed to having gone out a little bit too fast and then being the one who's fading in those last 10 Ks, stressing that someone's going to catch me and perhaps even getting caught. I don't want to be there. I would rather be doing the chasing and finishing strong. Well, I certainly hope that wasn't prophetic. She'd rather be doing the chasing. And at the moment, she's probably being chased down because Caroline Wissman is struggling here. She mentioned that if you went out too fast in the beginning, you might pay for it there. Not sure that's what's happening to her here. She was maybe a slightly ahead of her target time at halftime, but not so much that it would account for this. But I guess, Helen, this is just the nature of the comrades. It can catch anybody. Absolutely. And uh, many a champion runner has been in the very same position as uh, Caroline. She, d uh, she did have a cushion of about 12 minutes. I did get feedback from the course that Shanae, although at one stage we thought she looked like she was just struggling a little bit, is actually apparently looking very good. So that will be going through uh, uh, Caroline's head. How is Shanae doing? Um, and then uh, there's Colleen de Rook. Oh, there we go. Oh, my goodness. That's not good. So, um, you could see that was almost about to happen. Uh, yeah. I know Caroline has got, well, everyone's got their distinct running style, but she was starting to lean forward, and you could see she really, really didn't want that impact. She's on a slight downhill. I would think she's beginning to cramp pretty badly there, and if she's yeah. suffering on the downhill, um, that's going to be a struggle um, through to the finish. But she's still moving. She recovered there. She obviously didn't get a really bad cramp, but I would guess her legs have just gone on her, um, but at least she's walking. Well, Elia, just before that happened, I was actually going to ask you, she's probably hoping for a few uphills at this stage because that downhill would be much tougher for her. And uh, Caroline Vesman still going, still, you know, just shows the, the grit required in this race. And I said earlier, if nothing, if she's nothing if not mentally tough and still smiling at the people next to the road, somehow she's still managing yeah. that. I mean, my concern would be if I started to have to, you know, your legs have given out, your muscles are giving out, you're walking downhill, you're thinking the, the women behind me are, can really, really gain ground on a downhill. However, once you get to an uphill, if she can run that or even walk, the, the potential for people gaining ground on you is less. But yeah, I think here, I mean, she's definitely uh, the favorite of South Africa. Everyone was so excited to see her coming back, hopefully get that back-to-back um, -back wins. And Caroline will be absorbing that. She seems a real people person. And if she can really take that in and uh, just help that carry her through. 
and again she goes into a trot and a cheer goes up from the crowd at Sahara Kingsmead Stadium as they see that happening on the big screen and you can see the support she's getting there from the people next to the road and this is literally quite an emotional moment. Well, I think even her running stance is very different. She's sort of leaning backwards, which, which is very indicative that there's some serious cramping and discomfort. And uh, it's almost like if she could just race walk or do something to just retain that position because it's her, her gait is not that dissimilar. So we're now just approaching the last downhill. And it's a steep little hill. Then she's going to have a little of a bit of a break. She's going to swing left now and go up onto the freeway. And just psychologically, that will boost her because, you know, you're on the freeway and then it's just home down to, to the stadium. So she has about um, six kilometres left to go. She did have that cushion, I think, of 11 minutes with... Um, from Cowie's Hill, and the third lady was um, 19 minutes behind her. So she'll be getting feedback, and we just hope that she uh, can just be healthy, you know, and, and, and retain it, can retain it. I think in the end of the day, it's a very big for this little bit here in the stadium. The most people will say so now, and at the end of the comrades, it's a bit the last thing that you will see. But it's very difficult for this stadium for Caroline opwaarts haar loop as afwaarts en kan sien ook soos hy opgaan tegen die bolt lyk sy so klein bykie meer gemakkelijk nie dat sy enigszins gemakkelijk lyk op die oomlik nie en uh, definitief nie die Caroline Wisman van verlede jaar nie as ons kyk na haar tye as ons nou weer gekyk soos hy dier Sherwood was sy het tussen Pinetown of liever tussen Winston Park en Pinetown gehad loop af met Fields Hill ten 3.56 per kilometer van Pinetown na Sherwood toe het het stadig gegaan sy is nou op 4.44 per kilometer, en dit is nog steeds net so wat 10 of 20 sekonde stadiger per kilometer is wat Shanae Bosman gedoen het, so um, Ellie, she's, she's slowed down to a 4.44 per kilometer, we saw Shanae doing about a 4.20 something, so she's still not going that much slower than her major competitors No, exactly, and I mean she's lucky in one way, I mean whether uh, in the coming weeks she'll be analysing did I go too fast at the start, but she did get that really quite significant cushion, if it had only been three or four minutes it would be, I'm sure she'd be really looking over her shoulder, um, but the nice thing is Caroline's not looking over her shoulder she's just thinking about herself, what do I have to do, um, I just saw their um, uh, male runner go past her, that probably wasn't uh, too motivating, but equally now we know she's got someone in sight in front of her, and sometimes that's what you need you just hang on to someone's heels and you let that pull you forward but no I mean she's still moving at a good pace if she can carry on running it's if she gets a big cramp and is forced to walk yeah just you know just on the on that we uh, we've got Lindsay Perry Caroline Wisman's coach on the line and Lindsay Caroline's struggling at this stage hello Jonathan just uh, speaking uh, from the club manager from KPMG. Okay, yeah. So please fill us in on, on what's happening with Caroline from your point of view. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, she's, she's after the, the mother was driving to her. Uh, uh, she's in pain. She's uh, completely suffering down the you, She's downhills and all that. But I uh, hope she will recover soon. Uh, and then we will see you at the finish line what's going to happen at the end the results did she suffer an injury from from that bike incident uh, as far as i know i'm can't comment on that because i wasn't with her okay because it looked like she was already in pain prior to that actually happening and she wobbled a bit which which may have caused that to happen i don't think she necessarily no. had any further injury yeah, she, from that uh, I, I don't think uh, uh, she, she's wobbling about a pain and, and that, but she was she was still okay before the motorbike uh, drive into her. Yeah, no, th thank you very much for that, Donna Katsia, KPMG club manager. As uh, we stay here with Caroline Wisman, still walking, and uh, we'll have a look at that incident that happened a short while ago, well, actually about 20 minutes ago now, with Caroline Wisman. This is, we're looking back earlier, Caroline trying to go to the watering hole there and right into the bike and in another bike as well so a oh, comedy of errors really there for Caroline Wisman that really should not have happened and a very unfortunate there for our current leader in the race but she still has a, a very good lead and uh, 
Ellie, somehow this is reminiscent of your downrun win when the twins started walking, and uh, I think Caroline's pretty happy at the moment she doesn't have an Ellie Greenwood somewhere behind her. Yeah, I'm rather disappointed I'm possibly not out there, but I shouldn't be saying that. I should be focusing uh, on the ladies that are out there today. Um, and it is interesting, that instant with the bike. Um, you see, Caroline actually reacted very well to that. It would be really easy to let that really get to you, get angry, yeah. get, you know, frustrated. She just sort of turned around. OK, bike's there. I'm fine. Carry on. I need my water sachet. And off she went. So she actually handled that really well. It does maybe show that the bikes do need to give um, these tired runners like they're not stable on their feet right now they might if they need to stop they stop like right away um, but I was also just wondering I mean I wonder what Caroline's suffering here was it maybe she went out a little fast um, but we've also got to look back she's obviously had amazing racing season with her wins at Omdi Dam and the two oceans this year but is that a step too much racing and it's catching up with her in these final kilometers she doesn't quite have that freshness in her legs yeah well certainly drama here out on the road at the Comrades marathon we will return to it as soon as we can but first we have to go into an ad break get what you pay for sometimes you get more take excellence hair color from l'oreal there's a reason it's called excellence it cares more covers more and now has even more conditioner l'oreal's excellence has a rich formula it goes beyond nourishing to protect color condition the richest care for the richest color and absolutely no grays even stubborn grays don't stand a chance excellence from l'oreal hair colorist paris we're worth it no roar of the crowd will announce you've beaten your best. Nobody cares that Olympic spirit courses through your veins. The world doesn't care why you train. Until the victory lap. New Energade Light. It's what you put in. Well, we're back with the Comrades Marathon, and as the athletes make their way towards the finish line, Old Mutual is running a competition where you could win amazing prizes. Simply answer the question that come up on the screen, and the question currently is, who can give you great financial planning and endurance event training advice? Is it Old Mutual A, your BFF B or a stranger C? Simply SMS Old Mutual and your answer to 34068. Old Mutual and your answer to 34068 A, B or C there. And the athletes still making their way to the finish line there. And of course, all the attention on uh, Caroline Wissmann. And I can tell you that the gap to Shane Bosman has closed to about eight minutes. So Shane Bosman at least, or uh, well, at most currently, eight minutes behind Caroline Wissmann. Well, Shane Bosman has actually passed over the uh, mat at Sherwood, which indicates to us that she's got it just over six kilometers. We've just picked up that um, Caroline has just come down past the mat and walked up that uh, hill, quite steep hill, onto the freeway. So I think Shane is closing 
quite quickly on Caroline. So the, we're in tr for a very interesting um, last six kilometers with, uh, yeah, we've just got to wait and see. You know, I really do feel for Caroline because she's experiencing a lot of pain. She almost it sometimes shows just a little bit of disorientation. And uh, Ellie and I have just been chatting about Caroline from the time she started running and being competitive. She's had unbelievable races. They've been positive. She's improved. She won't know what this is she's experiencing. It must be an awful feeling for her. It'll be an awful feeling, particularly because she's led for the entire race as well. So you'll be thinking, oh my goodness, is this crumbling like literally in the last sort of, you know, what, eight kilometers or so. Um, so that'll be really difficult to deal with. Like, why couldn't this have happened? Why couldn't I've got a few more kilometers down the road? What I'm also intrigued at is if uh, Shane Bosman indeed is still in second place, if she's getting any information, um, sometimes uh, even just uh, the public, the supporters along the route start shouting, hey, Caroline's walking, that can really boost Shane and maybe encourage her to push a little harder because otherwise Shane thought she was so far behind, she probably wasn't necessarily thinking of catching Caroline, whereas now it really becomes uh, something that could happen. Well, that is certainly the case. And uh, we, like we said at Sherwood, which was about the seven kilometer to go mark, Shane was eight minutes, 22 seconds behind Caroline. But Shane was running at four minutes, 30 a K. And Caroline has slowed down significantly since then. She could be going at six or seven minutes a kilometer at the speed that she's walking with a little bit faster running in between. But, uh, you know, that gap could be down to about four or five minutes by now. And there's still a long way to go. Uh, Caroline is, um, I mean, Shane is actually running about 15 seconds per kilometre quicker than Caroline at the moment. So if uh, she gets that information and, uh, and she's feeling strong, there's quite an incentive. Well, that was 15 seconds a kilometre quicker before Caroline started walking like this. So it's like I said, it could be a minute, two minutes okay, quicker at the moment than Caroline. But Caroline Wissman still going. Split screen to bike two, bike two. Caroline Wissman still going, and uh, but Shane Bosman is going fast. You can see the support Caroline gets as she walks again. Those cramps really getting to her, struggling at the moment. But it is Caroline Wissman still leading this. She's got some way to go. There's her coach, Lindsay Perry, trying to talk her through this, give her advice. That's what he's there for. So Lindsay Perry just telling his athletes, keep going and exactly what to do. And there is Lindsay Perry's other athlete, Shane Bosman, and you can see the difference there, Ellie, between the two of them. Yeah, huge difference. And Caroline actually just was going past the five kilometer marker there, and you almost hope she probably didn't see that because at that point you're thinking, wow, five kilometers, the pace I'm moving at is pretty slow. But yeah, there's Shane. Um, she's got a nice few guys around her, and that will certainly be a help. You know, they'll help pull her along, just a little bit of company um, until possibly she gets to an eyesight of uh, Caroline. But you can just see Shane looks far more comfortable. She looks relaxed. It's the same stride that she had probably two hours ago. Um, whereas if you look over at Caroline, it's really quite choppy. It's uneven. Um, and yeah, it's looking like it could be uh, Shane once she gets Caroline possibly in sight, that will give her extra push to, uh, to get ahead. Well, that means that Caroline took about 12 minutes to do the last two kilometers, whereas Shane is going at 430 a kilometer. So Caroline is losing about one and a half to two minutes per kilometer to Shawnee and the gap was eight minutes with five to go it could it could now be it could now only be down to this is going to be close and I'm trying to work it out in my head as we're talking the gap down now to seven minutes 20 but if Caroline's going at six minutes a kilometer Shawnee is going at 430 you know five k's to go it's going to be extremely close Helen well I think uh it looks like Shane could be coming up towards Tollgate Bridge. And once she crests that, she may be able to spot that bike that's uh, next to Caroline. And when she can see that, then I think we might see something. But she's also got to manage her own tired legs. You know, you still know you've got five kilometers. Um, you, you've got to, like, uh, make sure if you stride, over stride, you can also get a cramp. So it's just managing that, but keeping moving forward. And she will close that gap. Yeah. I mean, Caroline's going to be a nice uh, moving target now. She's got that big car with a huge clock, so Charnay's going to see her from quite a distance away, um, and that's going to make it look obvious. But the one positive thing to say for uh, Caroline, despite the fact that she's been pausing and sometimes looking like she's really going to collapse on those legs, she's not cramping when she's moving. So once she gets moving, she's actually doing okay there. Caroline Bosman op pad af met die bult, Charnay Bosman op pad op. 
En Lindsay Perry is twee atlete, een van KPMG, een van Netbank, is bezig om elkaar te jagen hier. Maar het is Caroline Wisman wat nog steeds voor is. Met 7 kilometer om te gaan was die gapen 8 minuten 22 naar Charney Bosman toe. Met so wat 5 kilometer om te gaan was het slechts 7 minuten 20. Charney Bosman bezig om vir Caroline Wisman baie, baie vinnig hier in te haal. En hulle gaan nawe aan mekaar wees soos hulle by het Sahara Kingsmeet stadion inkom. And uh, Helen, this could come down to, if I dare call it, a race into the stadium. I don't think Caroline's in any shape to race anybody, though. No, I think if um, Shane can hold her current form, and it does come down to a, um, a competition, like let's just say on the grass, I, I would think that Shane looks better. But they say this race is not over till you've crossed that finish line and it's just like we've seen Ellie catch up before and you're, you're, you're sort of our benchmark Ellie of what can happen and good runners at the end of this race so um, and, and just Caroline just looks uncomfortable and I mean I just admire her just for keeping on oh. and it's the old secret no matter what condition you are in you just keep moving just forward keep moving, closer definitely. to that finish line and I can just add to that these are the two women this is number one and two definitely Kaisa Berg who was in third hasn't gone through the Sherwood timing mat yet so they are very very far about and uh, you can see that SMS line, the support that Caroline Wissman is receiving. And uh, just for this mental grit, how it's pulling her through this race. People are holding thumbs for her. Just keep those SMSs coming in. Hashtag Comrades 2016. And uh, Caroline receiving all the support. I almost feel sorry for Charnay with the amount of SMSs and tweets that, that Caroline's getting. Yeah, I mean, I think, of course, Caroline's become a bit of a personality uh, since last year. And it's a great story with her, you know, having taken up her running uh, to lose some weight after she'd had uh, her children. But exactly, I mean, Charnay is an amazing athlete. And we forget as well that uh, I think Caroline's 33. Don't like to emphasize Charnay's age too much, but she is 40. And even in ultra running, you know, it becomes harder um, once to get to that age so uh, I wonder if we could even see uh, you know a masters runner competing for the overall win with the women well interesting enough the average age for women in this year's comrades is 41 so those of you sitting at home thinking well I could perhaps yeah. do that although looking at Caroline Wissman at the moment most people probably don't want to do this four kilometers to go she starts walking at that marker and we can look at Shane Bosman she's still catching as Caroline Wissman walks again One thing with Caroline, though, I notice is that she's um, not been brave enough to turn around and look over her shoulder. And I think that is like a, a real, it's not a sign of a weakness, but it's a very tempting thing when you're in the condition that uh, Caroline is. And she just is looking for, but she's not comfortable. What I'm almost wondering as well, as soon as she got to that four kilometer sign, she started walking, which she did also at the 5K sign. So is she literally now going, I just need to do one more kilometer, then I'll, you know, I've earned a little walk break because that's what I really need right now. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe she's just not looking over too. She's probably not even looking at that clock in front of her. I mean, we're now on six hours five, probably a time that maybe Caroline had hoped to be um, at the finish line even faster than that. But I doubt she's thinking about anything other than simply, I've got to keep going for another four kilometers. Well, that's probably a very good strategy, you know, try and get to each kilometer marker at this stage, earn a walk break. Uh, but just look at the difference there. There is Shawnee Bosman. She is cruising along. Caroline Wisman is struggling down here. And uh, this is going to be very close. And at the moment, it might look like Shawnee Bosman could take Caroline Wisman on this race. Very much so. And, and uh, Shawnee will uh, also be feeling a bit of pain. I mean, she's looking comfortable, but I... Well, I don't know. David, David said he, when he was winning the men's race, looked incredibly comfortable. But your legs are, are, are they're sore. They're sore in this space. So, you know, it's just I really think that Charnay must be getting, like, quite excited. She's got to be able to spot Caroline by now. Well, she could be excited, but uh, also the downhills. Every time both of these athletes hit a downhill, you can see them just that little bit of pain coming in. Obviously, for Caroline, a lot worse than for Charnay. But Caroline just keeps going. She does keep going. She's obviously very determined, and you do start going even, you know, as an ultra runner, wow, four kilometers, it does start seeming a long way. But I think Shawnee's probably got that little bit of personal revenge. She hasn't finished a down run the last time she attempted it, so she's probably, like, super motivated, even in the, like, she's probably thinking, even if I get second, great, I've made it to the finish, I've got that down run, I can nail both directions on the comrades, and, yeah, everyone is hurting at this point, and it's just really pushing your training to the absolute limit, and I guess Shawnee held back a 
little bit more earlier on and uh, Caroline obviously had a bit more confidence and it isn't quite panning out in these uh, final hour or so. Well, Caroline Wisman was there so good in 5 uur 46 minuten. It is so wat 20 minuten later now and she had slechts 3 km afgeleid. So she moves here between 6 or 7 minuten km. Sharnay Bosman, you always can here by 4.30, 4.40 km. So Caroline Wisman verloor amper 2 minuten or more than herself per km ten oor Sharnay Bosman. And with nog 4 om te gaan, it is so wat 6-7 minuten wat she gaan verloor in die laatste 4 of, of 3 km. So a bye bye moeilijk for Caroline Wisman, so what she weer begin stop in Sharnay Bosman with ongelooflijk good like. And uh, Sharnay looking good in that split screen there, Helen. Caroline still struggling, and I think this is going to go down to the wire, but at the moment, Sharnay Bosman must be the favorite. I think so, and it looks, she even looks stronger than the, the male runner next to her. He, he, you know, she just seems as though she'd like to just. Um, let fly but I think she's like being a little bit cautious she also knows the the challenges of this of this race you know she's got a couple of freeways to go over and then they come into town and then it's a long um, flat you know flat street and you're flanked by hundreds of people cheering you on but uh, she'll certainly be getting a, a lot of lift but look at the support that Caroline's got I mean that's that's just got to keep you moving forward. I was just thinking support is all good and well, but there's such a crowd around her now, and she probably just wants to be left alone. Just let me get on with it. Isn't that what she's thinking, Ellie? I think I would at that stage. I mean, certainly I sometimes, you know, try to shoo people away because you're just, you need to be in a little zone and you just be thinking, like, keep moving forward, keep going. And, you know, I mean, we've already seen Caroline had to come grinding to a halt. She slightly stumbled. She won't want to be crashing into other things, and she's not too steady on her feet right now. So if I was her, I would just just be you know looking after myself and uh, yeah soaking up the atmosphere but uh, trying to keep people a little away from me but Shawnee is looking super strong here and probably a motivation for Shawnee too is she won't know where third fourth fifth are um, so she's you know even if she doesn't know how close she is to Caroline she'll be thinking I need to keep moving because hey she got Shawnee got second last year wouldn't it be wonderful even if she got second again so she'll be uh, getting pushed from behind even if uh, third and fourth are quite a step back of her. Well, certainly, but for third and fourth, I can tell you now, is not something she needs to worry about. They haven't gone through that Sherwood timing mat yet, so they, they're very, very far behind, and we can't even tell you who they are at the moment, as a Caroline Wisman still digs deep, and Shawnee Bosman chases hard, Helen. Well, if Caroline can maintain this, and I mean, like, I think she'll be uh, more of a heroine than... Uh, she already is, you know, because I think she'll have won a lot more hearts just by her absolute courage. Now, that's four, four minute different. There's probably four kilometers to go. So, um, Shan, three kilometers, I've been told. So, Shane has to just uh, pick up that place and maintain it. But it, it's, it's a long way, but it's a short way. We've just got to wait and see what happens, you know. But in this picture, Shane really does seem to have the upper hand at the moment. Well, three kilometers to go. Caroline's losing at least one and a half minutes against Shane per kilometer. That works out to a 4.30. The gap is 4.24. That is close. It's going to be super close, and I'm almost, uh, you know, without wanting to predict it, can you imagine if Caroline won and Shane comes over, I don't know, less than a minute behind, Shane would probably thought, my goodness, I could have run, you know, a few kilometers, five seconds faster, um, and uh, really made it there. But like we've said before, I think it comes, if it comes down to, you know, a sprint finish around the stadium, um, you know, Caroline's much more likely to cramp, to collapse, um, whereas Shane, she's going to dig deep there. Shane has, you know, got a bit more speed in her background in her half marathon times and whether even something like that comes to play um, if it comes into the final kilometer well if anybody's interested in at the moment i think probably not kaiser Berg just crossed that show with timing mat and she is 19 minutes behind caroline busman which means she was about that stage about 10 minutes behind this lady in picture shane bosman and shane bosman still chasing hard looking good at this stage and just keeping that metronomic stride going as uh, Caroline Wissman still struggling and uh, the two of them this is extremely dramatic at the moment and it would be interesting to see how that split keeps going down all the time we also obviously caught up with Shane Bosman before the race let's get her thoughts on the Comrades Marathon Ready. 
Shana, you and Caroline uh, pretty much reclaimed the Comrades uh, Marathon for South African runners. Can a South African woman cross the line first on Sunday? Yes, I think definitely it will be a South African champion again. I think last year was the most amazing year and it was a special day in my career. It was one of my best days ever. Coming in second is still a really special day for me and like Caroline taking back with Comrades to the South Africans, I think it was a really, really special day. Come on, let's talk about the preparation. What did you do for this year? Weet je, ek het hierdie jaar, waar ek gewoonlik net 10 nakkom um, na die training camp te gaan, was ek hierdie jaar vir 23 dae in Graskop gewees. Ek het specifiek geoefen van um, Graskop af Sabi toe, wat nogal smaar aftrandes is. En ja, ek het nogal, ek het my werk gedoen, ek het my oefening ingesit. Ek denk Two Oceans was nogal uh, de leerstelling gewees, wat toe ek blaaseffectie gekry het, maar ek het nog 6 vieren geëindig. Maar soos Colleen die reke knille gesê het, soms gebeur dinge vir een rede. En daar het ek Two Oceans te hard gehaard lig. So ja, so ek moet sê, my voorbereiding het goed gegaan en ek sien baie uit na Comrades op zondag en ek gaan net my eie wetlip aan haar lip en kyk wat ek kan doen op die dag en ek denk is baie belangrik, mys moet focus op die eie reisplan en ja, en jou beste gee en ek, en die belangrikste van alles is, jy moet dit nog steeds geniet. As jy vir 89 kilo is baie gestres haar lip, dan is dit hier baie lekker nie en dit is wat vir ons geoefen het. So hoe kan mys dit maar geniet ook op, op Comrades dag nie. Dit is baie belangrik om nie by veel ziel te vinden af te gaan hee. Ek het by soveel mense gehoor dat mens met liewe bykie stariger afgaan by veel ziel en dis precies wat ek gaan doen. Ek gaan nie te hard afgaan hee en eers na kou ziel sal ek miskien bykie vinniger gaan, maar voor dit bly by my reisplan al die pad. Well, there you heard from Shane Bosman, the second place runner currently in the Comrades Marathon. But I can tell you that Caroline Bosman has stumbled again and nearly fell. She didn't fall this time. She started walking again. And uh, the gap down to 2 minutes and 34 seconds with three kilometers to go. Caroline's still trying hard to keep going, but I don't think she'll have it in her to keep off or hold off rather the fast charging Shane Bosman here at the end. But Caroline's still taking on fluids, trying to stop these cramps and the pain in her legs. And she's going, but Shane finishing extremely fast. We watched you um, beat the, the Russian athletes. There was no, there's no real connection with them. You didn't know them, so it was quite easy to pass. Now we might have a situation where Shane passes Caroline, they've both got the same coach, they don't necessarily train together, but they know each other a little bit. What do you think? We've seen in the past when um, Bruce used to tap different people on the shoulder, but I don't know if that's in the girls' makeup. So uh, how do you, what do you think might uh, I think happen? once you're into the final three kilometers, you can see now that they are getting extremely close. And if Shane comes around this corner, she might start getting Caroline in eyesight. And that is going to be an absolute boost and maybe at just the right time. Because of course, if she sees Caroline ahead in the final one kilometer, she might simply have run out of road and not be able to catch her in time. Um, but I honestly think at this stage in the game, if Shane goes past Caroline, both ladies are working so hard, I wouldn't expect them to exchange much. If anything, I would think Caroline might say, OK, good on you, off you go, um, and realise that the pace that Shane's moving. I mean, we've seen Caroline, she's really going as fast as she can. It might seem uh, much slower than she'd hoped for, but she's not going to have a finishing kick. Well, we're trying to show you the gap between Shane Bosman and Caroline Bosman. And unfortunately, the bike there was caught up a bit in traffic trying to get to Caroline Bosman, who is walking there. And you can see that gap. And uh, as Elise said, Shane Bosman is about to come around that bend. And she will see Caroline Bosman walking in front of her. And there you see it. There is Shane Bosman in the background. She's got Caroline Wissman in sight here, and she's going to pass her any second now. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when she passes. Will she just do it? Caroline's still trying to go. But Shane Bosman coming up on her shoulder now, and there she goes. She just cruises past. Caroline Wissman doesn't even give her a second glance as Shane Bosman takes the lead in uh, the Comrades 2016. Well, uh, that's drama, I think, you know, and um, yeah, I, 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 I do feel for Caroline because she's just become such a popular icon. She's motivated so many people, but this is comrades, this is the down run, this is racing, and this is exactly what happens. So, um, 
Well done to Shana. She's really sort of um, done her apprenticeship a few times in this race. She's had great success. She's had disappointments. And, and she's been in that situation that Caroline's been in. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously it going to be heartbreaking for Caroline to have led for, uh, you know, 87 plus kilometers of this race to be overtaken so late in the game. But you also, you've got to feel for Shane. I mean, she's had tough races here. She's really worked for this. And uh, it was lovely there to see she was getting a bottle from her husband at the side. I can only imagine uh, his excitement that uh, what she's earning here. And yeah, she went past so decisively there. Um, and I'm sure what she's going to do what I did. You just put your head down and you go, I want this so much. I'm not going to look back. Maybe Caroline has got something in. So she is just going now really, really pushed to the finish line. Um, but hopefully she's getting confidence now. Um, and the nice thing about having the lead for such little time, you don't have that pressure, right? She's just got to hold it for what it's going to be sort of eight minutes or so. And then she is, it looks like, going to be the first woman over the line. Well, Sharna Bosman with no four out of say three Wittler, Jiltemol. In our surf, the eindstrip in our surf, the stadium, Caroline Bosman is a klein blau figuur daar in die achtergrond, wat al hoe kleiner word, Shanae Bosman wat nie eers terugkijk nie, en uh, sy het nog net so wat 2 kilometer oor, tot die eindstrip van die wetloop, en by 2 oceans in die jaar was het anders om toe, Caroline Bosman voorbij Tanif Maxwell gehaard loop het, but Helen, this must be extremely heartbreaking for Caroline, because she clearly said that this year comrades is her main focus she didn't even want to or necessarily try to win two oceans it just turned out that way this was what she put everything on absolutely but i think you know we uh, maybe um she's proved reproved a few of the old rules that we have heard that to race two major races in one year is um quite taxing on the body especially the um the distance of these races and but i do my uh, i admire caroline because she came to this race and she said what she wanted to do. And, I, you know, you get a lot of people hide and they're wishy-washy and they don't want to... She put her, her, herself on the line and said, I want to defend my title and win this race. For that, I respect her. I respect Shane for just persevering and, and doing her own race and coming through. So they're both still great athletes. Well, some other race, or other news rather from the race here is that third place still Kaiser Berg, Yolandi McLean's running quite well in fourth place, Sarah Bard going a bit backwards but not as much as Colleen Berea, Colleen Berea in sixth place at the moment but she's running slower than five minutes a kilometer as well so Colleen might also struggle towards the end here, this lady however not struggling at the moment, she doesn't have far to go now but you can see the look on her face there, comrades takes this out of you. Yeah, and, I mean, I would have thought Shana is getting a pretty emotional right now as well. Maybe that's slightly it to just hold it together and uh, can have that celebration, maybe a few tears um, at the finish line. And, uh, yeah, going back to what you were saying about Colleen Duruk there, we heard uh, a while back, uh, it was uh, quite a while back at 20 kilometers to go, uh, Colleen was suffering from some pretty bad cramps and having to take some walk breaks. So, I mean, Colleen's obviously staying in there, but, you know, learning what the comrades is about. Well, while Shane Bosman is here running towards the finish line, don't forget about the old mutual competition. They're running a competition where you could win amazing prizes. Simply answer the questions that come up on screen. We'll have a question there for you very shortly. And uh, SMS your answer to 34068. It's that easy. You can win a 1,000 Rand in airtime. Don't forget to enter now. Well, I think Shane is definitely on for a sub six and a half um, hours, and, and that's, that is a good run to break uh, 6.30. We were expecting slightly faster times, but I think that's the nature of the race. It's just turned, it's been turned upside down because of everybody's expectation. I think we were all guilty at the beginning to say, well, well, we did say it's actually just Caroline's race to lose, and uh, she has lost this, and uh, she's going to be analysing it um, did she go out too fast? But it's just one of those days. She will learn from this, and I know one thing, she will be back. But at the moment, with one kilometer to go, it is Shane Bosman on well, her way to winning her first comrades. Yeah, well, Ellie, I've got a question for you. We saw all the leading men slow significantly in the last seven kilometers. Is that the heat, or what would cause that? Oh, yeah, I'm wondering if Caroline was suffering from the heat, and certainly I think some of the men will. But in the men's race, I mean, we've got to say there is more depth, like there's more... 
um, men that can potentially get a gold medal and so some of them go out you know they really push their fitness they say okay maybe you know if I have a really really good day I could sneak into those gold medals um, and so they just you know they go a little too hard and they slow down um, at the end it's less typical uh, in the women's race but you know we're seeing today you know I don't think uh, um, Caroline going through halfway we're all like okay that's looking comfortable in about uh, 308 um, so I don't think Caroline necessarily pushed beyond her fitness but some people just uh, deal better with the heat and certainly the amount of water Caroline seemed to be taking on did indicate that maybe she was uh, beginning to feel the temperatures a little well with about 19 kilometers to go I was telling some friends that Caroline's got this barring disaster and certainly disaster has struck for her not for this lady though Shane Bosman still soldiering on. You can also see her legs here and they're getting very tired, but she has got the stadium in sight. She knows all she has to do now is come in, run on the grass, and uh, Comrades 2016 will be her. She's been running this race for many, many years and trying to get this win, and uh, certainly in 2016 it's going to be hers. Oh, yes, it is. There's uh, no doubt about that. And Caroline also, I don't. I think she's built up a big enough cushion that she can walk in and still hold on to that second place. And uh, but I think we must just really reach out to Shane Bosman. It's her day, her win, and uh, well done. Well, Ellie, what is what does this mean to Shane Bosman? She's run this race so many times. Her first win. She's got a few gold medals. She's got a second place. She's going to get the win this time. Must be extremely special for her. Oh, for sure. I mean, I remember, I think it was uh, two years ago on the down run, you know, Shawnee was the one that was touted, you know, is this South African uh, going to be the woman that finally breaks the Russian uh, domination? And we weren't talking about Caroline there, so it goes to show that things can change. Um, and I'm sure this will mean a huge amount. You can see she's already celebrating. She uh, can see that she's uh, got it there. And she really has worked hard. I mean, uh, Shawnee has had some health issues. Um, you know, she came from shorter distance, fast racing and she took on the comrades and she did very well but didn't nail it to start with and here she has absolutely nailed it she's run her own race she's been calm she's been controlled and now she can enjoy the celebrations um, of that absolute top position on the podium well something that not a lot of people know is after two oceans shane bosman actually broke her toe and she couldn't train until she went to her Frasco training camp. So she couldn't train properly until a couple of months ago for this Comrades Marathon. And, uh, you know, to come back from that without proper training is either phenomenal or maybe the rest actually did her good. Well, it was funny. She said to me the other day, there's something only a couple of people know and I'll tell you after the race. So I guess that's what it was. But that's smart. She didn't want to look like a weak target. She didn't want to look at other women looking at her. Hey, I've missed some training. But this is going to be the moment that Shane will have seen on TV, seen other people coming into this stadium, absolutely huge crowds. She can enjoy a moment, enjoy the music and really go, wow, I've, I've made the day. Well, Shane Bosman comes into the Sahara Kingsmead Stadium. On the grass she is, not far to go now. And this is the moment she's been hoping for, waiting for, for the last number of years. She's been so consistent over this race. She's run these kind of times so many times. And here she takes the adulation of the crowd. We have a South African winner, and the crowd is happy about that. It's not the one they expected, maybe. But it is Shane Bosman taking the accolades here as uh, she completes the last couple of meters and uh, comes through here, arms are raised, big smile on her face as she just enjoys this moment as we see Shane Bosman finally getting that Comrades Marathon win that she's been waiting for for so long. And it's a great moment here for South Africa and for her. She's not got far to go now as she comes around that last bend. She's going to see the big finish banner now. And Shane Bosman, I've never seen a, a big smile like that. I mean, uh, Shane is not one that smiles that often, but a huge smile here from Shane Bosman, Helen, and a great moment for her. It's a wonderful second position last year. She's improved on that against all odds. First this year, she, she's put to rest that uh, little thing that was possibly a niggling in her that the, the last down run wasn't a good day for her. And she's, uh, she's overcome all of those challenges that I, I admire her. Well done. Well, manager Nick Bessie there congratulating his athlete. Big smile from him as well. And what a moment here for Shane Bosman. She's won the Comrades Marathon and uh, she couldn't do any more. I think this is her lifelong dream. And uh, being congratulated there by all the various dignities and uh, getting the Ola towel there and everything that I think she's been dreaming for for so long. And uh, 
Shane Bosman, this moment is all about her as uh, she takes this win. And it's a long way back now to second place. And really has the summer. Yeah, and I wonder whether that second place last year really spurred her on. I mean, Caroline was way ahead with the win on that upfront last year, but then Shane was significantly ahead of the third and fourth and fifth place. So she was still, okay, do you know what? I'm closer to first place than I am to third. So I'm going to come back next year and see if I can close that gap. And she's, uh, she's certainly done that. And it's interesting that in the races leading up this year, maybe some people from outside were thinking, oh, Shawnee, her times are a little slower, they're not so strong. Maybe she held back a little and she was going, no, do you know what? Those really are truly training races and this is the big day. Well, she's talking a lot about all the training she put in for this race, trying to get her quad stronger to handle these downhills. And that's very important. And Shawnee is also a very, very strong athlete getting the caduceus there the hermes staff as the winners get this year uh, serpents there entwining that staff an extra little incentive or reward there rather for shane bosman as she poses for the pictures at the finish of comrades 2016. and uh, she also is uh, 40 so she also is the um, first in i think it's the veterans category that would be and uh, yeah, so first overall, first veteran, so quite inspiring to all of those people who think they, they, they're too aged to get out there and give this race a good go. But a, a wonderful performance, and uh, she sacrificed a lot. She was telling us how that um, she went and stayed up there. Well, while we were giving Shane Bosman her moment of glory there, Caroline Wissmann did not stop. It could have been completely demoralizing for her to see Shane Bosman pass her, but she did not stop. She kept soldiering on. She just kept going. And this is not the Caroline Wissmann we used to seeing. We used to seeing her finish with a smile. But here she is finishing. She's showing true grit and determination. And uh, what's become a very, very tough race for her, she is going to finish in style. Yeah, this is finishing in style. She's obviously said, look, it's a, it's a running race. I'm going to run around that stadium. I'm going to give my fans, you know, show their appreciation. And yeah, I mean, Caroline is obviously really, really hurting here. I would have thought she's laser beam focused uh, and just looking for that finish barrier. I've done it myself where you come around a corner and you think not one more. But she is looking very uncomfortable, but she is going to make it. And I think all in all, you have to say, I mean, the, the Comrades is a very humbling race. Maybe she's been a little bit humbled, but she's also said, you know what, I'm not giving up. Yes, I came here to win, but winning isn't everything. And I'm still going to give my absolute 100%, um, even if that means a slightly, uh, I'm sure, disappointing in Caroline's opinion. Uh, but still an extremely strong race. And uh, maybe, maybe is she going to sneak under 6 hours 30? Well, I don't think she'll make that. And of course, the comrade slogan this year is a good tuba, it will humble you. And interestingly said, being humbled doesn't mean being weak. And Caroline Bosman certainly has a humbling experience here, but she's showing strength and determination as she finishes this race. And it's going to be a one-two for Bosman and Bosman, uh, same as last year, but swapped around for the two of them. And uh, this downhill, it just proves in some way how hard this downhill can be and how much harder Helen than the uphill run. Oh, yes, the down run is a, it's a painful affair, you know, for many. So, um, well, well done to her. And you can just see, and this is also what makes it, comrades, the crowd have just been cheering for her, cheering for her every time she's started to run again after a walk. And they're actually going crazy for her now. I mean, she's, I think she's increased her popularity base just through showing her courage. Everyone's going to have so much respect for Caroline for doing this. Um, and I'm just so glad she's actually made it to the finish line. She's looking like she is may well going to collapse over the finish line and thank goodness that didn't happen maybe a kilometer down the road but now she is literally going to be in sight of the finish line and coming over any second there she is just over six hours 30. well at least she's seeing the humor in this as well as she wobbles her way across the finish line but laughing a big smile on her face and congratulating Shane Bosman. And uh, that is the Caroline Wissman we know as she collapses onto the ground. She's not going to walk for days after this. And uh, a great finish there from a great champion. Just congratulating Shane Bosman on the win as well. 
I think she won't be too worried if she can't walk for days. And I'm sure she won't be the only one. There are probably going to be about 16,000 people that can't walk for days. Um, but yeah, I mean, absolute grit. And lovely to see her congratulating her friend um, and sometime training partner, Sharnae. I mean, that shows real class that she's laughing at herself. She says, wow, that wasn't what I was planning. That's what not what I thought at half past five this morning. But do you know what? You know, I've made second and you can't complain with that. You've got to look back at what Caroline's done in the past years. I think this is her sixth finish and how she really has worked her way up the charts. And I bet three years ago, if you'd said she'd come second in the Comrades, she would have been absolutely ecstatic. So hopefully she is later on today as well. Well, I think she just pointed to that little piece of shade. Can I just please crawl into that? And uh, then you can talk to me because Caroline Wissmann is a spent force in 2016, but the smile is still there. She's congratulating her former team manager and, of course, uh, Chane Bosman's team manager, Nick Bester, on the win for the NetBank team as uh, she's getting more assistance there right at the end. But uh, Caroline Wissmann, she's down, but she's not out and still a great second place finish here for her. Yeah, and the fact she was crawling into the shade does make me think, what, was she suffering in a bit for the heat? It is a bit hard to tell exactly how hot it is out there, but like I was noticing, she was grabbing lots of water sachets, bottles. She's drinking even now at the finish line, and uh, I think she's probably uh, wondering if uh, that's going to help her legs or not right now. It uh, could be a fairly painful uh, uh, getting her away from the finish line. She'll just be glad to be uh, finished. Um, her legs will be sore, but um, and she seems to be for the last sort of 30 k's trying to take on a lot of water but here we've got on our picture our third place lady Kashka Borg she uh, is from Sweden and uh, a novice at this race um, yeah and she's looking quite strong and uh, I mean uh, are you familiar with running against her in international I've, races, Eddie? I've not raced against Katya, um, although I do know she came uh, second at the World 100K in Winchoten in the Netherlands l last year. She ran a very solid time of uh, 7 hours 20 for the 100K, and that was behind uh, Camille Heron of the USA. Camille was meant to be racing today, but had to withdraw due to hamstring injury. So a silver at the World 100K. Um, I uh, was actually sharing a room with Katya, and I know she was a little intimidated by the hills. I guess uh, Sweden is possibly a little flatter, um, but she has shown she's really prepared well for this. Impressive preparation. She has uh, uh, twins that are only one and a half years old, so uh, she was telling me she does a lot of training with her stroller, and that makes her strong. So it also gives her a bit of focus. She has to use the time available. And there we have Caroline getting taken off to the medical tent. I think she's probably pretty good. She just uh, can't be walking anymore on her feet now. But uh, Katia, I know she looks like she's running a little awkwardly. I have to say, I have noticed over the last few days, she has got a unique running style. So I'm sure she's hurting, but that doesn't look too unnatural for her. And uh, what a great run for a novice here. Um, and lots of strong Swedish runners. We've had uh, Jonas Bud come second before. Frida Sodermark is out there today. She's come seventh. Uh, so every year they bring a few more uh, of their teammates with them and we often get some uh, strong Swedish uh, both ladies and men's in the race. Well as we suspected those tweets just showing the support for Caroline Wissmann and uh, if anything as you've said Eli her support has increased the popularity has increased but keep your tweets coming with hashtag comrades 2016 Kaiserberg here coming into third place and as we saw Caroline Wissmann getting stretched off there again it, it's so weird comparing these two athletes Shane Bosman and Caroline Wissmann because at two oceans Caroline won and Shane got stretched off at one stage so uh, very interesting the comparison between the two of them and it just shows when it's your day it's your day well Ellie another thing I mean we, we, you just mentioned that Kashko the lady we're seeing on the screen you know they've, they've all done well in the world 100 kilometer race and I mean there obviously must be a lot of talk of comparing sort of which gives an athlete a lot more credibility to come and do well in the comrades or the world 100k and uh, we've seen a lot of girls go from comrades run the 100k and vice versa so when when they go to these races what is the talk you know like hey you've got you know, you're not a real runner unless you've gone and put yourself on the line at comrades I think it depends and maybe it partly depends what country you're from I mean obviously uh, coming here to comrades you're not necessarily 
you know, directly representing your country. Whereas if you go to the World Championships, you've got to earn that spot to be selected on your country's team. You get to wear your team colours, and obviously, um, that is an absolute huge honour that lots of runners aspire to. Um, I think, obviously, as, a, as South Africans would say, for sure, comrades is the race. And I, I mean, my personal perspective, I've run both World 100K and comrades, and I do feel the level of competition is consistently better at the comrades. And I think a lot of people find that they come here and they go, do you know what? This really is world-class competition. And because anyone can enter, um, it's not restricted to a select number of athletes from each country, which means, you know, in past years, we've had lots of Russians or lots of Swedish people, lots of uh, Americans. So uh, we'll have to ask that of uh, Katia later today. Now she's had the two experiences, uh, like I said, a silver at the World 100K, and I'm sure she'll be very, very happy with her third place today. Well, of course, third place here is a gold medal, so <laughs> it's not necessarily one better, but it is a gold medal at uh, what they call the ultimate human race. And as Kaiser Berg is very close to the stadium here, it, I just reflect again on Caroline Vosman only being five minutes behind Shane Bosman, and with that amount of, of cramping or, or the stress she experienced in the last few kilometers, it's still a great race by her. But uh, Kaiserberg here, not far to go. There she goes into the stadium. And uh, our third woman looks a little bit unsure, a little bit lost of where to go here, obviously, not having done this before. But it is Kaiserberg getting that rose as uh, she also heads into onto the grass here and uh, happy there with her third place. Oh, and that's a great performance for a novice, uh, a 6.37. And uh, I've been looking at the uh, results, and it looks like we might get about eight, nine girls breaking seven hours, which is really quite remarkable. But uh, for an athlete to come here and be driven over the course, see the hills, never really known what it's like um, if they're not sort of run the long, long trail runs, uh, it can be just a little bit scary, I would think. Yeah, I would have thought so because, uh, I mean, if you're doing even something like World 100K, the crowds are far, far smaller than something like the Comrades. So just the experience can be overwhelming with running with such a large field, so many people around you, um, of course, foreign languages coming from all corners. Uh, the hotter weather, for sure, uh, might be a factor for Katia coming from Sweden, but she's dealt with it very well. And you can see now she's looking pretty relieved, but extremely happy um, to be coming over the line um, in her third place position. I'm sure she wouldn't have hoped for better than that. Well, Kaiserberg can be very, very happy with her performance here. She also gets cheered on by the crowd as uh, the Swedish runner here comes through for third place. And uh, she's got one more bend to go there, I think, before she sees that finish line as well. And uh, the crowd really appreciating the efforts of these athletes and another netbank runner netbank having number one and now number three in this women's race and uh, as she waves that rose in the air a little bit of a smile there from kaiserberg as well as she gets in here and she crosses the finish line in 639.03 great run there for the swedish runner and we'll be right back with the women's race we'll welcome back women number four just right after this break Smart kids say smart things. Fana, what do vitamins make you? Strong and fit and tough. Baby, where does milk come from? From the supermarket, Mom. <laughs> Just joking. From a cow. No, no. What are life cultures? It's the magic that turns the milk into yogurt. Why does Mommy give you a smart snack? Because I'm smart. Yogurt is made with milk and live cultures. Nutri-Day is a thick, creamy, yummy smart snack. What are you doing, Mum? I want to be as smart as you. Nutri-Day yogurt. Say yes to the smart snack. So have you noticed how your antiquation's freshness fades as the day goes on? That's why Shield has developed something different. 
New Shield Advanced. The world's first antiperspirant activated by movement with motion sense microcapsules. When you move, you activate a new burst of freshness. So, you keep moving and keep feeling fresh. No other antiperspirant works like it. Shield, it won't let you down. Welcome back to SABC's uh, live coverage of the 2016 Comrades Marathon as uh, we welcome uh, the fourth place finisher in the women's race, Sarah Bard of the United States, a 32-year-old, a 2.43 marathoner who has overtaken Yolandi McLean of South Africa in the closing kilometres as uh, Sarah Bard finished a very strong, very strong trail runner who uh, mentioned earlier won the 50-mile JFK in November 2015. It's a trail run over, over 50 miles along the uh, Appalachian Trail. That's Sarah Bard, who was fourth in the World 100km Championships as well, is coming in for a very strong finish. Uh, as, uh, she's overtaken Yolandi McLean in the closing stages, but somebody who is uh, a very solid competitor over 10 kilometers on the road, 37 minutes she can do in that time, but at the 100 kilometers, 7.29 to finish fourth in the uh, World Championships. She'd be very happy with this performance, a fourth place finish then in the ultimate human race. Something Amanda, to her most clever sa Kambambe of Makazungamba, Zori, and Dimbambe in a in a devasakar, Idova Nashiga, Chatevasakaring Amanda, Ara Kolar Sangam Dreye, Shane, Postman, Ajia, Ugwen and Gahoka, Karangwayan and Wahang, Gamram Sikerlan, Wasman, Zosko Konda Kayim, Sokor Chimangan, the Chimangaya Fizium, Ugasiba Zori, Mutanga, Kasa, a peck, and Gwanayana, Kanamakazi, Yolanda McLean, Kanasara Bad, the one of Tora Kola Melori, Kahim Bambe, Ubatakua, Abadova Tora. I think oh uh, uh, so uh, when you look, Bruce, to the way how this woman has been pacing up, it's just that uh, the, the beginning, it was a race between Carolyn as well as uh, uh, Shane Bosman, not forgetting Sarah Bard. Sarah Bard has uh, paced herself too. Do. She came in very strongly there in, in, you know, in contrast to our first and second ladies. I mean, even Shane, she won, but she was tired and she was hurting at the end. So there's something about the pace that the first and second ladies went out at. Maybe it was a little bit on the quick side. Um, but I'm still drawing breath. What an amazing, amazing race. And what a dramatic, dramatic sporting event. I mean, this Comrades Marathon is truly astonishing. Well, we've had two incredible results, Bruce, and you're, you're spot on with that as, uh, as we continue seeing the celebrations for the Ned Bank uh, club runner. Uh, being congratulated by Nick Best from the winner of this event, of nine-time gold medalist, but uh, running for the best is uh, Ned Bank running club. But you're so right, Bruce. In terms of uh, races, this is just remarkable because David Hutt what he did to this race was out <laughs> of time, smashing the comrades' record of uh, Schwitzel. And then in the women's race, the, the complete opposite, where there wasn't a comfortable run from uh, from somebody who just broke away and went off to a phenomenal time. Went out and suddenly seized up. And then Shane Bosman catching it from behind. That turned out to be uh, another, another remarkable finish, but very contrasting finishes. That said, we've got uh, Zulani Bongo down at the finish line. <laughs> Shane, you came second last year, but this time, a different kettle of fish. You're the champion. How does it feel? Oh, it feels amazing. It's a dream come true, and I'm really, really happy. Um, God gave me this talent, and I'm so happy. This is really a miracle to, to win this race, and I'm really, really happy today. There was drama out there. Did you have any idea of what happened uh, to, 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 to your uh, uh, number two? Yes, I heard with, uh, 15 cases ago, people were telling me she's cramping, but I still heard I was 10 minutes behind, so I was just running my own race. And at the next moment, uh, with five guys to go, I could see the leading car. And I just said to myself, this is your chance, you need to run very hard now. And with two guys to go, I passed Caroline and I went into a lead. And that was such an amazing feeling. I couldn't believe that I was in the lead. So yeah. When you went past her, what went through your mind? It's a dream. I can't, I can't, I can't describe the feeling. I was so so happy I couldn't believe it so yeah but yeah I must actually tell you that it's all glory to God he gave me the talent and I'm really really happy for today do you have any words for her 
Yes, um, Caroline did really well. She's my also training partner. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad that she came second. I could see she was in a lot of fun when I passed her. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad she could hold on and finish this second. So yeah, she will come back stronger again. Well done, Katya, congratulations. Thank you so much. Ready? Oh, I think this is Kyrianne Marshall out on the uh, course. She's approaching the stadium now. Oh, Sarah Bond, I know, uh, seemed to overtake Yolandi McLean, but uh, I don't know where Yolandi McLean is. This looks to be uh, Kyrianne Marshall, another one of the KPMG runners. So she is... Uh, well, she... I'm hearing that she's sixth overall, so Yolandi McLean must have snuck in to the venue. Just trying to keep an eye out of the window while uh, watching the monitor at the same time as well. But Kerry Ann Marshall, who's uh, coming in now in a very respectable time. And looking good, looking strong, got a smile on her face. She's obviously enjoying these last couple of kilometers. Just trying to uh, see if we can have any sign of Yolanda McLean because uh, she might have actually finished. I'm just trying to see in the finishing area if uh, if I can spot her at all. That's it. We do know the top four uh, finishes in the women's race as uh, Shane Bosman ahead of Caroline Busman, Kaiser Berg uh, finishing in third, and then uh, Sarah Bard finishing in fourth a short while ago. Sixth woman home here is uh, Kerry Ann Marshall. So we're hearing that Yolandi McLean did come in in, uh, in fifth position. I'm trying to see if I could spot her somewhere. That's it, uh, Kerry Ann Marshall for a very respectable sixth place finish. And uh, another South African home. She'll be very proud. And of course, always the uh, male runners around the female runners, sometimes adding a, a little encouragement, sometimes an annoyance for the uh, female runners in terms of how close they might get. But the words of encouragement are, uh, are always welcome out on the route, no doubt. So here we are, Marshall, just taking an in. She's approaching the uh, final turn now, and here she comes into the uh, finishing straight. It's the last few meters. Kyrianne Marshall just trying to drag it to the line. Just to uh, bring you up to date on what's been happening is that uh, David Radebe won the men's race earlier today. Shane Bosman beating Caroline Bosman to first place in the, uh, the women's race. And uh, Kaiser Berg finishing third in this women's race despite running with, we hear, a, uh, a hip concern. Sarah Bard fourth. And Sarah Bard finishing fourth. Yolanda McLean apparently finished uh, fifth, and this is the sixth place finish for Kerry Ann Marshall. Well, and now this is Colleen Derek, the 52-year-old. Now, this is somebody who set a world age group record at uh, the Two Oceans Marathon. She smashed the world record over 50 kilometers by uh, over nearly 15 minutes while running the uh, Two Oceans Marathon. But Colleen Derek, uh, just a remarkable, remarkable athlete, an Olympian, a four-time Olympian as well, somebody who went to the Olympic Games for South Africa, went to the Olympic Games for the United States. She's continued to impress on the international stage. And at 52, somebody whose father, Frank Lindicke, used to run the Comrades Marathon, her brother, Colin, has earned a top 10 spot as well back in 1995 but uh, to see Colleen de Rieck doing her first comrades marathon at the age of 52 and coming in with a gold medal she'll be absolutely delighted she will be in what a fantastic run smile on her face and uh, yes arguably the the run of the day uh, given her age category first master home uh, brilliant run Gamanda's <laughs> <laughs> 
have a go, Edwin. Uh, this is uh, Colleen Nering. I mean, it's somebody who's just uh, an astonishing athlete. I know she, she was aiming for about four and a half minutes a kilometre in this race, but ultimately not running that sort of time in the in the end but she's somebody who has, has just dominated the longer distance events over the years and that battles with Ilana Mayer over the years I think were some of the most enthralling that South Africans ever saw first in the uh, marathons and then indeed over the 10,000 meters but uh, Colleen de Rijek has finally got that uh, Comrades gold medal behind her she's come out done the race and she was building up to this race but just phenomenal to see uh, Co Colleen de Rijek claiming a, a gold medal in the Comrades Marathon, a seventh place finish here. But now back to uh, Kloof where some of the uh, back runners are starting to come through. Now these are uh, runners who are going to need to, <laughs> they're going to need to be uh, pushing it towards the closing stages. Some might be finishing in the final hour or so. But others will be hoping for slightly quicker times in this Comrades Marathon. But at Kloof, 540 meters above sea level, there's uh, a host of runners still coming through and this is what the conference is all about it's for the uh, the average man the average woman who who have a day job who don't train as elite athletes to give themselves a uh, a a goal an aim something to focus on and who come out and achieve that goal on this great day Sabe como a banda é doer, mas vamos colar para essas gino. Cá se guarda tinha a coisa boa na rafa. De banda na bafunga casa, banda o gamba só o ricabo as bafunga ao do win, a bafunga ao ri refarça na rota, rota com a rota ria panda. Não vamos colar para o novo ano do zabo, caro nenhum dos zabo. O azul azul o ri vai cozita, mumbo mumbo na o ri caribe na na chigachti, capuchino hashori. Rede quando acabamos de conferir o que dima compras marathon. And I can tell you, doer, when you talk about you know men and women who you know they are not in here for any prize but they are just in here just to make sure that they get medals as uh, to showcase that uh, at least once in my lifetime I was part of the Congress Marathon Chris well and these runners are still running remember we're gonna see yeah. a lot more uh, runners behind them walking and in fact our commentary task gets quite tricky later on because we have to talk for hours about lots of people walking and True. nothing wrong with that but these runners are still running so they, they they're going to end up running quite good uh, solid commerce marathons it's later on when you see the people walking and walking slowly and walking up those big hills um that's where you see the real backbone of comrades and the courage of the commerce marathon very interesting team prize race taking place on the field in front of us because we've got two or three Ned Bank in the ladies race two or three Ned Bank runners who have finished and now KPMG with two or three it'll be interesting to see that how that unwinds well the team race indeed will be uh, clarified later on towards the uh, prize giving but certainly the throngs that are coming through at Kloof and these are the runners that will be uh, still in with some really good uh, times comparatively speaking these are the runners who are they've done the distances and they they're going to be putting in some decent times in this Comrades Marathon. And they'll all be hoping to finish in fairly comfortable times. Now, Fakile. Oh, Fakile Mutuma. I think she's the first Pozula Natal athlete to be uh, coming home. So representing Kwazulu Natal, the home province, the host province of the Comrades Marathon, will be the eighth woman home after uh, Colleen de Rijek's seventh place finish. This is uh, zigzagging just a little bit. Fugile Mbutuma from uh, South Africa, and certainly best Kwazulu Natal athlete last year. She's going to be following that up with another performance best Kwazulu Natal athlete this year. And she'll be delighted with this uh, finish when you consider that she's had a couple of uh, a couple of top 20 finishes in recent times and uh, broken into the top 50 since 2007 but her best was a 12th place finish in 2014 to break into the top 10 is just it, it's a different level she'll be delighted and i think i saw a yellow number yes she's wearing a yellow number which means she's doing her 10th commerce marathon so a double triumph for her a gold medal and uh, earning her permanent number. On well, the finish here at Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, delighted to welcome the leading ladies home. And the eighth woman home from Kozula Natal representing the province, and that's always a special moment. But the very first run back in 2006, she finished 171st. But since then, she's been in the top 50 in the women's race 
in every year since. And that is uh, that is a special, the, uh, a special achievement. She did miss the 2009 run, but uh, every year that she's run since that 2006 debut, she's finished inside the top 50. So for Gillian Butuma, who is uh, always set to go under seven hours. It's going to be coming home comfortably under seven hours in this Comrades Marathon. It's going to be a personal best as well. She was aiming for that. She'd done a 7.08 back in 2014 in the last down run. And that's another barrier that she's uh, gotten over. A finish for a local favourite, Shahil Mbutuma. And she comes around the final corner. She's being warmly welcomed home by fellow South Africans and indeed by those from her home province in KwaZulu-Natal. Fugil Mbutuma again, the top KZN athlete in this field, warmly embraced by Manager Nick Bester come the end. Another thing when the most of the collaborators are from Magazine of China, we have a lot of people who 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 have a lot of people na ndi batu wa njibu kumawako diya mazuri kamusi anga faiza nae ni akwa nao jechi mo chene chino nae nao kwa jena wakati ya mtari kachuna chupinga hune za jino udo ba chupida chala temi na kwa tawana mngene udo wa bakuwa msuku nga mwana ndo wari batu bote mafawu mwa hotoma uya kwa lakabu mwabuni ya baha bufumi mwati hotu wa na gold medal ni chene chene kwa lara samu maka zina kwa jena kandina ndina quite a wonderful time just to see women just pacing you know in their own way and making sure that they have set I think wonderful records I mean target for themselves yeah, a sub uh, seven hour run here. It's not too long ago that seven hours could win the ladies race and it's uh, so we see a massive improvement. And now the team prize has become very interesting because we've got uh, Born to Run also showing a, 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 a few finishes yes. and Ned Bank and... Uh, well, Yulani Basson just coming home here, taking the applause as she Hits the finish line now, Yulani Basson, who uh, represented South Africa in the World Trophy 50 kilometers back in 2011, some five years ago now, now running in the uh, veteran categories, as it were. In the 40 to 49, she finishes in ninth position overall in the women's race. And she'll be very happy with that, Yulani Basson. The uh, good couple of years in terms of vet running. So it looks like Cooper is going to be uh, fourth, uh, tenth overall, rather. So just to confirm, Salome Cooper, another born to run athlete to be coming in in 10th uh, place so in terms of born to run athletes we have some this is 10th place runner indeed uh, Salome Cooper so another born to run athlete Yolandi McLean and Yolandi Basson and now indeed Salome Entering Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, and this will be rounding out the top ten in the women's race. And so now we've got a three-way three-way race for the team prize between Nedbank, uh, Born to Run, and uh, KPMG. It'll be interesting to see the next couple. Uh, it's just interesting to. Uh, See, I don't think uh, as qualifying none as a South African. I don't think because she runs under the United States flag. Good point. Says, Good Lurie, point. Uh, she she would uh, not qualify for KPMG. That's it. Salome Cooper is South African. She takes the applause of those at Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. Coming into the finishing stretch now, and here she is being welcomed home by those in attendance who. 
come to enjoy the finish at Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. Well, born to run, might be what it says on the vest of Salome Cooper. For so many athletes, there is a belief that they have been born to run. Well, I think uh, one thing that we need to really commend uh, Adrian is that uh, most of the South African women, they are really taking charge of this marathon um, because you can tell that, you know, in the previous years, we could be able to see a couple of people from outside the country taking the lead. And of course, maybe the absence of the Russians this year uh, has just driven all the South African women to make sure that they really stand on their own and say, we need to be, uh, you know, seen and be counted. Uh, indeed, and a warm embrace from uh, Yelani Basson, her team to finish ninth, just one place ahead of her. Uh, joining uh, Big T and I in the commentary position is Bruce Fordyce takes a welcome break. We are going to have Alec Riddle in just a moment and get his view. He's uh, just returned from the eye in the sky. In his uh, take on the overview of the race as he saw it from above. But uh, another warm embrace. Now, this is how things lined up today in just the most remarkable run. A new record for the Comrades Marathon. Shvetsov's uh, record is no more. 5.18.19 for Deb Hadebu, who wins ahead of uh, Ludwig Mamabolo in a very respectable 5.24.05. Humus Tembo, the downhill defending champion, finishing third. Fukuroni, fourth. As the uh, two oceans winner, Rufus Porto, fifth. Gordon Shiva, sixth. Uh, Spua and Lela, seventh. Max King, eighth. Charles uh, Gianni in ninth and tenth overall, Nadisim Kize in a 5.38.34. That is an enormously um, quick field for the uh, men's race. The women's race is slightly slower, and there was a battle up front between uh, Bosman and Vosman. In the end, it was Vosman who started to cramp in the closing stages. Shane Bosman overtook her and finished in the 6.25.55 to claim her first Comrades Marathon title. Carolyn Vosman, defending champion, finished uh, in second overall. Kaiserberg of Sweden, the top uh, finishing foreign runner. Sarah Bard of the United States in fourth. Yolanda McLean and Kerry Ann Marshall, two South Africans, fifth and sixth before. South African-born Colleen de Rieck, legendary at 52, finished in seventh position overall as uh, Figilin Butuma also finished below seven uh, hours as well but while uh, while we look at the results of uh, the men's and the women's races and we go back to clue for some visuals of the runners coming through Alec Riddle has joined us now in the commentary position and uh, Alec we welcome you to uh, to give us a perspective from down on the ground you've watched this race now from uh, from the air for the opening six odd hours or so uh, give us an overview of, of your take of this 2016 comrades yeah it's hard to uh, to put it into into words the visuals you get out there you know for example as they're running into halfway at drummond the kids running up the hills out of the valleys uh, to cheer on their heroes uh, literally thousands of them it was absolutely fantastic but um, you know the comrades is the comrades and the you know the first half we we see a few people uh, trying to chase hot spots and the contenders hang back and round about in Changa they start uh, moving through we saw the first of them come through was Mike Focoroni and uh, Tebel Holosello and uh, they really set it alight and then of course it was the turn of uh, David Khatebi and um, you know when you're up there in the sky and you look at this guy you could see this look, guy looked really good at one stage I thought it was Gift Kelly he looked so good and um, you know John Hamlet had said he'd been training with Gift and was in great shape so um, he took the the race uh, by the horns and went as hard as he could and there was no coming back but we'll speak about uh, we'll speak about Ludovic Mamabello and David Khatebi in just a moment yeah we uh, we've got all the uh, runners coming through at clue for the moment now the midway cutoff happened at drummond a, a short while ago we'll uh, get details from what happened and indeed chat to uh, the first runner who missed the uh, cutoff mark in just a bit but this is uh, happening at clue but in terms of the runs though i, I could hear the uh, well, the excitement and almost bewilderment when you first told us that is running at three strides a second and from there we all sat big-eyed watching this remarkable run we'll get your views in uh, in a moment or so but first we've got to cross uh, over to lindani and benza who i believe has the first runner who missed out at the halfway mark cutoff gun five four three two one and the cut off for the 2016 Comrades Marathon has gone off uh, and uh, let's just find this is the final man to go through the line. Sir, how are you? Baba, how are you? 
Congratulations, you are the last man to cross the line, off the cutoff line uh, for the Comrades 2016. How proud are you? I still love you. I do. How proud are you that you, you went through? You can join me. Our We love you. All right, uh, good luck. Congratulations, and uh, we'll see you at the finish line. We are here at uh, Dramont, just off of the valley of a thousand hills. Very beautiful part of uh, Guazulu Natal, but for some people, it's not going to be so beautiful and not going to be so memorable uh, because they have not made the cutoff time, uh, which is uh, six hours uh, for the Comrades Marathon. And just, just get uh, to hear what uh, they have to say. What a long run. I'm sure you were a few seconds off. How do you feel? Very unlucky. Few seconds and my first time. Oh my God, I can't believe this just happened. But just looking at this race, how proud that you did get to the starting line and got as far as you did? I'm actually proud of myself that I made it that this far. Oh my word! And where are you from? I'm from Pretoria. All right, congratulations. Unlucky. Good luck for next year. All right, Baba, how do you feel, uh, uh, Musa? I don't know what happened. I prepared myself, you know, training everything. It's perfect, but I don't know what happened to me. I was just get tired, but now next year I'm coming. My fitness is still there. Don't and go. you're going to be crossing the line next year? I'm crossing the line. Just a second, and then you cut me. You, man. All right, so let's just look at uh, Sis Nomsa. Sis Nomsa, how? How unlucky? I'm speechless. I'm really speechless, but next day we're coming back. Well, uh, certainly is a disappointing uh, situation for the runners who uh, can't make the finish in time. The runners continue to stream into the to finish here at the Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. Another uh, female finisher. It's uh, Anne Ashworth. And these athletes coming in now just over seven hours are still phenomenal performances. It wasn't long ago that you could win the ladies race with a time of seven hours. In fact, I remember 1990, uh, Nadine Harrison winning in seven hours, uh, sandwiched between two excellent Frith Van Amerva wins. Oh, the Frith Van Amerva wins were simply sensational. That 5.54 and 89 is out of this world. But as you say, 97 hours could, uh, could actually win it. This is uh, Gerda Stein coming in now. After uh, Anne Ashworth, who actually started the uh, who started the uh, Born to Run club, which Yolandi McLean actually runs for, but this is Harder Stain coming in now. So uh, another South African coming in just outside seven hours. She would have been uh, aiming for a slightly faster time. I would have uh, I would have imagined, but uh, Harder Stain will still be fairly chuffed, disappointed perhaps that she doesn't finish in a gold medal position. But uh, Harder Stain, oh, she's still got a big smile on her face. She's a bubbly character. She'll be. Uh, Happy enough for the time when she looks at it overall. Perhaps mildly disappointed missing out on that uh, that gold medal. But we've got uh, Alec Riddle and Big T still discussing the race that was. And uh, just looking at the finish line now, uh, Alec. Now, we, we've got your, your view of the, the first sort of part of the, uh, the men's race. But the second half, I, when Khatebe broke, and I mentioned the fact that I could almost sense the surprise in your voice saying, this, this guy's three strides a second, and he looked so comfortable. There was a fear that he might have gone too soon, that he might have gone too hard. What did it look like from the air, from where he broke to, to finishing? Yeah, well, you know, we, we've, seen, we've seen athletes do fantastically well in events like Two Oceans and never be able to transition it. So you, one doesn't want to get too excited when one sees a guy like David Khatebi take the race by the horns like that. What you've got to bear in mind, and we can only speculate, uh, big to you, example, Ludwig Mamabolo, he's racing the race of his life. He's racing faster than Bruce Fordyce ever raced. And this guy just takes off like a cannon bolt and goes. Do you go with him? Don't you go with him? Can you go with him? Can't you go with him? And you ran a phenomenal race and you got beaten by six minutes. And of course, I think that's what we have been talking about to say, listen, if, if you have paced yourself and you have put yourself a target, exactly you can be able to really reach that one out. But then I think, again, on the other side, the course itself, does it really allow you? Do you tell or you psych your mind that this is what I want to achieve? Now, when you see a man like Karebe just pulling through, um, just, you know, going forward, uh, maybe in the next uh, two minutes or so, what, do you, what comes to your mind? And of course, then that's why you're saying he has been raising, you know, that race which normally he couldn't be able to do. Well, we're just seeing a couple of athletes who are uh, finding it tough in the closing stages and just uh, a little support from a fellow runner. I know what that's like because um, I think it was the 1991 comrades when uh, 
I finished in uh, around about seven hours, having gone through uh, Westville in just over five. So <laughs> I was like the matchstick man full of cramps. So that is tough. It's really terrible. Well, it really is. The aching bodies. Absolutely aching. Uh, some of the bodies uh, out on the road, and even those who feel comfortable, there's some pains in the uh, in the body. We saw it illustrated in the most disappointing way for Carolyn Wussman today. She started to pull up uh, with about 14 k's to go, with about 8 k's to go. She was really struggling. Eventually caught by Shane Bosman and uh, finishing second overall. Third overall, though, was uh, Kaiser Berg. But. Uh, in terms of interviews, I think we've got an interview with the uh, third place, third place finisher in the uh, is it the men's or the women's race. Men's race, Bongwusa Temple. Bongwusa, you were the downhill uh, defending champion here today. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. But uh, how do you feel after the race? I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to say unfortunately, but uh, I mean, I'm happy about the way I ran. And uh, I mean, look at the time I ran. I mean. Uh, Plus, let me remember last year how I ran. I mean, uh, I've given it all. I've given it all. I'm happy that uh, I've run this time. This is my best ever time that I've run today. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful. Today was a very special day because potentially three men could have come in under the course record. And it's good to have that record being held by South African again. Absolutely, man. You know, uh, uh, we give it all as an athlete. I mean, we, 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 uh, what, what else can, can we want? It? And I mean, the sponsors, they should be happy. The team, they should be happy. The, the, the management, they should be happy. I mean, for, even for us, I mean, this is, this is a bright future for, 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 the, for the athletics. And uh, I'm, we, I'm very grateful about, about the way I ran today. At which point did you feel that uh, winning the race was probably not an option for you on this course today? I mean, you can't, you can't say that. I mean, this is a long way. You, you, you can't give up. We have to fight up until the, the end of, of the race. So that's what I did. I knew that uh, I'm going to run in which point. So I did exactly from Hillcrest. I started to push, push my pace. I ran, and I ran very for the first half. I ran uh, past halfway, 2.43. That was my aim. And I knew that from Hillcrest, I just pushed the pace up until after I finish. I knew the guys, they were very, very fast. I knew only three or two will survive. I knew Lulu is going to be the first. I mean, the, the, the way he won, I, I respect on him that you know these guys are, are working very very hard that's what we need in our sport in south africa that's what we need as an athlete i mean uh, can I tell you what else can you want he's got a sponsor he's got a good coach who always with him who always give him good advice we know how we ran he won two oceans that guy's got a boot he's got a speed and once you you do some little thing with him he's gonna do well i mean I mean, I mean for, for me, again, I mean, I, I like to thank even my sponsorship, I mean, 32 gi and also Nike. And my, also my team, I mean, other four, these guys are very, very doing a, a great job for me. And also all the guys have been helping me throughout this day. And uh, I've been through a lot, you know, uh, since whatever, uh, whatever happened to me, I mean, 2014, you know, it was very, very hard for my life. And uh, to come up this day today and, re and win, yes, yeah, last year I wasn't very, very well and my mind wasn't even a race. So I was very, very broken in my heart. So coming up today and run like this, I mean, I give it all. So I'd like to thank my God and I'd like to thank all my family, my friend, my sponsorship, whoever helped myself in this, my journey. I, need, I think I, I went through a lot and today I'm very, very happy. You, you lost the loved one. Do you feel you paid tribute today with your performance? Absolutely, man. I think whoever she is today looking up for me and she's very happy. You know, it was very, very emotional for me when I crossed the finish. I always think about her. Uh, it's very, very difficult to lose your, 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 your loved ones and for me it was very, very hard. You know, I'm, I'm still young and it, just, it wasn't just my girlfriend, you know, it was my wife. So it was very hard for me, I mean, but I, I just kept going. I was very happy that I finished last year. So I just told myself, I went through, I just had to go to uh, sports physio, physio and so to get through my mind, all those kind of things, you know, come up today, working together, get the good people, come together. With, with my team and my coach Babu William Tolo and those guys, Martin Wenya. This guy is, is, is always with me. I'm talking about the guys who always train with me, about Tuso Musiya, uh, Luzo Gumtweli, so Manja, Manja Tumagute, those guys, they always with me. They are my family. You know, I, I think today they are very, very proud of me. Omusam Tembu, thank you very much for your time and well done. Thank you so much, guys, with your time. And also, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm in a part of yourself, but uh, I think this is very, very marvelous to me. I mean, thank you so much, guys. Cheers, man.
So that was uh, that was uh, words of Bournemouth so Tembu, third place finisher overall. As we go back to the visuals at Clue, for the uh, athletes are still running through. The vast majority, some are shuffling along, but nobody's really walking, which is uh, a good sign for these athletes out on the road. It's, it's uh, a very welcoming 21 degrees Celsius here at Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. As uh, we've enjoyed some intense action in the men's race and some enthralling action in the women's race. But uh, Big T, you, you, you hear the words of Bung Muslim Tembu, and I can't help but think that uh, a 5.26 on any other day would have walked away with a victory. Maybe not. No, that's the I think that's what we have been trying to articulate earlier on. That uh, you know, when you talk about this year's race, I think a record has been broken. And um, with the time of 5:25, because we all know that you know previous years it has been 5:31, 5:28, 5:34, 5:38. And these guys, I think, they're quite excited about uh, the achievement of today. I think the other thing is what's quite surprising is Mtembu, we hardly saw him and he ran one of the all-time great Conrad's performances. So it just shows you that although we had the South Coast Strider guy and the Zimbabwean, they went out hard, they, you know, they perhaps had a role to play in this record today because they were getting so far ahead that perhaps somebody like uh, David Khatevi and the other guys, they decided to move a little bit earlier and they got on track for a record and there's big incentives here. It's all a mind game when you're running. I would expect that David Khatebi has won more than a million rand today with the incentives. Yeah. So when you're running for that type of money, you know, I reckon, you know, these guys fight like their ancestors used to fight to protect the family, to protect the food on the table, to protect their land. And this guy fought as hard as he could. Man, you could see he was determined. But again, I think um, that which transpired from the press conference really hyped a lot of athletes to say, if you can beat me, just follow me. And that's what I think, Karebe, like if you listen to the pre-interview before the, the, the race, he didn't really set that hard target of himself. And he was like saying, look, I'm going to take it as it comes. And that's what he did. But you check on the side of Gilt Kelehe, your likes of Bongum Sum Tembu, your likes of, uh, you know, Ludwig Mamabolo, they all have been firing through the day. And the other thing that's also very important here is um, the impact of the mind. And uh, sometimes when you don't know how tough it is or what you're trying to achieve and you're running with a little bit of an experience, you can perhaps just confound the critics. Views between uh, Anna Griddle and Big T, but uh, views of Cowie's Hill now, 366 metres above sea level. I can tell you that Elizondo is on the ground. Absolutely, Dwayne. This is what the Comrades Marathon is about. The runners on the field. This is my legs. Take me to Tepen. So jump finish line. Bang bone high flats. End of a south coast. End of win. I'm in Santa Goodman. Oh, shama song. Call the coast. Don't go. No, 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 no. Here you are. Come on, don't be a cop. Me na ge. Gizala, we don't have to go. Just tell us a little bit about why Ukichimanga in your We are going to get South Africa. South Africa. Yeah, my family. I want to say hi to my family. I made it. Yes, you yeah, made it. I made it after I had a, a very long injury, of which it was. It took me six months. Here I am, South Africa. Here I am, my family. Wow, you wise men, let's talk to you a little bit. A number, comrades, how many have you been running so far? I've already run 18. This is my 19th one. No way. I'm going to finish it Why now. do you keep on coming back? Why do you because keep on coming Because it's nice back? to come here. Love it. Yes. And tell me, which is better, the down on the app? Uh, they're all the same, my sister. It's yeah. just a run and the around I tell you yeah but uh, you know the up is a little bit better because you'll be using more force but the down is a little bit because you'll be just running down and it tears your muscle I tell you this is Vugani from Port Elizabeth we love you thank you right, Simon but yes. comrades marathon is Ogutoba it will humble you are you feeling humbled is your body being humbled yes I'm feeling humble very yet all by all it's over in Tuniso Maranya in Java local and Niki Chima Manje and I'm happy I'm enjoying this I like to say hello to everyone 
I'm representing everyone who know me. Shout out everyone. Encourage everyone at home. Why should they be here running the conference? I tell you, sister, the comrade yeah. is exceptional. The support of the people, you guys are awesome. Yes. We love that, Desmond. Let's right. talk to us about the comrades. How are you feeling so far? How is heel? You're very close to the finish. I don't feel the bad. Just the legs are a bit tired, but otherwise, keeping strong and try for sub nine. And the weather conditions, it's heating up immensely. How's that uh, taking a toll on your body? It is quite hot, especially on the highway, because there's no shelter. But as you can see, just keep on rehydrating. Yeah. Best of luck. We'll see you at the finish line. Congratulations so far. Deboko, why are you running the comrades? Are you running it for anyone in mind? Yes, I do run it for firstly for my employer, which is Nissan South Africa, to promote it, employee wellness. Secondly, I run it for my church, which is promoting the people who, who love Jesus. They can do it in life. Thirdly, which is most important, I run it for my family. My wife and beautiful daughter, my mother, I just love it. All right. That's beautiful. We'll see you at the finish line. Christian, how are you doing? I'm very good. Good, good. How is Hill? Did you think you would make it in one piece? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It was difficult, but uh, I've came so far, so yeah, I'm heading into the finish line almost, about an hour to go, and then I'm there. All right. So are you keeping to your training schedule? Is everything going according to plan? Are your times on track? No. Oh, no. No. Why is that? Uh, I got an... Uh, uh, and ring string. Then I can't, I can't run. My, my legs are tight. Yeah, I've got cramps and everything. All right, so I'm so sorry about that, but I know you're still going to soldier on. And just like Caroline Vosman, she had that injury, but she still soldiered on and made sure that she was sick. I will finish it. Well, definitely. Congratulations to you. One of our colleagues from the ASABC, you cramping up a bit, Mohua. What's, what's happening? Tell us about what the condition is like. No, I have the, 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 the muscle pulls, and so the, the, this thing is very difficult to me, but I'll die my, 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 my race. But before eight, eight hours, yes. So you are definitely getting a medal. Yes. <laughs> I love that ambition. I love it, and I know it's going to happen. Yes, I'll, I, I promise you, and I got it at that metal. All right. Yes, already there. I'll take it, I'll go there and collect it. All right, we're so proud of you, Mahoba. Let's talk to you. How are you feeling? You're smiling. You don't even look like your face, by the way. Well, um, this is my, my third uh, comrade. Uh, the previous two, I've been doing more than 10, 10 hours. Uh, right now, it's it's just 23 past uh, uh, 7 hours. So I was I will get uh, there before 10 hours. So that's that, that is a proud moment for me. I'm always fascinated to know if you are keeping to your times, to your schedules. Are you going to reach the target that you set out at what half past five in the morning? Yes, um, my target is it's ten hours, so I'm, I'm left with less than eighteen hours. So I will definitely get there before ten hours. Right, so um, that is on schedule. Okay, fantastic. We'll see you at the finish line. Thank let's you. talk. Let's talk to you. What, 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 is, what does Mahewu do for the board? Well, it gives more energy for me to climb these hills ah. yes all right and then and how's your times going are you happy are you comfortable are you going to be making it to Definitely, i'm comfortable you see i'm always working below 10 hours yes yes, yes. all right and then who are you guys running for ishmael is ah, i'm okay oh i might take a look Yes, because last year I uh, never made it. I never made it on time. I made it in ten hours. Oh, so you are gonna make it. Yes, I'm, I'm gonna make it. I still have time now. Just that this car wheel, I had to walk. I, I can see a lot of people are walking. How is Hill? Why, why is that? Why is that? Uh, is preparation? No, comrades, you know, it's comrades. Beside the preparation, I mean, to say this hill, I mean, it's one of the hellest hills. Each and everyone, if you can notice, they are walking. So I can say it's not one of that easy hills. I mean, that's why I say it is indeed humbling us. Yeah, that's what I can say. But apart from that, we are going to finish it. So let me just keep moving to finish my time. Eh? Oh, yeah, no, keep moving. Oh, yeah, what, what, what's happening? What's happening? No, I'm just coming here to tell uh, 
But the race, I want to finish this race. I'm doing it for my child's birthday because I'm not from far from Nasna. So I just want to enjoy myself. And next year I will be back. That's beautiful. And that's why we are part of yes. the comrades for these beautiful yes. stories. Who are you running it for? Um, I'm just running for myself. I wanted to do sub nine, but it seems like a lot of question now. But it's okay. The joy, the fun, the endurance, it's good. Yeah, so I'm happy. Right. Even with my time, yeah. All right. I love people that run the comrades with such a huge smile. We spoke in Cape Town anyway. Yes, uh, I was hoping for a sub nine. Last time, my, my friends fight for me to say, you know what, he's wasted too much time on the TV. But anyway, I don't care because I need to be on TV anyway. You know what? And there was a hashtag that I spoke last time. Hashtag Tim Look Good California. <laughs> Now I remember you from Cape Town. And just to wrap things up, who are you running this one? I have my third impo. Two of my main objectives. Almost fulfilled. Ne? Number one, participation. Number two, to finish it. Now, starting to go. Japan, hashtag. Thank you very much. I'm taking you back to commentary. I'm very fascinated by the guy that said he runs these marathons just to be on television. That is what SABC Sport is about. It's back to commentary. <laughs> Vibrant and energetic Elizondo ooh, at Cowie's Hill. It's uh, it's an interesting time. It's certainly a tough race for a few of those athletes who uh, expressed their discontent with the weather conditions overall, but uh, we saw a remarkable race overall. And, uh, David Khadebe's record, I mean, the 518, when Gerte said it is possible to do a five-hour comrades, everybody laughed at him, just about. But you look at this 518 now, uh, look, anybody who said Shetsov's record was going to go anytime soon might have been laughed off as well. But, Alec, when you look at that 518 and the way Hadebe did it, how do you reconcile that for, for the average runner? Well, let's, let's put it to those, uh, those viewers at home who know somebody or perhaps they have got off the couch and run one of the weekly park runs. There must be hundreds of thousands of people in South Africa who've run a park run five kilometers or a five kilometer club time trial and they probably afterwards admired in the results somebody who ran a sub 18 and won the race Rahatebi ran sub 18 18 times in a row today <laughs> that is astonishing and um, let's just put it in context what's your best park run time no we're not going to go there <laughs> not on live television <laughs> maybe big t will share but <laughs> no ways i'm not going to say that one anyway but uh, you, you know what um to me it boils down to say you know there must be change in south africa in terms of the way how people take and really approach things and you should have heard what um, ludwig have said that is doable you know anything that we we, we we can aspire doing you can end up doing god i want you to like you know, when I saw him running, I almost wanted to say, can we not keep this guy away from the comrades in the two oceans and put him in the marathon because he's got so much speed and so much belief in himself. He could be our next William Atalo who won New York in 92 or our next desire to go on. He won the Olympics in 96. Of course, um, yeah, William Atalo is still associated with the race and coached the third place finisher That's today. That's right, yeah. He coaches uh, Bung Musum Tembo, who finished uh, third place, the uh, defending downrun champion he was coming into today's race but uh, we're going to have the uh, very first uh, cutoff at the finish line in a short while the silver cutoff at uh, seven and a half hours of course and that's at uh, seven hours 30 so just uh, under 90 seconds before the uh, silver medal cutoff but uh, the other thing that i must mention today that has just astonished me is 52 year old colleen de Rieck finishing in third place overall uh, in the in the uh, Masters category is just astonishing. She finished in the six hour 57th place, finished in her first attempt at a Comrades Marathon and uh, managing to finish only behind um, Lazarus Soroko, 6.42, and Sean Micklejohn, of course, to the he was celebrated as the Pazulu Natal athlete who uh, came home first in 95. Uh, brilliantly, but Colleen de Riek at 52, third place in the Masters overall. That's just yeah. astonishing. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll come back to you about Colleen de Riek in a moment, but I think we've got 30-odd uh, uh, seconds till the seven and a half hour. This is one of the big medals of Conrad's, the silver medal. Do you know that you have to average under five minutes per kilometer? to get the silver medal big T. This is what these club runners who can't go for the gold, this is what they're chasing, that silver medal. And there's only 20 seconds left. And exactly, because that's what people have been talking about. Five, Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. 
There's the bull road. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, that's one of those <laughs> yeah. disappointing cutoffs, the 7 hour 30. But, uh, well, in terms of disappointment, you've just come so far, hoping to get a medal, a silver medal. And from now, you get uh, the bull road. Yeah, they did the pick a chine, Bunjas Clabazan and Kabangahazo, Faranali, Clabazan and Zaba, Zabo Manoni, Bunja, Tangan and Kamanabo, Bobby, at the Club of Kamakas, Fensia, Machinabuya, Peter Mutubi, and Dimuaba Kitim Bobushum or something Amanda, Nanakolik, and Lavasa Dinga, one and Yen at the Fa, Hayan, and the Kuan D, and a fit in the Kumana and Sapa, and Peter Mutubi. But I think, um, you know, Alec, when, when you look overall, I think this year and everyone would be able to be very happy and excited about what has happened in our country. Yeah, excellent. And we, uh, we're heading out to Kloof. We've just uh, seen some uh, scenes here from uh, Cowie's Hill. Now we're in Kloof. In fact, uh, just a moment or two ago, uh, I, I, I saw two Achilles Club athletes come through, and that was uh, Karen Watson-Smith and Candice Pizzolatti running for the Achilles Athletics Club. And there's hundreds and hundreds of athletes uh, coming through Kloof. And, um, yeah, great excitement out there. Indeed, great excitement. And uh, let's get down to the very excitable Busiu Ngobo, who is at Kloof. Africa Zonga, if you talk about Ramina, if you see when Mobo, who falls to Maparo Mashama, the end of the Ato Shibayana, then the Yatam Wutin, the Atom was a job of a single tele, the 2016 edition of the Cobweight Marathon. Mina Jenna Mansha, I'm here at the Ned Bank Green Mile, which is in Kloof. Into the Comrades Marathon. The atmosphere over here is absolutely amazing. Can you imagine? Give me no photo. I'm going to let no Oki Chima your photo. Unja nam sanje. Ya pila unja. Ya pila. Eka mangi zotu bani. Anele matawe. Anele. Ozi swa unja ngo tasi kaza ngo Comrades Marathon yalo nyang. Great time, eh? I'm really enjoying it. Eh? And we almost there. This is my third one, and this is for my baby. Oh, this is for your baby. How old is your baby? She's one year old. One years old. How has it been? For you so far, do you think it gets easier the more comrades marathons you run? Yeah, better, but we manage. Well, good luck for the rest of the race. Thank you. There we go, doing it for his baby. Now, Kulana Sipeta, who Ayanda, Sabona Ayanda. I'm well, thank you. Ayanda, tell me, how has this run been for you today? Yeah, this race is difficult. I, I didn't ride for it, I was having a size, no? Now I've got a problem, like even uh, all the legs, the good size, I've got the cramps inside, but I'm going to work, work until the finishing now. Work until the finish line, Ayanda, good luck to you, hey? Oh, Ayanda, what are you doing? I'm a crime, stop on a babu, Jan. Right on the right. Baba, what are you doing? And you're 65 years old. 65 years old, you come ready to go to And you're 10 years, the marathon. If a 65 year old can run it, why can't the rest of, we, the rest of us? Let me just try and get one more person to speak to. Here's a gentleman over here. Sabwanu Jani. Kolun Jani ma. Ya pelangi zotubani kama. Umlife. Umlife, how is the Comrades Marathon for you this year? So far so good. I can't complain hoping to reach Peter Maris back soon. Soon, you've got 24 kilometers to go. You're almost done. Is this your first one? Thank you, darling. Okay, thank you, darling. I don't know whether or not it's his first one. Well, Africa Zonga, that is how it's going down right here at the Ned Bank Green Mile. 65 kilometers into the run, just 24 kilometers to go. You can see the atmosphere absolutely amazing. We're cheering on the runners. This is the 2016 edition of the Comrades Marathon brought to you by SABC Sports. But right now, Africa Zonga, Yama Bengele Mingai Kaelo will be back right after the short ad break. Are you South Africa's biggest Baker's fan? We love making Baker's biscuits. Each one is really special. We mix together the finest quality ingredients. But the most important ingredient of all is love. Are you South Africa's biggest Baker's fan? Show us and win your share of 2 million Rand in airtime, cash, smartphones, TVs and the grand prize of 100,000 Rand. Buy any Baker's promo pack and dial the unique code found inside. Best baked by Baker's. Smart kids say smart things. Fana, what do vitamins make you? Strong and fit and tough. Baby, where does milk come from? From the supermarket, Mom. <laughs> Just joking. From a cow. No, no, what a life culture. 
It's the magic that sends the milk into yogurt. Why does mommy give you a smart snack? Because I'm smart. Yogurt is made with milk and live cultures. New today is a thick, creamy, yummy smart snack. What are you doing, mom? I want to be as smart as you. New today yogurt. Say yes to the smart snack. Right to win, South Africa's only democracy game show. The Music Awards. Summers, South African Music Awards. Yes, yeah. the team that is the fourth on the league. So okay, I'm a rugby fan. <laughs> <laughs> Who elects the mayor? At least we're all on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up. Do you think you can beat our contestants? Find out right here on SABC2, where you belong. Well, remember that you can still win a thousand rand at airtime with Old Mutual called Loved Ones. Chat with friends, update your social media, or visit www.worldofendurance.co.za to plan for greatness. Simply answer the questions on screen. You could be a winner. It's that easy. So enter now for your chance to get a thousand rand at airtime. Standard chance to win. How often does the Comrades Marathon happen? A, B, or C. SMS uh, Old Mutual and your answer to 34068. So plenty continuing to uh, happen as uh, we are just outside Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. Visuals of the uh, runners starting to come in. But, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of Colleen de Rick, I just want to mention very briefly, uh, Alec Riddle. Am I allowed to mention that you? Uh, is this giving your age away if I mention that you used to actually coach Colleen? <laughs> Well, yeah, I was very young when I started coaching. <laughs> yeah, I had the privilege of working with Colleen when she was at university. Uh, her brother Colin and I were big mates and know the Linda Q family very well. They've got a rich history with this. And as you said rightly, I mean, what a phenomenal performance by a 52-year-old. But, I mean, she's such a pedigree athlete, four-time Olympian, three medals at World Cross Country Championships, a couple of world records on the road, an Ironman World Championship win. But... As much as she's a great athlete, Big T, I don't know if you've ever met this remarkable lady. She is such a wonderful person. Maybe the absence of the Russians maybe pushed our South African ladies to the very point. Well, one wonders uh, how that impacted on the our overall outcome of this race. Either way, Shane Bosman is a winner. But uh, there were those who will be hoping for silver medals and there are those who might be hoping for Bill Rowans but the cutoff happened a short while ago and I believe Udo Karls is down at the finish line with the, the first person who missed out on the silver Christopher Zuma that gun goes off the cutoff for silver and you missed it by literally three seconds how does that feel hey, terrible for me because I was pushing all the way for the silver but I've missed it in the finish line but next time i'll make sure that my time is more well talk to us about your preparation because in order to make the silver you need to run just about the sub five for every kilometer class 89 was that in the training was that happening yeah it was in the training and happening the problem is the cramps that started in mayville that's made me slack a little bit were there a couple of times where you needed to take a walk today there is a plenty of time that I have taken a walk. <laughs> so what, from here on into next year, how do we get that silver medal? Yeah, I need to train more hard because it is the uphill next year. I have to do more hills then. Well, listen, you didn't get your silver medal, but you got yourself on television, yeah? Okay, I know. Thanks very much, bro. There we go. Thank you so much for your time. Well, there's still excitement and uh, anticipation of runners who might be coming into Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, to greet their family, to greet their uh, loved ones who are all waiting for them here at the uh, wonderful venue. And it's generally a cricket ground, but which also serves as the finishing area for the Comrades Marathon. The 2016 Comrades Marathon, a down run from Peter Maritzburg to Durban, 89.208 kilometers and uh, covered in record time by an astonishing uh, David Hadebe this, uh, this morning. An absolutely phenomenal run in which he shattered the Comrades record. 
But uh, I tell you, there's going to be loads of discussion on uh, numerous matters throughout the day as we continue on this record-breaking day in the Comrades Marathon. But let's uh, skip on over to Valen Kirtley, a Comrades finish on multiple occasions, uh, but Valen uh, thankfully giving us her time today to be in studio. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, Dwayne. You're actually making me blush a little bit. Two is not multiple, but I do hope in years to come I'll be able to properly put my name behind their title to say a multiple time finisher, but two times. And it is the most wonderful event to have said that you're a part of because it is truly a life changing event. It has been a record breaking day here at Sahara Kings Meet down in Durban. It reminds you a little bit of the 1989 race where we had Fritz van der Merwe smashing the women's record for the down run and we had Samuel Shamalala becoming the first black man to become the comrades champion today we had David Khatebe smashing the men's record and then we had such drama in the women's race as we speak they've actually got the elite athletes press conference that's currently underway and I see a couple of the journalists are busy tweeting about some of the proceedings there and the champion David Khatebe after his record break run 518 he said that he's going to celebrate by doing a fourth leg session tomorrow <laughs> I'm not too sure anybody would be taking their cameras down to hold him to that because he as well as Ludwig Mamabolo and Bung Musim Tembo have made all South Africans so very proud today let's shift focus and in studio with me I've got a Dr. David Mabundo who is the CEO of Zimvelo KwaZulu Natal Wildlife a very good afternoon to you and welcome to SABC Sports live coverage of the Comrades Marathon. Good afternoon, Valen, and good afternoon to your viewers. The Comrades Marathon Association, through their Amabidi BD charity drive, raise money for a number of different causes. One of them is the Wildlands Conservation, of which you guys work closely with. Yes, uh, Valen, we work very closely with stakeholders like Wildlands, and uh, WESA, and many other uh, community-based organizations. Biodiversity conservation is very important. In fact, it is the job of everyone to conserve our nature. And the protection of our rhino is very important. And we hope through this event, we can actually promote awareness and protect our rhino because the rhino in this province uh, is the business of tourism. It's part of our brand. It's part of our logo as a Zambelo Wildlife. And it's part of our future. Why use the vehicle of the Comrades Marathon? Well, this is the most popular event. Uh, I feel very challenged. The fact that the winner is also a David, I feel that next year I should actually <laughs> submit my application form and be part of it. Uh, it's very important. Um, you know, the Comrades is synonymous with uh, iconic events and the Rhino in our province and in our country. It's very iconic. This is the home of the rhino. It originated from here to form all these other meta populations around the country. And we think that by protecting the Sutuwe Mfolozi uh, rhino gin pool, we are protecting the country's rhino. The Comrades Marathon also attracts people from all over the world and they really make a holiday of it when they actually come to South Africa to compete in the Comrades Marathon and that is music to your ears. Certainly, Valen. Um, you know, when people come, whether they are from uh, the other provinces, the African continent or international, they come for business, they come for uh, tourism experiences, they will never leave the province without visiting our parks. They're very important. And whenever they go, they support our small trade, um, people that are trading along the routes towards our parks. They support various informal businesses and formal businesses. So it's very important that uh, we really protect the rhino because the rhino is the main attraction. It's part of the big five. I can't imagine us being called a big four destination. Why is it that, you know, we've been speaking about rhino conservation, we've been speaking about, you know, winning this fight against rhino poaching, but we hear the stats, unfortunately, year in, year out, and it doesn't seem as if it's a battle that we, we're winning. Fighting transnational organized crime is a very complex uh, task. 
we are turning the corner. The numbers are starting to show a decline. However, it's not enough. One rhino killed is one too many, and we need to intensify the struggle. We are working with law enforcement agencies, and with the communities. The poachers, Valen, are somebody's father, somebody's son, someone's husband or boyfriend. They live amongst us, and we are asking our communities to be the eyes and ears of this nation because poachers feed their, their stomachs and we want to feed the rest of the nation, the rest of our communities. Uh, Dr. Mabunda, there has been a lot of initiatives to raise money to, to stop the scourge. Do the funds make a difference? The funding is making a difference. We are working with the non-governmental organizations who receive this funding. Uh, they buy us equipment, all kinds of things that we need. It is making a difference. Every cent counts. We must work together as a, as a, as a, as a, as a community, as a society, and as a sector. We're working very closely with business. They are supporting us in various ways. It's, it is a very difficult fight. It reinvents itself almost every hour, every second, and every day. And we need to be a step ahead of uh, the poachers. And just as we conclude our interview now and we take a look at some of the visuals of the athletes that are still pouring over the line here at Sahara Kings Mead in Durban as they complete uh, the 89-kilometer journey from Peter Maritzburg to Durban on the 91st running of the Comrades Marathon. As a South African, how do you feel about the historic day that you've witnessed? I saw people that are much older than me uh, going past uh, the line receiving the silver medal. I feel challenged, but I feel proud as a South African because the first three uh, uh, athletes that went through are, are South African. And also the women race was very exciting, nail-biting and scintillating. And I think um, in this spirit, we should also convey our appreciation to the South African society, to the SABC and everybody that has made this uh, possible. We must mobilize our people against all kinds of crime, particularly rhino poaching, and stop it. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much. That's Dr. David Mabundo, who is the CEO of the Ezenvelo KwaZulu Natal Wildlife uh, Organization. And just speaking about the importance of conserving the rhino. And Dwayne, when you linked to me, you spoke about uh, the fact uh, that I did complete this race. And having run my first one, I actually was right back in the bunch. And one of the guys that actually ended up running ahead of me was a gentleman in a big rhino suit. And I couldn't believe it, but he actually came came over the finish line and those are just the kinds of initiatives those are the kinds of spirits that you see coming to partake in the comrades marathon Dwayne it's over to you guys in the commentary box oh yes we've seen so many colorful characters in the comrades marathons uh, over the years and of course uh, so many memories of uh, of the uh, various finishes over the years but uh, Valen you've won you've done it twice you've completed it twice and two is a multiple uh, regardless uh, of how you might uh, view it you certainly are keen to do more no doubt and I know you will in the uh, future events with Valen Curti in the studio going to be continuing to bring us um, details from uh, winners and indeed uh, those uh, members of society who made their way up to studio here enjoying the action though in Kwasil and Natal at Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead and so many golden moments uh, over this uh, Comets Marathon. I know personally, when you think back, I think back of some of my highlights growing up watching this race, uh, sitting on Bogus Hill and trying to spot Alan Robb's red socks running past every year or watching Bruce Fordyce shuffle his way to uh, another victory or indeed watch the likes of uh, Sam Shabalala who was just the most astonishing runner became the first black winner of the Comrades Marathon back in 1989 in a year that was remembered for both the men's and women's victors for quite contrasting reasons Sam Shabalala with a remarkable win in uh, 89 shortly before his debilitating uh, taxi accident a motor vehicle accident in which he was uh, quite severely injured but just a remarkable run in 89 
And to think about Frith van der Merwe's run in that 554, finishing 15th overall in 1989. And then, of course, some of the other moments that you remember from out on the course, the Sean Micklejohns doing their, uh, their bits, the, the, the races. We've spoken about Nick Bester and uh, Sean Matthias and the, the way they were sprinting alongside one another in the closing eight kilometers of uh, races gone by, or Thompson Mugawana using the zigzag approach to uh, uphill running. So many moments that stand out and uh, so many colorful characters with interesting hair, colourful hair there's so many absolutely so many and those are from recent memory of course uh, many more remember the likes of Wally Haywood running live and Wally Haywood I think in 1989 was another 944 he finished in when you consider the uh, he was 79 years old at the time he finished in the 944 which meant that he was quicker than half the field in that year now that is simply an astonishing achievement well, uh, Coca-Cola wants to tell uh, wants uh, want us to tell you. I want you to tell us your golden moment. If you use hashtag golden moment, let's take a look at one of those golden moments. A man by the name of Bill Rowan took the lead and carved a special piece of comrades' history as the first man ever to win the race. His time of eight hours fifty-nine minutes remains the slowest men's winning time ever. Bill Rowan was honoured in 2000 when a medal bearing his name was introduced for runners completing the course between seven and a half and nine hours. Tweet at Coca-Cola underscore ZA then with uh, hashtag golden moments. Yes, indeed. There's some um, uh, amazing golden moments over the years of the Comrades Marathon. This is the 91st edition of the uh, Comrades Marathon and still many finishers continuing to make their way toward the line oh yes uh, gloves and uh, well, it looks like an amateur boxer with a headgear that he's uh, got on and the gloves so head guard and uh, white gloves always distinguishing features out on the uh, out on the course but these uh, runners who've set themselves uh, times they'll be walking away with bull rowan medals uh, coming in anything under nine hours now between seven and a half and uh, nine hours it's uh, it's a, it's an achievement in its own right depending on the goals you might have set for yourself but all crossing the finish line all celebrating different personal milestones and achievements in this 2016 comrades marathon it's been an astonishing day from a, uh, a men's perspective it's a record-breaking day and it's a race of camaraderie as we so often see athletes running side by side celebrating one another's achievements on the uh, grass of kingsmead this year as they come into the finish line after nearly 90 kilometers from Peter Maritzburg to uh, to Durban. So as we look at the finish line now, approaching eight hours in the race gone by, well into the bull row and medals, Helen Luca and Ellie Greenwood are uh, alongside. But Helen Luca, if I could just ask you overall, as uh, a former winner of uh, this race, just uh, what, what was your take on the uh, the day so far, with nearly eight hours in? Well, I think uh, it's reminded us all of how much one has to respect this race and that you can never take anything for granted. And I think um, we just saw a very courageous effort by Caroline. She, nobody thought uh, she wouldn't take the honours. And uh, But that's comrades. That's part of the magic. It's part of the special day. And uh, the way Shawnee just came past and uh, took first prize. And I think... Uh, extraordinary and, and on both for both athletes and then just all the other athletes that have um, taken part I've I've picked up that 26 uh, women have come in under seven and a half hours and that's that's great because that just demonstrates that there uh, is a lot more depth in the in women's running they're improving and, and uh, to break seven and a half hours at comrades is it's a very good goal and it's very few people have that opportunity or have that ability or let's say put the ability in the training together to actually achieve that so i just think it's great for running well it's absolutely excellent helen and uh, Dwayne de locker vacated his seat it's time for me arna malarba to take over again here and uh, i just came from the press conference in fact for the the women's finishers and a few interesting comments there especially from caroline busman uh, where she said her aim today was to go under six hours. She took that risk, didn't quite pay off. She ran a time halfway that she thought would get her under that six hours time, and it didn't quite pay off, but she wouldn't do anything differently. She's happy with the risk she took and with the goal she had in mind. And uh, Ellie, your comments on that? 
Yeah, I mean, you can't criticise her for going for it, and she certainly there had been indications of that and indications that maybe she was going to go even faster, but we saw her go through halfway in just under 308, and definitely that was like, OK, if she carries on like that with the more of the downhill towards the finish, then certainly it looked uh, like she could be on pace for that sub six hours. I don't blame her for going for it. Um, certainly she was looking comfortable, and that was it. I mean, it'll be interesting to hear later on. Um, she seemed to almost fall apart fairly quickly like uh, at halfway and even after halfway she looked cruising she was look comfortable and if you don't take risks you never uh, get those really big goals so uh, she went for it and I'm glad she's not disappointed yeah, I think her attitude today to the entire race was just fantastic but we're gonna cross to the studio where we hook up with uh, Valen Kirtley are we almost going on All right, thank you very much uh, to our commentators as we continue to look at uh, the uh, finish line. Welcome to our on-site studio. Of course, we're just above that finish line. And joining me in studio now is the chairman of the Road Accident Fund, Dr. Ntuku Bengu. A very good afternoon and welcome to our broadcast on SABC Sport. Good afternoon, Valen. Uh, pleased to be here. It's this one time of the year that we get to meet one another, but just uh, refresh our memory and tell those viewers that may not know the Road Accident Fund's involvement with the Comrades Marathon. Yes, the Ro Road Accident Fund has been involved with the Comrades Marathon for a number of years now. Uh, it is a very important program for us in our, in our calendar. Uh, the whole title, the whole name of the uh, event, uh, Comrades, is very much in line with the values that we espouse within the fund in terms of Ubuntu, which is in our vision and mission statement. Uh, but it certainly is very much linked with where we want to be in, la in relation to the road accident benefit scheme. As you may know that we are in the process of transitioning from the road accident fund in terms of the act as it stands to the road accident benefit scheme. But um, in terms of, you may want to know why this is important. It's, it's important because uh, you may be aware that in terms of the many, many road, uh, many accidents that we see on the road, a big number of people who die, unfortunately, on the road are pedestrians. And uh, if you look at runners, those are vulnerable uh, members of society for us. Uh, on the day today, they may not be at risk because of obviously the road closures and then there are marshals who control traffic. But the year when they are out running on the road, they are exposed to accidents that we unfortunately see on a day-to-day -day basis. So we promote road safety, especially to the runners, as they do uh, their, their, their practice runs during the year. But you may know as well that today, as you know, there are lots of people who've come in from out of town. So the road safety message is important to them too as they leave and go back home. Because uh, at every opportunity, we need to preach the message of road safety. It's heartbreaking to see mm. at any time of holiday, any time of celebration in mm. South Africa when we mm. have a long weekend and people are going mm. home or going back to uh, their uh, place of birth or the place mm. where their family is from. And then we hear the high number of deaths on the roads. It just mm. seems to be something that we're, we're not winning against mm. as South mm. Africans. Yeah, indeed, uh, Valen, this is worrying because uh, what we can't run away from is that most of the factors are human factors. So we really appeal for drivers to be responsible on the road and realize that uh, the cars that they're driving are dangerous uh, tools that account for a lot of deaths. So the, we can never stop preaching that message. Hey, you, you, you're quite right. And what we also uh, may have come out and, and, and were initially happy that the statistics were starting to come down. And then you have one lo long weekend that just reverses all of the games. Uh, it's tragic. Mm. What is the kind of work that the RAF do with mm. the authorities and those people that are responsible for actually ensuring that our roads mm. remain safe? Yes. The Road Accident uh, Fund uh, is one of about 11 entities that report to the uh, Department of Transport. Our mandate uh, means that most of what we do is work with uh, 
victims of accidents, meaning that would be after the accident has happened, whether we're looking at people who unfortunately die and we deal with our families in terms of compensation, or those who survive and we are responsible to look after their care, healthcare needs in relation to the accident. But we also have a, a duty to promote road safety and our involvement uh, includes uh, working with, for example, uh, children in, 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 at school. We have promotion, we've got programs to promote road safety at school, scholar patrols, and uh, we do from time to time also man roadblocks and give away car seats for, for children as well. So it's very much all encompassing, encompassing including as well uh, our CSI projects that are geared towards promoting road safety. So it's an all year involvement, but I must say it's not only unique to the Road Accident Fund, it's also with our sister entities like the Road Traffic Management uh, Corporation, uh, Road Traffic Infringement Agency. All of us are responsible for promoting road safety. And it's of course uh, the platform of the Comrades Marathon is a very important place to preach that message. That's the chairman of the Road Accident Fund, uh, mm. Dr. Untutuko Bengu. Thank you very much for chatting to us live here on SABC Sports. Thanks, really. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Mm. All right. These are some of the visuals that you're seeing at the finish line down in Durban. Eight hours of running so far. The next cutoff that we're actually going to be seeing here down in Kingsmead is at half past two. And one of the ladies that you've actually been hearing her voice quite a bit throughout this morning's broadcast is Helen Luca, a lady who has got three comrades wins to her name. She's actually going to be firing the gun for that Bull Rowan cutoff come 2.30. That's quite a while away and there's still a lot of people that will be able to actually achieve that. But let's go out onto the road and find out what Oli Zondo is up to. She's at Cowie's Hill. Valen loving the characters here at Cowie's Hill. It is hot and I've emphasized and reiterated the atmosphere. Absolutely electric. Wow. Yeah, so I've decided to stop running my silver because I've got self and silver. Yeah. And all my finishing, I'm sure we are born and shy. I'm at 20 push ups. Yes. So it's just a shock. <laughs> just okay, now, I'm going to go to shine and go up my jaws, shine and get beat, so shine and get dance. I'm going to go to the shine and get dance. I'm going to go to the shine and get dance. So I can't dance because my injury won't let, uh, let me go there. All right, yeah. I know. See, I'm going to go to the shine and get dance. So I'm going to finish the shine. So much. Right. So much. <laughs> Let's talk about it. The up or the down run? Which one are you? Which one do you find most fascinating? I even when I want to mention is that. Mention is that. Who can we go to no person and join? I go Benzema na kono nyu ganja ga shuti munse hambi. Ah, go to go figure most. Ah, in general, they are kono zo. So bonane tegui. Ganja alunde tisi. Ah, Samson, ah unge nungchele ganja nuguti. Yi ni lente gani nuguti u kichi mi comrades in year in year out. You know what? It's it's just a miracle that we always do this. You know, it comes from the heart. Absolutely. But most of all, I want to thank my family, my wife for always supporting me. Run walk for life. No. My friend Shaw, you know yourself. I told you I was going to talk to you about this. All right. But everybody else, it's fun. We're almost there. 18 k's to go. Love you guys. You're Thanks a lot. We're very, very proud of you, Ilang Aliashisa. How are the conditions on you on your bodies? I say right in general, man. We we are almost all footing in any comrade. This is one. This is one. Cool. We are going to go. I'm going to start to sing. Bam, bilang at chai. Ne ang 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 genem kuat. This is one. He writing so quite a foot. Ah, superficial in time, tane. Yeah, I'm here, boy. All right, again. Now let's talk about the comrades. Who are you running it for? Why is this so special for you? Yeah, boy. I'm trying to get you to go to a comrade. Singi kada nga. Yeah. Go to singi kiti me. Kingi kiti. Yeah. Hey, go go go. It's so sad. Okay. Now, can I get to Bubu Gelago SAPC? Obana Bantu Baki Chiman out in Gaffi, Susan Bella. Yebo. Yebo. Yabonga Kuruga. Yabo. And 
Okay. Yes. Talk about the up run or the down run. Which yes, were you? Down run. Yes, because? Yes, because if I if I, 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 I well trained, it's, it's very good. Uh -huh. Down run is, is more good for, for me. Uh -huh. So I would like to say hi to my lovely wife and my kids. Uh, my wife is Notando Zungu. Oh. At Port and Fort. It's Kawin. The preparations then coming into the comrades what was your plan what did you have in mind my plan was i will i come to run the comrades to finish it in time what, what's that time though and that time is uh, we're in time for 10 hours yes 10, 10 hours 10 hours, 10 hours. definitely right. see now we, we back here for for the uh, uh, back to back me and my friend we did it last year it was the up run so now we're going for the down run so we are in time for for, for back to back now so yeah actually we are in time now all right and who so, are you running it for how do you keep yourself motivated throughout the run uh, for our families and definitely for our clients because both of us are personal trainers so we're doing this as, as an example to our clients so encouraging them to run also. So I want to say thank you to my family, my mother, my son. Baby, you're the best. You made this possible. I love you. Oh, Mom! So ah, sweet! Okay, so they say that the Comrades Marathon is humbling. It gives yeah. you a humbling experience. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and why do you say that? Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay, just want to say hello to my family uh -huh. and my wife and my children and my aunties and my parents yeah. and to Ravens Meet Club and to my college who I'm working with, Revelox and Western That's Cape, big. and all the people who's watching me today, and <laughs> to all the people who's watching me in Cape Town. And, and they'll be watching you at the uh, finish line as well. You. Congratulations. Okay, I want to talk to you quickly. Oh, How are you yeah. feeling? Very, very great. Myself and Samaya is running, running as a team, and we just want to say thank you to everybody that's supporting us. Are we going to give a shout out to our little, little kitties? Kitties. Katie. Ilke, MCA, Papa, Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. To encourage people at home, why should they be running the Comrades Marathon? Because we've been told that it is one of those marathons that each and every South African has to run. Today is that on the road you make a lot of friends, so it humbles you. So I, w I would like to thank my family and everybody who support me today. And uh, I think my coach Barry Hollard he's done very well because I'm still strong. Thank you. All right, fantastic. Okay. We've seen so many people walk Kawi's Hill. Is it because they're not prepared enough, or is no, it just that like feels like this in Perth? <laughs> I'm exhausted, but yeah. I'm going to finish. You are definitely going to finish. What was your plan coming into this? What's the time that you've set out for I yourself? Ran for charity. Yeah. For a school in just outside Peter Maritzburg, on Salinga. So that's what I ran for. Fantastic. I don't want to keep you. Keep on doing it. We'll see you at the finish line. Or for no I just want to say, you know, it's marvelous. We have been running, you know, very nice. We prepared, and uh, I'm having my captain here. I'm very proud of her. You see here, yeah, she's El Maria is here. Yes. I want to all my family say hello in IDB. My first one, Cooks. It's your Bronx, first one. It's in. Okay, yes. no, before you go, it is your first one. How do you decide that you want to run the marathon? When did you even make that decision? What was the date? Do you remember? For the love of the oh, game. Gosh. I can't remember. <laughs> I prepared two and a half years. So I can't remember, but it's for the love of the game. Ah, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. It is said that it's, what, 34% of the runners are actually new runners. It's up from 23% from last year. So it really is amazing. Let's talk about your experience so far. How is Hill? I know it's not easy. It's been an awesome run. Uh -huh. Amazing weather. Awesome people. We're almost home. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing, getting home. Yeah. So All right, so finish line, you are going to make it in the time that you've set up. Yes. Fantastic. She's very optimistic. She's very positive that she will make it into that finish line in the time that she has set out. It's Kawi's Hill. It's draining. It is not easy, but it's back to commentary, and I know that Dwayne is there. Thank you. Wow. Well, actually, Dwayne is Love not here, but I am. I don't know, but along with uh, Ellie Greenwood and... Uh, Helen Luca, and before we get to the two lovely ladies here on my right, we need to remind you that you can still win a thousand rand airtime with Old Mutual. You can call your loved ones, chat with friends, update your social media, or visit www.worldofendurance.coza to plan for greatness. Simply answer the question on screen and uh, you could be a winner. So keep looking out for those questions and you can just SMS to the number your answer, Old Mutual and A, B or C. It's that easy. So enter now and throughout the day for your chance to win a thousand rand airtime.
and uh, as we see the runners streaming and all these runners of course going to get the bull rowan medals i think this is more my kind of speed of a, a nine hour comrades is still quite fast for those of you who can work out splits and times it's about six minutes a kilometer and uh, if you look at your average park run, which is a five kilometer run, it means you have to run that in 30 minutes. And uh, for a lot of people, that's still very, very tough, let alone doing 90 kilometers in that time. And uh, I just want to say one more thing about the women's race. I think I'm still emotional about it. <laughs> it's interesting that whole incident with the, with the motorcycle and um, Caroline Wissman, when she was at the press conference now, she actually, she's blaming herself where she said she had a bit of a wobble. She felt a cramp coming on. She didn't realize the bike was that close. And uh, she stopped suddenly and veered to the left to try and get a bit of water to put on her legs. And of course, the one bike touched her slightly. The other one, one crashed into the other one. And uh, she said after that, she felt quite guilty um, for her cramps causing a, a minor accident. I wouldn't say a major accident, but that's just typical of Caroline Wissman and her attitude towards this race. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Caroline's a lovely person and that's typical that she says, oh, no, my fault, my fault. But honestly, uh, you know, I think uh, when you're coming past a water station, it's somewhat to be expected, uh, especially in those later stages of the race, that a runner might, you know, veer in and get some water. So uh, I don't think uh, she's quite right in taking the blame for that. But she did deal with it uh, really well and just, you know, took it in her stride and uh, carried on as almost if it's, it hadn't happened. Well, she certainly did. And there's two of the international athletes wat hier om die draai kom van Duitsland en lekker om soveel internationale atlete te sien wat hier kom deelneem kan sien die blauwe nommers ook daar en die twee atlete van Duitsland wat hier gemakkelijk een bol rouwen medaille gaan kry and uh, such an international flavor to this race Helen. Oh it is and, and it's just I love talking to the international ra runners because it also gives you such a great sense of pride they just love it the enthusiasm they, they kind of uh, cannot stop raving about the race. They want to go back. They come back the following year with more and more friends. And um, I was just going onto some social media sites. And, uh, you know, as we all know, Colleen DeRook lives in Boulder, Colorado. And the number of people that have been following her, it just sort of makes this race grow in its prestige and its influence. She's such a well-respected global athlete that there'd be people following her from all around the world. And it's like she would have inspired many people people to kind of come and investigate this race what is it really like and um, I mean it's interesting Ellie why did you come and run uh, you know comrades I mean what what sort of captured your imagination you, you you're not South African you're not a you know local lady as such it's no. funny I was just about to ask you the exact same question <laughs> so what makes somebody from where are you from anyway Canada decide to come to a far corner of, of Africa here yeah for sure I mean I you know can tell from the accent I'm uh, British born uh, but now live in Vancouver so I always say to people do you know what like I get on two 10-hour flights and it's more than worth it uh, to come here but uh, I, I'd heard about it I'd competed at the world 100k and it was actually one of the British team managers there who said you know you must come to comrades and initially I rather brushed him off but he said no I don't think you quite get what this race is about um, and certainly appealed I'd done quite a few ultra distance races by then um, I even managed to get on the Ned Bank team as of the first year so it you know brought me in brought me in almost to you know a family rather than it being an individual event and um, like a lot of these international runners they probably think, hey, I'll, I'll check that off once. But then you come and there's no other ultra marathon that has anything like this number of participants, the amount of support, the history. Um, and so it just has that atmosphere. You know, it's the, the Boston Marathon, the London Marathon of, of ultra races. And uh, to have that atmosphere, it's, you know, it's addictive to get that level of support and fun and camaraderie out on the course, whatever pace you're running at. Yeah, I say that every time I come here. So even even as a sprinter, I, I get it. You know, it's it's so much hype and history around this race. And uh, we'll get back to the hype and the history and all these people finishing. But first, we have to honor the winners of the Comrades Marathon. And we go down to the medal presentation as we honor our winners and give them their well-deserved rewards.
Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you. My name is Kula Badla, and on behalf of the Comrades Marathon Association, I'd like to welcome you to the Comrades Marathon Race Day prize giving ceremony. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome some of our dignitaries on stage, starting off with the Premier of KwaZulu Natal, the Honorable Mr. Willis Mkunu. The MEC of Arts, Culture, Sport and Recreation of KwaZulu-Natal, Ms. N. Sibidla Sapetla. The President of Athletics South Africa, Mr. Alex Koskana. The President of KwaZulu-Natal Athletics, Mr. Selo Mokwena. The Head of Brand for Old Mutual, Ms. Karen Thomas. The Vice Chairman of the Comrades Marathon Association, Mrs. Cheryl Wynn. Then the MEC for the KZN Department of Health, Dr. S. Lomo. The Speaker of KZN Legislature, Mr. Loggi Naidu. The Chairman of the CMA Heritage Committee, Mr. Jeff Minar. And finally, the Chairperson of Eteguini Sport and Community and Emergency Services, Councillor Zandile Gomere. Right, it is time to commence the Comrades Marathon Race Day Prize Giving 2016. The event that we're going to be starting off with is the first KZN Man, and that award goes to Bonga Musa Mtembu of the Arthur Ford Running Club, who finished Comrades in a time of 5 hours, 16 minutes and 39 seconds. Congratulations. Bonga Musa is going to be presented with the Premier's Trophy by the Honourable Premier of KZN, Mr. Willis Nkunu. He is also going to be presented with a prize cheque of 35,000 Rand by the MEC of KZN Arts, Culture, Sport and Recreation, Ms. N. Sibidla Sapetla. Congratulations, Bonga Musa. Then our first KZN Women Award goes to Fakile Mbutuma from the Nedbank Running Club in KwaZulu-Natal, completing the Comrades Marathon in a time of 6 hours, 22 minutes and 49 seconds. She's going to be presented with the Premier's Trophy by the Honourable Premier of KZN, Mr. Willis Mkunu. as well as a prize cheque of 35,000 Rand by the MEC of KZN Arts, Culture, Sport and Recreation. Congratulations, Vigile. Right, ladies and gentlemen, the award for the first South African man goes to the man of the day, Mr. David Katebe from the Tom Tom Athletics Club in the Northwest with a new record, five hours, 18 minutes, 19 seconds. Congratulations, a prize check of 190,000 Rand presented by the marketing manager of Old Mutual, Ms. Karen Thomas. as well as an additional prize check of 100,000 Rand. Congratulations, David. And then our first South African Women Award goes to Shanae Bosman from the Netbank Running Club completing comrades in a time of 6 hours, 25 minutes and 55 seconds. And Shanae gets a prize check of 190,000 Rand, presented by the marketing manager of Old Mutual, plus an additional prize check of 100,000 Rand.
Congratulations, Shane. The next category that we're moving on to is the top three women for the Comrades Marathon 2016. In third position is Kasia Berg from the Nedbank Running Club International, completing Comrades in a time of six hours, 39 minutes and four seconds. Kasia is going to be presented with the City of Durban trophy by the Honourable Premier of KZN. She also receives a large bronze medallion, which the president of KZN Athletics, Mr. Thelo McQuenna, will give her. A one ounce gold medal presented by Old Mutual and the marketing manager from Old Mutual. And finally, a prize check of 150,000 Rand presented by the vice chairperson of CMA, Mrs. Cheryl Wynn. Congratulations, Kasia. In second place, congratulations to Caroline Borsman from the KPMG Running Club, completing comrades in a time of six hours, 30 minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> Caroline is being presented with the City of Peter Maritzburg trophy by the Honorable Premier of KZN. She also wins a large silver medallion, which the president of KZN Athletics will present to her. A one ounce gold medal presented by Old Mutual and the marketing manager of Old Mutual. And a prize check of 200,000 Rand presented by Vice Chairman of the CMA, Mrs. Cheryl Wynn. Congratulations, Caroline. And then our top lady for Comrades Marathon 2016, congratulations to Shane Bosman of the Nedbank Running Club, completing Comrades in a time of six hours, 25 minutes and 55 seconds. Shane wins the Comrades Bowl Trophy presented by the Honourable Premier of KZN, as well as a large gold medallion presented by the President of KZN Athletics. And a one ounce gold medal presented by Old Mutual. Shane also wins a prize check of 400,000 Rand, presented by the Vice Chairperson of the Comrades Marathon Association, Mrs. Cheryl Wynn. And a laurel wreath from the President of the Athletics of South Africa, Mr. Alex Kosana. Can we get a huge round of award for our top lady and comrades 2016? Congratulations, Shane. Are you okay? <laughs> we now move on to our top three men for the Comrades Marathon 2016. And in third position, congratulations to Bongo Musam Tembu of the Arthur Ford Running Club in a time of five hours, 26 minutes and 39 seconds. He's being presented with the McCullough Trophy by the Honorable Premier of KZN, as well as a large bronze, bronze medallion by the President of KZN Athletics. A 
a one ounce gold medal from the marketing manager from Old Mutual. And a prize check of 150,000 Rand from the vice chairman of the CMA, Mrs. Cheryl Wynn. Congratulations, Bongo Musa. In second place, congratulations to Ludwig Mamabola from the Nedbank Running Club, finishing comrades in a time of five hours, 24 minutes and five seconds. He is presented with the Anderson Trophy by the Honorable Premier of KZN, a large silver medallion from the president of KZN Athletics, a one ounce gold medal from the marketing manager of Old Mutual, and a prize check of 200,000 Rand from the vice chairperson of the CMA. Congratulations, Ludwig. And in first place for the Comrades Marathon 2016, a new record holder. Congratulations, David Khatebe from the Tom Tom Running Club. His new record time, five hours, 18 minutes, 19 seconds. A phenomenal run. He's being presented with the winner's trophy by the Honorable Premier of KZN, as well as a large gold medallion from the president of KZN Athletics. A one ounce gold medal from the marketing manager of Old Mutual. A prize check of 400,000 Rand from the vice chairperson of the Comrades Marathon Association. and a laurel wreath from the President of Athletics South Africa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have a huge round of applause for your new Comrades record holder, Mr. David Hatebe. He is also being presented with an additional prize check of 400,000 Rand for the brand new record at the Comrades Marathon. And that's going to be presented by the Vice Chairperson of the Comrades Marathon Association, Mrs. Cheryl Wynn. That new record once again for David Hatebe from the Tom Tom Athletics Club, a time of five hours, 18 minutes and 19 seconds. gentlemen we have a brand new presentation that's going to be taken place as soon as we're done with these photos so we're not done with the prize giving yet there's another category that's been added yep you better stick around for that we're just finishing with the photos here and a very very worthy moment to be celebrated congratulations David
We now have a special presentation this afternoon, and it was something that was introduced by the Comrades Marathon Association last year, where the CMA is awarding special Comrades Blazers to previous Comrades winners. And we have some very special guests with us this afternoon. For our ladies, I'm going to move across to this side. I'd like to call on Miss Betty Kavanagh, who is going to be presented with her Comrades Blazer by the Vice Chairman of the Comrades Marathon Association, Mrs. Cheryl Wynn. Can we please have a round of applause for Mrs. Betty Kavanagh, a previous Comrades winner. Betty won the Comrades in 1975, which was the first year that women were allowed to compete in the Comrades Marathon, and she's paved the way for ladies to compete in the ultimate human race. So we thank you for that, Betty. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate all that you did for women at Comrades Marathons. Thank you. Up next, I would like to call on Mr. Jackie Mickler, who is a five times Comrades winner, who is also going to be presented with his Comrades Blazer by Mr. Jeff Minar, the chairman of the Comrades Marathon Heritage Association. Congratulations. Jackie is also the oldest living winner of the Comrades Marathon. Okay, I'm going to read out the years that Mr. Meckler won the Comrades. The first was 1958, followed by 1960, 1963, 1964, and 1968. Congratulations, Mr. Meckler. And finally, I'd like to call upon Mr. Tommy Malone, who won the Comrades in 1966, which makes this year the 50th anniversary of his win. And he will be presented with his Comrades Blazer by Mr. Jeff Minar, Chairman of the CMA Heritage Committee. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. Malone. Once again, can we have a round of applause for all of our phenomenal comrades runners on stage today and fantastic recipients of the awards. We'd like to thank all of you for supporting Comrades 2016 and this brings our prize giving ceremony to a close. The room is done. The bag is packed. I should have just enough time left. Ten fingers and ten toes. Oh, look, she's perfect. Love, look. Oh, she... Jo Jodie. Jodie. Jodie, she's not... Sir, we need you to wait outside. She's crashing. She's losing blood. I need two units of O positive. Just enough time left to build the mobile. Donate blood today and give someone a tomorrow. That time where we award the best in local football. Catch the 2016 PSL Awards live on SABC One. The awards will kick off with the glitzy red carpet, followed by the honoring of the top performers in this PSL season. We reveal footballer of the season, players player of the season, goalkeeper, midfielder, top 
goal scorer and all the cup competition winners. The awards will also feature some of the country's top music entertainers. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at sport at SABC. And for the latest updates, sabcsport.co.za. We'll bring you the 2016 PSL Awards live Monday the 30th of May at 8.30 p.m. Brought to you by SABC Sport for the love of the game. If you see more and more women admiring their beautiful nails, it's for good reason. The latest innovation from Shoal. The all-new electronic nail pen for your toes and fingernails with three heads for filing, buffing and polishing. The easy way to naturally and shiny looking wow nails. Wow. The new electronic nail care system from Shoal. Unfair dismissal, wrongful arrest, blacklisting, contractual disputes, uncontested divorce, or drunk driving charges. It can happen to anyone. Join Clientel Legal today and have a tough professional lawyer by your side 24 hours a day. All Clientel Legal plans include a bail benefit. Should you be arrested, we will go to the police station on your behalf and pay the bail. SMS assist to 41446 and we'll call you back. Well, it was great to see the prize giving there and uh, the athletes are clearly deserving the prizes that they got and the other athletes very deserving on the road here still. I'm joined by Mike Finch. Uh, these guys here, you know, they might not be the winners, but finishing with the Bull Roan, not too shabby. I've always maintained that the Bull Roan win is probably the best win. You will say, well, the faster you are, the better win. I certainly think that, oh there we go, I'm on the microphone now, sorry about that. Uh, off here for a second, I did have some very good points before that. But uh, just saying to Arno, um, I think the Bull Roan medal is probably one of the nicest medals at Comrades. It's the medal that I think is, if you're a reasonably good uh, runner, you can probably break nine hours for the Comrades marathon, you put a bit of effort into it. And uh, it's a good six minutes a K for the, for the average distance and uh, very achievable. And it's a beautiful medal, it's got the, the sort of bronze on the outside and the silver in the middle. It's the closest I'll ever get to anything decent middle wise but uh, it's a pretty thing so I think people uh, do this middle uh, thoroughly deserve it so probably the top 15 percent of the field have finished under nine hours so it's a very good time compared to the rest of the field well it is we were just saying it's equivalent to a 30 minute park run and most people struggle to do that so it gives you an idea of how good these athletes are but now we're going to Koli at Cowies and uh, let's see what's happening over there Koli Come through officially. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good in here. <laughs> officially 17 kilometers left till the finish line here at Cowies Hill. How are you feeling today? Uh, I, I'm still on time and uh, it just cramps here and there and hopefully I'll, I'll reach uh, the finishing line within 10 hours. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm... Yeah, it's okay, tough, it's tough, it's yeah. tough, it's tough. And I just want to say to you, the guys at home, Rondas, everybody, thanks. Wow. We're so proud of you, so proud of Such you. So uh, but you are just, you are just walking Kawi's Hill. No, why aren't I you not, to, why aren't you running it? No, we still covered with the time, <laughs> ne? No, we're going to, 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 to finish the race. Also, oh, it's a strategy. Yeah, it's a strategy. Yeah, we're going to finish the race. Right. And what's the time that you're looking at? Uh, nine, nine hours. Oh, nine, 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 yeah, I mean, uh, uh, 11 hours, 30 minutes. Okay, no, 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 no. Best of luck, best of luck. We want to okay. see you running there. So Me running motivates the, the, the listeners and the viewers. We want to see you running. All the guys are working for Big Carman. All the celebrities must come and train. All right. That is a challenge to everyone except me. At the ASABC Sport, they want to see you running the Comrades Marathon. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. We're doing well. Uh, we're almost there. Sub 11. I'm a novice and I'm feeling so much great. Wow. When did you decide to take part in the Comrades? Uh, last, this year. Yeah. Yeah. And what prompted that decision? Did you just wake up one day and be like, actually? No, last year I watched the TV and I saw them running. Yeah. Then that inspired came right. in. And yeah. you watched it on ACBC, right? Yes, That's yes. Fantastic. Thank you very Talk much. to us about the comrades a little. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling fine, man. I've not been this far. Good again, Jake. How is it? Is it taking the strain back? 
finish. This is now officially, it's going to be medal number two for you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to get two medals for today. Right. Yes. And why do you keep on coming back year in, year out? I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying really. It is nice. Even those who are at home, they must join us. Right. It is nice for, for South African to do this. Okay, yes. tell me why you run the marathon. I collect school shoes for kids. This is what I'm doing. I was I started this project three years and back rock. and people are responding. I collect shoes and I give it to school kids that don't have shoes. And I want to thank all these people who have contributed and everybody who have contributed to this project. No, we're proud of you for running for a cause and we can't wait to see you at the finish, okay? Thank you very much. All right. And you, you look so amazing. You don't even look tired. You, you could even run tomorrow as well, no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit about your preparations coming into the marathon. Uh, I didn't prepare much, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm running for my child, for my children's father, who died last day. He ran about 18 comrades. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Beautiful, and you are going to be getting your 11th today. Yes. Sure. Best of luck. See you at the finish. Hey, thank you. Bye. Woohoo! Okay. And you are running in a very interesting outfit. Tell me more about it. Uh, I just wanted to look fancy for the camera, <laughs> and I wanted to do a little shout out to my girlfriend, Kerry, my family. Mom, I love you. Yeah. Feeling good, feeling fresh. Mm, fresh easy fresh. like Sunday morning. Oh my gosh, you did not just say that. <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> Very good, thank you. Yes. So Very nice. About cowies, a lot of people are walking it. Is it really that difficult? It is, yeah. After the kilos that you've got now, it is difficult. So, yeah. But it's it's actually the only way to do it is to walk it up. Yeah. Yes. All right. And you're going to make it to the finish in the time that you've set out? Yes, I hope so. I want to do a sub-11, and ah. that's what I'm aiming for, yeah. All right, well, we're crossing fingers for you. We hope you'll be able to do that. Thanks. The camaraderie on the road, are you guys running as a team, or is it just like an individual sport? For myself, it's uh, like individual sport. My teammate is only finished now. All, all, uh, I think I'm getting a, a, a silver medal, but I hope I'm going to finish now. 17 case to and go. And the weather conditions, you know, I'm just feeling like it's really, really hot. Is this working in your advantage? But it's not, it's, not that so much, it's not that hot, but it's hot, but it's not like uh, to, uh, the other communities with up, up one, it's more, this one is more yeah. easy, oh, okay. but it's depending how we train. All right, no, fantastic. See you at the finish. So proud of you. All righty. Let's talk about the people on the sidelines. There are thousands and thousands that have come through just to support you. How are they treating you on the sides of the road? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. What are some of the gifts that are you getting? We, we, water. <laughs> water is a special one. We need to rehydrate a lot. Uh, amazing. Uh, it's a mental game now. Uh, it's all in the mind. Uh, if uh, your mind is not ready, you're not going to get to Devon. We are going there. Yeah. Yeah. The spirit of the comrade is amazing. The people, the support, plenty of them. You should have heard the, the, the noise in Pine Town. Wow. Man, it lifted me up. That is you know? beautiful. And they say that the Comrades Marathon is a very humbling experience. Gutwa hashtag is Ogutoba. Are you feeling tobad? Are you feeling humbled? Uh, my sister, I was just under a tree now. I was tired. But now I just SMS my wife. I, I told her that now I'm, I'm awake. I'm, I'm walking. I'm walking. Yes, <laughs> Tree classic. Have you been humbled by the comrades? Uh, it's October. It's over. Hashtag is October. How are you feeling? Hey, exhausted, <laughs> but um, I'm hoping to be there before 11 hours. Yeah, yeah. All right, but, so would you say that you're addicted to the comrades? Um, no, it's you see the spirit, uh, spirit of comrades uh, that keeps us together. Uh, there's nothing like this uh, or that that out, outshine this in South Africa. So we keep coming here, uh, challenging ourselves. The vibe on the street, it's, it's just amazing. Ah, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Tell us more about the comrades for you. How's the experience like? How are the people like on the road? Where are you from? Pretoria, my melody. Ah. Enjoying it. Hard. But, but very exciting. And the camaraderie, you know. Met We've met many people, we've made friends. Yeah, so in pain, there's also some positives. Ah, so it. great, we'll come back next year. I'm You'll friends. be back next year. I'm from Ebony Park, I'm a immigrant. I represent my club, Sebenza. Okay, this is for Mukhoi Mukhoi. And Tulima Tonsela, protected the constitution. All right, all right. And then just lastly, talk about uh, the comrades' experience for you. Yeah, comrades, in the king of the 
it, especially when it's town run. Yes. Yeah, but I still gonna make it today. Yeah, yeah I'm from Ungwenya, from PMB. All right. Hey. Very proud of each and every runner that has come through. Over 19,000 that are taking part in this year's Comrades Marathon. It's back to you and commentary team. Hashtag is Ogutoba. Well, thank you, Poli. And uh, as we look at the athletes, they're going up Cowie's Hill. Those ones will not get the Boron medal. They're still too far out for that. But of course, the Comrades is all about the human side of it, the ultimate human race. And we've got Udo Karlsa with a very special runner, Munisi. So if Shane Bosman or David Khatebe or the heroics of Caroline Wustman did not inspire you today, I want you to come here. I want you to come here and meet somebody who I know is going to inspire you. Richard Munisi, visually impaired runner, 5% vision. How many comrades did you complete today? It's, 12, uh, it's the 12 one uh, today. That is an amazing story. Now, firstly, you're in the dark in Peter Maritzburg, and like I said, you are visually impaired. How do you get through that crowd in the darkness in the morning? Okay, I was with my, my partner early in the morning, and then on the 28 mark, she gets uh, the cramps, and then she said I must go on with my, my, my running. i supposed to use my walking cane all, all along, and then just fall on the way and then get up and running again and then you know i said i tell myself that i will reach in the stadium what i like what, what i uh, i like today i beat the time of last year because last year i did eight hours uh, 50 minutes today i make eight hours 26 minutes it's awesome. <laughs> Listen, I think you're inspiring the South Africa. Now, I just want to show you the pain that this man has gone through. Three falls on the course, and he's lived to tell the tale. And more than that, he's finished comrades number 12. Richard Monisi, an absolute inspiration. And uh, I just want you to inspire the people at home, people who perhaps are in a position where they could easily run the comrades. Speak to them and tell them why they should run comrades. Okay. I want to tell you, if you run a comrade, you got your legacy. You build your own legacy, because if you can't run the comrade, uh, you shot by the torturing. You see, when I, I miss a comrade, I miss my torturing. That pain, if you, you, you don't have that pain, uh, uh, that year, you will feel I you didn't do anything it's an achievement to run a comrade because a lot of people you meet a lot of people and then you inspire a lot of people as a blind guy i inspire a lot of people when they see me on the way they support me a lot you see so i hope they can support me to 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 get to overseas to go and run overseas i will be AP. If I can go to run overseas, I will be AP. It will my destiny, that, uh, that one. Well, there we go. Remember the name, Richard Monisi. He wants to go and run overseas. He's completed 12 comrades. Now, that's an inspiration, and that is something which humbles us. Back to you guys. Thanks, Udo. Richard Monisi, you said there are three falls. I think that's one less than Caroline Wisman. But uh, we keep talking about the women's race because it was so dramatic but Ellie Greenwood I'm going to use the last few minutes we have here with you that men's race was absolutely spectacular David Khatepe he said that with 35 kilometers to go he just told his coach he wants this record and he's just going to go for it yeah I mean that's super impressive like we we're watching it and thinking like okay is this it was almost a little worrying like he's gone he's out on his own and it's too much too soon um, but he looked so relaxed as well so that's impressive that he said he was going to go for the record because obviously that's pretty ambitious but what he got it by a good two and a half minutes so not only did he get it but he really really uh, smashed that record so very impressive and you've got to have the the courage to go out and do that you know, and just back yourself and it worked for him Caroline said she wanted to do six hours didn't work for her but David Khatepe 
I haven't seen anybody, well, for a while, in that much in control. Maybe Gift Kalea last year looked the same way, Mike, but he was so much in control. He said he didn't even think about looking back, just kept checking his watch and, and the pace and just went for it. Well, to put it in perspective, uh, second place Ludwig Mamabolo was uh, faster than Bruce Fordyce's 1986 record, which stood uh, for something like 21 years. So uh, to finish second and still break Bruce's record, um, it shows you how what an impressive performance for Tepe's time was. So it was a it was a completely dominant performance. I think we were all saying in the studio as he went off, it's just absolutely no chance he's going to survive this. I certainly thought he's gone too quick. He's going to get caught in Pine Town, but uh, when he went up Curry's Hill, that's when he knew he probably had it because uh, that's when when, they, when it really hurts, it hurts up Curry's. And uh, if he went up there that fast, it was going to be uh, difficult to catch him after that. And this for a man who's never ever before run under six hours, it's an absolutely phenomenal achievement. Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show that you can't, uh, you know, we look at past results and say, oh, look, there's all those past winners there. What, what are they going to do? And we sort of f always focus on them. And yet, you know, someone can really have that breakout performance. Um, obviously, the training and their training partners that we're, they're with can make a huge difference and maybe slightly less eyes on them. And so they just have that uh, confidence to go out and uh, really prove themselves. Yeah, it was an absolutely dominating performance and you've got to feel, Mike, you mentioned Ludwig Mamabolo, to run that kind of time and not win. You know, what more could he have done? Yeah, I think what's great is we had the press conference just a few, uh, well, half an hour ago, and uh, Ludwig Mamabolo is a real character. We saw him in the press conference on uh, Friday talking himself up and saying he was basically, they would have to beat him to win. And he was quite right. He was second place. He said he was going to go out at a certain speed, and he did. And uh, he was extremely happy for David Katepe because uh, he kind of believes that as long as the trophy still is in South African hands, he's happy. Whether it's him or Bung Musa and Tembu or Gif Kaleh, he's happy about that. So, so he was extremely magnificent magnanimous um, he was saying that uh, he, he ran a brilliant race himself he was very happy a personal best for him and to finish second to a record well he's you know he can't be more happy so you know that's what I love about Ludwig Mamabola he's a real character um, the, the sport needs people like him and he brings out actually the best in the other athletes the same thing from Bung Mosa and Tembu and uh, of course our champion today and they they spoke well at the press conference they spoke with passion about the race and uh, it shows that the Comrades Marathon is alive and well among South African runners at the moment yeah, I think Eddie should just forgive our a bit of patriotism here, but it is great to see these South African runners winning, and not only winning, but being good ambassadors for the sport of ultra-distance running. Yeah, I think that's what it needs. I mean, it's all about personalities. It's it's impressive to see fast times, but uh, most people can't really relate to that. Um, and yet, you know, we can relate to someone who seems to be out having fun and enjoying it. And if you can see someone running as fast as someone like Ludwig Mambola, and, and you think, wow, they're having fun, then surely, <laughs> surely I can have fun at it as well. And it's something, yeah, that people relate to, they like to watch it, and it makes it a much more personal approach rather than uh, just about the numbers. Well, we've got some breaking news. The Minister of Sport has updated his uh, or upgraded his 100,000 Rand incentive to 150,000 Rand for David Khatebe for breaking the record as well. So that's being added. I'm not sure if he's added another 50 or another 150 to, to the original 100 that he, that he promised the South African winners, but uh, another great incentive for our athletes. And uh, for those of you at home who have never run this, and we, I know we've got 7,000 plus novice runners, so I assume we have at least 7,000 plus novice viewers. Um, <laughs> who may have never watched it. If you wanted what a bus was, as we keep talking about the buses, that is a bus on your screen. And uh, it's probably the Bull Rowan bus. They're going to this nine hour cutoff. And they do have people called bus drivers. You might see those little flags to the right. Uh, that is the bus driver. And they're specifically selected to people who can actually run quite a lot faster than this, but have chosen to sacrifice their own race in some way to help other athletes to reach a specific target time. Yeah, it's a thankless task being a, a pace setter, they call them, or bus driver, because uh, when you run these sort of races, whether you're running a half marathon or a, a marathon as a pace setter, I've done that a few times myself, and you get abused by everybody in the first half of the race because you're either going too fast or going too slow. But uh, when you get to the finish, just like these guys are doing well within the within the cutoff, and this is obviously, as uh, Anna said, at the sub nine mark, and then uh, everybody is extremely thankful, and uh, they hug and kiss you and all sorts of uh, shows of emotion um, because you've done a good job. So these pace it is an invaluable uh, tool in the uh, Comrades Marathon because it means you don't have to even worry about the pace setting yourself. You just literally follow the flag and uh, he will take you through to the finish and it's, uh, it takes a bit of the pressure off. 
It's pretty there's no pace sitters in the uh, in the elite race, Ellie. Well, sometimes there is, actually. Sorry, Ellie, we, we'll get back to you. Not with flags, though. But, <laughs> but first, we've uh, we've got to go for a quick ad break, and we will be back for that bull row and cutoff right after this. Okay, now we've, we've decided it's more important to show you some running, so we're going to bring this bus in, and uh, we'll go back to, to Ellie Greenwood. And like I said, we're going to milk her time here with us. She's not going to be here too long. And uh, Ellie, I, I, have you ever experienced this side of the race? You said you had some athletes you were coaching and everything as well. Yeah, I had a few athletes I was coaching. I don't think they'll be on this bus. They were more aiming for around about 11 hours, total novices, new to this kind of thing. Um, but it was interesting, they were asking me, you know, we've heard of these buses and should we go with them? And I said, look, you know, it's really a personal preference. I get it that, you know, it can be great. Obviously, the, the bus drivers know exactly what they're doing. Um, you can see here, they're nicely coming in just a few minutes under, so it's not too stressful towards the end, and yet they get that uh, really prized time that they're working for. Um, but of course, some people, you know, you don't want to necessarily be running with some, you know, a big group all the time. That's not for everyone. Um, so I was leaving it up to their personal choice and I said look you know hang on for a little while see if you like it dip your toe in and if you go this is all a little bit too much for me uh, then you can always uh, pull off and do your own thing but keep an eye on them because obviously well, uh, you know the, the decision is do you stay with the bus right from the start do you join a bus kind of halfway through and I've heard some of the bus drivers actually say that you know if you're going to run with the bus stay with us from the beginning because if you join us somewhere through you might not know why we're going actually a little bit faster or a little bit slower than the pace um, you know, so it, it might be a bit, a bit difficult to, to join it somewhere through. Yeah, I agree. And obviously, these uh, bus drivers are, are pacing themselves. Um, so if you go out ahead of them and then drop back, then that implies you've actually gone a bit too fast and then you might run into trouble. Um, and equally, if the aim is, hey, I'll catch one of them later, that's probably unlikely because that's implying you could actually uh, run a little bit quicker. So, yeah, it's uh, go with them, see if they're for you. Um, and definitely, yeah, if you're really going for a target time, I think it is the thing to do because they certainly have got the course knowledge. Well, of course, a lot of the comrades is the drama around the cutoffs. We will be back for that bull round cutoff directly after this. don't know the person sitting next to you so now tell them and say you better treat me nice because i might be your next boss but if you don't recognize the greatness within you you will never achieve it i want you to look beyond south africa i want you to look to the world i want to know what your contribution is going to be to transform the world Did you know, there is a 100% chance we will be affected by hospitalization, but only around 5% of us have hospital plans. Relax, the Hospital Plus plan from Clientele is affordable. It starts from only 99 Rand per month and pays up to 20,000 Rand cash per hospital stay. Plus, it includes cover for accidental death, accidental disability and dread disease. Simply SMS CARE to 42932 and we'll call you back. Eh, Mamela Pinay. Eh, why you Why you Ah, Banda. It's a beast. The tattoo has your house. It's a day. 
le sedi FM ke molelo Thank you for taking part in the Old Mutual to uh, Old Mutual SMS competition. Uh, here are the names of all the winners. We'll get to the winners in a moment, but we've got the uh, bull row and cutoff happening in just a moment. We've got uh, Helen Lucas standing by, Luca, part of our commentary team, of course, three-time winner of the uh, Comrades Marathon, standing by at the finish of 2016. And these uh, runners realise that the bull row and medal is uh, only a few seconds away. Arno Malhaba remains alongside in commentary. At, uh, Arno, just scrambling times here for the athletes in the uh, closing stage as well. We're getting well, down to the countdown. 10, 10 seconds. Yeah, and uh, the area led with a bit hard to as he had 10 seconds for Mark. Well, Rowan, naturally, a taken for all the athletes. 3, 2, 1. And uh, that's the score for Helen Luker. Bill Rowan is over. Athletes that now in come for the following two years are going to bronze medals. And uh, that's one of our first bronze medaille atlete wat oor die lijn kom net net uitgemis op die bil rouwen en uh, nou is daar redelijk een groot gaping tot ons by die laaste kategorie kom die Wick Kleffen medailles maar dit is die atlete wat allemaal brons medailles gaan verdien en en uh, nie die bil rouwen medaille natuurlijk nie well, disappointment for a few of these athletes coming through but again still a very respectable time in a shade over nine hours for the Comrades Marathon of 2016 and for many it'll be a personal best but uh, it's just wonderful scenes uh, it's a couple of big buses that have already started to come into this uh, the uh, the venue here at Sahara Stadium Kingsmead and of course uh, you'll start to see some billboards and a few fancy outfits as well towards the, this time and onwards as uh, we see the athletes that are making their way and now these are the among the first bronze medalists who will have up to uh, the 11 hour mark after that between 11 and 12 is the uh, Vic Clapham medals named in uh, honor of the man that started the Comrades Marathon going all the way back to uh, 1921 well, some of these athletes just being uh, edged along being inspired by runners alongside them running with a flag of the United States this runner oh, is it? Oh, well, I thought it was a United States flag <laughs> for a moment. It just looked like all the colours in the right way folded up, but instead it's messages, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. There will be some Bye, messages, messages coming through, uh, <laughs> placards, banners, all, <laughs> all coming through in the closing stages. And a few flags of countries as well, including some Brazilian finishers who've uh, made their way to the finish line already. Ik wonder nog steeds waar Hanley was, zei een van haar die goed gehad aan die begin, wat gesê, hier is Hanley nou, en ik wonder of Hanley het klaargemaakt het, maar daar is Raylene wat nou klaarmaak, en uh, die atlete wat bronsmedailles gaan verdien vir die volgende twee ure, paar groot busse wat doorgekom is, soos Dwayne gesê het, vir al die bolrouwen busse was redelijk groot, en uh, van nou af bronsmedailles wegklap hem vir die laatste uur, en natuurlijk dan die, die groot drama met die twaalf uur, Afsnijpunt. En hier is die winnaars van die manswetloop. David Gatebe natuurlijk eerste Ludwig Mababola. Bong Moussam Tembo wat om huis toe volg. Drie Zuid-Afrikaners onder die top drie. Dan Mike Fokoroni, die Zimbabweer wat deerkom. Gevolgd door nog drie Zuid-Afrikaners. En Rufus Porto, Claude Moshiwa, Sepiwe en Lela. En natuurlijk drie atlete onder die 530. En uh, die vrouwenwinners, Dwayne, what a race for this women's. Uh, just a phenomenal race. It was uh, intriguing all the way. In the final few kilometers, Carolyn Wussmann was leading by a comfortable margin with eight kilometers to go. It was very nervous with four kilometers to go. And just outside Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, Shane Bosman passing Carolyn Wussmann, the defending champion. And Shane Bosman going on to win her first Comrades Marathon. A terrible bout of cramp in the closing stages for Wussmann. Kaiserberg of Sweden, though, a very strong finish in third. And Sarah Bard with a hip problem 
Bloom managed to finish fourth overall. Two South Africans, Yolande McLean, Kirian Marshall, fifth and sixth. And then Colleen de Rieck, 52 years old, runs a 6.50.21. And she ended up being the third fastest Masters finisher overall. And one of the Masters who finished above her was Sean Micklejohn, a former winner <laughs> himself. But Figil Mbutuma, uh, Yolani Basson and Salome Cooper the uh, athletes to round out the top 10 in the women's race. Fikile and Butuma are in the eighth place, of course, the first athlete from KwaZulu Natal also, who has been here. And we see now nine women under 7 years on the end, 26 women under 7 years, 30. So 26 silver medals for the women, or rather 16, the top 10, which have got gold medals. And it's uh, the athlete here in the stadium, and the athlete who is very, very happy with them. The Comrades Marathon today, and uh, the camaraderie under the uh, athlete is natuurlijk uitstekend. Well, uh, uh, this looks like a, a family affair or some very, very close to one another, but certainly running partners making their way to the uh, venue. And running side by side. Could be sisters, could be friends, but you see so much of this out on the route during the Comrades Marathon. Man. Yeah, it does look... Uh, they do look very much alike one another, but they are wearing the same running kit, which sometimes could prove deceptive. But uh, with the hairstyles, similar heights, <laughs> you you might get the feeling that they are indeed sisters. Uh, whatever it is, they are very close, and finishing side by side, hand in hand. Well, you still opportunity to get involved in social media. Hashtag Comrades 2016 is uh, how you can interact with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Just tag us as the Comrades Marathon continues. Just thinking back to that incredible race of uh, David Khadebe, that record-breaking race. We saw the confirmation of the top ten a moment ago, and these two finishing side by side. Surely uh, they have to be sisters. They look like twins, even. <laughs> well, that's what I suggested. Maybe, are... maybe some twins there, so uh, obviously very happy to finish together. Oh, this is uh, the emotion, the overwhelming moment to come the end of this Comrades Marathon. And a warm embrace for two that ran side by side and finished well, we know the closing one of them, stages hand in hand. We know one of them is called Amanda and Sandra. So there you go, Amanda and Sandra, they are finishing. And uh, great with these numbers, with the names on it. The green number finisher there, he's done more than 10 comrades, of course, maybe a lot more. And uh, still a lot of athletes here coming through. They've just missed that Bull Rowan medal, and they will always all receive bronzes. And uh, of course, a man who knows a lot about running this race has done quite a few himself, Bruce Fordyce coming in here into the seat next to us and uh, Bruce you said you have some news for us yes well I've been out uh, doing a few of the other tasks I have to get through which is uh, great fun on comrades day eh? one of those is talking on top of the tower and uh, just uh, chatting to the guys who call the whole race for the crowd uh, the second one is a huge honor and that's uh, handing out the green numbers to the people who have completed their 10th their 20th their 30th even their 40th comrades and I think for many runners, a big shock is that uh, Alan Robb dropped out of the race at Drummond at halfway. Um, and I think most people, I certainly would have put my house, bet my house that Alan would uh, finish. And he, when I spoke to him, I chatted to him, he said he just felt absolutely flat from the word go. No spring in his legs, feeling really heavy and tired. And he got to halfway and thought, what am I doing here? I could be back at the finish in the par with mixing with the past winners and having a couple of drinks and something to eat and he said he just climbed off the road and that's one of the things that does happen you know and it's a shock to the to the uh, comrades running community because alan has done every single comrade since 1974 with the worst time of 10:45 when that shocking year in 2013 and he loves the down run and he dropped out well that's amazing and if i look at, at the the comrades today bruce i mean maybe you can shed some comment on this or some light on this because almost all of the top 10 men finished quite slowly in their last five kilometers or so we know about Caroline Visman's problem I've also had a friend or two who had to drop out is there something about today that that makes us a bit tougher than normal or is that just the normal comrades yeah, I'm not I've, I can't work it out myself you know even even our race leader I mean our, our winner fantastic fantastic time but remember we were predicting at one stage of 516 yeah so David lost two minutes somewhere in the last four kilometers or so 
So perhaps it's some humidity, you know, something, uh, some, the heat maybe. Uh, but uh, having been in the green number tent and handed over quite a few green numbers uh, this last hour or so, I can tell you that the runners are coming in drenched in sweat. They are drenched in sweat. Um, and they're all drinking when they get in. And they, yeah, it looks like it's it possibly a lot, lot more humid than we anticipated. Well, it has been uh, some uncomfortable conditions for many of the runners out on course, but uh, certainly showing no signs of it, really, even if he uh, lost a couple of minutes out on the, the road, Khatebe, uh, because of that remarkable finish in record-breaking time, which sees him earn over a million rand for the uh, victory today, when you consider all the uh, the milestones that he managed to achieve, including first South African home, including the, uh, being the winner and indeed being the uh, record holder, not to mention other incentives added on top of that. But still not as much as Gift Kile, who uh, won the 90th edition with the civil rewards in uh, th that were added in just for it being the 90th Comrades Marathon. This is the 91st, some sign language for the camera. Uh, and he's enjoying his time coming to the end of it. Now, the uh, Comrades Marathon is so much more than just a race. It's not just uh, an opportunity to get out of the road and uh, finish a uh, ultra-distance marathon. There's many charitable aspects as well. Let's find out more about one of those uh, charities, Wildlands. Trust um, are a non-profit environmental organization and um, we do amazing work nationally all over the country and um, we're very lucky with to have comrades as a as a strong supporter um, and Old Mutual who, who are our official sponsor of the Comrades Marathon activation and from that activation we get a lot of funding and with that funding it is split uh, split into two um, the one goes to our, towards our rhino conservation projects, which are which consist of investigations and prosecutions, aerial support, so eyes in the sky, and um, tracker. So what that is is fitting all of our rhino with tracking devices, so that we know where they are at any given time. Um, and we're also in the process of dehorning all our rhinos, so it just completely eliminates the risk of us losing them uh, to poaching. So that's the Rhino project and then we also have a, a lovely community project called Trees for Life and essentially what that is, it, it involves previously disadvantaged um, uh, communities, they learn how to grow indigenous trees. My name is Figi Lengoba, I'm 48 years old, uh, I was working together with Wheatlands for four years. Uh, planted around 6,000 trees. When those trees reach a certain height, they barter them with us, they give them to us wildlands, and in return, they get all kinds of livelihood support items. Wildlands give me a, a shop right vouchers, and with my trees, I managed to buy a, a groceries and Unilever Hembas. Our projects are special because they focus on the community, for one, um, and, and the other aspect is, is also for, for the conservation of rhino. Uh, I mean, it's an endangered species. Um, you know, your children might not be able to see one in the wild ever again. You know, that's, that's the reality. So it really is an emotive thing um, that people can, can contribute to. So we would urge anybody that wants to run to, to run for us. Well, the uh, legendary Blanche Moyler making her way toward the finish line. Well, over the age of 60 and still going strong. Blanche, Mo Blanche Moyler, who we've uh, known over the years and uh, come to love, a legend of the athletics community. <laughs> making her way to the finish line and acknowledging those at the finish line as well who've acknowledged her presence and uh to the finish line she goes outside of uh, nine hours so bronze medal time here for Bron blanche moila but she'll be uh, very happy with another completed comrades under her belt you're quite right, Duane. When I saw her yesterday at the Expo, I never thought she's just ready to run. I thought maybe she's part of us as the uh, analyst right here. But I think it's one thing that is quite motivating to see somebody like her at her age still going on and still pressing on. I think it will serve as an, a motivation to the youngsters out there and to young women that um, it is doable. I think we've been talking about um, a couple of people who have gone over 52 or either 50 years that is still doable, even though you are uh, a 
above that certain you know point of age you can still be able to do that well the average age still of the uh, competitors in this uh, conference marathon is uh, well over 40 for both men and women slightly older for men overall just an average of age of about 42 and about 40 but uh, bruce i mean you've done this this race at, at all ages just about i mean in terms of in terms of uh, physical strength obviously in younger years you would have it but this race requires so much more from a technical perspective and from uh, a planning perspective is is there an age where you could say it's a little easier to actually tackle the comrades i think uh, at the, the front end of the field runners peak in their late 20s and early 30s but there are two types of old runner remember there's an old runner who has just started running and whose legs may be quite a lot fresher than say i'm going to use alan rob as an example alan who in his, his best run ever did a 529 down run alan one of the reasons why he may have struggled today is that he was running his you know, 43rd Comrades Marathon. When you run 43 Comrades Marathons, that means you've run hundreds of normal distance marathons. You've probably run a good 30 or 42 oceans. So it's not just the, the, the Comrades, it's the, the thousands of kilometers of training in preparation. And so that too can take its, its, its toll. So there are two categories of old runner. There's an old runner who's been running for many years and there's an old runner who's only just started recently running. But, but I think uh, I heard you saying in the morning that uh, because uh, we are 91st uh, this year, so we have we left with nine to go. So you said you're gonna go run the hundred one. Are you still having yeah. the legs to carry you there? You know what? Looking down at some of these runners and having been quite close to the hospital tent just now, uh, <laughs> I'm having second thoughts. But but you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about maybe in nine years' time if I still have my health and I'm. I'm still sprightly enough, it might be an idea to try it, but the, re the way I will be able to do it is by not running it now. That seems to be the key. And one of the stars and the possibly unheralded stars of today was Sean Micklejohn. Now, Sean has done close to 30 comrades. He has no, he has never seen a bronze medal and he does not know what a Bill Rowan medal looks like. Every single one of his medals is either gold for making the top 10, and he won it once in 1995, or else a very, very solid silver. And he has recently been winning, in comrades, been winning the Masters over 50 section. I believe today for the first time possibly he lost it and was second, but only apparently by a few seconds. Now, Sean, by all rights, should be completely finished, but he isn't, and he's running beautifully. And so Alan Robb and runners like myself and Pete Foster and my generation all scratching our heads for a while thinking, how come Sean is running so much better than us? And we think, that the reason is that for six years he gave up running didn't run a step for six years shortly after he'd won his first comrades he told his family that's it and he packed up put on a lot of weight uh looked terrible but perhaps he spared his legs because the way he's running at the moment none of us could who used to race him none of us can go near him well it's interesting that you mentioned sean michael john yes he was beaten by uh, a minute shot by lazarus Soroko for the uh, masters title this year but why why we were talking about it earlier was uh, in fact uh, not only because of sean, sean michael john's incredible uh, runs but the fact that Colleen de Rieck finished uh, only a handful of minutes behind him, and she finished third overall in the Masters category at the age of 52, which is a, a simply remarkable achievement for uh, Colleen de Rieck as a, as a novice runner. But uh, talking about uh, people that are over the age of 50 and tackling the comrades successfully, a 60-69 uh, to 69 year old runner, Blanche Moyla, is down at the finish line with Lindan Imbenze. Well, as we did mention this morning that it's not about how wealthy you are, how smart you are, how fit you are, how confident you are, but it is the road that counts on the day. And I'm joined by uh, Blanche here. Blanche, congratulations. Uh, nine, nine hours, 13 minutes. Are you happy with the time? Um, yes, I am. Uh, my training hasn't been as sound as I wanted it to be. So I was looking at nine and a half, ten. Under nine and a half, I'm happy. Tell me something now. Through all those kilometers, what do you think about? Do you think about home? Do you think about work? Do you think about problems? Do you think about getting to Durban? What do you think about all this time? Actually, it's such a long way that, yes, there are different thoughts that go through my mind. There are times when I'm, I'm just concentrating on each 10 kilometer at a time. And yes, and I'm looking at the big picture, finishing. Because it's not all about the first um, gold medals or so it's everybody finishing that's really a hero are you back next year oh definitely i'll be here this is home good luck thank you very much
Oh, always wonderful to hear from uh, Blanche Boiler. Well, here we go. He has one of the more intriguing characters of the Comrades Marathon. Coming home successfully. The masked uh, <coughs> marathoner making his way to the finish line. Expect to see a few more banners and uh, colourful outfits and a few flags coming in. The, uh, there's a few international athletes. There's uh, some with blue numbers, which uh, signal foreign runners. There's some with yellow numbers, which signal they're in their... Uh, Tenth race, they're going for the uh, green number. There are many uh, green numbers that have made their way across the finish line. One's just finished. Here we go with a little bit of heavy strapping on his uh, right leg. Another one of the uh, foreign athletes with a name like Paolo and an Angolan flag on his chest. I would imagine he is from Angola. There are uh, many African countries who do have athletes that are entered into the Comrades Marathon. And the 2016 uh, edition is no different. Another uh, green numbered athlete making their way toward the finish line. It's an interesting headgear that keeps coming in. Not quite horns, but what's that, Maya the Bee style? And the funky pants, running pants. <laughs> it's always some colors in abundance. Come see the Chipinga, do it in the Zauri. What I'm going but I'm going to go to the Chipinga. 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 Uh, finish a comrade, your comrade marathon, but the former the Drakan. I never forgot about the Puma, but I must, I must say, um, when you look at you know the, the, the bunch of guys and groups that will be coming right here, it's going to be very interesting to see them, you know, coming in group and they don't even allow you to uh, be up front. You you go there in a row, um, just so stay fast and you go and you cross the line similar time and same time. And that's one thing that is quite interesting. And um, you, you know what? We're waiting for that moment, uh, uh, Duen, I think uh, coming up uh, a little bit uh, before the half past five in the afternoon. Yeah, indeed. I think uh, the vast majority of the field is going to be uh, finishing in the closing hour of this race. But we have started to see a few buses coming in already, uh, Bruce. And as, as we continue, no doubt we'll have uh, a few more buses making their way towards this finish line. Uh, yes, look, the buses, uh, I know we've, we've seen the, the sub nine hour bus coming in in a couple of minutes under nine hours, which is perfect timing, which is well done to that bus driver, because quite often the faster buses are harder to drive. Um, and for those viewers who are not absolutely sure about a bus, a bus is a group of like-minded runners who are all aiming for the same time, but who trust the judgment and skill of the bus driver, who is a very skilled runner, to bring them in on the correct time. And out there today, there are at least three more buses still coming in. The sub 10-hour bus is out there still, the sub 11-hour bus, and then the most critical bus of all that sub 12 hour bus and that bus will be massive and people will be running there guided by the bus driver sometimes there's more than one of them who take turns to lead the bus along the way they will be singing sometimes buses uh, slower bus um, drivers hand out song sheets and you sing and you walk in in um, unison together and you run together and in that way the bus driver brings home the runners there are some people like myself who can't stand buses i found them absolutely terrible because i don't like sing-alongs and it's quite hard singing when you're happy and you know it stamp your feet especially when you've got sore feet and so what i would do with the bus is key off it either run slightly ahead of the bus or slightly behind the bus and use the bus as a point of reference but i find buses myself very irritating you can't get in to get to the tables properly because there's so many runners jammed around you and unless you're the kind of person who loves, uh, you know, big sing-alongs, uh, don't go into a bus. <laughs> Always uh, interesting views from Bruce for us, but fair enough. Bruce, you would know you would know better than most about how to pace your own uh, race. And I think a lot of the people in the bus, uh, I mean, there are generally a few faster athletes that know about pacing that deliberately sacrifice their times to run in those buses to lead those uh, those athletes across the line in the, the expected times. Yes, indeed. In fact, a couple of years ago, one of the famous bus drivers, I'm not sure if he's leading buses anymore, but Flum Peterson was given a Spirit of Comrades Award for his contribution 
to the 12 hour bus at Comrades. For many years, he led that bus home and he got it exactly right every year. And he got hundreds of runners across the line. And of course, they earned their medal. Um, one of the problems uh, with the one of the, with some of the bigger buses, and Flum used to do this on purpose just to tease his buses, he would cross the line and then stop. And then the runners around him would all across the line, but the couple of hundred behind him have not crossed the line, and there'd be a lot of pushing and shoving and a scrum <laughs> building up while they tried desperately to get to the line. <laughs> Always a scrum towards the uh, very latter part. That cutoff is still uh, some uh, two and a half hours away yet. But uh, at Cowies Hill, we've got uh, one of the more recognizable faces in South Africa standing by with uh, Colizondo. You might know the name, Gwena Muabelo. It's not in Comrades Marathon when you haven't spoken to our very own Buena Muevelo. Hello, hello, hello. So excited for you. Yeah, um, it has been good. I've enjoyed it. Uh, it was easier than I thought. Um, yeah, I'm still on track. I'm still on track for my personal best. So, but coming into this, uh, do you have worries about whether or not you were going to arrive in the Comrades? No, no, not, no worries. But um, when we were working on Friday at the boxing in Tlaxo, it was a bit cold. So I thought I was catching a bit of flu and you can't run with flu. So I was a bit nervous and worried. I'm like, <laughs> my throat, my throat. But I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm all the way. I should be getting there in the next hour and a half. Cool stuff. I don't want to keep you long, but I want to know between the up and the down. Which one for you do you perform better? Um, this is only my second down, and I have not been experiencing any pain. So I think I think I'm, I think I'll prepare from today. The down definitely will be my favorite. Right. So yeah. when are we finished, right? Of course, of course. Yeah. Let me go make up that time. Right. Enjoy it, right. enjoy it. Our very own ASABC colleague. I love you. She loves you too. Mommy, I love you. <laughs> that is it from us. And how is he? I think it's on with uh, Gwena Muhabello who uh, presents on SABC. He's a boxing presenter, football uh, presenter, analyst, commentator. Well, great to see Gwena's uh, not struggling along the route, but somebody who is uh, struggling seemingly in the closing stages. Yeah, just clutching onto that thigh as he edges towards the uh, grass here at the Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. The uh, finishing line just a few hundred meters away. Clutching onto their thighs. So, so many athletes now they were just happy to finish in what might be personal best times. Some might be disappointed with their times, having missed out on the chance to win the uh, bull row. And but this is what the comments is all about. This is really the time to see. Well, it looks like the sugar plum fairy in um, in someone's imagination coming home, but running for uh, SPCA, I think it is. Uh, but many charitable causes and uh, indeed many runners that have sacrificed. I don't want to say their dignity in some cases, but over the years that has been the case. We won't pick out specific individuals, but some that uh, just go along with the atmosphere and spirit of the Comrades Marathon big team. Of course, I think you, you, you just got to be able to realize that it's, it's not happening right here only even when we have got football games. That's where you can see spectators coming up in their other regalias that can be able to be somehow compromising their status or something, but then they really feel great about it wherever they are. And the speaker, Chene, Zazina, Darakubwan, Sabatubanji, Mkuma, Musmet, Kobala, Melesa, Vaneba, Kodanga, Zian, Maro, Zupamana, Naho, Bangbone, Zimbo, Zaba, Bangori, Zimbo, 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 more and more athletes continue to pour into Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. Another international athlete we saw a moment ago. This is uh, another international athlete with a blue number. And uh, over 60. The runner. Making their way to the finish line. We saw the Portuguese flag make its way into the venue a short while ago as well. William uh, Sichel of the United Kingdom. It was. As he edges his way to Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, and the colourful hairdo and the tutu that uh, have become popular accessories for comrades runners over the age of 50. There we go. Another uh, Masters finisher, very colourful with hairstyle. Uh, we never saw Bruce Fordyce though go out in uh, in, in these wonderful uh, outfits and never finish in that. But then again, you usually had the uh, the grand accessory that was the gold medal come the end of uh, your race, Bruce. Uh, yes, I just find the comrades is too much of a struggle and too much of a battle to 
fool around too much. You got to have respect for these guys that dress up in costumes, though, as well. You've got morning, a huge respect for them. But this morning he had a makarapa uh, hood. Yes, <laughs> but I wasn't running. He comments. wasn't running. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Brazilian athlete. Brazil, of course, uh, is getting set to host the uh, Olympic Games in, in just uh, a couple of months' time. August the fifth, the start. There's the Brazilian athletes running side by side, one with the uh, colours of the Brazilian flag on his head as well. There's uh, three of them side by side, all running in the colours of Brazil. Brazil among the countries that have entered the most international athletes for this race. Nearly 200-odd from Brazil that have made their way to the uh, finish line. Pedro Bonfim making his way. Oh, there's a fourth uh, Brazilian athlete that's uh, joined, who might have been just out of shot. But uh, one of those athletes has a green number as well, or at least one of those athletes has a green number. So regular visitors to South African shores are oh, Brazilian athletes as a whole. But there we go, the uh, runner at the back at the moment, the tallest of the athletes, has got um, a green number. That's the Brazilian comrades ambassador, Nato Amaral, probably doing, I would think, doing his 13th or 14th comrades. He's come every year for the last 13 years or so. And he looks after all the runners from Brazil and uh, coming in for a nine and a half hour, so that's a great run from that time. And being warmly welcomed uh, as they enter Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, and just acknowledging the uh, support that they're getting, the applause that they are receiving, the Brazilians who make their way to the finish line here. Of course, there's a great deal of excitement happening in Brazil in just a couple of months' time. I mentioned the uh, Olympic Games, but of course the uh, FIFA World Cup that was there two years ago as well. Some of the great uh, international sporting events, but in terms of uh, great international sporting events, when it comes to running, you can never look beyond the Comrades Marathon. Just uh, it, It's just so much more than a race. When you look at most international marathons, it's about the elite runners. You look at uh, all the top level international uh, runs, it's about the runners who can do the race in two hours two, two hours three, two hours five, two hours eight. This Comrades Marathon, an ultra marathon, the distance is about the runners that can finish the race in under 12 hours. There's so much um, in, in terms of personal goals and achievements and milestones to be had from this race. Well, Nato Amaral is certainly encouraging the Brazilians that he's brought along here. They've got uh, a mini, mini bus of their own. You call this a little cab? But the Brazilians eventually cross the uh, finish line here. Yeah, the camera of the Columbus, the number four cash, and we have frozen. If you call my name, just talk to me. Ganga, Chichpinga, whatever Columbus, or the other level of Cobala Resa, but who was the Zor, Zerosal Scarlet, or Cuyapa Capitan, Bunia, by the Olympic Casa of Brazil, Shangonava, La Brazil, Catar Bunia, Rio de Janeiro, Dingas of Corona, Juan Besagabana, Nangahazo, no wonder about Swana Banava, what the Missile of Cuma, or what the Missile of Cuma. And nine and thirty minutes. Well, more athletes continue to go, go to the, uh, the finish line here. Run, superhero, run. Another billboard coming in. But uh, we got a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you more from out on the course. I see, I see, I see. Come on, come on, come on. 
Dutch bar. New pack, same great taste. Of yes. Until funeral plans pay out within 24 hours. Plus, we will send 200 grand free airtime to help with the necessary funeral arrangements. They start from 99 rand per month. Important, you can cover up to 13 people on one plan. And on our ultimate dignity plan, you can get all your premiums back. Yes, all your money back on top of your cover amount. SMS live to 44054 and we'll call you back. SMS now. Coverage of, welcome back to live coverage of the uh, 2016 Commons Marathon. Stand a chance, of course, to win a thousand rand airtime, which is the world's largest ultra marathon, A, B, or C, SMS Old Mutual, and your answer to 34068. An opportunity for you to be a winner as well, not just Charlie Bosman or uh, David Tadebe can be a winner for uh, the Commons Marathon today, an opportunity to win a thousand rand airtime courtesy of Old Mutual. So Commons Marathon uh, 2016 continues on the finish line, just over nine and a half hours having gone by. And runners uh, pouring into the closing stages of this uh, Commons Marathon. A few more. This, uh, this stream will continue to get thicker and thicker the more the uh, seconds tick on by. But, uh, let's just remind let's just remind you of uh, the results today. Rounding out the top ten, Ladisa Kize, Charles Tijani coming in in ninth, Max King finishing eighth, uh, Spu and Lel in a seventh place position. Claude Mushiwa, fantastic run from him as he finished in 5.36.25. He was aiming for 5.26 today, said he could do it, feeling strong mentally and physically. Managed sixth place overall. Rufus Porter rounding out the top five. Mike Fokoroni, two oceans winner of Zimbabwe, is uh, now got a fourth place finish in the Comrades Marathon. Defending downrun champion Mungu Sumtembo, coached by William Toller, 5.26.39, and he doesn't even finish second, finished third. Ludwig Mamabola with a 5.24.05. And finish the second. He said he would be the man to beat. He said any runner that would take the goal, the uh, top prize, would have to beat him today, and he was right. But David Ratebe took up that challenge and managed to smash the existing comrades' record by some margin as well. Two and a half minutes, the 5:18:19. Comrades marathon results for the women's race: Shane Borsman ahead of a fading Caroline Busman in the closing stages, unable to successfully defend her title, and for the second consecutive year, win both two oceans and comrades marathon. Kaiserberg with a very strong finish for uh, third place overall for the Swedish uh, athlete Sarah Bard of the United States finishing fourth. Yolande McLean reigning out the uh, top five. Kiriam Marshall and then Colleen de Rieck at 52. We've spoken about her just so impressive over the years. Figilin Butuma, first athlete from KwaZulu Natal. With Yulani Basson, sub seven hours as well at ninth place. And Salome Cooper and uh, tenth position overall, just over seven hours. That's the top ten for the men and women in the Comrades 2016. It's uh, been a wonderful, wonderful race overall. It was uh, exhilarating to watch the women race, but uh, in terms of the men's race, we've, we've spoken, we just can't stop with the superlatives regarding just how good David Hadebe's win was. You know what thing that's very exciting about uh, the um, this year's race at Duel is that uh, um, I'm quite excited to see couple of South Africans taking the lead in this uh, whole race and in the top 10 and if you can check I think uh, from the immense race we have found seven I think eight men uh, from South Africa as well as the two coming from South I mean from um, outside the country but on the other side of Sue, women, where is she it's seven okay, women sure. from Thank South you. Africa and three from outside the country which I think it's a it's a plus to us to say you know over the years we have been dominated by people coming from offshores and you know other countries but I think a good start and a good motivation right now well uh, more runners uh, coming in towards the finish line but uh, Vusiwe Ngobo is out at Kloof let's check in on what's happening out on the road the Nedbank Green Mile, 65 kilometers into the Comrades Marathon, 24 kilometers to go. Got to our Opo Dokuloko, Agafonu Kulumanga Loko, Njalu Wutsinam, Sanju Kulumunjela. Today I left home and my son is turning 15. 
I had to leave him, but I told him the medal is for him, and I love him. He's a man today. Next day, he'll be 16, and I'm going to make sure he gets a driver's license. Oh, there we go, son. So today you are 15, next year you are 16. Daddy's going to make sure you get a license. Let's talk more about this race. You've run it twice before. Then the first two times? At the moment, I feel great, and I know I'm going to finish. This is my third one. It's a treble in, in soccer terms, and I'm going for, for, for 10 next time, and then I retire. But I go, I'm going to call myself a coach. Okay, so he's going to call himself a coach after 10 times. But we've all heard this before. The Comrades Marathon is addictive. After 10, he's going to go for 15. SABC2 as we continue to bring you all the action from the 2016 Comrades Marathon. And now the South African flag. Uh, good to see you. We celebrate South Africa today. Uh, thank you, Monsieur. Uh, what is the South Africans? But uh, more and more runners making their way to the finish line here. I've got Alec Riddle and uh, Dikalini Mwana sitting alongside. Now, these are the two voices you would have heard from the Bonitas uh, Eye in the Sky and the Energade Eye in the Sky earlier today. Dikalini Mwana, your first experience up in the uh, helicopter watching a marathon must be a completely different experience in terms of watching uh, a race, but uh, must have been a rewarding one as well. It was a very experienced, uh, a good experience, Dwayne, and challenging as well because every time you know when you start doing something, you get challenges and get excited as well. But for the fact that I could see things before you guys can see them, that made it very, very uh, experiencing and entertaining as well. I enjoyed every second of it. I, I, I happen to know, though, that you have a bit of a fear of heights, so I must congratulate you on, uh, on, on putting that aside and overcoming a fear to actually get up in the uh, the helicopter and bring us that uh, the earlier insights from the broad for the broadcast. I really felt like a winner today because you've been laughing <laughs> at me for the past two weeks and I managed to be on air for six hours. Although I didn't feel good the first three hours, but at least I could still cross and tell the listeners and the viewers what's happening. Well, uh, Dika Lady Mukungwana was up in the energy uh, eye in the sky and the Bonitas eye in the sky. We've already heard from Alec Riddle since he's uh, made his way back to terra firma but uh alec riddle uh, you you watched the uh, the men's race and just to to recap again after that uh, astonishing run of uh, hadebes but what else did you you manage to see what what sort of peripheral sights do you get from up in the uh, helicopter that that you can spot that we necessarily can't do from our, our shots on the bike or or at set points along the route yeah, I think today, uh, more so than in previous years, the the contribution of the spectator. You know, the, to me, there were bigger crowds out there, more cars, and people went to a lot of trouble. Just taking in Kloof, I don't know if you saw that helicopter shot of the, of the giant South African flag on that was laying on the ground. Um, you know, things like that, the, the crowds, they really came out in support. And I think, you know, I, I know it was a long time ago, but my memory of comrades was that the spectators carry you to the finish line and the comrades would not be the comrades without all of that support. So I don't think, um, you know, you, you see as much of that as we do from the helicopter and it was really great. Okay, well, uh, in terms of uh, eyes in the sky, we had uh, two pairs and we got a, a great deal of insights from both to Alec and Digaledi who will remain alongside. But first, we've got to head down to uh, Lindani and Benze. He's standing at the finish line and catching a few colorful characters. All right, well, we've seen all sorts of dress codes. We've seen all sorts of hairstyles. I've got someone running in barefoot. Did you run all the way barefoot or did you lose your shoes along the way? Halfway in the sandals. Or, or slips and then from Fields Hill all the way barefoot. Is that how you run? Normally, yes. There's comfort in that? It's much better, yes. Is that your speciality? Yes. <laughs> all right, well, if you want to run barefoot, run barefoot. Number two. She, uh, well, that's, that's an interesting approach to the Comrades Marathon sandals or uh, barefoot. It's uh, not something you see too often, although uh, there have been some great runners who used to run uh, barefoot over the years. Many South Africans will, of course, highlight Zola Bud or Zola Peterson, uh, um, but often on uh, Tartan, but on the road as well. I think uh, among the more famous of those was Abibi Bikila, the uh, marathon winner 
1960 and 1964 games, who uh, of course ran with a broken foot in 68 in Mexico City, had to pull out only shortly before the uh, the end of the race, in which his uh, compatriot Momo Walde went on to win the marathon. But some uh, wonderful, some uh, magnificent uh, barefoot running over the years from some of the great Ethiopian athletes. But uh, down at the finish line and on the grass, we've got Udo Karls just standing by at uh, the finish line as well. Well, Dwayne, we've seen plenty of guys in pink today. Finally, thank goodness, pretty in pink is Olivia from Johannesburg. Olivia, first of all, uh, you part of the pink drive, of course. Uh, why was it important running in these colors today? Um, two years ago, my daughter had a breast lump and she had to go for an op. So I've decided since then to run for pink drive. Fantastic. And uh, you happy with your finish today? I am because I, I'm not as trained much. I didn't train as much as I did last year. And I'm just happy that I managed to finish. So your daughter's back at home, right? She's back at home, yes. And I'm sure she's watching, yeah? I hope so. All right, straight into that camera. Speak to her and tell her why you did it and just send your love to her. To me, this is for you, baby. And to you, Kiara, as well. I love you girls so much. Thank you for your support and for forcing me to come to do the ocean. Comrades. <laughs> oh, so there we go. But well done. Well done. There we go. All for a good cause. Back to you guys upstairs. Thank you very much, Shudo Carl, sir. Down at the uh, finish line and uh, finding the uh, young lady from the pink drive. Oh, there's uh, so many charitable causes that we've uh, seen acknowledged throughout this competition. There's another energetic finisher makes her way across the finish line. It's amazing just how much energy is summoned up by some of the runners as they uh, edge towards the finish line. Of course, uh, grandstanding, as some call it. <laughs> but uh, speaking of charities and charitable causes, it's second on uh, the community chest. The community chest, we have four pillars which govern um, anything that we do within the community, um, which is health, education, community development and income generation. Um, within the ECD um, sector, the main priority is on education and so we a conduit for funding but we also an implementer of projects and um, the funding that we receive is 100% um, given back to the community. We don't hold funds for ourselves so anything that is donated to the community chest 100 percent goes out to the community and that makes us unique as the district and peter madison community chest if we don't support this institution we don't know who else will and our fear is that the kids future is then at risk and so what happens here is that um, kids come in um, from as, as young as um, six months and they are housed and taken care of here and those who are not yet school ready is a curriculum um, for them that um, best assist them to develop in phonetics, um, colors, etc. for that foundation phase learning um, with, 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 with the objective of getting them school ready. This is the Siakana um, ECD Center. It's in the location of France, um, in Sunduzi. Um, this area, deeply impoverished. What we have is we have one site on this end, one site behind me, and then another site to my right, um, because of space um, and the constraints that are there with us. So what happens is we've had to divide the kids. The site on your right there is where the little babas are and the site behind us is the ones who are a little bit bigger and then of course you know so they've had to be divided according um, to their ages in that sense. When it's meal time a pot has to be carried from this site which is the main area where the, the kitchen is and taken across to the other two sites. At the end of the day they are children you know and they they deserve a safe place to play. Zonke lezingane ngiyazithanda zonke ezami ngizithanda zonke ngokufana.
Well, just an update on uh, community chests and wonderful uh, causes that are supported by Comrades Marathon. The uh, 2016 race is well and truly over for the elite athletes, with, um, with David Khatebe claiming a victory in record time in the men's race and Shane Bosman in the women's race. But uh, again, down at the finish line on the grass, Udo Karl, sir, has uh, got another interview for us. Dwayne, thank you very much. It is beginning to pump right now. And let's be honest, last two hours, that's what Comrades is all about. And let's just have a look here. Basil Goff from Wentworth in Durban. Your poster says 30th Comrades Marathon. And more than that, 30 consecutively. Why would you do that to yourself? I love this game. There's very good guys on the road and a lot of support that helps me through. I enjoy this, yeah. They say that obviously you've got to develop good habits. Why did you decide to run the first time? I was a soccer rider in my days. Then I watched one run from Maradog down. And I reckon, hey, this must be awesome. I saw the crowd and the supporters. I said, no, I've got to try it. And the first day I tried it, this is awesome. First one of the best. Good, sir. You are an absolute inspiration. I just want to focus on this poster right here. Pain is temporary. Victory is eternal. So far. 30 years of victory for Mr. Basil Goff from Wentworth. Right, go and get your medal. Back to you guys. Thank you, Udo Carlsa, who's uh, standing out in the sun and working on his tan down at the finish line. As uh, we continue watching athletes stream into the stadium and approach the finish line here. Uh, the uh, 2016 uh, Comrades Marathon. This is about the time, though, where you've got to start uh, realizing as a, as a runner, if you're running these sort of times approaching 10 hours, you've got to be so balanced on nutrition out on the route and hydration out on the route. Uh, try to do what you can to uh, to rehydrate regularly and uh, indeed find yourself in a position where you can comfortably complete the race without necessarily cramping up, push too hard pace yourself incorrectly you might end up breaking down well that's been done a few times today just showing off a little bit plenty of energy uh, left for uh, some and, uh, interesting interesting headgear that we've seen it's, a, it's, a, it's among the best on display for today's race but uh, green runner Abel has completed now <laughs> at least over 10 but he he's going to make his way to the finish line after another impressive display of energy in the closing stages of this 2016 Comrades Marathon. Yeah, Dwayne, these, uh, these athletes are still phenomenal club athletes. They train really hard for the uh, Comrades Marathon, aiming to run uh, 10 hours. You know, if they run an, you know, nine hours is uh, six minutes, so they're probably running about, um, you know, six minutes, 40 per kilometer. It's a very good uh, pace to keep going. And uh, some of these athletes still look how strong they how strong they look coming towards the uh, the stadium here. Yeah. Well, there's still a great deal of energy left. There's uh, one running in the uh, colours of the United States, a United States uh, flag vest. It's making its way towards the finish line now. But down at the finish line, Lindani and Benze has a special guest in a special <laughs> special headgear. <laughs> yes, Dwayne, a very special one. I've seen you wearing one of these before, and uh, still celebrating uh, Africa Month. Please explain this to us. What are you wearing? Come again. Go again, Bob. Oh, just this African. I like Africa. And most of the time when I'm running in the morning, I find those beds being knocked by cars. I just take them to make this uh, attire. This afternoon, Owini uh, let David had to feel a shama push up. Mbona na ushama push up, even though you came in hours after him. Tell me, where do you get the energy to be doing push ups at a finish line? I've been doing this for almost for 12 years now. Whenever I finish, I'm doing the 12, uh, I mean the push ups 20. And these guys now, they're joining me because they see on the uh, Comrade advert. Yes, Nagli Marathon. I'm 13 one. Next year, Sakbon. Yeah. I'm always here. All right, uh, well, Dwayne, it is his 13th one. Next year, doing his 14th one. And I think it's ostrich feathers on his head. Well, uh, a lucky, lucky number 13 for that athlete. And there was a, b a bus. <laughs> wife number one, husband number 10. There we go. Green number is on his way, but husband and wife team making it to the finish line. Now, uh, there have been some special moments and many special moments celebrated by uh, by so many South Africans who've uh, completed the Comrades Marathon over the years. Coca-Cola is encouraging you to uh, get talking and interact with them about your golden moments. How do you feel about this one from Tommy Malone? The Comrades Marathon rolled on, and the 1960s was a period of consolidation as the race garnered local and international acclaim. 
That decade had its own share of drama, not the least of which was the heart-stopping loss by Tommy Malone on the finish line to Manny Kuhn in 1967. It remains the race's closest finish ever. Well, that was Tommy Malone in his famed number 62, finishing heartbreakingly second, the closest ever finish in the Comrades Marathon, one of the golden moments, undoubtedly. But I, I think what, uh, what Tommy Malone always used to uh, want other people to remember was the fact that he had actually won in 1966 and that he was already a uh, Comrades Marathon winner. But uh, while... Uh, well, Tommy Malone memories are uh, not so fresh in my mind. The stories, though, however, are Udo Carlos is down at the finish line with another guest. I found out something special, Dwayne, a combination of a superhero and, uh, I don't know, what is it, 50 shades of grey? Some erotic on the finish line here, comrades. David from Komachu, I'll have you explain the, the combination of the Spider-Man and whatever's going on there. Okay. What's happening with the outfit? What, 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 what is the, explain the outfit, the outfit to us. The, 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 this one? Yeah. Okay. So, Spider-Man, one half, and the other half, you're the devil. He's a devil, yes. <laughs> you, you ran all the way with his outfit? Yes, from uh, from my respect, yeah. Isn't it hot under that? Uh, no, 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 no. This one is like a silk. <laughs> <laughs> How many comrades have you done so far? Uh, Eleven. Eleven, fantastic. And uh, what was it like out there today? Lovely. David, there we go. Little bit of Spidey, little bit of, yeah, you know, the evil side. All over the finish line here at Comrades. Plenty more to come, but back to you guys for now. Well, thank you, Udo Carl. So we, uh, <laughs> I'm still not sure what that was either. Uh, Spider-Man versus the Devil. Here's another uh, bus making its way toward the finish line. This will be the uh, sub-10-hour bus. The... Uh, South African flag being hoisted aloft. Oh, there's a there's a bit of a crash. This is like watching the cycling race now in the closing stages. A uh, sprint towards the line and a, a little bit of a stumble and fall. And said uh, no harm done. It seems so. The sub 10 hour bus is uh, making its way to the to the finish line now. As, uh, the athletes all make their way around the corner and into the uh, closing stages here, being uh, welcomed to the finish line. Oh, I don't know what your feelings are, Alec, of uh, running in a bus, uh, Dickie Lady, but I know Bruce Fordyce was uh, against it, even in the days when, when he was not running for uh, gold medal or for the victories anymore, when he was running more in a, in a, a social uh, context, but buses were not something that he was particularly fond of. What are your memories of a bus, Dick Lady? <laughs> I think to us, to us, the last minutes of the races, you really need it, especially with Comrade Marathon. Because uh, you see, when, when, when Dwayne just said with the cycling thing that looked like cycling finishing lines, when, when you go down and there's nobody to pick you up, you, you might as well sleep there. But here's another big bus coming into the stadium now, and uh, I can tell you these buses are the saviour of many novices in the sport because people have no idea how to pace themselves. So sometimes they get involved in, the, in these buses and they just get pulled along by more experienced athletes because the people driving the buses and running with those flags are very experienced athletes who've run 10 or 20 comrades between them or, or more. Oh, these athletes, yes, often uh, being uh, helped along in the bus by much faster runners who do sacrifice their time and another athlete slipping and falling and this is uh, of course a hazard of the uh, bunching of all the runners tired legs one missed step you catch the heel of the uh, athlete in front of you and down go two athletes and uh, subsequent athletes falling over them as well it is so so well, it's, uh, it's not so common, but uh, it's something that certainly can happen. Speaking of common, the most common surname in the race, Tlamini. <laughs> 115 Tlaminis that are uh, part of this Commons uh, Marathon. 94 Smiths is uh, part of the Commons Marathon. But this bus just making its way slowly, winding around Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. All the runners being welcomed home. Some of the savages... Uh, Athletic club runners that are making their way to to the finish line as well. These are uh, runners who aim for around right about the same time. That just get helped along by somebody who paces them at the uh, the front, so-called bus driver, and then guides these uh, athletes. They they stick together generally throughout the race. Although there are times when athletes do fall off from the bus, and uh, if they just can't keep up with the pace that is being set, and others that join along the way. Not most common, but most stick with the uh, bus from the very front. 
and indeed uh, get their way to the finish line. Well, there's uh, another interesting uh, hairdo. And looking at the buses, one often has to wonder, you know, what, what price is the, uh, the bus ticket and who's driving the bus, who's got the experience? Uh, but this, this bus is coming in and they're having a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of camaraderie involved. Uh, you draw a lot of strength from, from other people in the bus. Just pulls you along. It's a little bit infectious and you can see they're having a great time out here. You can just tell it, it's, it's a good feeling for them when they get to the finishing line. Like I've been saying through the whole day that the theme for this year humbles me as well. But he is Ogutoba. And as you've seen, Butlamini, they are the same name that's dominating in this race and the theme is Zulu the host great KZN so everything is Zulu Dwayne the Zulu man well there's uh, there's a couple of signs coming in there's one that said legs strong like Liverpool and I'm just wondering uh, just how jelly like his legs might be at the finish line although Liverpool of course have, uh, have slowly but surely started to improve under Jurgen Klopp Donkey Denica thankful for uh, something that Denica has uh, has done Making his way to the uh, finish line as well. Runners running for all sorts of uh, personal reasons as well and uh, messages of uh, personal significance coming through. But uh, Comrades Marathon is uh, also associated with one Starfish Foundation. Let's find out more. Starfish supports children orphaned or vulnerable in South Africa working in partnership with community-based organizations. Starfish currently supports over 11,000 children 35 community-based organizations nationwide. There are over 3 million children orphaned or vulnerable in SA with TB, HIV and malnutrition being key drivers to childhood illness. The Starfish Wellness Program aims to strengthen the health and well-being of children thanks to our care workers who provide support like counseling, home visits and HIV and TB adherence support. The program is further supported by the Wellness Wagon, a mobile clinic providing wellness services like top-to-toe screening, HIV testing and counselling, as well as health awareness campaigns. Starfish has invested in community development, working closely with partners to build their capacity, with a keen focus on financial accountability, reporting and health education. Starfish is a leader in innovative, sustainable and cost-effective programs. It invites you to jump on the wagon for children in SA who are valued, protected and empowered to realize their dreams. I am astonished by uh, this young man who uh, is able to see and speaking of uh, sighted, there are a few athletes who continue to impress by uh, completing the Comrades Marathon despite being visually impaired. And there's a runner from the South African Police Services who's guiding along an athlete who's visually impaired. And this is just one of the most uh, incredible relationships that you see out on the road. The communication that's required between the, uh, the guide and the visually impaired athletes is astonishing because when you are tired, when you are struggling, to be able to uh, communicate, to navigate around so many bodies in a field this size is, uh, is simply astonishing. But uh, we've got to head down to a quick uh, chat with Udo Karl, sir, who no doubt might be catching up with this uh, visually impaired runner when he does cross the finish line, Rita Bile Taunyane. But uh, Udo Karls uh, is at the finish line with another finisher. Well, Dwayne, let me put it this way. You guys have been singing the praises of the bus drivers all uh, afternoon long. So I thought we'd get a bus driver in, yeah, Linda. Uh, first of all, bringing that crowd in there, everybody hugging you after the race. What does that feel like? I feel it feel very awesome. I'm so blessed as I'm not knowing that I'm just a servant. So your job was to bring your bus in under what time? Uh, under 10 hours. And, and you did it fantastically. You, you, you did it with a couple of minutes to spare. Yes, we have a lot of play on, on, on the road, having a lot of just uh, trying to coach the people. And then I, we have a real fun. Now, it's easy for you to say you're just a servant, but if I look at the medals, 12 medals in total, you could easily run for much better times yourself. Why continue to do this? Um, this is a matter of now I'm, I'm just making for a legacy, a, a legacy that I want to leave to the people because I have my time in running, and then now I'm 53 now years old, and then now all what I'm coaching the guys, motivating each and everyone to say that, take a part in comrade. It's so fun, so awesome. Absolutely. Now, 
Zero medals before today. Have a look here, Dima Katso. Could you have done it without this man? No way. He has been coaching me from the beginning. He started everything with me. I never thought I'll run 42 kilometers even. Not like the comrade was like a dream. I never thought I'll do it. But with him, he's been awesome. He's been there for me from day one. And another one. Look here. Zero medals before. To, one medal before today. Mutlati, apologies. Linda getting you across the line. He, he was an absolute help, wasn't he? Oh, man, us. that was like awesome, that was marvelous. I, I, I can't thank him more, man. Um, as, as you can see, it's, it's a back-to-back. -back. Last year, when I, was, when I was doing an interview with me, I promised I'm coming back this year. Lovely, lovely. Definitely, and my plan was sub-10. And when, when we started, I started a bit late, and I had to run looking for this sub-10 hour bus. You found him, you found him. Mini would be so proud of you. But I think more proud of Linda. But Linda is a hero. Now go and get your medals. Go, 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 go. There we go. <laughs> Back to you guys. Thank you, Udo. Well, well, well. Things are, ha are happening here. Retabi le taunyane na kia sumbona paya figi le kuchana wazuka bi kuye galoku esimkonda indoba akakwa zukbona kaku shenga me shokoto fumana unga to klendo tana isuka paya ku South African Police Services. This is this is heartening. This is that, that's why we call it the, the it, it, it's a human race. Seriously, uh, Helen. Oh, it is, and I think now in the next two hours we've got two hours of running left, and it's the time when people get inspired because. The people that we're seeing now is, uh, you know, just the average person that's maybe decided to try and get fit. And I think they'll see these people running like this lady on the screen. And it's a little bit, well, if I, if that lady can do that, I can. And I think we've just seen the visually impaired chap. It's like if, 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 a, if a guy like that can do this, what is stopping me? It's just making that initial stepping stone. And, and, and I think we're, in the st we're at the start of seeing just some remarkable people crossing the finish line. We're going to be crying, we're going to be laughing, and uh, it's going to be tears of joy. It's going to be everything because this now has come to sort of a, a very exciting period in our Comrades 2016, uh, Big T. Of course, I think a great day indeed when you look at uh, the uh, type of clubs which came and brought people together right here one thing common is just to make sure that they really uh, make sure that they run this comrade marathon and i like the theme where in they say a comrade marathon it will humble you is october and i think in a nicer spirit and in a positive way because uh, um i remember when the uh, market manager from comrades marathon when he was talking about that he said i even made sure that i had to contact three professors from kozul natal university to check as to whether is it the right theme to say is october it will humble you and I guess everybody who can be able to run and get to the finish obviously in a positive note he can say this race has humbled me well well that's the way it is hundred percent crazy that makes you laugh as well and he's just proud of that echo Nandi ge apa betu nasi ya ekubeli ni gogo si ekola si ekugumbe like comrades marathon ka 2016 silapa e take win is tibili ka kupana na kum nandi kuilondo koka lo ksa sango half past five kora ge kuse kabanda basa baleka yonango ku kutala ge abapumelele yona bagri bapaya kumtuba de pam konsimbi yeshumi elina nye bubum nandi njengo kulu tulu mango imi gobo imi vuyo everybody's hands are up and everybody they just appreciating the fact that They've been part of this 2016 coverage marathon, some coming as far as uh, the other countries outside of South Africa and all South Africans, all colors, all creeds, and everybody just enjoying themselves, youngsters and elderly people. And uh, it, it's just amazing feeling. Oh, it is, and it's just, it's quite interesting. We've got two hours left. We had uh, just under 18,000 people start the race. And... Uh, I think we'll probably find that still half of the field is out there yet to come uh, across the finish line. And my guess is that if the athletes who are still wanting to finish get the, their medal, they should be on their way down Cowie's Hill at least. Like That's about 17 k's to go. Quite interesting to see the placard written 100% crazy. And, and I can tell you, I've been going through some stuff of Tim Knox. He said, you, you know what, when you reach 56, you, you, your mind will tell you, dude, are you crazy? 
who do you think you are? Are you mentally fit for you to complete this race? And I can tell you, everybody will say after the race, ah, I mean, maybe I'm crazy. Why did I have to run this marathon? But at the end of the day, you feel like you have done what you're supposed to do. Well, I've just had word that there's still 10,000 people out on the road. So uh, if you can, get out there or just sit in your armchair and just cheer these 10,000 people on because they're going to need all the encouragement, all the support that you can send their way. Goodness me, 10,000 more people. Can you believe it? And they're still out there. But again, young Londo is a figure with pictures of Papua Kai and Gogo Helen Esicho. Nabalegi Londa, who your son Bukele, so was an abocanetis as for cherish and Obasa Makaya. Look at this beautiful, beautiful scenes indeed. There they are. Some just starting to walk and they're feeling those heavy legs, and some running a little bit further than the others. It's all about fun, it's all about. Happiness, it's all about Isogutoba. Well, it's, you quite you rightfully said that, uh, you know, Kulani, because when we look at it, um, you remember, Helen, 2014, during this time, it was windy, it was raining, and, um, you know, when people were passing the um, other part closer to the uh, stadium, you could feel for them. But this year around, I think uh, the weather has been quite favorable to them. And uh, starting from the morning, not really chilly as we thought it would be, and uh, quite warm around past 9-11. And you look at it now, um, people are enjoying, and it's all about enjoyment right now. Uh, you could see that we, we're still going to experience a lot of buses coming together right here in that spirit of Kamarad. Very much so, and the, and the weather conditions have been good. And, the, and one of the ways we can prove that is that we've had more silver medals this year than we've had for many years, as well as more of the, more Bill Rowan medals sub nine than we've had in many years. We had um, 26 women get a silver medal, break seven and a half hours. Um, the first two women came in the first hundred. Now usually, you know, they're pushing up there, and, and there's a few more. So. The performances today have been quite outstanding and uh, and it's almost like the bar has been raised and I mean we saw that in the men's race we had an interesting challenge in the ladies race but overall the performances from the front guys to the middle of the field and to the back guys have actually been very very good. Helen you've done it all you've done it in the past and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, um, you know you're not out there running now but then um, you, you're just talking about the performances today nobody expected what happened obviously it, it, it's something that was okay it might happen one day or another but the way things started Khatebe suddenly just blew out the whole field and uh, we we're all sitting in the commentary positions and saying he might have just started too early but he proved all of us wrong and uh, are, are we going to see something like a five hour mark one of these years that's a tall challenge, but we can never say never because there were times when they were probably saying we'd never, the race would never go under five and a half. But I do believe that um, that run that David put in today was one of the most outstanding road races I've watched, and I've, I've watched plenty. And it was just the fact that when he was coming to the finish, he still maintained form, he looks relaxed. And I mean, the, he that sort of you know from about um, 70 to 80 kilometers he just flew I mean he just, uh, the, his pace was like 314 and it was like come on this is not going to last so I feel very privileged to actually have sat there and watched today's performances it, it was it, it was really exciting well, Makesio Kangela, Ingati is called Niscolo, Esi, Nalene, Alendos, Tetangayo, Apa, Etembeni, Siscolo, Eso, Eso, for Mapaya, Quilanda, Ukutua, Kukum Shang, Makes Buge. If you've run comrades, chances are you've been inspired along the way by the precious learners from Etembeni School who line the streets every year to wall participants on to finish. The comrades route is right here on our front door. Um, secondly, is um, many years ago we've decided that with so many runners passing the school um, that we need to tap into um, this visitors that is that come and visit us. So very important is that the international runners has increased drastically over the couple of years, and um, 
We've been very blessed with Commerce Association, um, which assist us in the international runners when they tour the route. Um, they do stop here, we do entertain them, um, and we receive quite a number of funds from international runners right all over the world, from America, from Australia, from Japan, Switzerland, Germany. Um, and it's sort of, it started to become a huge competition with between the international people in um, who's going to bring the biggest check. And we're very blessed to, to receive in dollars and euros, and specifically this time of, the, of, of our, in our economy. The runners are being exposed to people with disabilities. Um, and I think then, on the day itself, it's a huge fun day. It's a day that the kids go out there, they support, um, they sing, they dance, um, and it is just a very, very, very nice day. And um, after the race, they've been sponsored with a bry. So it is a huge fun week and fun um, event for us, um, as well as a huge um, um, fundraising event for us. Presently, we do have 274 kids, um, specifically visually impaired and physically disabled. That's the two major disabilities that we do cater for. Um, funds, yes, that's a, that's a big problem in, in, in this type of education we do have. Um, we do receive a subsidy from the government. Um, and there's also parental contributions, um, but our main focus is on fundraising and to get the resources for these kids to, to offer an, a, a good education for them. Irrespective of the challenge, everyone has taught skills to create objects which are sold to benefit the school. The community around Etembeni thrives on unconditional love and support from the teachers and volunteers who give of their time to provide a firm footing in the lives of truly special children. We love comrades. Nice to work with these children because to them we are not teachers only, we are just mothers to them because they are those who are orphans, so we give them that motherly love. Nanzo gembu geli nkunsegi liya kutoli salondo leyo kutwa ke ya tacha inti ziyo zabandu kwa bawa ya konda isa skolo etembe ni skul skolo sabandu wana haba kuba zegi leyo kutwa kuya kata njindo baba zimisele kwa babe indo ebo mini sibule laka kuluge na kwa bobati baba kase baba beke enda weni ya bongo bana bo they deserve that love they deserve everything that is possible to make their lives better. Gabonagala ke pa milenze ithanda kuba noko ibe ne rapha ine jeli kudinekile madodana ayava uba kudala umcimbe uphethe pa ya I love that one. I think uh, you know when you look at um, Caroline Wolfman you could think uh, she's just walking top of the coal which are like burning um, because uh, you know the legs were not able to carry her anymore and gamlando wore ba ara ba murabelesa o ba tshinga gore tshimela tsa magare ane a ko fisa bukuma nga uri milenje ya sa tshikona u nga mofara bukuma ninga zwa ko pfa zola ya tshikwa ba mafunga a uri jeli ya family ndeni iba yo fela wo tshira tshithu pedzi bana vha kondela nga manda i think they come from far um, since morning half past 5 these guys were on the road up until this time around it's now around quarter to the hour four and you can imagine Zolani just to be on the road for all these hours. Wellington Bofuna Yunga Lenya Lendo Kubega Yo Apa Fagaming was Yaka Chan Bapanya Panya. Nalil Nitala Nalol Santa Uzongena by as that is about his corner and at up. Yeah I'm Balendo Tiakon Bagutali Petalum Clint. My key can go now you bet you walk. Masikesi ya paga nye eza anzi kesi paga huli ndanu mfoka mpense inga tiko na indo aspate leo. Litz. Just off camera Udo and I were seeing some old ladies running in and we asked ourselves are they better than us? Because we've never run this. These are not the old ladies but uh, I've got, I'm joined here by two ladies. I just saw the emotion in your eyes as you crossed that line. How does it feel? I'm so thankful. Do you think you'd make it here today? Did you see yourself in Durban today? For us, this is a new PB for us. Congratulations. Thank you. A big feat here today. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. I feel wonderful. It feels as though I've achieved first position. And they say this race will humble you. Did it humble you or did you humble it? It did humble me. Yes, but I fought back. 
<laughs> All right, so while we speak about humbling, some were saying that they will humble the race, the race will not humble them. So we are going about. Thank you. Thank you. Comrades Marathon, finish Lena at 2016. Now, can you get a job? Come and take a cool. Chong a pair of angle bay lock with Zabo. Yeah, the church finger chin is a chino. Most of the Baba to a never go to the head to the children and Gamanda go to one of the way or the Missa Apple Yaki Bureau of Pit Sailor. Um, came over to Winaho. Well, it's time to announce the winners of the old mutual SMS competition. If your name is on this list, congratulations to you. You are one of the lucky winners of a, a thousand rand airtime. Remember to plan for greatness and register, register at www.worldofendurance.co.za to get training plans, expert advice, race info and more. This competition was brought to you by Old Mutual, helping you do great things. Kwakona si choke kuwe city, ala ala kuni abo bapumeleleyo ni vilege bicho. Masiti se kwakona sbete oenga usipeke ku finish line. Udo? Hey Zolani, now I found a lady by the name of Mary Vorster. Upon close inspection, I discovered that it's Mary Forster because she's married to a South African all the way from Perth, Australia. Uh, tell me, why come all the way from Perth and run your second comrades? This time I did it for charity, a primary school in Peter Maritzburg. Uh, tell us more about the school. It's got 1,200 kids, no electricity or water, so I decided to raise money for it. And have you been able to raise some? 12,200 rand. Oh, tell the people about, out there about the school. Let's raise some more money. Yeah, well, I'd like to. So I'm going to take photos and take them back to Perth and get some more money out of everyone. Oh, fantastic. Mary, well, well done. Uh, understand, understand that final 20 was particularly tough on the legs this afternoon. Killed me. Killed me. Really, mentally killed me. Well, you, I did it. You're across the finish line. Now go and get your medal. And there we go. Fantastic. Mary Forster, married to a South African. She's originally from South Africa, and now she's getting a second comrade's medal. Zolani, back to you. Thanks, Sudo. Thank you, my man. Skangele na zine lokwe. Zisi zamfondini. Zimbeche mbeche. Zipanya panya. Kumnandi. Kunjalo. Kumbule ubaga loko. Askai kribi le nyanga ya se Afrika. Afrika month. Sisai bamba. Sisai pete tina. Apa gwe SABC Sport. Yonge Londo is a kue with compliments of SABC Sport. Agumnandi etepe. Mzafu kumanga banda re katiba hane pa uyoshika shena se mosi kasho hei no ma siyara dola na mosi chika makumoni pa soko hangwa SABC 2. Fezi ya mga chalo chupinga ni kolumde lo wana muna ni ugidi mga chamarao when other people are you know running this direction, the right direction, he chose to do it the opposite way. And we're talking about Farai, he's one of these guys from one of the clubs in Centurion or around Midran and he's called Farai. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing see him not long to come well here they're coming in quite steadily and uh, plenty of time to uh, relax and enjoy and lap up the atmosphere as they they come lap, take this lap around sahara stadium and uh, as we've been saying all day one and three people in this race are a novice never done it before so uh, it's a new move at the finish for them but and, and there's all those people out on the road that are novices, there's still that challenge in their head and uh, can they push their body to actually finish and do this? With your support, with your help, with your cheering, most of them will. 89 kilometers and Steve, you can do those moves. It's amazing. <laughs> Sydney Diallo, Guyalo Zimbonileo, Bautinina. Welcome to 404, Guyo DSTV, Guaboge, Babugeleo DSTV. This is uh, live pictures for you. Well, uh, it's uh, been 10 hours and 21 minutes to be precise. Exactly 21 minutes now. Comrades 2016, this is live. Comrades Marathon, we've had some amazing scenes here this morning since we started at half past five. The record has been shattered. 
Ndiwa kamanda uka ndi baswa na malako wana katwita wako rumena at nikari hashtag comrades 2016. Wabona matuanje kukuma mwoku ambori kulibu kamanda wana bilisi ni maratu wawa kana mkuma na wawe ashiko jena. At East Coast Radio, but our third runner non Tukuto has done it again. The nutrition consultant completed the race in 9 hours 26. Hashtag comrades 2016. Don't forget that. Thank you to Channel 404. We'll be joining you later. Maspinde kwa kona si bambe owenka ustibele pa ku udo karal sa usazante udo. Well, Zelani, the blue bub, of course, will tell us we're dealing with an international run, and then the message on the shirt, RH, I ran 48 marathons in 2013. It's the story of Diallo from France. Diallo, 48 mar marathons in 2013? Yeah, yes, 38 marathons. Uh, I want you to run uh, 42 marathons. Uh, that is one marathon for each K of, of the distance. But to be sure that I'll be able to make it, I added six more marathons and I was very lucky. Uh, I did all of them on, on six continents. No, why? Uh, actually, uh, doing marathons, doing the comrades is what humans should do. Uh, modern life has brought us many problems and uh, then we, we realize that we have to do intense physical activity and uh, running is the most uh, uh, is, is the normal uh, sport for humans i love running. it i love it and you did all 48 in that 2013 including today's one in the south foot yeah no 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 uh, this outfit is very new just just uh, just a few months Months ago, yeah, I, I was I used to run with uh, uh, running shoes, running shorts, and running t-shirt. I love it, Diallo. Get your medal. Thank you very much for coming through, and we want to see you at Comrades next year, huh? Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. There we go, Diallo. 48 marathons in 2013. He might be onto something there. Huh? We patent that and and, and sell it to the 20,000 runners in Comrades 2017. Yeah, Love it. Well, I think you need to really buy one of the outfits from Diallo there. <laughs> but wise words, hey? Running is. Uh, it's, running is just such an accessible sport, and uh, the, wherever you can go, you can find some uh, event to take part in. So uh, I hope that little message of, uh, has inspired you, and if you're sitting at home, give it a go. Well, you saw a nice uh, gesture there from uh, the old lady and uh, the gentleman having for a nice prayer. Talk. It's got, uh, I, I think I picked the name there, for the Zanera Togwa, and I could see, I think the, that's a wonderful jazz indeed, because uh, like in the morning we've been saying, these guys have prayer they raise, you know, they will like, you know, go sought for God, they will like pray uh, for guidance, pray for the strength throughout the whole way, and I think a good one, um, just to complete the race and say, thank you, Dad, thank you, Father, once more, I've done it. So, you make a short prayer before you start your thingy and you make another prayer to say thank you lord because you blessed me and i've achieved it Another thing we can do, we can develop a plan. No one can do. Bamba ini abaya. Comrades Marathon 2016. Half of the Rabahone. The stadium is at Deben Sahara. Out of the Kulukule na half of the Chini. Pezia. The only thing I'm going to do is ini abaya. Deben Gapasi. Ha etekwini municipality. Wala bila sanga chulu chipinga. Bunjia watu wako jena zozino. Ndi bila watu wana randi wapi sela. Rono kidi ma awara zafumi. Uya kama minute ishka uya kumbritano. Zata bana ngo hozori. Chipinga chini mwa na moko kidi ma ora ayo ayo ra. And so I think um, when you look at the men and women who are now coming through right here, they're not doing it for any price, only they're doing it for fun to say, I have been there, just to be recognized by the Comrades Marathon. Absolutely. Look at them, they're just enjoying themselves. Well, of the 18 and a half thousand people, the, or, the, or the 18 thousand people, there's only about going to be a hundred people who are going to financially benefit or, you know, for the prize money. Maybe there are more running for it. This race is for the people. It's just 
left, making the time, training, coming here and taking in the park. So you know you've finished. It's not about the rewards you're going to get at the end. It's your own personal reward, that special medal that recognizes it. And here's a, we see, we have had a pretty good event for, as far as um, seeing people who are quite troubled or needing assistance crossing the finish line. And uh, here's one of the, uh, few people who seem to so they're going to want uh, a little bit of a help and a stretcher at the end but other than that most of the guys seem pretty healthy as they come and it's been a good day but true that uh, I think when we look at it uh, from the uh, you know uh, an athlete's perspective you could be able to check and say these guys they know they have been training and uh, whatever they have been doing through all the whole course now is paying dividends because they can be able to complete the race not really in that fastest moment and fastest time but just the record time where in they can be able to be there okay we'll be back but then uh, let's go for the bonitas expo time Right here we have a bird's eye view of Comrades Expo 2016. If you've forgotten a piece of kit at home, you come and buy it here. You want to get some really good advice on running the race, you come here. If you want to sign your name up to a great cause, you need to be at the Expo, which is exactly what I'm going to do now, so join me. Well, let's see if I can grab something. I'm not running, but uh, it's always nice to uh, look good. Yeah, let's go and check. I can promise you this, comrades will humble you. So this is the Green Number Club, right? You've got to run 10 comrades and then you can come and shop here. Very exclusive, but let me push my luck. Yeah. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, can I grab one of these? No. Can't blame a boy for trying, huh? Can't. Super important to get all your vital signs checked out. So let me do just that. Huh? Hello. Hello. Can I have your left arm? Left arm. There we go. Thank you. So apparently my blood pressure is A for OK. I'm strong as an ox. There's one more thing to do. What is that? A needle. <laughs> no, sister. <laughs> Never. Not me. Now here's some sage advice. Forget the 89 kilometers to conquer. Look forward to the glory. I'm looking, I'm not seeing it. I'm a superhero. And this is just to get to our broadcast on Sunday. Now I'm in the kiddies play area and I've always found it difficult to, I don't know, stay between the lines. So let me get some advice from an expert. Six-year-old Amina, how are you? Fine. What's your advice for coloring in? I think I'm doing both at the moment. Pink Rhino, not too bad, huh? Not too bad at all. Woo, that is beautiful. There we go. Well, these incredibly tired people who've registered thousands of runners have hyped themselves up the last little bit of energy for the big day. The registration is done, it's time to run. Catch you.
Maspinde sikwa mgeleke mbugeli hapo ekaya ufika kwa kona sutata subeka kalafa kalongo ya take win ya sachonge i comrades 2016 ni marathon ya tuleyo. Maspinde sato wenga umu sikwa kona siye gulindani paeza nsingati ukonu mtasipate leyo. Engwonga kuluge zulani. Well, the comrades marathon is not only just about the sweat and blood. It's also about the tears. Natasha, I saw you breaking down as you crossed that line. What was going through your mind? It's just unbelievable. I can't believe I made it. It was a tough day at the office, but it was so enjoyable. Were you running alone? Most of the time, yes. And uh, this morning, this morning when you woke up, did you see yourself crossing the finish line of this Comrades Marathon? Um, yes, I was quite positive, so I'm so glad I, I was able to do that. Any particular reason you're doing this one? Um, no, just a life, lifetime dream coming true for me. Congratulations and uh, good luck for next year. Thank you very much. Baba, you keep showing us your muscles, yeah. but there's nothing there. You know, in 20 but congratulations for, for Thanks. 2014, I had a horrible race. Like they say, a great man never uh, failed to try, you know. I had a fantastic race. Did you also have a fantastic race? Yes, and this is for my mom. Selena Mlaus, I love you and my family. I've done it for you. Hola. <laughs> Very exciting scenes indeed. I love it when Lindani says, you keep on showing us your muscle, but there's nothing, there's nothing there. there. <laughs> I mean, really, what, what is it that you've seen there, Zona? I mean, really, what, what, what is it that you've seen there? But he, but he has achieved something. Did eh? you see some muscle there? <laughs> it's about the mental strength, though, anyway. We need to compliment and congratulate this guy who has made it to this far. Oh, yeah. Chonga paya kwa kona. Lea, imi bono si bonayo. Matota kekakaeka fun. Helen, you've got a nice story to tell us. Eh? Well, I think there's uh, in the uh, brochure, there's a lot of stories of people of who are running and why they're running. And one of the people, a well known favorite athlete of Durban, is Tilda Tull, is going for a double green, which is uh, 30 comrades. And she is a previous winner, she's actually won a down run. In the in the 90s and um, been battling a little bit with an injury, but um, been sort of monitoring her progress. We don't know exactly where she is today, but uh, she will be out there. She's got another probably another hour and a quarter of an hour left to run. If she's got to get under the well, almost one and a half hours, but um, she'll be wanting to make, have a comfortable finish. And it was a little bit touch and go. Then she says that's it, her triple green, and she's she she's going to have a break for quite a while, so for five years. So. Uh, and there's a lot of people like that. You read the story of um, many of the people who are out there supporting. They're out there supporting a family member. The young children are supporting their parents or mum, dad. Um, the one article, it's quite endearing that uh, for years she supported her father. And now it's her turn, you know, and she's doing exactly what her, her dad did before and uh, sort of just going to uh, try and complete this in the given 12 hours. And you want you, you, you just reminded me of the 64-year-old Utata uh, Ungona, but the Tiger Club in Biza, Naye Une Quadruple Island, Leo Apa. At 64 years of age, it's his 40th Comrades Marathon today. Wow. So you see, these people are doing these things, and it's just an, a, an amazing, amazing feat. But yeah, younger Londo Leo, the Kunsegi Lesabes Finde, Sikwazuk Tetangai. A few words from you guys, and uh, well, I know Malerbe will be replacing me. Another <laughs> Eh, <laughs> 
when you look at them, most of the, uh, you know, middle-aged class people right here, you know, they have made it a lifestyle again right here. And uh, you go to every community these days, it's either they have got the fine walk, they have got the five kilometer walk, they have got the 10 kilometer race, the 21. And I think this is one thing that we need to really embrace as South Africans and make it a lifestyle. Well, certainly, I think we have to, to some extent, and that's why a lot of South Africans, you see the middle-aged men, especially, maybe a little bit older, they're not as big as in some other countries. And what I'm noticing here is the amount of green numbers finishing. Athletes who have done this race for 10 years or more, maybe not always consecutively, but they've completed 10 Comrades marathons. And there's another one there, number 41414, another green number there coming in. And that's great to see, Helen. Oh, yes, it means it's, it can't be that bad. Um, but as Bruce said, you know, he's probably uh, not that keen to do it next year, but give him an hour or two tomorrow morning. He'll be lining or she'll be lining up there too. Just another one. Yeah, indeed, the shop thing about the Arab Colombian song and the Renaissance of Angayo, Kane, Nibona Musi, Tibana Tuku, whatever Toma, Hame, Bambe, Ruro Toma, Ziambo Zazumosi, or Zaukuma, Africa, Spemer, Kuriba, Kandela, in Yabayone, in Aralinga, which took him on a moon, Gavek, Rivero Gidiba comes now to a kilometers of Fumitano, got a kilometer scores of Fumbi, Rivero Tachuchito, now some of the Gidiba duality, now the Gidiba comes in about doing a matter what the Ambilina Duba, what the Taranga Duba, Zero Shop, the Amanda. But I think, um, like she say, look, uh, for me and to everyone out there um it's a it's a big challenge we need to really make sure that we get up and go out there and to be part of this uh, multitude and these masses who are really bracing the whole um you know um 89.2 uh, kilometers well that was not good to see that person just collapsing there over the line and we're hoping they're okay and of course we've been looking at the coke golden moments throughout the day and we have another one coming up here Tolly, what do you have for us we are still here at Cowie's Hill. As you can see, the run is going past us, getting closer and closer to the finish line. But luckily for me, I've been able to spot quite a few fans who are wearing their very red uh, T-shirts. That is the hashtag Gold Moment T-shirt. How are you feeling today, knowing that you are the winner of this? Excellent. It took us a long drive. Um, we're from Bargate, but I had to drive all the way from Lefalale. Um, 100, uh, 1,200 kilometers to make sure I was there early enough to get my t-shirt, so I'm lucky to have one. All right, so firstly, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you and where are you from and who's with you right now? Sure. My name is Peter Dolivera. This is my grandson, Ocho, and this is my son-in-law, and uh, we had to support my daughter running the race today. All right, so I just want you to take us through the experience of just being here and watching the Comrades Marathon, seeing the runners go past. What is going on in your mind? Man, it's a magic event. If you look at this, this is a this is a history. This is our country. There's no politics. There is nothing else. No education. No size. No age group. Just pure determination. Yeah, no, that's very true. You also agree with that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So I want us to also talk about why is it that you are here on the sides as fans and not actually running the course? All right, this is great stuff. It's uh, three years ago, my daughter, my middle daughter, Joannette, she's running today. She was diagnosed with cancer. And um, for two years now, she's been cancer free. And she was determined to prove if she's cancer free, she could run the ultimate race. And we've supported her over the two years. It's difficult to stand at five o'clock in the morning and drive with a scooter bike with her, to ride with her all weekends, the all, all the, the mornings and afternoons. And she's here today to prove that she is cancer free and she can run this race. And we're just glad to support her. That is such a touching, such a beautiful story. So proud of you. People also saying hi in agreement with that story. So then lastly, are you aware that you supporting your daughter, you supporting the Comrades Marathon has resulted in you winning a hamper? Well, it's, uh, we didn't think that way, but um, winning a hamper is just great. It just makes it more ultimate and more great. And I take my hat off for all these runners, every single one of them. It's just great to see them. And we're not supporting just my daughter. We're supporting a country that supports the race. Oh, absolutely. Over 19,000 people here. And your experience, just to close it off for the viewer at home who has no clue what it's like to be a winner of the hashtag gold moment. If you missed it, I'm sorry to say, this is the greatest event. <laughs> that is fantastic. There you have it. I 
another fan that has won the Tampa, another fan that has shared such a beautiful experience of what the Comrades Marathon actually means to them. If you want to also be in this position, winning one of those hampers, please do tweet us your gold moment. Hashtag gold moment and tweet to at Coca-Cola underscore ZA and you could be winning one of those 10 hampers. It is Kawi's Hill and we're still having a blast. Well, major milestone moment for me personally because with 32 consecutive Comrades Marathons, I've now reached, I think, 100 marathons in terms of interviews with people who've actually run the race. Zerk Lawrence, uh, Colonel, and he's uh, uh, retired. How uh, did it go today? Yeah, it's a good thing. I think from the 32 that I've done today, was it sicker? The weather was sicker from the lekkerste. The weather was very good. Uh, the last 20 is tough because you get tired. It is a downhill. But there's about 36 k's which you climb, so you climb and you rock more. Yeah. We, we, we're talking about gold moments in Comrades history. For you, across these 32, what's the gold moment for you? Um, the gold moment for me was uh, when I received my first uh, green number. It was handed to me by Wally Haywood. And then my second uh, green number for 20th consecutive Comrades was presented to me by Jackie Beckler. And then my third one two years ago by the King of Comrades. Comrades Bruce Fordy. So I think I caught all three. I've got eight to go, then it will be my 40th, and then I'll be 70, and I'll be happy to do it consecutively. Beautiful. Now, since you're retired as a colonel, are you still allowed to salute? Well, not not out uniform, only when I'm called up and I'm in uniform. Okay, that's, that's, that's a leg muscle here. Yeah? Here we go. To Thank Colonel you. Zerk Lawrence, 32 comrades later. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Back to you guys. Well, certainly gold moments there and uh, great for that Oliveira family and uh, to win that gold moment. And we keep talking about the athletes, but it's not only about the runners, it's about the spectators. The Comrades is really an event for the entire South Africa, as they've said. And the, the spectators along the route are just as much part of this event than the, the athletes who are competing. But Helen, we're talking about gold moments. Have you got some gold moments of this you must have i mean you've won it three times one of them must be a gold moment uh, no not really I, I mean i still look at yeah i had i mean my performances were i did did, did fine i mean if i compare them to the modern day athlete i'll 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 um i'll i'll be humble i'm humble but uh, i still think wally hayward when he, he at 79 his performance because i know i'm not 79 yet and there's no <laughs> ways i could have i could achieve that i just for me that was quite quite remarkable well a man in red next to me alec riddle you certainly have some coca-cola gold moments you're never short for a, a memory or two yeah there have been a few great ones over the year uh, you know first of all uh, you know helen hopefully got a gold medal for each of those three wins those were three <laughs> golden moments but uh, yeah remember you only have to be the best on the day and you were brilliant we remember that with fondness but you know for me some of the golden moments were you know obviously watching uh, bruce fordyce when when many of those golds um, you know, that's time I was I was racing probably about an hour back or wherever it was. But I think we saw a couple of golden moments today. Um, you know, that, that winning time, I mean, that was outstanding. And the way he ran it, it was just absolutely phenomenal. He, he just, you know, put the hammer down. There was no fear. There was no caution. He just threw everything at it, threw caution to the wind, and he came through. Yes, he struggled a little bit the last four or five kilometers, slowed down a little bit, a fraction. Otherwise, it would have been 5.17, but what a performance that was on her. Yeah, and like we keep talking about the women's race, or we've, we've mentioned a lot of the women's race, because of the drama involved in that, I don't think we've made enough of a big, or how big a deal David Khatebe's run today was. I mean, just put it into context for us. How many men have actually run that fast? And we said earlier, Ludwig Momobolo, you know, the time he ran for second place would have beaten some of Bruce Fordyce's record times. Well, just to put it into context, you know, I mentioned it earlier and, um, you know, I don't want to repeat myself, but it's it's so significant. Let's put it into context. How many people run park runs in South Africa? Many, many, many thousands. I'm one of them. Okay. <laughs> and do you admire the guy who runs a sub-18? Definitely. He ran I'm, I'm trying to be that guy again. I used to be that guy. I won it today. <laughs> ran 18 in a row on this course. Oh, 18 amazing. sub 18 minute 5 k's. It, that that pre, that for me puts it in context because I can no longer run an 18 minute 5 k. Can you, Helen? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's short and sharp. No. And uh, I think, you know, t t I kind of 
understand that mentally and I think how impossible it is to run that. And even, you know, when I look at, we talked about the Bill Rowans earlier, and we're, we're soon going to come to the bronze medal cutoff as well in 15 minutes' time. But to run a Bill Rowan as well, for these runners out there, six minutes a K, that's still a 30-minute park run, which, you know, a lot of people can't do. And uh, to do, again, 18 of those in a row, it's, it's mind-boggling, Helen, how fast these athletes, and not only the elites, a lot of the others go over this route. There's been some great performances today, as I know they, they've... They, they've uh, we're not expecting as many bronzes or, I mean, I should say, um, Bill Rowan medals, sub nine hour athletes. They weren't expecting the numbers of the silvers to come through. And I just think it's great. It's like the, the conditions are great, but the bar's been raised. And it may be just that general swing you've, of improvement in the sport because of things like the park run and a lot of people getting out there, pushing themselves. And I just think we're riding quite a positive wave when it comes to road running. And I think how much of that positive wave has to do with the, the hype around comrades. I mean, it's not every day you're going to get up and run 90 Ks in those kind of times, even for your average runner, you know, finishing now. I think there's just something about this day that just lifts their performances in general. Yeah, you know, you, you go to you go to parties or brides or things these days. And, you know, a few years ago, I would have gone to uh, uh, to a bride at my, uh, my stepson's place and and all his mates and whatever, they would never dream of doing comrades. I went there the other day and there was Karen Watson Swiss Smith preparing for comrades, uh, Candice Pizzolatti, you know, people you would never five, ten years ago have ex expected them to do comrades. Here today, they were out running. You will know a handful of people. Helen will know more than a handful of people who, as I say, five or ten years ago wouldn't have. Everyone's been swept up in this whole wave of getting out, doing events, look at the Ironman, comrades, I mean, over 20,000 entries. It has become a really big thing in South Africa. And I think a lot of it has to do with the SABC providing the live coverage. I think a lot of it has to do with the, the uh, crowds along the route. I mean, they lift these people. A lot of it has to do with, obviously, the Comrades Marathon Association, the organizers. I think it's a wonderful thing, and let's not forget also the sponsors. Well, I must say the Comrades Marathon Association forever trying to innovate, reinvent, make this a little bit better than it was last year. It's difficult to do with such an iconic race. You've got to keep some elements because it's historical. And I think I want to add to your list of, of things that, that lift this race. Um, the fact that the winners suddenly are South African again from last year. You know, we've got Gift Kale here, Caroline Bosman, now Shane Bosman, and uh, obviously David Khatebe. And now we've got both the records, at least down run records, back in South African hands as well. And I think it inspires people, especially people like the female, Caroline Bosman, and her story in particular. Yeah, I think I think uh, there's a wave, you know, f five times in a row now we've had a South African men's winner and it's it's lifting. But I'd also like to just mention, you know, Bernard Dundazi, uh, you know, led through the halfway mark, took that hot spot. We all thought, uh, you know, maybe what's he doing there? But he's from Zimbabwe. He came to chase the 20,000 rand. He managed to finish in under seven and a half hours to get his hot spot. But I wonder, Helen, what an impact of those guys who go out to get that hot spot may have had because he was five minutes ahead of the real contenders and maybe that forced Salo, Pokoroni, Katebi, etc. to move a little bit earlier than they would have and help set up the record. Yeah, well, definitely. And uh, as we see the 11 hour buses now coming in, we've got to go back to Koli for another Coca-Cola gold moment. It is the 2016 Comrades Marathon. We are stationed here at Cowie's Hill, and oh my goodness, what a vibe it is. The runners, some of them actually walking. You can see that this marathon has taken a toll on them, but the fans, the supporters are here in their numbers, and it's getting more and more difficult to actually select the winner of the hashtag gold moment. But even though it was a difficult task, we have found her. Who are you, and where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Brenda Gray, I'm from Durban, and uh, not very far from uh, where we're standing, where I stay, so it's lovely here, the vibe is nice, there's a lot of cool drink for the runners, it's enjoying, even though some of them are walking, it's still good that they're on the road. Alright, so I want you to tell the viewers a little bit about what they can expect if they do come out here to uh, Cowie's Hill, you know, in terms of the ambience, the atmosphere. 
Oh, there's such an atmosphere, so nice to be out here. There's lots of people shouting, and it's just lovely to see these runners. They've really put a lot in to be here today. Absolutely, we are so proud of them. Now, I cannot miss the sign that you have in your hand right now. I want you to tell us a little bit about your gold moment story. My gold moment is my best friend, Deanne Kennedy. She's running uh, Comrades for the first time. Uh, she took five years to qualify. This last year, she needed to knock off 45 minutes from the start of the year to the last where she qualified was Deloitte. And she got it. Uh, she did the time. She's done the crime. And she's in the 12-hour bus now. So we're waiting for her to come up Cowie's Hill for her support to just get her to the end. All right. So when she runs past here and you're stationed here, what are you going to be doing too? Well, I'm going to be screaming her ears off and I have to run a little way with her to make sure she's my running partner, though she runs faster and more further than me. We're partners always and it's just lovely to have uh, such an awesome friend running such an awesome race. All right, so has she inspired you in a way to take part maybe in the following Comrades Marathon or maybe not? No, it's a bit too far for me, but I, I like being on the sideline and always running at the back so that we can take photos and see the sunrise. That's the fun part of running. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. So I've got a little bit of a surprise for you. When we selected you as the winner of the hashtag gold moment, it means that you're walking away with a hamper. Did you know yes, that? Yes, I didn't. Yay! <laughs> oh, congratulations to you. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, thank you so much. And an awesome year. And if you're not out here on the road, get out here. You're in Durban, get on the road. Help these people get to the end. You've heard it from Brenda herself, the winner of our gold moment. If you want to be like her, please tweet your gold moment story to at Coca-Cola underscore ZA and do hashtag gold moment. And you could be walking away with that hamper. And we also want to see you at Cowie's Hill as we support all of the 19,000 runners that are taking part in this year's Comrades Marathon. Thank you, Polly. And if I were you at home, I'd start tweeting using that hashtag, Coca -Cola, hashtag gold moment for these Coca-Cola gold moments. Those hampers are quite cool. Uh, some of them have Coca-Cola fridges, etc. as we see the Shongololo Express coming in here, Alec. Yeah, the old mutual Shongololo Express um, coming in fast and furious with all of these athletes. You know, these athletes are still running good times. These are not your regular, you know, just go out to the door for a job. These people have trained really hard. Look at this group coming in Helen. Well there's, a, there's the bus conductor for the 11 hours and he's done a fantastic job because uh, he's brought this huge huge bunch of people many of them it will be their first comrades they would have depended on him they would have listened to him sort of say as he's saying now stop stop he's trying to regroup all the people and they've still got like five six minutes to spare often we just see them like rushing and it's just a bit heartbreaking but uh, well done to these guys that do take all these athletes under their wing and just give them the confidence they, they pace them correctly and I mean that is the big challenge for most runners is uh, just to get that pacing right yeah, Alec, earlier also you mentioned some of the sponsors, Ola, Netbank, Gold Mutual, and uh, of course the apparel sponsor for Comrades is New Balance, and a New Balance combined award-winning fresh foam for Comrades 2016, fresh foam cushioning technology, I should say, with the much-anticipated 2016 Comrades Shoe Series to give runners the best in premium performance running with the Comrades Fresh Foam 1080. A suggested retail price of 2,299 rand to steal for that. And uh, the Comrade Fresh Foam 1080 is a South African inspired design with bespoke coloring and aesthetics to celebrate the 91st Comrade, not to be repeated. Get it now at uh, leading sports retailers, Total Sports, Sportsman's Warehouses and uh, leading key independent sports stores. That was a bit of a mouthful, but that New Balance shoe is actually something to, to behold. Well, as another bus comes through, I can tell you the New Balance shoes are good. They used to sponsor the athletes when I used to have the Max Africa program. So thanks to them for sponsoring Comrades as well. But uh, all of these people, jubilant, they've come in well under the cutoff, as Helen mentioned. I think one of the reasons is it says a lot about the conditions today. I think the conditions were perfect for Comrades. It wasn't too cold in Peter Marisburg. It never got too hot. There was no real wind out there, just perhaps a very tiny little breeze. And we've seen some great performances throughout the day at the top of the field and at all of the relative cutoffs. Helen mentioned uh, the, the silver medal, the Bull Rowan medal, and now we're seeing it here again for the bronze.
Wel, elf uur, baie na bij vijf minuten om te gaan voor die elf uur afsnijpunt is natuurlijk die bronsmedaille afsnijpunt hier voor die atleten. En daarna tussen elf en twaalf uur is die Wik Kleppen medaille. Hier die atleten baie, baie blij dat hulle de tijd bereik het. Nog een groen nummer wat ons daar sien inkom. En uh, voor baie atleten is een redelijk een groot groep. Want als het twee uur tussen die bolrouwen en die bronsmedaille afsnijpunt, die atleten daar van Indië. En uh, atleten wat baie ver gereis het om die Comrades Marathon hier te kom hardloop en hy maak klaar binnen daar die 11 ure en uh, soveel verskillende redes hoe kom mense hier hardloop as sien die Indiese atleet daar in die achtergrond en uh, uitstekend vir die atlete gemakkelijk binnen die uh, binnen die 11 ure ons gaan nou na Udo Karelse toe en uh, Udo, I believe you've got a very special guest there, down there with you at the finish special guest indeed now we we've got of course with me Cory van Sale former South African cricketer but also now general manager of cricket South Africa ex verbaas that hierdie jaar jou eerste comrades is Cory first one and uh, it's been a great experience i mean it's, it's a long way to go i've done two two oceans but this is this is a long way to go but it was actually wonderful and uh, my two mates they were around with me they uh, they just sort of kept me back the first half and then said i can go so uh, they helped a lot now, now i'm going to play devil's advocate here that that long runs will clear the mind of the last two world cups that we've had right hey I tell you what, I'll think about that in the week again. Listen, well done. Fantastic. You're going to be back next year. Oh, definitely. Fantastic. Cory Van Sale, thank you very much. Back to you guys. Well, Uda, I'm watching that clock there behind you as we get closer and closer to this bronze medal cutoff. And uh, for many of these runners, not the ones in picture now, this will be heartbreak. But if you're not getting close to at least being outside the stadium right now, Big T, uh, see you've joined us here. It's, uh, it's getting very close to another heartbreak moment in Comrades. And this is it's part of this race. It's so much elation and heartbreak and just human drama playing itself out. That's why I was here on time before you guys closed me hours <laughs> anyway. So... But I think it's, it's a very wonderful moment indeed where in everybody's waiting for the cut of time, 11 hours, 16.30. Um, you could imagine, you know, for people who uh, were cut before, way back around 10 o'clock, that was something else. Yeah, these cutoffs along the way are really tough. And let's also remember that the uh, comrades' cutoff, the final cutoff, was 11 hours for you know perhaps 85 percent of the comrades marathons only when we had the big celebration some years back did they extend it and and i think that's one of the reasons you asked earlier arno you know why the big field and so forth and perhaps that extra hour makes it more believable for some people to achieve and sometimes you have to believe you can achieve it before you're going to attempt to get off the couch and you know maybe that extra hour is doing something but this is a special medal for most people the bronze medal yeah certainly because like you said for many years this was the last medal you could get before they added that big clapham uh, for the the 11 to 12 hour cutoff and uh, sometimes a bit controversial some people believe they should go back to 11 hours but uh, of course comrades started with a 12 hour cutoff we went to 11 hours and now we're back at the 12 hours and a very very big portion of the field will finish in the next hour in that Vic Clapper medal well as a former runner I respect the people who finish in the next hour but I can tell you what these people who finish they get special recognition from families whose fathers or grandfathers or mothers or grandmothers have done the comrades if you've gone beyond 11 and the old man went sub 11 believe me <laughs> you're going to pick up flat <laughs> <laughs> certainly and uh, they've got another minute and 15 seconds to go and athletes streaming across this finish line some of them look fresh as daisies like they haven't done anything today and of course others not looking as great and again this race shows you the difference between if it's your day or not your day, it can make a big difference. Well, you see the man here just after the finish line gesturing to people to come across. 25 seconds to go here and they're being encouraged by athletes that have already made it. And uh, you can see all shapes and sizes coming across this finish line. 15 seconds to go now before the another heartbreak moment. These athletes are pushing, they're giving it all just like the elite finishers. Four, six, uh, five, four, three, three. 
two, one. one. There we and go. There's over. the gun. And our first Vic Clapper medal crosses uh. the finish line there. <laughs> An elation for the last bronze medal winner and uh, maybe a little bit of disappointment and heartache, but they still get that Vic Clapper medal for the people who missed that cutoff. Just imagine, just imagine being cut off in just a mere second. I think uh, that's quite disappointing. But obviously, I think uh, you, you should know as an athlete that, okay, this is the time that you're running and you're running against that cut of time. You know, the one thing is about Comrades Marathon, though, is it's not a mat to mat race. It's about, yep. you know, or when you cross the start line, it's when the gun goes. So how many of these people who missed about one or two or three seconds are saying to themselves, it took me how many minutes to cross that that start line? I should have got a little bit closer to the front, but there's, of course, then the seeding you have to get into, or you have to get there earlier. I mean, a person could have just stood two meters in front and could have had that bronze medal. Yep. The back of the H seeding batch, which is the final seeding batch, number H or eight seeding batch there, um, they took 10 minutes to cross the start line. So, and, and you know, at the end, the cutoffs are brutal, but when you get to a Lion Park cutoff, to make up that time in, in 16 minutes, although they're a bit more generous, of course, um, it's so difficult for these runners. But when you miss it just like that, you're wondering, couldn't I have given one or two steps faster somewhere along this race? But uh, before we get your answers to this, gentlemen, we need to go down to Udo, and uh, Udo's got another guest for us. So, the man who's just made it over the line with a penultimate cut of the day as the gun went off. Moodley from Kwadukuza, how do you feel about making it for uh, that medal? Hey, very happy. We are like my 21st birthday. Now, I don't know if you know this, but when you lifted your eyes and saw there was about six seconds left, those eyes were going crazy. Tell me what was going on in the head. I told you, no, I must make it. If I don't, then it's something. Now, you're 62, be honest. When's the last time you ran that fast? Uh, uh, in 2009. Love it, love it. 20 comrades later, well done. You've grabbed yourself another medal and, of course, uh, avoiding the uh, final cutoff of the day. But not everybody makes it. Right, Lindani? All right, so while the lady that didn't make it, the last one, let me take you through this. Five seconds, you're coming through that corner. Three seconds, you're trying to get faster, you're not getting there. One second, the gun goes, you haven't made it. How, how did you feel? Uh, disappointed, but I'm glad I'm finished. This was your third one? Yeah. What happened in the other two? The first one I did in 10.35, and the last one was an up run. I did it in 10, 4, 11, 14. And I know next year you're going to be running from Durban to Peter Marisburg. What are you expecting there? Um, whatever happens, I'm happy to finish. Michelle. Uh. Michelle. <laughs> All right, so, so that is the story of the day. Final hour, we'll have to see what will unfold. Thanks, Lindani. Mr. Mr. Moodley there knows what it feels like to get a bronze medal. He's got 18. That's number 19 for him. He also knows what it feels like to miss that cutoff. He's also got two Vic Clapham's to his name. And uh, the other athlete that finished there, Michelle Lodges. And uh, she, as we said, that was, this was her third comrade. And uh, she's also tasted both sides of that heartache where she's also had a bronze. And this is her second Vic Clapper medal. And uh, amazing to see the diversity, the camaraderie again on uh, this comrades race. But of course, I think, uh, like we said, we're still celebrating the Africa Month. I mean, Africa Month. So I think they're really coming tied with that. And of course, some different brigadiers uh, where in people are showcasing, uh, you know, the traditional, you know, attires and uh, their regalias. And that's one thing that we always applaud. We have seen uh, this guy from France, and I think he has been putting on of oh, this regalia. That's quite wonderful indeed. And uh, like I said earlier on, that uh, when we um, are in an African state or African co continent, we need to move forward and really support each other with, and because we are a diverse continent, so to say. Yeah, natuurlijk. Africa is ons continent en ons is in Zuid-Afrika so gediversificeerde land en is so goed om het hier te zien. Verschillende mensen, verschillende achtergronden en allemaal wat saamspan op die lang pad tussen Pieter Maritzburg en Durban vandaag. En uh, Kaiser Chiefs ondersteuner ook daar en hierdie atlete wat allemaal klaar maakt tussen 11 en 12. En die grootste gedeelte van die veld wat nou gaan klaar maakt, so wat die helft van die veld, omtrent 7000 atlete wat nog steeds moet die die wetloop voltooi and uh, they gaan die week clap a medal medalje kry. En uh, onthou natuurlijk op Twitter hashtag #comrades2016 ook Instagram en uh, hou daai boodskappe aan die kom.
Dikaledi, nice to welcome you here. You spent some time up in the chopper today. You're back down on the ground. I know I you've been on the ground for a while, but, <laughs> but I haven't spoken to you since you were way know, up in the sky. What, what do you prefer, having your feet firmly on the ground or, or being right up there? I will tell you, I don't know, she doesn't feel like she's with us now here. <laughs> she's still I'm feeling happy up here. here. I'm happy in land. I can't, I can't deal with it on air. But it was, it was a great experience, like I said before. It was, it was one of those moments that everybody needs to run a comrade marathon. So I did mine this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's how excited I am. <laughs> Well, absolutely awesome and uh, again as we see all shapes and sizes and uh, dress codes tutus things coming across you know big t sorry you had something to say and of course i wanted to go to to, to jamali leto wakari's tweet he said i'm not much a runner but i'm inspired by the crowd they have to start and they will finish hashtag 2016 comrades it's quite wonderful indeed for people to say we're still watching we're still watching we're still there uh, with you guys you know you often see uh, kids getting up and watching their favorite tv show or star Star Wars or something and they they dress up in all the regalia and have the lightsabers <laughs> we've had some tweets of people who said you know it's been a tough day for them sitting on the couch but dressed in full running gear <laughs> while supporting the athletes on especially the road especially listening to the voices as well don't forget <laughs> to put you there guys yeah no of course and then they have the you know sitting on the couch with your new balance shoes on oh, your, your running kit and, you know? and just supporting and that's it's <laughs> awesome to hear because like we said earlier this is a race for South Africa for supporters for runners for viewers at home it's it's for everybody the good thing about free state is that uh, it's a it's a happy province as we speak big t because david katev is from is my homeboy is from free state is <laughs> from kronstadt he won this and uh, it, it was not i know i know with you guys when i was listening from up there you you've been saying he's got the chance he's got the chance and that chance came he even made a new time of course i think you you, you now tempt me to say um you have got um, Ludwig Mamamulu, he comes from Limpopo. After me? <laughs> you, you have got, uh, no, no, I know. You have got Rufus Porto, he comes all the way from Limpopo. So, yeah, I'm not sure about, um, uh, I know, but um, we are quite proud about these uh, athletes. But I think overall, it's not about uh, where you come from, but I think as South Africans, this is one way um, that I've been always saying that, uh, you know, more to see South Africans in big numbers making the top 10, to me, you know that satisfies me yeah and of course from all over the place i mean we, we mentioned all these provinces and cities etc and the majority of comrades runners still come from Gauteng, followed by kuzulu natal yeah. and then obviously everywhere else so you can claim those guys i will just claim the top two women shane bosman and uh, and caroline and Vistman, from, from my neck of the woods so uh, you know while we do that zolani bongo is itching Nobody. to get into my seat so i'm going to get out of it and uh the lady maybe give us some more insights while we wait for zolani to uh, take my place here how shall I have a little bit of 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 a um, well, and as I grow, yes, I will live a thousand lives. Will somebody pick me up and drop me?
Pucho show ya rena ya makhaula khai yona e. Na ke khola go ifi yo Nelson Mandela a ile a gololwa go yona ka 1990 ma to me. Show le monna yo motelele. Bo a bere suthu bo farilwe ke mama o ini. Le sere ra ma pros. Ke go ba botse Victor Fester. Ya na mo dumu. Botse bo mo. O jwa ka. O shate wa tshobela FM. Shati, what's the Willoughby TV show? What does it mean to be African? Is it hope? A dream? A desire to share ourselves, our mastery, with the world? Or is it that we carry our sacrifice willingly? That with every step we take, we draw closer to something bigger. We are more than just an airline. We are African first. We are a proud carrier of its dreams. The sum of its unlimited potential. A partner to everyone who yearns to take Africa to the world. South African Airways celebrates Africa Month. Bringing the world to Africa, taking Africa to the world. I've worked really hard to get here. It's a commitment to excellence in everything I do. Getting to the top means reaching higher every day. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas. Because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Enjoy the perfect balance of health and taste with the new Five Roses Green Tea range. Ready to go darker? Rimmel's new Volume Colorist Mascara, the lash tinting phenomenon. A lash tint complex makes bare lashes darker in two weeks, so lashes are always dressed to kill, with and without mascara. In an instant, lashes are volumized with jet black impact. New Volume Colorist Mascara with Lash Tint Complex from Rimmel London. Get the London look. Rimmel London's Color Precise Eyeliner. Rimmel's new Felt Tip Liner in High Intensity Shades for precise, perfected lines that last all day. Get the London look. Welcome back. You're watching SABC Sports Live broadcast of the 91st running of the Comrades Marathon. Our runners have less than 50 minutes uh, if they want to achieve their finishers medal and they've got 50 minutes uh, to arrive here at the grass at Sahara Kingsby to be able to get that Vic Clapham medal. Of course, the final cutoff is at half past five. Not only have we had two champions today, Shane Bosman as well as David Khateve, but you can also be a winner. Stand a chance to to win 1,000 rounds worth of airtime. Very, very easy. You just got to answer this simple question. How long has Old Mutual been a part of the Comrades Marathon? There, that question was up for you. Just A, B, or C. Speaking about Old Mutual, they've been giving us the opportunity to win today. And a little earlier on, before we actually had the 11-hour gun cut off, we saw a great big shongololo coming across the finish line. Now, that is something that we've seen for the very first time here at the Comrades Marathon. You know, in ultra distance running, we've seen it in the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon, but for the first time, it was part of the Comrades. So joining me is the head of a brand at Old Mutual, Karen Thomas, and a man that you know well, Bruce Fordyce. We've heard your voice the whole day. But something that I don't think a lot of people know, the very first Shongololo you were part of. So we stole the idea of the Shongololo from a race in San Francisco called the Bay to Breakers. It's run over, I think, about 15 kilometers. And they have a whole section designed for people dressed as centipedes. And the rules are very clear. There have got to be six of you there. And they've got to all wear the same outfits. And the, and the centipede has to wear the, weigh the same amount. And then they sprint against each other at, through this race. And so a couple of my friends, Franklin Stern from Cape Town, Elliot Schwartz, a couple of others, we got together, Alan, Alan Robb, we got together and we decided we would build the South African equivalent of a centipede. It would have to be a Shongalolo, it couldn't be a centipede. And we would be more than ridiculous and push it through the old mutual two oceans. And so 56 Ks was the challenge. 
the, the, the centipede we built, the Shongololo we built, was phenomenally heavy. It was designed by a guy who, who flies model aeroplanes and it was made of fabric. It weighed a ton. We had dealy boppers on the front and we had a little uh, bicycle horn to get people out the way. Bam, 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 so we could get them out the way. And there were six of us and we had matching uh, old mutual legs. There we go, you can see. We had the, the same tights on so that they were in the correct colors. And we ran the 56 case uh, old mutual two oceans on several occasions. It nearly killed us doing it. So not for one moment did we think that we would ever be stupid enough to do the Comrades Marathon in. We raised quite a lot of money for charity. We had a lot of fun. We landed up on a lot of intravenous trips afterwards because of the stress <laughs> of running it. Friendships were tested. And then it gradually faded away because the novelty was gone. And I believe John Mitchell from Benoni Northerns took over the idea and then had this insane idea to take it to the Comrades Marathon. In our defense, it is now a state of the art. It is very, very, it's like a racing machine. <laughs> lightweight, and they rotate and, a bit. And, and did you see that wonderful slow-mo they had when they showed us some yeah. visuals of a little earlier on? They had them slow-mo. They almost looked like uh, was, stallions in the Vodacom in July. They've got a squad, you know? It's a little <laughs> bit like modern-day rugby. They call people off the bench who then take over. And so, whereas in our day, it was six men okay. good and strong, and we went the whole way and poor old Franklin my mate had to run behind me and then we had to go from shortest to tallest and I remember when we came down the finishing straight at UCT Alan Robb who was the tallest and at the back he was in the sixth centimeter uh, segment he suddenly caught up with me so the Shongalola was curved u-shaped because he said there's no way I'm allowing Fordyce to go across the finish line of you know, the two oceans ahead of me so yeah we Okay, Karen, finally you can get a word yeah, in. <laughs> Why did Old Mutual decide that, you know what, actually, we're going to support this idea of actually having a Shongalolo for the very first time here at the Comrades? So, yeah, last year was our first time to sponsor Comrades, and we made the decision then we need to bring the Shongalolo back. So Bruce has spent over a year training for it, and we are very exciting. It's still pretty tough, eh? Believe me, it's not pretty tough. The comrades is tough. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dressed like an idiot is even tougher. <laughs> <laughs> How proud were you that you actually saw it coming across the finish line within 11 hours? It was phenomenal. And I had the opportunity to see them from the air earlier. But we trained hard. They trained at the Old Mitchell Lomi Dam. And they trained at the Old Mitchell Sumeda Marathon last year. So they put in a lot of hard work to get to this point. Uh, well, Bruce told us all about the history and just how heavy their Shogololo was when, when they did it so many years ago. Just how heavy is that structure that the runners are actually running in? Well, it's pretty aerodynamic now. But I tell you, after 12, 11 hours, it gets very heavy. Those skin left on your shoulders is it grabs. The guys are phenomenal. They are so passionate. They just love it. And they're all development athletes. So we, uh, as you say, it's for charity. We bring them down, we cover all their costs, and they just really, the passion's amazing. Uh, we they see those visuals now. It's slow mode, it's completely dramatic. Tell us a little bit about the cause that you're raising money for. Tell us a little bit about the cause and the money that you're raising through charity with the Shongolo. Yeah, so, so, so this is absolutely for charity. And we also have the Old Meet Your More Than Yourself platform, which allows people to run for more than themselves. And they can choose whichever charity they want to support. So it's very exciting, all for, all for a good cause. Lovely stuff. It's certainly been a wonderful vibe here at the Sahara Kingsmead. Head of brand at Old Mutual, Karen Thomas, thank you very much for coming into our on-site studio. And Bruce, I know you and I will chat to wrap things up a little bit later on. All right, that's uh, Bruce Fordyce as well as uh, Karen Thomas. Just off of screen, we've got Caroline Bussman, a lady who had the entire nation gasping, ooing and eyeing. We're going to be chatting to her in just a short while coming up. Stay with us. Thank you, Valence. I will like a cool look and go Sanza now. Chogam Nandi Gakulu, Siakuba, Galogum, Jalos of the Tower, Napaya, Zanz in Baleki, Gusel, Krugu, Himilens, Yakat and Gogo, and Noko Gutala, Utetum, Bichoka, Pagaloko, Gabonagala, Nabatalam Fondin, Nabati, Asuzu Yagalendo, Singa Kanga, Siofike Pandin. It's been a, a, a very interesting since the whole morning, the whole day, but basically, we had one big moment today. 
Well, indeed, uh, when you look at it from the um, athletic or either athlete perspective, you know what? They don't worry about the pains that they're going to be able to incur when they would be riding towards the finish. But all that matters most is that they are participating in this race. And that's quite important to them. You know what? That's why other people will say, whether I'm not getting any medal, whatever you mentioned, the bronze, the silver, the gold, but then all that matters to me is when I have finished and I have crossed that line. You know, uh, that's the, the, the one thing that just reminded me is when Valen spoke about uh, Carolina. Uh, I was one of those people that felt like going down and held her to that the last three Ks so that she finishes. Not because anything else but because she pushed from the very first minute and it was you could tell she wanted so much and with the injuries and everything she managed though from the key i think it was it was 12 or 13 k's from 13 k's to the third k case she's been pushing with pains but she went until where she couldn't finish it but she, she made a point that she became the second one the gold medal it's still it's all about the endurance it's all about commitment it's all about passion it's all about the love of what you do and that's exactly what we witnessed today because uh, really um it, it was just a bit it was just unfortunate that uh, uh, caroline uh, suffered what she suffered but at the end of the day credit must go to the winner at the end of the day but then talking about caroline valen is standing by with caroline well, thank you very much, as we and to our commentators. Every time from 12 kilometers, when the cameras actually went back to what was happening in the women's race, and they got to see a lady that had been leading the women's race from the start, and they saw that she was walking and really, really struggling every time that she would go from a walking gait and actually start to run again, the entire crowd here at Sahara Kingsmead would go up and cheer for her. And that was the drama that was unfolding and she lost her close to 12 minute lead over Shane Bosman with two kilometers to go as she came into the CBD. It was high drama all the way. Congratulations on a very brave run today, Caroline. Thank you. It was it was definitely my toughest race that I've ever done, but I'm just so happy that I finished. I just kept thinking, please don't let my legs fail me. I just want to finish today, so I'm just glad that I finished. <laughs> What actually happened? Because, you know, before this race actually began, you were the lady to beat and you were in the form of your life and everyone said the Comrades Marathon is Caroline's to lose. You know, I think it's just the Comrades Marathon and that's how I felt before. Like anything can happen on Comrades Day and you just have to be so grateful for what you get. And about 60 k into the race, I started cramping. It started in my quads, and then it moved into my calves as well. And I was hoping that um, that I'd be able to just up, up mental power <laughs> just by thinking positive. But it just got too much. My legs wouldn't carry me anymore. So. Tell us what happened here. I mean, this bike incident, people are going to be speaking about this bike incident for quite a while. What exactly happened? Um, so what happened was I started cramping and my legs wanted to buckle. I wanted to grab some water from the tables to spray them over my quads. My legs weren't really cooperating with me. I didn't really realize that the bikes were so close to me and next thing they went into me and I realized I just caused this massive accident so I felt quite bad about it but <laughs> but yeah it was <laughs> it was just one of those things I suppose. <laughs> What did it feel like? I mean, obviously we're seeing some visuals now of when you finally did get to cross the finish line and like a true champion, you went to hug your teammate, Shane. But what did it feel like when she actually finally did pass you? You know, to be honest, when I was cramping so early on and I kept thinking, I'm just gonna be strong in my mind and keep going. And then there was a point where my legs just buckled under me and I landed up on the ground, not the motorbike accident another time. And I was on the ground and I didn't know if my legs would even lift me up and they did and I realized then that you know I thought I'm I'm just gonna keep moving forward I'll be happy to come in with the sub 12 hour bus if I need to I expected that all the top 10 girls would pass me at that point 
So I was anticipating it the whole way and she ran a better race today. She's the champion today and I'm just really proud of her for her race. I mean, cramping from 60 kilometers, you're 29 kilometers out. It's a long way to go in so much pain. It was, it was difficult, but you know what? This is part of what the Comrades Marathon is about and I just knew that I wouldn't quit. Even if I had to sit down and try and let the camp, camp recover, if I couldn't keep going, I wasn't going to quit. I was going to finish today. So. So I'm actually just lucky that I still managed to come in second. I'm very grateful for that. Having spoken to Lindsay and having spoken to yourself, I know that the plan was to have quite a conservative race up front and to go through Drummond around 3.15. You came blitzing through there in under 3.08. You think you went out a little yeah, too fast? Lindsay gave me two plans. I was a little bit nervous beforehand that I wouldn't be able to do the sub six hour one. But when I started running, I felt really, really comfortable and really good. And I thought I made a decision about three or four Ks in. I saw what my splits were and I realized how good I was feeling. And I thought, you know what? Today I'm just going to take the risk and I'm going to go for it. And it didn't pay off. But sometimes you just have to go for something bigger than yourself. And if it doesn't pay off, at least you can say you tried. So I tried unsuccessfully, but at least I tried. <laughs> So you wouldn't do anything differently? You would still, if in hindsight, if you could go back and run today all over again, you still would have done it exactly the same way? Yeah, given how I was feeling at that time, I would have done the same thing. And I would have, obviously, I would hope for a different result. But I'm also just really happy for Shonae. I'm really proud of her, and I'm glad that she had her moment and that she gets to be a Comrades champion as well. And have you already started thinking about 2017? Um, at the moment, I'm just thinking about how I'm going to walk tomorrow. <laughs> but, but definitely, you know what, I love this race. There's something so special about it. And the fact that everybody was so supportive when I was walking and cramping and trying my best, people were screaming for me, they were cheering me on. And I was digging deep and giving it everything I could. But just to have people that are so supportive when you're at your worst, when you're suffering at your worst, not turn their back on you, but to rather encourage you. I mean, it's just such an incredible atmosphere. Well, you said it perfectly. 2016 is Shane's race. She is the champion. But there is no doubt that you remain uh, Tandeka. Somebody nicknamed you Tandeka, the loved one. And seeing the screaming from the crowd, you really get that sense. And I think you're going to have this kind of support next year once again. So congratulations on a brave effort today. And we look forward to seeing you race Thank in the you future. So much. That's Caroline Bosman. She ended a second in the women's race behind Shane. Bosman, fabulous for South Africa that we had two women first and second once again. I think we're really getting used to it now and may it long continue when it comes to South African athletes and also such wonderful role models such as Caroline as well as Shane. It was a brilliant, dramatic race in the women's event and also in the men's race where we had, of course, a record in the down run thanks to David Khatebe and we had second and third to previous down run champions setting PBs. It has been the most phenomenal day. And these athletes that are coming across the finish line here at Kingsmead, this is their moment of glory. And they're as much winners as the front runners. There's still a couple more minutes, just over half an hour to go before that final gun cuttle. So let's go back to our commentators. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Kosazana, and thank you, Nakuweke Tandega. Well, I've got Big T here with me, and I've got uh, Digeledi Makungwan. I just want to ask you, Digeledi, did you see that lady called um, Shigeti? Korate Shigeti? Yes, yes. The, what's your, the, impre the, what's the your impression of her? <laughs> <laughs> Being a mother to daughters, it, it brings back the memories. The Mickey Mouse lady was always here, the Japanese lady. Uh, is, she's, she's always running. She's, she's, she's always at the comrade and wearing that same attire. Having some fun indeed. Well, just over a little more than half an hour for the final cutoff here at uh, Devon at uh, the King's Mead Cricket Stadium. We are just about to call it a day, but then 
we're still having some fun because the race is still on. Everybody enjoying themselves and everybody will be rushing to make it the cut. And this is Shiana Gemna now. We're going to get along. We're going to be again. The Apollo and the Apollo will be one team in Pakistan. She does the same. The court to get go back to the shallow for the figure. We'll let a cool get Wabo. The seven the Sana Kakul. We could hang in the live of Mangani. So to get it to my Kongwana. Who's a Kuba Gabuna? I get a big tea. And Bakam, go back again again with 20 local. Another shift where Katibane, Rikatibane Kesa, our Salaho, Uriba Kurti was also cheaper than Andrade, a car, Banama Koti, Uriba Falion, or half past five. In the general chipping a child of Vala to Pesla Chotone, Banama do Katra, a Kanamato Tumuri, Abadu Tumuri, Samochawana, Medal of Pesela, Pesi and the Ramas Rokima, our scores are from Nambiri, Gatan Chipping, Pesi and Kutanazori, a Wunava Jeneva, the world is rich in Brandalate, his is to go ruined out of one sort of Nibafi Bane, but the Falu and Ganda Khan, but the Konga Fuka. Vashika Kachi was in the Chabacha Queen. Thank you very much, uh, Big T and uh, uh, Sulani Gongo and uh, Digi Lady Mukhumwana will remain for uh, a little while as we edge closer to the uh, 12 hour cutoff. Uh, 11 hours and 30 minutes now, just half an hour to go for uh, runners to complete the 91st Comrades Marathon. Looks like uh, the gentleman had taken uh, a bit of a fall, but we'll be uh, closing out this race in the next half hour or so. The broadcast will continue for another hour. Balin currently standing by in studio and will continue to bring you uh, interviews and uh, analysis of the race and the day that has been. But the uh, lights now coming on at uh, Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. And as these runners have spent, literally, they, they, they set off in the dark. And now they are finishing in conditions in which the light has faded, the sun is set, and the stadium lights are uh, needing to be turned on. It's been a very long day for the runners that will be coming in between now. Alec Riddle, who joins me in the commentary position, and indeed uh, the 12-hour cutoff. Yeah, it's going to be a tough final uh, 29 minutes here as we count it down to the final cutoff uh, for the 12 hour uh, marathon. And let's just put that into context. Um, what, 12 hours is, is uh, what, 720 minutes, 90 kilometers? That's about eight minutes per kilometer. Well, that still works, is it? Lynn? Eight minutes per kilometer? We'll, we'll accept it. It's, okay. It's a long day. It's probably close to that. And um, yeah, so you can imagine these people are running pretty good, <laughs> eight minutes per kilometer to run the uh, the 12 hour cutoff. Uh, Dwayne, I hope you're not going to pick me out and say I'm wrong, but uh, hopefully Helen will get a calculator out and check. I think it's too late in the day to be calculating uh, efficiently when it comes to uh, mathematics. That said, uh, these, these runners have all put in uh, no doubt months and months of qualifying. I know how many friends, family members who've uh, always wanted to complete the Comrades Marathon, many have done so, but the training that is involved is just uh, phenomenal as well. Uh, not the elite runners, I'm talking about the average person who starts as a Sunday runner that gets the idea inspired by the Comrades Marathon just because of uh, the magnitude of the race that it actually is and uh, and to decide I'm going to do this race put in the hours and uh, and get going tackle this Comrades Marathon and to complete it just a significant achievement the South African flag uh, waving proudly on the shoulders of the runner making his way to the finish line now Susiso Mustang the uh, flag on his shoulders Susiso Mustang coming in a respectable time just over 11 and a half hours the Sassel Running Club a big fist pump just shows you what it means to uh, to many of the runners of course to finish the Comrades Marathon absolutely and they're uh, coming in and i think it's this time of the day we're getting lots of messages of um you know people that are inspired and i've just got a message apparently i inspired isla in 2002 she's done it twice since and uh, we look to her forward to her being inspired to get yet another run under her belt to make it four so there's the challenge for for you isla so um but lots of runners coming through and uh, they're quite comfortable finish time and I just spoke to somebody who had seen three very big buses go through the uh, uh, last mat down out there in Sherwood and they had plenty of time the guy said he thought that all these buses would make it and uh, full of novices and uh, enjoying this experience. Yeah, you know, I grew up in uh, KwaZulu Natal and watched, uh, stood on the side of the road as Derek Price came, came past uh, two years in a row to win the Comrades. 
that probably inspired uh, me to do one day want to do it. But Helen, um, I know you're a KwaZulu Natal lady, but what inspired you to do this great race? I was actually living in Pretoria <laughs> and I just arrived in the country and it was just what she did. I didn't have a clue about uh, marathons and it was just, you know, everybody just pulled along and you just you just got it caught up in it. And it wasn't the magazines, it wasn't all the digital information, it was just it was just what you did. So well, do you that was it. Do you remember the days in South Africa where if you said you were a runner, the next question was, well, um, how, have you done the Comrades? And Absolutely. if you hadn't done the Comrades, you weren't classified as a runner. So this is uh, the big one for many. And uh, nice to see Colleen de Rook uh, come to South Africa, family rich in history of the Comrades Marathon. She uh, came at 52 to do her first and got the seventh gold to equal her brother's uh, seventh gold in 1995. Well, the floodlights are on here at Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead, and standing under the floodlights, having gotten his tan all day, Udo Karlsson is at the finish line. I've uh, had quite a bit of a tan today, but you know, uh, Dwayne and, and the rest of the team, this really is the real comrades as we're wrapping up here towards 12 hours because every single runner has their own inspiration. And I'm standing here with Mukhari. I'm looking at the message that you've put out here today. Talk to us about why you had to run today and who it's a tribute to. Yeah, so yesterday I was, we were burying my grandmother who raised me up. I was only four months old. So I had to decide whether I, don't, I run or I don't run. So I decided to run in her memory. Now, look, you should be in a period of mourning along with the rest of your family. Yes. But you felt compelled. I need to get to KZN. I need to wake up in Peter Maritzburg. I need to run to Durban. I actually attended the funeral yesterday in the northwest in a place called Suiza And then after that, I had to drive for about 400 k's. I had to do it in three hours because I had to check in to catch my flight at five, five o'clock and be here today. Now, I'm looking at this Matunyane. May her soul rest in peace. What, what do you think she's thinking right now, wherever she is? I think she's very proud of me. I love it. I love it. There we go. There's the picture again in living memory of grandma, mother, Matonyane, 1929 to 2016. She's, she's smiling down from heaven. Beautiful. I think she is smiling. Ah. Thank you so much for your time, my friend. There we go. Grab it and go and grab your medal. Let me just say hi to the people at home in Soiza and all my friends who supported me. Thanks a lot. That's what Comrades is all about. Back to you guys. Oh, that's just uh, an emotional story, certainly. And, uh, making his way from Northwest Province yesterday afternoon to uh, be running the Comrades Marathon here today and uh, for a good cause as well. But so many athletes have felt uh, the need over the years. Uh, I know Alan Robb's wife, having passed away as well, also thought about not running the race one year and ended up, uh, ended up deciding to run in, in her honour. It's uh, it's those sort of memories that so often happen. Is, uh, I think is, is that the Polish flag that's uh, coming in around the shoulders of the that female athlete that's just making it into the uh, finish line. But uh, there's a lot of husband and wife teams that are coming in around uh, between ten and a half and uh, eleven and a half that we're starting to see uh, come in. Many of whom have uh, one one couple. It seemed that. Uh, he had run 27, she had run 23, saying 50 up, which is a pretty uh, impressive tally for uh, a husband and wife team. I was a bit worried about the one banner that said wife number one and husband number 10. <laughs> <laughs> we were hoping that that was the number of comrades. I was also hoping. Rather than relationship choices gone wrong. Uh, that might give a bad impression of what running can do to you, but uh, yeah, quite amusing. Indeed, but down uh, in the grass of Kingsmead Stadium, we've got Lindani and Bense. Well, Dwayne, uh, you were speaking about a lot of husbands and wives coming in. Well, I found myself a bride. How are you? Good and yourself? I'm good, thanks. So you ran with this veil from Marisburg to Durban? Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Eh? Why? It's, it's because I'm a bride. Can we open it? I kind of think it's just for ease my pain. Because when I run along the way, people they say, Bright, go, your husband is waiting for you at the finish. And that gives me the strength. And who, is this the husband? Yeah, yeah. Ah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Dwayne, before we start making some mismatches, it's back to you. <laughs> sure, well, we don't want any mismatches down to the uh, finish line. Some of the uh, local athletes, a Chatsworth uh, r r Athletic Club uh, member, Chatsworth Running Club, a couple of uh, runners that are making their way into the grass now of Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead. But uh, 
plenty, plenty bodies that are starting to pour into the grass now. And this is when, uh, this is when the people at the finish line really do start to. Uh, <laughs> Things are just a little bit, again, more and more running in memories of, uh, of certain individuals. But this is where the people at the finish line really do start to to do the most of their work. With a big Blue Bulls fan that's making his way into the uh, venue now. But it's, uh, what's amazing is just the uh, medical attention at the finish line. And you, when you consider that the, the actual medical attention here at the finish line, the medical station is over 70 doctors. It, it actually makes it the largest temporary medical facility in the world outside of a uh, conflict or disaster area. So uh, the Commons Marathon is a hugely significant uh, medical station here. And uh, there are plenty runners that actually do require medical attention. It just uh, seems to be a runner running in memory of somebody who may have passed away. Well, I think this year, though, we've been uh, quite fortunate still. We've still got 20-odd, or 20, just over 20 minutes, but um, we often see those stretcher carriers starting to get quite busy now, but um, compared to other years, I think it's pretty quiet, which is, which is great. It means uh, the athletes have sort of had pretty um, been able to hydrate themselves just to the right level but the thing that the runners will be sort of battling with now is it's been a long day for them nearly 12 hours the sun's gone down it actually starts to get a bit, ch bit chilly and they've got to also just make sure that they don't get cold when when they sort of are walking down the last few kilometers because uh, that can also cause a person a few problems but uh, these guys happy running well inside the uh, cutoff time and uh, they're going to be very relieved and celebrate tonight. Well, just bear in mind, we're just under 20 minutes to go. If we convert that to our projected time of an average of eight minutes per kilometre. It means that these athletes who are in the final two kilometres have a chance. If you're outside of that, you're probably in danger of missing out. And what's also important to bear in mind, more finishes in the last half hour than anywhere else. So it's very congested, a uh, lot of traffic, foot traffic that is. And of course, uh, very difficult to try and pass if you want to. So right now, you basically have to stay in the position. You come into the stadium and you enjoy it with the rest of them. And they're coming in fast and furious now. Absolutely fantastic to see these athletes coming in and uh, producing a great achievement for themselves. Some of them will have set a goal a year ago, some maybe longer. And they've come out here today and they've achieved it to get that finishers medal. And what a great achievement that is. Indeed, it's all about these uh, personal goals that have been set, but uh, these are some of the athletes that are, would have consumed nearly a ton of bananas on the day and nearly eight tons of oranges that have been available out on the route and uh, how many cubic litres of water that must have been consumed. The average runner that sweats out about uh, four and a half litres during the duration of a Comrades Marathon. This is, uh, this is taking an enormous effort out of the runners but so many that have managed to uh, pace themselves properly and will not be in the 15 to 20 odd percent who might not actually finish this race so they are coming into the stadium at the moment the uh, foot traffic as uh, Alec mentioned, is significant in the closing half hour of this race in particular. Well, Lindani and Ben, sir, you've got uh, another guest for us down at the finish line. Well, Dwayne, every corner of South Africa is represented. If you're from Pimville, you're also represented here. Yay! Congratulations, Tando. Thank you so much. Thank you. Medal number one in your last one, and uh, today you finished again. I finished again, yes. Were you happy with your time? Well, I am. I am happy. Because the last time I missed my down run with two minutes. Congratulations. Thank you. See you next year. Thank and someone we were very, very worried about. Uh, what do you mean worried? Very worried about. And worried? speaking of a couple of hours, was Quena. And, well, Quena has come in at 11.40, should I say. Quena. Oh, it's a whole SABC crew. So how was it, guys? It, it was lovely. It was nice. It was a good run. Uh, we enjoyed it. Um, it got tougher right at the end. The last 10 Ks or so were a bit hard, but we made it. The, the, the whole objective is to get sub-12. We did it. We made it. But it was not easy. By the way, I saw you guys at... Uh, Yes. yes, and you guys had coffee with me and you said you're still yeah, well yeah, within yeah. time. How was it? It was brilliant, but um, worth it. Um, it was a fantastic race. Uh, the weather was good, I think, this, this time around, but tough. But we're worried about you guys. Where were you for the last three hours? Hey, hey. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter where they were, but they are done, and they did make it within the time. Hello. With 
Uh, some of the uh, SABC employees, Gwen Marara Muabelo, you will uh, we'll recognize from presenting the TKO and indeed uh, football programs on SABC Sport, as uh, well as Aubrey Secchi, who works in the radio departments, uh, formerly for SAFM and now with Current Affairs. But uh, some more interesting hairdos and a lot of pink as a celebration for uh, many and indeed running in uh, remembrance or for causes, some charitable causes indeed. The cause, the pink drive has been significantly, um, well, many runners that have embraced the idea of the pink drive. But uh, Udo Karlsson as uh, another completed uh, finisher or finisher down at the uh, line. Well, Dwayne, here's a rhetorical question that I know you will know the answer to. Can you go anywhere in South Africa without fighting a Kaiser Chiefs fan? Mzondi Ishmael, why take your club's flag all over the course of uh, comrades? Yeah, but of course I like Kaiser Chiefs. I like Kaiser Chiefs very well. Anywhere I'm going, even in Cape Town and everywhere when I'm staying Free State, always I take this flag. When I'm going to work, I take this flag. I like Kaiser Chiefs. As from, uh, uh, I know about Soga. I like Kaiser Chiefs from... Uh, the, the time that we play the Shagangobo, uh, those old players that I, I love Kesa Shields. I love Kesa Shields very well. I, I'm sure secretly you love the result of the Netback Cup final yesterday as well, ne? Yeah, I'm happy that Pirates lose again. I'm so happy that Pirates lose again so that I can rest uh, very nice. Fine line between joy and misery, especially when it comes to the comrades. Now, Chiefs fan, off you go. Get your medal. Okay, thank Fantastic. You. Thanks so much. Here we go. Back to you guys. <laughs> Kaiser Chiefs fans uh, enjoying the fact that Orlando Pirates lost the, t the uh, Nedbank Cup last night. Supersport United victorious by three goals to two. And a former Chiefs coach, Stuart Baxter, of course, having coached Supersport United to victory. We got a quick break, and when we come back, the closing stages of the 2016 Comrades Marathon. Gateway to Space Exhibition is coming to South Africa. Explore the life-size Mir space station, full-sized models of the Sputnik satellite and lunar rover, see the Apollo capsule, sit in a space shuttle cockpit, and even touch a moonstone. Special family and school packages available. Tickets at CompuTicket. The Gateway to Space Exhibition, brought to you by Hayes Genoet, you and Drum. Excess acid is not the only cause of heartburn and indigestion. Sometimes stomach acid and contents rise and end up in the wrong place, causing pain. Let me demonstrate how unlike conventional antacids, Gaviscon soothes within three minutes, neutralizing excess acid and creates a protective barrier that keeps stomach acid and contents where they belong for up to two times longer. Stay on top of heartburn and indigestion with Gaviscon Plus. Well, it really is just throngs now that are entering the Sahara Stadium, Kingsmead at the moment. It is just so much footwork. People are literally queuing up to uh, try to squeeze their way in and trying to find their way over the uh, finish line as well in the closing stages and uh, garnering a little corner of space at the finish line. I believe Lindani and Benz has managed to find a little bit of space. Uh, Lindani, who you got with you? 
All right, so Dwayne, thank you very much. I've got a very interesting story. We've got a guy who ran to the comrades to run the comrades. But guess from where? Johannesburg. Baba, how are you still even walking? I'm very tired, but this was a very initiative because we're raising money for the dogs. We're raising money for the animals that are abusing the townships. So we were in the initiative, we call the 1010. So we run 10, 10, every 90 k's every day until you get to Comrade and you run the initial Comrade. So explain to me, from 10 days ago, what happened? Yeah, what happened? I ran. We started on Sunchiron. We finished at Delmas. Following day, we ran from Bedford. We finished at Fandavel Park. Fandavel Park, we ran up to Ritz. From Ritz, we went to Frankfurt. Frankfurt, we went to Harry Smith. And then we went to Beckville. And then we came and ran Comrade. All right. Uh, if you can still stand, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, 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 man. All right, Dwayne. I just hope, I just hope and hope. I should have asked him, in fact. I hope he's not running back to Joburg. Yeah, well, I tell you, this is where public transport or indeed transport of any form outside of your own blistered feet, no doubt, it comes in very, very handy. But there are a host of uh, individuals who, for charity reasons, of course, have made their way to the starting line in Peter Maritzburg on foot or some on bicycle from as far away as Cape Town that have uh, gone on to actually complete this Comrades Marathon. It's been a remarkable day. It's been an unforgettable, record-breaking day as well when you look back to the results that saw David Khadebe smashing the Comrades record. 5.18.19 is the new Comrades record, and Shane Bosman having uh, claimed her first Comrades win. As we enter the final 10 minutes now of the 2016 Comrades Marathon, it is nervous time for the runners in the final couple of kilometres. It really is about stretching yourself and uh, just trying to push to that finish line. There's a good percentage who won't go on and finish this race, unfortunately. But there are many who's entering the stadium now shouldn't have any concerns, bar some serious cramp. But uh, down at the finish line as well, it's uh, becoming increasingly packed with late finishes, or finishes uh, cutting it fine. Is Udo Carl, sir? Pressure, pressure, pressure indeed. Under 10 minutes left to the end. Now, Dwayne, some fathers disappear for the weekend. We have no idea what they get up to and where they go. Here's a dad who's doing it for his kids. Nabil Christians. Hi, yes, I'm being with my kids. Love you guys a lot. Love you, Nizar, Amar, Adlan, Shakir. Love you all. Now, now you, you're raising these kids to be runners them, uh, themselves. Yes, yes, they're all runners. He's PB 37 minus 10K. I love it. I love it. You see? It's a new, it's a new, a new um, PB for, for, for Cape Town. Fantastic. Nabil Christians from Strandfontein. To your kids, Daddy loves you. We know where he is. We'll get him home safely. Now you get on and go and get your medal, yeah? Fantastic. There we go. Daddy role models. Love it. Ten minutes to go. The cutoff is nearly here. Back to you guys. The cutoff indeed is uh, right around the corner. Eight and a half minutes to the cutoff here at Sara Stadium, Kingsmead. But what a story that is as well. And one of his sons does a uh, 37 minute 10K. He looked like still a teenager. That's uh, some serious prospect there in terms of running. Well, but it is. It's a lot of talent there. And I think after watching his dad today, it will just spur him on. Well, we can see that we've got just over eight minutes left. And we've just heard that there's. Uh, Two, over 2,000 people still out there on the road. So I think we're just going to see a solid mass of people pouring in onto the field. Yeah, we heard from Riaz uh, just uh, two minutes ago. With 10 minutes to go, there were 12,400 who had crossed the line. And there were some 2,400 who uh, were still out on the road having made it past the Sherwood cut cutoff. So 10 minutes to get in, 2,500 people. These We're going to have to see a bit more traffic than this if they're all going to get here. But yeah, everybody's finishing quite comfortably. As Helen mentioned earlier, not a lot of action for the, for the medics. Fortunately, it's been an absolutely fantastic day for the Comrades Runners. Some great achievements, some great personal achievements. People running for all sorts of reasons to try and prove to themselves they can do do something in memory of others to try and push the limits you name it they're out here trying their absolute best and we've seen some absolutely great action out here at the uh, comrades marathon well that those figures also indicate to us that um of about the 17,000, I think it was just under 18,000 people crossed the uh, the start mat in uh, peter maritzburg and um the count they've got of, of the people who have passed the last mat in Sherwood with six kilometers to go. So that means that there was probably about 3,000 people who uh, either didn't make the cutoffs at certain distances, the organizers, and quite wisely have said, well, if you can't get to this particular point at this time, we're going to have to sort of 
make you discontinue your race. You need to come back uh, next year. You won't make the finish line, and it's for your own safety. So, uh, yeah, about 3,000 people did that, but I'm sure they're going to be inspired and motivated to come back and give it another go next year. Yeah, in South Africa, it's particularly brutal in marathons and uh, two oceans, comrades, with these very strict cutoffs. But those are the rules that we work towards, and uh, those are the rules everybody knows and abides by. And that's what makes South African road running attractive and tough. But, uh, of course, the international marathons, you can al almost have all day to do a 42 kilometers. So a little bit easier in the big city marathons than it is, is here from Peter Maritzburg to Durban. And, uh, as we said, some remarkable achievements earlier today. Well, we're approaching the uh, time where the cutoff gun is uh, set to be fired. And, Helen Luca, you uh, you fired the cutoff gun at nine hours, uh, the Bull Rowan cutoff. And uh, that must have been a, a slightly emotional moment for, for you down at the line. Uh, and that wasn't even the cutoff line where the finishers won't get a finish time. They just get a different medal. They get a bronze medal. But, uh, but what was that experience like? Well, I'm stand I was standing there waiting for a few minutes and I was given my instructions, you know, how, you know, I would have to turn my back and I'd be told, you know, count down. And I found myself standing there looking down this sort of tunnel of runners and then I realized I couldn't do this. So I think I turned my back with about two minutes to go. I couldn't dread, you know, I dreaded the thought of seeing someone come around the corner and I'm pulling a, 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 a gun that says, oh, oops, sorry, you're not going to make it. So, yeah, I, I just, I protected myself from that emotional challenge. Well, talking about emotional challenges, there are a few of these athletes that are going to face uh, some really emotional and turbulent times in the coming minutes because uh, five odd minutes to go and there's a few that are moving at a pace too slow to actually make it to the finish line from here, Alec. Yeah, well, if they're not uh, outside the Hilton Hotel in Walnut Road right now, they're probably in dire straits. Uh, just four and a half minutes to go. But uh, lots of forces drive these people. As we saw earlier, the athlete uh, running in memory of his grandmother. Earlier, we saw Hal Snowman finish in a, in a good time, sub 10, uh, obviously running in memory of his uh, sister-in-law. But uh, some great performances, as, uh, as we said. And you know, the, the pride that these people take in trying to get across the line, they all want to be on the, on, on the television cameras and uh, hoping to get an interview, but the ones who are going to get the interview are the ones who finish in four minutes and just after four minutes from now. A winner never quits and a quitter never wins. That banner we actually saw at the uh, start line before sunrise. Of course, it's after sunset now, and uh, he's, uh, he's made it to the finish line, banner in hand, which uh, carrying something in your hands, I've, I've never been able to run like that. I, I, I don't know how people can actually run uh, throughout the race. Some get handed uh, placards and messages closer to the finish line and have the last little while to uh, to uh, carry some message or some banner or, or, or some placard across the line. But there are some exhausted bodies that are making their way into the stadium. Some looking remarkably fresh for having been out on the road for uh, going on 12 hours. But this 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 is uh, this is the emotive part now where runners from all ages all walks of life are desperately trying to reach oh and all <laughs> all wardrobes it seems as we saw somebody in a rather interesting outfit again rounding the corner and trying to make his way to the finish line before the the final gun is fired yeah you know it i think the finish line is a bit like a magnet though it's just drawing these people in to to run around the stadium to make it to the finish line they know that they've got less than three minutes these are the people who still got a chance of making it the ones just outside the stadium are in immense trouble right now but if anybody cramps it, they also could be in danger helen this is really really tough yeah this is a uh, tough moments now because uh, these people just have to really probably put in the hardest effort of the whole day you know they've probably had lots of walks been relaxed and um Hey, there's no time for that now. Let's head down and just run around this track until they cross that finish line. Yeah. Two so, minutes left. Yeah, just over two minutes. Uh, that's not very much time for these people. They've been averaging uh, eight minutes per kilometer, so 250 meters, which is probably what the track is. So if they're not inside the track now, they're almost out. And, um, yeah, it's going to be very, very tough for these people to get around the track. The ones in the home straight coming through, look how it's crowding. The officials are going to have a real job on their hands trying to push all these people through so that those coming down the finishing straight can still get across in time to get their medal. Yeah, they're tired, weary, but very elated.
Well, these runners, uh, there would be some serious relief. They'd be looking at their watches on their wrists. Hopefully, they would have synced with the uh, watch on the banner overhead. It's 90 seconds to go to the final cutoff. 12 hours of running that will have come to an end and so many runners have been struggling with cramp but many have looked fresh some are struggling needing medical attention at the finish line and this these are the heartbreaking stories the ones that have made it through every cut of point up to this point but just do not have the final little bit in their legs to drag themselves towards the finish line and this is the desperation there's a minute to go and the body says no she has done almost well she's 89 odd kilometers and on the grass now from charlo running athletics club in port lisbeth somebody trying to help her somebody potentially sacrificing a finishers medal of their own and that's the spirit of the comrades but we need more than one let's see if we can get another one wow there we go and whoa i don't think they're going to make it and the one lady has sacrificed potentially her own race to try and help the other well, those knees are buckling. Less than 30 seconds now, and this is this, the the most emotive part. She's being dragged over the line by those in the crowd, volunteers, fellow runners. But there are bodies strewn all on the grass just beyond the final mat. And these are athletes that are making their way into the final stretch now that's just going to be too far. But the gun is raised by the CMA chairman. McDonald Chicha fires the gun and unfortunately disappointment for all the runners who were virtually on the line by the time the gunshot went off. They would have been reaching, they would have been stretching. But how many bodies are strewn on the grass beyond the finish line? It is so cruel in the greater context, but indeed it's in the rules. And the first non-finisher of the Comrades Marathon, that is disappointing. I think we might need a photo finish that was so close. <laughs> well, so disappointing. finish line it's two minutes after cutoff the man who made it of course Johan Wagenaar from Pretoria we we saw that cutoff getting ever so close did you know how close you were to not making it on my watch I was actually um, three minutes um, in front of that clock so I thought I had another three minutes but then just outside the stadium they started um, counting it down and I realized Sherbet, yes trouble. I'm glad you said Sherbet. Now when you heard that, how much of a rush was it coming through here and into the stadium? No, that it was, if it wasn't for the people, I wouldn't have made it. I suppose that's what Comrades is all about. Because the scream, the, the, the support was freaking amazing. Now mate, let's just look at this here because you came within literally a second and a half of that zero remaining a zero well I have watched this since a little boy on TV and we always watch that last minute 
And so I can't believe it's me now. You know what a grown man needs for this performance today? A bunch of flowers. There we go. Johan Wagenaar from Victoria, the last man to make it over the line before the final gun. Let's head back upstairs. Thank you, Udo, and a fine bouquet for the very last official finisher of the Comrades Marathon. For uh, pride's sake, many athletes will be making their way across the finish line, having completed the distance, but not in the required time. The last post has been played, which uh, signifies the end of the day's activities. But as uh, the final uh, uh, people attempt to uh, make their final stretch and finish this race distance, uh, Lindani Benze is down at the finish line. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dwayne. You know, just as that trumpet was playing, people were just lying on the floor after that finish line. It really looked like a very... Uh after scenes of a very bad battle that's how emotional it actually does get uh, but the last man not to make it or should i say the first man not to make it uh, is you george george ah oh, george i feel so bad my man i mean i've been working so hard and this this is my ninth i was supposed to get my green number today let's try and find out where you went wrong uh, at halfway how, how long did you do it to halfway you know, I, I, everything was okay everything was on, on schedule you know I, di I didn't have any problems or anything whatsoever I, I think i underestimated the last few cases. you know after the, the the last cutoff that's where i i realized that i was i was late i tried to push and i, I nearly bent myself you know all right good luck for next year uh, thank you so much thanks <laughs> all right well Dwayne, that was the man that just didn't make it by seconds, but uh, that's the name of the game. Well, it's been an awesome day at the Comrades Marathon. And of course, it all started very, very early in the morning with the men's elite race. And uh, we're going to bring you some highlights of that men's elite race just to recap what happened during the day today. And this was very early in the morning, 5.30 this morning, in fact, at the start of the 91st edition of the Comrades Marathon. And uh, the athletes there, in fact, had never shot the gun to start the race. The cannons went, and they used that as the start of the race. And the early leader there was uh, an unknown a novice, a man by, from Lesotho, in fact, by the name of Sutu Rata Bele, but then Bernard Dandadzi took over from him, and Dandadzi led for quite a while, Alec, all the way up to the halfway point. Yeah, he pushed it really hard, and the contenders here, they sat, uh, sat back for quite a while, uh, while he pushed it all the way to Drummond, but perhaps he had a contribution to the record today, because he was so far ahead, he probably uh, caused a few of the guys to move a bit earlier than they wanted to, and uh, certainly helped to set up a good race. Well, he also picked up a Bonita's hotspot for his efforts at Drummond and uh, a good 20,000 rand there for Bernard Dandati. He had to also finish the race in less than seven hours, 30 minutes, which he duly did. He finished in six hours, 54, 39 did Dandazi. But uh, then the favorites started heading to the front. We saw the likes of Thibaut Cosello, Mike Focoroni, Ludwig Mamabolo, all at one stage driving the pace on. Claude Mashir was in, was in the mix. And of course, quite a few winners 